I've been hospitalized 108 times in a year, and health insurance fund suspects I'm defrauding medical insurance, but the number of times the nurse has given me injections exceeds the number given by her boyfriend. When I was discharged, the old dean hugged me tightly. I burst into tears and said, go back quickly, brother. The health commission has come to investigate me. What's the joke? I'm a legendary unlucky god. Isn't it reasonable to stay in the hospital every day? I was kidnapped by human traffickers seven or eight times when I was in kindergarten. In primary school, a classroom fan fell down and almost chopped off my head. When I hosted the school festival in middle school, the stage collapsed. Finally, I made it to the college entrance examination. My examination admission ticket was stolen again. After graduation, I got into a car accident every three days and was electrocuted every five days. Not to mention the distant past, just the last time I came out of the hospital, I was mistaken for a doctor and stabbed by a patient's family member. Seriously, how could I look like a doctor in any way? The dean probably won't come back this time, looking at my departing figure. The young nurse asked worriedly, what about the old dean? Sure enough, when I was crossing the road, a car suddenly came rushing like crazy. Everyone was preparing to rescue, and the old dean rushed over to save the person. This old dean is quite familiar with the procedure. But the next second, I took a step to the left, narrowly avoiding the oncoming car. Just as everyone breathed a sigh of relief, the out-of-control car hit a street lamp, making it sway and fall down. And right beneath the street lamp was me. This is bad, everyone sorrowfully covers their eyes. But I managed to dodge with a swift move. As a seasoned expert in falling, compared to falling objects from high-rise buildings, house fires, and water electric shock, this was still child's play. Ding. Host, the second calamity is about to arrive. Please make good use of the remaining time to prepare properly. Survive as much as possible. Old Heavens thinks it's too difficult to kill me, so it deliberately arranged a calamity system for me. The first calamity was a medical malpractice homicide. In order to save my attending physician, I took a stab for him, so I obtained a level 1 reward, basic physical recovery technique. It allows for quick recovery from minor injuries. And this second calamity, unexpectedly, is to resist a meteor shower. The news said that there will indeed be a Orionid meteor shower these two days. It's still a once-in-a-century large meteor shower. Could it be tonight? The calamity system is all targeted strikes. There's no escaping, hurry and prepare. After some thought, first, I need to buy a safety helmet. Every bit of protection counts. I need to find a house in the wilderness, so the meteorites will hit the house first. Finally, just in case, I need to buy a steel plate to protect myself. At 10 p.m., I checked and there were still 18 minutes until the calamity. I rented a small truck, loaded the equipment, and hurried to the abandoned forest in the north of the city. There's an abandoned small house made of reinforced concrete here, but as soon as I got out of the car, I was dumbfounded. The forest, which should have been deserted, was now filled with people. There are cameramen, hosts, and several special guests, but most are audience members. Over a thousand people standing in the open forest, it's incredibly lively. At the forefront of the crowd, Yen Guang TV's top reporter Yen Bingbing is broadcasting with a beaming smile. At that moment, when they saw me struggling to drag a huge steel plate and wearing three safety helmets, everyone burst into laughter, and the live broadcast room erupted. Look at what he's holding, steel plate brother's mother asked me why I was kneeling to watch the live broadcast. I said, I'm kneeling for steel plate brother. Steel plate brother, along with nine years, Ru, and Xiao, instantly attracted the attention of netizens, and everyone focused on them. The on-site director angrily picked up the earpiece and said, What's going on? Get him out of the live broadcast room. Yen Bingbing is indeed a professionally trained host. Unless unable to resist, she wouldn't smile. He came over with a smile and asked, Sir, are you also here to watch the meteor shower? Otherwise, I replied casually and continued walking towards the cabin. There's not much time left. The system warns that there are only three minutes left, and the meteor shower is about to start. Uh, why are you dressed like this? Although I'm about to leave the camera, Yen Bingbing couldn't help but ask this question. To avoid being hit by the meteor shower, causing the live broadcast room to erupt again. This guy is really something. The lottery in our building has the lowest odds of winning, only 1 in 2,142 million. And the experts say the chance of being hit by a meteor is only 1 in 61. I can't believe it, there are actually netizens who are worried about this. Just then, the expert Joshua Bean walked over and said, Listen to me, young man. There's absolutely no problem. I, Joshua Bean, guarantee that if you get hit by a meteor today, I'll pay you 100,000 yuan. Joshua Bean really spat blood on the spot. It's true that this one in 100,000 chance might actually hit you, 
Despite his professional training, he couldn't hold back this time. Young man, it's really. What if two hit me? What if three, four, or even dozens hit me? How would you compensate? Joe Shua Bean was instantly stunned. This guy's really something. No matter how many, I'll pay you 10,000 per meteor. In the live broadcast room, the audience went crazy with laughter. I can't believe it, Steel Plate Bro is serious. Ha, huh, tonight's live stream is interesting. 10,000 yuan per meteor, counting them individually. Professor Joe must have been speechless. I've never seen such shameless audacity. I've already reached the guard hut in the middle of the forest. Fortunately, it's made of reinforced concrete and very sturdy. Exhausted, only one minute left on the countdown. The live broadcast room was in an uproar. What are you doing, Steel Plate Pro? Are you here to watch the meteor shower? Why watch the meteor shower? Go inside the house. Maybe he's really afraid of being hit by a meteor. I really don't understand this guy's moves. Just then, the host Yen Bin Bin started the countdown, and the whole venue fell silent. Everyone realized the spectacular show, and the meteor shower was about to begin. Countless pairs of eyes looked up at the sky as the countdown began. The sky suddenly lit up, and a dazzling red light appeared on the horizon. Carrying a strange aura, a fiery streak appeared in the sky, appearing to be a meteor. It looked like a flame, and also like a chain of fire, drawing beautiful lines in the sky. But after a minute, netizens realized something was wrong. A meteor is caused by a meteoroid rubbing against the atmosphere, and after such a long time, it should have dissipated. Yet it was still flying in the sky, seemingly getting lower and lower, yes, it was coming straight at them. The next second, to everyone's surprise, the meteor emitted a piercing scream and crashed into the Zhengzhou forest farm. Like a precisely targeted missile, it hurtled towards the crowd. Run, everyone, disperse quickly, Zhou Shuebing shouted, urging the audience to leave the scene. If such a huge meteor were to hit, the consequences would be unimaginable. Before everyone could react, the meteor had already crashed to the ground with a whistling sound. A muffled roar came from the live broadcast, and a huge mushroom cloud rose into the sky. Millions of viewers watching the live broadcast were stunned, and the live studio fell silent. The most serious live broadcast accident in history just happened right before everyone's eyes. After a long time, the mushroom cloud gradually dissipated, but the situation in the forest instantly widened the eyes of netizens. Everyone actually stood in place unharmed, they were all unscathed, and everyone escaped unharmed. As far as the eye could see, only the small house in the center of the forest was completely destroyed. In the place where the small house used to be, there was only a deep pit, and five plumes of green smoke were continuously rising from the pit. The astronomer Joe Shua Bean was already dumbfounded. He wished he could slap himself twice. Why did he have to solemnly declare that no one would be hit? Now that there's a casualty, he will bear the main responsibility. The studio instantly boiled over, not only did they escape being crushed, but they were also burned to ashes. Steel Plate Bro was definitely done for. He's so unlucky. Everyone else is fine, only poor Ganban died. Joe Shuebing, didn't you swear that no one would be hit? What about now? A wave of anger spread in the studio. After all, a living person just disappeared in front of everyone. Just then, Pata's hand suddenly reached out from the pile of rocks. Then, a head finally emerged from the pile of rocks. Everyone widened their eyes. Gasping for breath, Ganban struggled and prayed to everyone, could you stop staring and help me out first? In the studio, millions of netizens exploded again, and the effect instantly reached its peak. However, only I know that the tribulation is not over yet. Under the gaze of millions of viewers, I lifted the prepared steel plate and moved away from the crowd. Then I went to an open space, sat on the ground, placed the steel plate on top of myself, and then lay down flat. At first, the netizens were stunned, then burst into laughter. The steel plate guy's actions completely impressed everyone. So, this is how you use a steel plate. Careful brother is here to teach you how to safely watch the meteor shower online. The host, Yen Bingbing, was at a loss whether to laugh or cry. She wanted to go interview Shin Chen, but the second wave of the meteor shower had already appeared. The camera didn't leave Shin Chen, turning towards the sky. This time, it wasn't just shooting stars. Thousands of meteors surged from the horizon, with a flow rate of 1,000 meteors per hour. The meteor storm had finally arrived, lighting up the night like an orderly array of soldiers passing through the sky. It's so beautiful. Let's all make a wish. I wish for me and my goddess Wang Zishuan to be together. May my money be as abundant as the meteor shower, and may my wife's tricks never end. Netizens all made their pure and beautiful wishes. But just like last time, the meteor shower not only didn't disappear, but even fell faster. The meteor shower had really arrived. Joshua Bean, having learned from the last time, spread his arms and rushed towards the audience. 
everyone, run. The audience this time had learned from the previous experience and didn't hesitate to run away. The scene is a mess, with only me left looking up at the sky. The audience in the live broadcast room is also dumbfounded. I hope the meteor shower won't hit steel plate bro again. Wow, he actually encountered the one in 121 odds. He's the chosen one. The audience in the live broadcast room is once again anxious. But there's still one person on the scene, the host Yen Bingbing. He has already thrown away the microphone and is running towards me like a madman. What on earth are you doing here? I have the steel plate to protect me. What weapon do you have? Shin Shen, hurry, I'm lifting the steel plate. Get out quickly, there's no time left. Yen Bingbing doesn't care about my expression, he's trying his best to lift the steel plate. But how much strength can a girl have? The heavy steel plate in front of her is like a mountain, impossible to lift. Get out of here. I shout at him, pulling out the hand pressing under the steel plate and pushing him away. Yen Bingbing keeps shaking his head. I'm so angry I just want to curse at you. This is my tribulation. Even if I run out, the meteor shower will accurately strike with me. I can't escape from you. But there's no time left. The bright light in the sky is frightening. I angrily shout, then roll over and lift the steel plate. I press down on Yen Bingbing and use my other hand to cover the steel plate again. The next second, billions of people witnessed a magnificent scene. Countless shining small meteors quickly fell, leaving numerous deep and shallow craters on the ground. A scene like this cannot be described by a rain of arrows. The steel plate on my body has been constantly hit by the meteor shower and has become quite hot. I feel my back skin starting to burn and swell and even smell the aroma of roasted meat. But I managed to bear this wave. I lift the steel plate and feel reborn. This can no longer be described as a live broadcast accident. Ambulances and fire trucks have arrived, and the audience is gathering around. At this moment, Yen Bingbing also opened his eyes, he sat up and immediately checked on my condition. Looking at the place on my back where the steel plate was pressed, my clothes have melted due to the high temperature. The entire back is exposed, all red, Yen Bingbing smiled for a moment, then his eyes turned red. People who have been paying attention from a distance have already run over, Zhou Shuebing leading the way. I seized the opportunity, ah, uh, Professor Zhou, shouldn't you count the meteorites that fell on the ground? Counting meteorites, Zhou Shuebing suddenly realized, come on, stop messing around, bro. Are you still thinking about that 100,000 yuan thing? The live broadcast room immediately discussed, ha ha, I remember Professor Joe said something about a 100,000 yuan meteorite. Let's go by what Professor Joe said, 10,000 meteorites per hour, that's 1 billion yuan. Ha ha, Joe Shuebing was at a loss. I suddenly laughed. Okay, Professor Joe, I was just teasing you. Joe Shuebing immediately breathed a sigh of relief, bro, you scared me. Don't worry, I'll cover all your hospital expenses. Ha ha, this guy is too funny. Just as I was about to thank Professor Zhou, and right in front of Yen Bingbing, the third wave of meteor shower arrived. Snap! A meteor the size of a fingertip, accurately and without error, hit me on the head. I'm an absolute disaster magnet, a car crash every three days, and an electric shock every five days. I was even hit on the head by the meteor shower, unexpectedly becoming the internet's first daredevil anchor. Everyone thought I was dead, but not only did I not die, I unexpectedly gained the ability to connect to satellites in space. I can make calls, use voice navigation, and locate satellites at any time. When I appeared in front of everyone again, their first reaction was actually that it was a hoax, the master doesn't exist. Ding, the third time, the disaster has started the countdown. The host of the fire calamity will be in the fire 24 hours later, and the disaster relief time will be a total of 6 hours. Oh my, my head was just hit by a meteor, and now the third calamity is coming. System, you better think about it, my brain is not working well right now. The host completing the task has nothing to do with the brain. I'm so tired of this system. I fell asleep in a daze, and in my dream, I remembered the joyful times I spent in the orphanage as a child. A beautiful sister is tempting me with a lollipop. Can I resist this level of temptation? Big sister, you're the biggest I've ever seen. The sister happily put the lollipop in her mouth. Hmm, big sister, why does this lollipop have a nail polish smell? So delicious, stop messing around, Shin Shen, let go of me. I was so scared that I quickly opened my eyes, and damn, it turned out she was just chewing on Yin Bingbing's finger. It was too exciting. I've tarnished the beautiful host of Yang Wang Station. Suddenly, I remembered the third calamity. I checked my phone and it had been over 14 hours. With a determined face, this time I had to stay in the fire for 6 hours. I quickly searched for some useful things at home, a gas mask, good. I put on a backpack and was ready to go out. Yen Bingbing grabbed me and said, explain clearly, where are you going? 
If it's about money, we can figure it out together. But don't do anything rash like robbing a bank, the banks are closed at this time. He thought I was going to rob a bank. After explaining a few words, I broke free from Yen Bingbing's hand and pushed the door open. Since I was going to experience a fire calamity, I naturally needed a fire extinguisher, a fire card, a fire suit, and a fire helmet. Also, the essential firefighter equipment, a breathing apparatus, fire boots, a high-intensity flashlight, a rope, and a fire axe. I hailed a car and rushed to the nearest fire equipment store. I bought all the firefighting equipment. After purchasing everything, I checked my watch and found that I only had 7 hours and 37 minutes left until the calamity. After thinking carefully, I decided to go to the sea. After all, fires can also start in water. Just as I was taking a taxi to the seaside, Yen Bingbing caught up with me. Damn, how did you find me? Yen Bingbing held up her phone, looking helpless, you used my credit card. Oh my goodness, it's such a strange thing in this world. He was actually born on the same day as me, even set the bank card password exactly the same. It's an annoying yet miraculous fate. Not marrying this girl would be considered a sin. Yen Bingbing has already been fired by the TV station. The serious live broadcast accident during the last meteor shower caused all the crew members to be dismissed. By the way, if it weren't for me choosing to take refuge at the Zhengzhou forest farm, Yen Bingbing wouldn't have lost her job. I was just thinking that I had arrived at the seaside, I was just looking for a speedboat. Yen Bingbing's voice suddenly sounded in my ear, Hi everyone, it's true, I'm Yen Bingbing. Don't be surprised. This is my newly opened live streaming account. From today, I'm going to use live streaming to record Shen Lao Ji's daily life. Bingbing, what are you doing? So, it turns out that Yen Bingbing is preparing to switch careers, becoming a live streaming expert and reaping the benefits of the traffic. And the account name is Shen Lao Ji's Happy Life. Did I agree to this? How did I suddenly become a laborer? The live streaming room just opened, and suddenly hundreds of people poured in. There's no way around it. A national goddess like Yen Bingbing and the most miserable Shen Lao Ji on the entire internet have become the focus of attention these past two days. However, the audience in the live streaming room panicked when they saw me about to go out to sea in the middle of the night, risking my life. Oh no, another reckless live streamer has appeared. Bing Bing, persuade Shen Lao Ji not to risk his life for a bit of traffic. Yes, I'm a person from the seaside. Going out to sea at this time is simply asking for death. It's pitch black all around, and if a wave comes, no one would even know if we drowned. Playing kayaking in the Pacific Ocean, can't you show a little respect for nature? But in the end, I found a kayak at the beach recycling center. This thing has no fuel, no battery, and is impossible to turn off. Yen Bingbing panicked when she realized I was serious. Shin Shen, if you're serious, then what's fake? Bingbing, you go back first. I smiled and waved at Yen Bingbing, then paddled hard, and the kayak was carried into the sea by the waves. Yen Bingbing could only stand by the sea angrily cursing, go find death, I don't care about you. Die however you want, you bastard, jerk, stinky egg, and she cried. I fell asleep in a daze, and an hour later, as the sky brightened, I suddenly opened my eyes and sat up from the kayak. Reminder to the host, the third calamity, the fire disaster, has already begun to descend. Please prepare and survive with all your might. What? The fire disaster has already begun? I looked around, the morning sea was shrouded in mist, visibility was less than 20 meters. I was safe on this kayak, and there was no fire on the kayak. To eliminate any potential danger, I didn't even bring a lighter and even the high-powered flashlight was disconnected, with the batteries placed separately. But the fire disaster has already occurred. At that moment, a massive cruise ship broke through the sea fog and appeared before my eyes. I was greatly surprised, never would I have thought that the third calamity would occur on a giant cruise ship. This is not just any cruise ship, not a cruise ship at all, but a giant natural gas tanker with a capacity of over 10,000 tons. If the giant ship in front of us explodes, the area for several kilometers around will be enveloped in a mushroom cloud. At this moment on the deck, Captain Wang Zhao is gathering all the crew for a meeting. I didn't even think about going over, I just kept shouting, hey, hurry, and pull me up. It took about 10 minutes for someone above to answer me. This ship is called the Viking. It is registered in the country of New Adato, a large natural gas tanker with a maximum capacity of 150,000 tons. Upon hearing my shouts, they naturally thought I was in distress and rescued me. However, the first thing I said when I got on board was, quick, evacuate. This place is going to explode. Are you freaking crazy? I ignored them and went straight up to grab Wang Zhao. He's the captain and has the authority. Time is of the essence now. Although I don't know what kind of accident will happen, igniting the natural gas every single second means an additional level of danger. However, Wang Zhao couldn't be bothered to talk to a crazy person. 
He directly had his nephew come over to teach me a lesson, and Li Qin shouted for a few people to tie me up. Hey, you'll be in trouble if you don't listen to advice. They tied me up in a small room. I used the lady in my head, the space satellite, to call the police station. Naturally, I was also considered a crazy person. Just then, there was a sudden and extremely violent explosion on the cruise ship. At the stern of the Viking cruise ship, a huge mushroom cloud suddenly rose, followed by flames shooting into the sky. The quickest to react was Captain Han Chi, who was on the phone with me. He looked at the sea outside and dropped the phone to the ground. He sounded the alarm, got ready for battle immediately, and then, Han Chi, reacting, shouted and rushed downstairs. I was almost knocked out by the shock. Luckily, I had basic physical repair skills, so I didn't die on the spot. Yen Bingbing, who had been waiting all night, burst into tears at the thought of me buying firefighting equipment last night. Running to the seaside in the middle of the night and taking a kayak out to sea all hinted that I might have known the cruise ship would explode a long time ago. There was no signal here a long time ago, but I had the signal from the space meteorite in my mind. Looking at the call records, there were dozens of calls from Yen Bingbing. To reassure Yen Bingbing, I directly called him via live video chat. But unexpectedly, in the emergency, May opened up Brother Shun's happy life. Many netizens immediately joined the live broadcast mode. Yen Bingbing originally wanted to interrupt the live broadcast, but worried about my safety, so he had to start the live broadcast. In the live room, he hosted this life and death live show. I immediately took out protective suits, gas masks, firefighting suits, ropes, and started to put them on. The crew member on the ship ran to open the door for me and was stunned to see me like this. Bro, you didn't lie to us. What you said was actually true, he said in amazement. Go save people quickly. I rushed to the bridge at top speed, and he followed closely. After investigation, the recent explosion was merely a mechanical explosion inside the cruise ship. The ship also has 100,000 tons of liquefied natural gas. If that thing explodes, it will affect the entire east seaport. It also means that if the fire is not controlled quickly, it will immediately trigger a second explosion, or even a third explosion. Everyone's heart sank. The Viking is too close to the port. The police are quickly evacuating the crowd. The first wave of rescue helicopters reached the Viking. At this point, nearly an hour had passed, and I was dragging Captain Wang Zhao, who was trapped under the filing cabinet. I didn't expect it. After this guy crawled out, he actually grabbed my neck first thing, demanding to know if I was behind the explosion of the Viking. I was so angry. I blew up the Viking just to save you. Are you more handsome than Hu Gu or Andy Lao? As soon as he heard it, it seemed like he understood. At that moment, a team of firefighters and rescuers came down from the helicopter. A disheveled man named Lu Yu, who was supposed to get married today, forced his wife to wait at home for the rescue mission. At this point, most people on the cruise ship have gathered on the deck, but many are still waiting for rescue. Suddenly, another urgent alert from the alarm system in my mind, host, prepare for the second explosion, count down 30 minutes. My hands were already covered in blood and flesh, continuously rescuing people with Wang Zhao. The new firefighter also rushed to the front, and we saved one crew member after another onto the deck. The rescue helicopter hovered in the air, and we knew that no one could withstand the second explosion. Quickly, the seriously injured board first, those without bleeding weight in place. We are returning immediately for the rescue mission. The firefighters shouted loudly at the people on the deck. At this time, almost everyone in the cabin had been saved to the deck by us. But Wang Zhao suddenly shouted, there are still a few people on the negative third floor. I held a morning meeting and sent a few shipyard workers and Jigong to check down there. It's my fault for letting them go. Hurry to save them. Why didn't you say so earlier? There's no time left. We have 10 minutes left. We must evacuate everyone. Wait, how do you know there are 10 minutes left until the explosion? Lu Yuan stared at me and suddenly asked. I can predict the future. Stop talking nonsense. Save people first. This Lu Yuan, still dawdling at this point, will make the people below into scum. I ran towards the lower hold, and when I reached the iron door leading to the lower hold, I pulled hard but found that the door couldn't be opened. It's too hot inside, there's pressure, and no oxygen. If you go in, you will die. Lu Yuan shouted at me, rushed over, touched the handle of the iron door with his hand, and smoke suddenly appeared from his glove. Get me an oxygen kit. Don't just stand there. Another explosion will happen in 10 minutes. Save the people first. My gloves are already damaged. My hand is burned, blood flowing tightly gripping the iron door. Damn it, this door really won't open. Shin, use the C4. Move back a bit. Saying this, Lu Yuan covered the entire perimeter of the cabin door with small C4 explosives. Step back two paces. There was a loud bang, and the cabin door was finally blown open. 
A wave of heat rushed out, smoke filled the inside, and no one knew what was going on. Lu Yuan was about to assign tasks here, preparing to send the firefighters to the front line. But I knew this task had to be completed by me. I quickly grabbed a set of oxygen equipment and put it on. I went to the third floor underground to find people. Remember, from now on, five minutes countdown, you must evacuate by helicopter. Before Lu Yuan could react, I had already rushed in. But Lu Yuan and the others were unwilling to leave. They are public servants of the people and followed closely behind. The negative first floor is where the gas storage pipelines for tanks 1 and 5 of the cruise ship and the tank main valve are located. There is currently no fire inside, and thick smoke is coming from below the ladder. There is no problem for now, but the operation is unusually slow due to the thick smoke. Lu Yuan from the negative second floor, followed by four soldiers, quickly arrived here. This is the cruise ship's central control mechanical equipment compartment, storing a large amount of natural gas, pressurization equipment, exhaust valves, pipelines, and fire facilities. No fire has been found for the time being, just what seems to be a person lying on the ground in the distance. At the same time, the real-time picture of the negative third floor has finally been transmitted to the command center. This is the cruise ship's engine room and oil storage compartment, where a fierce fire is raging recklessly. The engine room has exploded, the oil storage compartment is leaking, and a large amount of oil is flowing on the ground. They are like streams of fire, constantly spitting out flames, trying to climb upwards. No one knows how much oil is left, only that the ship was just refueled before leaving port. I was at the front, and the temperature was really too high. The fire boots I was wearing on my feet sounded like melting ice cream. In the depths of the second floor, I could see three crew members lying on the ground, unconscious from the thick smoke. He approached and gestured to his comrades, indicating to carry the unconscious crew members out one by one. One of them still had some consciousness, and as soon as he was awakened, he panicked and shouted for help. Quick, go to the negative second floor connection, the valve of the no. Three natural gas and oil is not completely closed. Hurry and take me to close the no. Three valve. Upon hearing this news, everyone's mind is blown. Can't believe there's still a natural gas valve left open. If this valve isn't closed, 100,000 tons of natural gas will explode. Warning host. Three minutes until the second explosion. Can't believe it's so intense right from the start. Regardless, the second explosion is a certainty, but we must not let it ignite the natural gas pipeline, or we'll have a massive problem. Firefighter Lu Yuan shouted fiercely, running towards the valve of Tank 3, ordering everyone to leave and evacuate immediately. Truly worthy of being soldiers of the people, the remaining brothers are also unafraid of life and death, but there's no time. They must take the rescued injured person and leave. Lu Yuan in front, I closely behind, feeling like my whole body is on fire due to the intense heat. Finally, we reached the valve of Tank 3. We both grabbed the huge valve and started turning it together. Why the heck aren't they leaving? Lu Yuan shouted at me. Why, are you the only hero here? Tears were welling up in Lu Yuan's eyes. You're civilians, how could we let you come here? The extreme heat at the front line is about to ruin my shoes. I kicked Lu Yuan's calf and said, What nonsense are you talking? Can you handle this alone? Look, my shoes are going to be ruined. Hurry up and get me a set of protective gear. The civilian fire suit I bought has been completely burned by the fire, and the fireproof boots on my feet have melted, exposing my toes. In the command room, Han Shi grabbed the intercom and shouted at Lu Yuan, you need to evacuate immediately, right now. Lu Yuan rapidly turned the valve while responding to Han Shi, I'm sorry, I can't evacuate now. The delay on tank no. 3 hasn't been closed. If there's a second explosion, it will definitely trigger tank no. 3. I really can't evacuate. Han Shi shouted disregarding Lu Yuan's explanation, I order you and Shen Chen to evacuate immediately. Can't you hear me? Right now evacuate immediately. I looked at the countdown in my mind, there's just over a minute left, no time. Today was supposed to be a joyous day for Lu Yuan. His wife is waiting for him at home to get married. It's okay that I'm naturally unlucky, but I can't drag others down with me. A punch hit him in the back of the neck, Lu Yuan's carotid artery was suddenly attacked, causing temporary cerebral ischemia. He groaned and then passed out. I lifted the unconscious Lu Yuan and ran upstairs in large strides. Everyone immediately understood my intention. Now there's only one minute left. Fortunately, two helicopters have only left one, and one is still circling in the air. The helicopter quickly descended and dropped two ropes. I fastened the buckles on Lu Yuan's equipment to the ropes and waved. I turned and ran back into the cabin because I knew I had ordinary physical recovery skills, which made me more durable than them, and with the system, I couldn't leave. I ran back to the negative second floor's tank number three, 
desperately started turning the valve. The fire dragon has crawled up to the second floor through the vent, and as far as the eye can see, it's all a sea of fire. In the sea of fire, the damn valve number 3 seems to never reach the end, making people feel hopeless circle after circle. The system indicated that the second explosion was 10 seconds away, and as the countdown started, at 19, bang, the valve made a muffled sound. I could no longer turn the valve in front of me, and the valve of tank number 3 was completely shut. And the next second, the sound of the explosion came again, and the entire East China Sea seemed to tremble. Even the people in the command room were shaken and fell to the ground. Another mushroom cloud rose into the air. Then Shen's happy life live broadcast room turned into a dark state, and the live broadcast was almost like my lifeline. Luckily, the 100,000 ton natural gas tank collapsed. The command is from Han Chi's superior, Huang Zhu, who has arrived after expert discussion. Currently, the fire on the negative third floor of the cruise ship is still urgent. If the fire is not contained, the 100,000 ton natural gas will explode sooner or later. There's no other way. The best option now is to send out a suicide squad, install multiple bombs at the bottom of the cruise ship's negative third floor and the seafloor, and sink it directly into the sea. Use seawater to extinguish the fire and cool down the natural gas tank. Prevent an explosion. Han Shi was the first to step forward, this time let me go. On the other side, the world's top international rescue team, the Bald Eagle Rescue Team, has also arrived at the scene. They were brought in by the financial consortium behind this cruise ship. On the Bald Eagle Rescue Team's plane, Captain Smith outlined the specific rescue plan for this mission. Their plan is simply to preserve the cruise ship and the 100,000 tons of natural gas on board to salvage the company's assets. They didn't even consider the 2 million people in the Eastern Airlines port, or the entire population of Zhangzhou. When it comes to money and wealth, there's nothing capitalists won't do. When I woke up, I felt like all my bones were about to fall apart. Despite having basic physical recovery skills, I was struggling a bit. After contacting the command center, I found out that, in addition to Han Chi's task force, members of the Bald Eagle rescue team would also come to install explosives. These are not tasks I can handle. Huang Zhu told me to keep an eye on the Bald Eagle rescue team. They didn't show up out of nowhere, they definitely have ulterior motives. On the deck, Han Chi's task force has already arrived, with the Bald Eagle rescue team's helicopter closely following behind. The official live broadcast drone is hovering in the air. Viewers watching the live stream, especially those who enjoy watching European and American blockbuster dramas, are extremely excited to learn that the world's top rescue team has arrived. It's actually the Bald Eagle rescue team. Now there's hope for the Viking. They are one of the world's top four rescue teams, and I really like them. That's right, the Bald Eagle rescue team, a team that even impressed Mr. Bay, it is said that they once hiked into the north and rescued a wild little porcupine. It seems that our country's fire brigade is not good enough. In critical moments, it has to be American heroes who come to the rescue. Most netizens feel uncomfortable with these people. Pfft. Are you a born bootlicker? When do penguins exist in the Arctic? Don't just listen to gossip. Ha ha ha, even Mr. They can't stop praising them. Did Mr. They eat them all? Forget it. Do you believe these five people, including Shen Lao Gu, would be no match in his hands? The crowd laughed, and those who admire the West fell silent. At this point, I was already standing on the deck, waving to the sky. Smith grabbed the steel wire and was the first to jump down. With a nimble figure, and Smith deliberately showing off, using one hand to pull the rope and land, it looked extremely elegant. But the next second, there was a crisp sound of click. The world's top rescue team, the majestic captain of the Bald Eagle team, Smith, actually lay on the ground. He sprained his foot. Unfortunately, his luck is so bad. Even the temperature brought by the fellow team members couldn't help. But when it comes to me, I always like fire. What kind of rescue team are you? Wow, he sprained his foot right after jumping off the plane. This is the world's top rescue power. Smith reached out his hand, wanting me to help, but I'm not stupid. If something goes wrong later, how am I supposed to deal with it? The Captain Smith is useless before achieving victory. Seeing the captain incapacitated, I got up and headed towards the cabin. The negative three deck of the cabin was filled with flames at this time, but the firefighters were still steadfastly carrying out their tasks, deploying the bombs one by one. The number of steps for the bombs at the bottom of the sea is ready. As long as they are detonated simultaneously, the cruise ship will quickly sink to the seabed. Suddenly, the entire ship suddenly experienced a violent tremor, and countless bubbles rose to the surface of the sea. The ship actually exploded. In Smith's earpiece, came the excited voices of two team members, Boss, we did it. They actually blew a small hole in the bottom of the ship, and a large amount of seawater had already rushed in. 
The purpose is to first cool down the natural gas tank. After six hours, the tugboat sent by the Li Shikai team will arrive. What's the use of this? My brain shows that there are still over two hours until the third explosion. What's the point of coming back after six hours to die? Now the Viking is starting to tilt, but if we talk about sinking, it will still be an extremely slow process. 100 years ago, the equally huge Titanic took a whole day for the cabin to leak. Unless according to the original plan of the command, the entire ship is blown open on a large scale. Host, be aware, the third wave of explosions is imminent. This will be the final explosion. Due to unforeseen events, the fire drill has been extended to 4 hours. There are 20 minutes left until the end of the tribulation. Time until the arrival of the third wave of explosions, 19 minutes and 58 seconds. Host, please respond with all your might. Survive. Oh crap, we're in big trouble. I struggled to stand up, shook my head hard, and realized that the cabin was already tilting. The fire had begun to roast the canister, and it wouldn't be long before it ignited the natural gas. Requesting support, requesting support. Just had an explosion, the ship has already tilted. A firefighter has also come to his senses after the recent explosion. I quickly stopped him. Huang Ju can't send more people for support. The natural gas canister is about to explode. Send two helicopters now to evacuate the people on the ship. Including all of you, immediately evacuate the command center. There's less than 20 minutes left. The fire blazed in the cabin, and Huang Ju looked cold all over. A huge sense of despair surged into his heart. Is the Wan Jing about to explode? A few of my uninjured firefighter brothers and I quickly started to act, launching the rescue operation. Time was running out. We carried two people up to the deck, and at a glance, I saw Smith, and anger surged up in me. Damn it, Smith, you son of a gun. I kicked him right away. Efficiently, I took out a pair of handcuffs from my body. These were left by Lu Yuan earlier, and they came in handy for Smith. I handcuffed him to the cabin door, enduring temperatures of several hundred degrees. If an explosion occurs, his life is over. Watching the rescued brothers board the helicopter, I hurried back to the cabin to continue searching. Near the No. 2 tank, I finally found the team members who lost contact on the lower level. The two of them had put out the flames on their bodies through self-rescue, but they were seriously injured and couldn't stand up, lying on the ground. The key is that I didn't see Captain Han Chi. Han Han led the captain and Li Jiming to the third level. I carried one on my back and held one in my arms, quickly going upstairs to move them to safety. Coincidentally, I encountered Smith, who was saved by his team members. Smith stood up, twisting his wrist, and gave a fierce command. His two team members looked at me and then pulled out the dagger from their waist. Kid, I'll ask you one last time, have you seen our team member Nia? If your answer satisfies me, I can spare your life. Nia was their teammate, but she died long ago because of their foolish detonation. In the shock of the explosion, Nia hit the valve inside the cabin, and the valve pierced her intestines. They continued to walk to the deck, but the dagger was already close to me. One of the two brothers I just saved hugged them tightly. God, hurry, go save Han's team, they're going to be drowned on the Dash 3 RD level. Don't worry about this, we'll stop them. The seawater is pouring into the Dash 3 RD floor, the brother planting the bomb can't hold on anymore. At this moment, Two members of the Bald Eagle rescue team lifted their daggers and stabbed a firefighter in the back. The white knife goes in, the red knife comes out, and a firefighter spews blood. You, expletive, I'm going to grab a fire axe and charge up to save you. Don't worry about us, Shin Shen, please go and save Han's team quickly, only you can save them now. Hurry up and go, are you going to watch Han's team drown in front of you, and us die in vain? I won't hesitate anymore, I rush into the sea of fire. I rush to the Dash 3 RD floor. The dark water is filled with machinery and burnt sharp objects, stabbing me painfully. I see through the overhead spotlight that Han Chi is tightly trapped in the gap of a machine. I grab his body and lift with all my might, but Han Chi is stuck tightly in the gap of the equipment due to the weight. Suddenly a hand reaches out, followed by a second and third hand. The rescue team pulls me out of the water, and with everyone's concerted effort, we finally manage to pull Han Chi out. It's the last rescue team sent out by Huang Zhu. The system reminds us that there are 5 minutes left until the third wave of explosions. Evacuate immediately, evacuate everyone now. Everyone, seeing the temperature of the tank has reached 900 degrees Celsius, shivered, and then followed Han Chi to run out. As they were heading to the negative first floor, I closed the passage. I activated the bomb in my hand, the remote control was in my hand. At the same time, I found the last explosive on him. It may not succeed, but we must try, right? Huang's team quickly evacuated them. I installed the last explosive, took out the detonator from my pocket, and faced death. 
Two seconds later, more than 10 high-powered explosives inside and outside the cabin were detonated simultaneously. A huge wave soared into the sky, forming a massive water column 200 meters high and 100 meters in diameter, completely overturning the Viking cruise ship. Everyone witnessed this extremely shocking scene. In the command room, Huang Xingjun slowly walked to the window, looking at the huge water column on the sea, tears flowing uncontrollably in his eyes. In the sky, the huge air wave directly blew the last evacuating helicopter several hundred meters away, almost overturning it. The people on the plane stared blankly at the overturned Viking oil tanker, trembling all over. In the live broadcast room, 30 million netizens even forgot to breathe, staring blankly at their phone screens until the huge water column fell, still reluctant to blink. The fire was extinguished by the waves. The 100,000-ton Viking sank completely. The East Seaport was saved. People's tears dripped down, falling on the screen and shattering into eight petals. Has a person named Shen Chen finally died? Everyone, launched the final attack. Everyone, go out and find Shen Chen's whereabouts for me. In the live broadcast room, Huang Shengjuan's roar was heard. For a moment, all the rescue personnel were mobilized. A rescue team composed of more than 2,000 personnel from all levels and units set out towards the sinking location of the Viking oil tanker. Several maritime rescue ships sounded mournful whistles and rushed towards the sea. Ten rescue helicopters took off and headed straight for the sky. All rescue personnel participated in the search for Shin Chen. In the live broadcast room, someone shouted, Brothers in Zhengzhou City, let's go find Brother Shin together. As soon as he spoke, a flood of comments appeared. I'm in Zhengzhou, I'm going out now. I was the champion of last year's sea swimming competition, I will also go find Brother Shun. I have a fishing boat nearby, wait for my good news. A call to action. Zhengzhou City, countless people hurriedly ran out of their homes and towards the sea. On the streets, countless private cars turned around and raced towards the East Seaport. Gradually, all the men, young and old, in Zhengzhou rushed to the East Seaport. Among them, some were proficient in swimming, some grew up by the sea and some had boats anchored in the East China Sea. Most of them were full of enthusiasm, eager to contribute their efforts. Before long, the sea surface of the East China Sea was filled with search and rescue personnel. People searched every area of the sea, hoping to find traces of Shen Chen. In Zhengzhou City, at the bottom of the sea, it was noon. The usually crowded Hai Di Lao restaurant had only one table of guests, with only one person at the table. The waiters stood cautiously not far from her, none daring to disturb her. The TV in the restaurant was still broadcasting the salvage operation. It had been over an hour since the sinking of the Viking. Thousands of rescue personnel had been conducting a grid search on the East China Sea for over an hour. Still, there was no sign of Shen Shen. Alive but not seen, dead but not found. The restaurant manager wanted to approach several times to inform the guest. Should she go to the seaside, at least closer to where he disappeared? But each time the manager walked towards the guest, he turned back. He couldn't bear to tell the guest the actual situation. The guest was Yen Bingbing, a well-known host. She had arrived three hours ago and ordered a set meal for couples. The water in the pot kept boiling, maintaining a constant boil. She focused on watching the boiling soup in the pot, never looking at the TV on the wall, let alone taking out her phone to watch the live broadcast. Yen Bingbing sat quietly, waiting silently. Manager, it's almost 12 o'clock, Shen Chen probably won't come. The waitress covered her mouth, trying not to cry out loud. What should we do? Everyone looked at the restaurant manager, unsure of what to do. When Yen Bingbing arrived, she said that someone would come to accompany her for dinner before 12.25, please don't mind. At that time, no one could have imagined that he would come to accompany Ice Ice for dinner. Now, everyone wishes that he would come to accompany Ice Ice for dinner. Hey, turn off the TV. Wait another 25 minutes, if the guest hasn't arrived yet, send the teddy bear over to accompany Miss Yen for dinner. That's it. The manager sighed and turned back to the office. Everyone looked at the teddy bear in the corner, hoping deep down that they wouldn't have to deal with it again. Yen Bingbing seemed to hear something, her body trembled imperceptibly, and she added some water to the pot. Shen Shen, if you don't come, I will never speak to you again. Deep in the East China Sea, Shen Shen was blown away by a huge explosion, flying into the fire on the negative second floor. Before he could be burned to death, the entire giant ship was overturned again, and Shen Shen sank with the ship, sinking into the depths of the sea. It was unknown how long had passed. The system's prompt sounded in his mind, congratulations, host, you have successfully passed the third calamity fire disaster. Host detected in critical condition, now activating rebirth through Nirvana one-time usage right, starting full body rebirth for the host. Repair progress, 1%, 2%, 3%. 
Repair progress, 99%, 100%, congratulations host, rebirth through nirvana. Now starting reward settlement, does the host wish to claim it now? Claim your uncle. Shin Shen suddenly opened his eyes and cursed. I still want to have dinner with Ice Ice, I don't have time to claim your broken stuff. But as soon as he opened his mouth, he sucked in a mouthful of seawater, realizing that he had been overturned to the seabed. Resurrected. No, it could be said that he was reborn. In the last second before the explosion, Shin Chen remembered the S-level lottery reward given by the system after surviving the meteor calamity. The one-time usage right of rebirth through Nirvana. He had survived again. He didn't have time to celebrate, he had to find a way to escape from here first. It was pitch black all around, and he didn't know where he was sinking now. He felt like his lungs were about to explode under the immense water pressure at the bottom of the sea. Shin Chen fumbled and found the automatic buoyancy device from the maritime firefighter equipment on his body, put it on, and immediately activated it. The airflow instantly filled the survival device, and the buoyancy lifted Shin Chen's body upward. Not knowing how deep he was in the sea, he could only hold his breath tightly, hoping to float up faster, faster. 10 seconds. 20 seconds. 30 seconds. After floating for a full minute, just as Shin Chen was about to pass out from suffocation, he finally surfaced. He took a deep breath feeling a sharp pain in his chest from the rapid decompression. However, Shin Chen didn't care anymore. He had survived. He immediately fired a flare into the sky. Boom! A gunshot rang out, and the people searching on the sea surface spotted him. It's Shin, bro. People cheered and rushed towards Shin Chen's location like crazy. He was rescued. People erupted in cheers. Shin Chen didn't die. This news spread quickly. The staff at the undersea restaurant were the first to hear the news and were about to inform Yin Bingbing. The manager rushed out and stopped them. Shu, let Shen Shen tell her himself, isn't that more romantic? Everyone laughed, happier than ever before. East China Seaport. Shen Shen was promptly brought to the shore, and an ambulance had arrived. Dozens of medical personnel rushed up to carry Shen Shen to the hospital for a checkup and emergency treatment. Shen Shen struggled and refused all of them. What time is it now? 12.18. What's wrong, Shen bro? Hurry to the hospital. Huang Shengjun ran over, wanting to give Shen Shen a big hug. More people ran over, wanting to lift Shen Shen up and cheer. It's 12.18? Shen Shen's head was about to explode. Get up! Shen Shen swiftly passed through the crowd, took long strides and ran outside. What are you up to again? We haven't finished the checkup yet. What if there's internal bleeding? Hurry back, the TV station is waiting to interview you. Shen Shen ran ahead, with the others chasing behind, all the way out of the range of the East Seaport. In the live broadcast room, 30 million netizens were all confused. What is Shin Bro up to now? Could it be another dangerous mission waiting for him? Please, we've shed enough tears today, Shin Bro, don't make us cry again. Everyone could only watch Shin Chan running wildly. Here, brother, get in the car, I've been waiting for you. A taxi suddenly pulled up in front of Shin Chen, rolling down the window. Hey, you're asking me for the fare, right? Come on, we'll settle the bill together later. Shin Shen thought to himself that luck was on his side, opened the car door and got in. The taxi driver turned out to be the same guy who brought him. The guy chuckled, stepped on the gas and left Huang Shengjun and the others in the dust. Bro, the sea. Shin Shen gasped, trying to say the destination. Hot pot, right. It's 12.19 now, watch closely, I promise to complete the mission. The taxi driver wiped a tear from the corner of his eye and picked up the walkie-talkie. Attention all taxi brothers, I'm currently driving Shen Shen to Hot Pot Restaurant, hope you can all cooperate with me. Please. Received. 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 The walkie-talkie buzzed with responses. The driver laughed, shifted into fifth gear directly, and sped away. A miraculous scene unfolded. On the streets of Zhengzhou, all the taxis stopped, making way for the taxi Shen Shen was riding in. Some puzzled drivers asked what was going on, after an explanation, everyone joined in to help. Taxis stopped. Private cars stopped. Even the buses stopped in their tracks. Everyone cleared a path leading to Hot Pot for the two taxis. Shin Shen looked bewildered, awkwardly waving his thanks to everyone. The crowd clenched their fists, cheering him on. Ahead, a wedding procession suddenly blocked the way. Get in my car, the BMW. Hurry up. Get in quickly. The window rolled down, and Lu Yuan from the special operations team shouted at the taxi. Seeing this, the driver pushed Shin Shen out. Quick. Three minutes left. Lu Yuan pulled the bewildered Shin Chen into the car and raced towards the hot pot restaurant. In the car, Lu Yuan's bride, Shin Xin Yue, urged her husband to drive faster. Shin Chen kept checking his watch. 1224. 
The wedding car finally stopped at the entrance of the hot pot restaurant. At the entrance, almost all the waitstaff were standing there. Quick, Shin bro, follow me. Before Shin Shin could react, a few people grabbed him and ran inside. 1225. Yen Ding Ding looked at the almost burnt pot bottom in silence. She slowly raised her trembling hand, wanting to turn off the valve of the induction cooker. Don't turn it off. A cry of surprise. Shin Shen, sweating profusely, sat opposite Yen Bing Bing, soaked. Bing Bing, serve the meat, I'm starving. Yen Bing Bing trembled all over, looking at the wet Shin Shen in front of her. His exhausted face broke into a smile, wiping the sweat off his face in embarrassment. Bing Bing, am I late? Woo. Just one minute. Yen Bing Bing cried like a child, bypassed the dining table, and pounced on him. Shin Shen smelled a unique fragrance of a girl, and his neck was fiercely bitten by Yen Bing Bing. You scared me. It's my first time going on a date with a boy, I thought you were late. Yen Bing Bing bit the tender flesh on Shin Shen's neck, crying uncontrollably. Shin Shen, in pain, gritted his teeth and dared not break free. I'm back. Bing Bing, everything is fine. The fire on the Viking has been put out, and I'm fine too. Yen Bing Bing smiled happily. In the distance, a round of applause came from all the staff of the underwater restaurant, sending them good wishes. Yen Bingbing realized she was clinging to Shin Chen's embrace and quickly stood up and ran back to her seat. Let's eat, let's eat. Surviving a great disaster will bring good fortune. Shin Chen, your good days are coming. Just as she finished speaking, there was a bang, and black smoke emerged from the induction cooker. It's broken. Ah, this. Yen Bingbing was at a loss, as it had been working fine for over two hours, but now it broke as soon as he arrived. Shin Chen touched his nose and looked up at the sky. This has nothing to do with me. Yen Bing Bing chuckled. The third calamity was finally overcome smoothly. Shin Shen was eventually taken to the hospital by Huang Sheng Jun and others for a comprehensive physical examination. The hospital attached great importance to the hero who saved the entire East Seaport and even the entire Zhangzhou, sending several experts for consultation. After the experts examined Shin Shen, they unanimously agreed, it's fortunate that he was brought in early. If it had been later, the wounds on his hands would have healed. No one expected that after experiencing three explosions, Shin Shen only had some scratches on his hands, while the rest of his body was unharmed. However, the old director of the People's Hospital was not surprised, and the nurse responsible for taking care of him took it in stride. If this guy were seriously injured, that would be strange. In the past, no matter how many times he was accidentally injured, minor injuries would heal on their own, and only more severe ones required a visit to the hospital for bandaging. This time, in order to give the public an explanation, they had to tightly wrap Shin Shen's hands in white cloth. In a few days, you can unwrap them at home. No, director, how can I do that? What, do you want a catheter too? Don't you have a girlfriend now? The old director impatiently sent Shin Shen out of the hospital, looking at Yen Bingbing who was accompanying him, and sighed. A good girl, when did her eyes go blind? Two days later, the investigation results of the Viking fire came out. Chief Engineer Rin Ping stole fuel from the oil tank causing the explosion of the oil tanker and was arrested according to the law. Captain Wang Zhao and First Officer Li Qingyong, who participated in the rescue, were exempt from prosecution by the inspection authorities and received commendations from the leaders of Zhengzhou City. Especially Li Qing, for protecting the injured Special Forces member, he stopped Smith at all costs and was highly praised. The two were recruited to the East Seaport and secured a stable job. As for the Bald Eagle team, two members died on the spot, and the remaining three were all charged with endangering public safety and would not be released for several years. The Special Fire Brigade of the East Seaport was all awarded first-class merit, with Han Qi, Squad Leader Liu Yuan, and Deputy Squad Leader Li Jiming receiving individual second-class merit. The biggest hero of this incident, Shen Shen, declined all media interviews due to his serious injuries and only accepted the one million reward given by the Bureau. Shin Shen knew he had the tribulation system, so he would have to show off everywhere in the future, but maintaining a low profile was the way to go. In the courtyard, Shin Shen squinted, leaning back in the recliner, enjoying the post-lunch sunlight. Shin Shen, can you stop being lazy and go back to the room to start the live broadcast? Yen Bingbing, wearing an apron, impatiently urged him to start working. Due to his arm injury, Yen Bingbing had been taking care of him for a few days, feeling a bit like she was at his beck and call. The relationship between the two was now a bit unclear. Shin Shen thought Bing Bing was already his girlfriend, but after one dinner, when he secretly hugged her waist, he realized he was completely wrong. Shin Shen discovered that Bing Bing not only had hosting talent, but also had a combat skill. One move almost twisted his right wrist, causing Shin Shen to never dare to make inappropriate advances towards Yen Bing Bing. 
In addition to taking care of him, Yen Bingbing also became a qualified self-media person, diligently managing the account Shen Lao Ji's happy life. After the biking incident, Shin Chen gained millions of followers overnight, becoming a popular figure in the internet celebrity world. Yen Bingbing required him to spend two hours live streaming every day to maintain his popularity. Shin Chen, however, hated live streaming the most. Bing Bing, why do we have to do live streaming? As soon as these people enter the live room, they ask me if I died today. There's no real conversation. Even if there's no real conversation, we still have to chat. This is how we make a living together. Do you really think your 1 million prize money is enough to spend? But those people just want to see me in trouble, they have ill intentions. Shin Shen looked helpless, wondering why people's hearts were so twisted. Yen Bing Bing impatiently took off her apron. I don't think you're in trouble. You've been eating and sleeping well these days, your face is starting to wrinkle. Get up and walk around quickly, don't upset your stomach. She was sharp-tongued but kind-hearted, urging Shen Shen to do the live stream but not forcing him if he didn't want to. Just let things happen naturally. Shin Shen reluctantly stood up and took a few unsteady steps. The door of the northern room of the quadrangle courtyard opened. The landlord Li Fu Gue came out with a suitcase. Oh, Shin Shen, are you entering old age ahead of time? Shin Shen looked at Li Fu Gue's outfit and curiously asked, Uncle Li, where are you going dressed like this? Why are you wearing a fur coat in the middle of summer? Did you hit your head on the toilet seat? Li Fu Gue was annoyed, get lost, you little brat. My son asked me to go to the northeast to see my grandson. I heard it's really cold in the northeast, it's already 10 degrees below zero, so I'm prepared. Yen Bing Bing came out and laughed at Li Fu Gue's attire. Uncle Li, I'm from the northeast, it's not that cold now. Hurry up and take it off, don't get sick from overheating. Li Fu Gue pursed his lips, you're still kind at heart, Bing Bing. How did you end up with this guy Shin Shen? Bing Bing, you don't need to worry about me, I have one thing to ask you. With that, Li Fu Gue became serious. This quadrangle courtyard, the three of us live here, I won't be coming back this year. Help me rent out the two empty houses, don't rent out the one I live in, take care of it for me, I'll be back in the spring. As for your rent, split it in half, just take care of the dog for me. He called out a dog from inside the house. The dog was a Siberian husky, named Zia, a good dog that Li Fu Gue had raised for four or five years. Basically, it was like raising a child, with more monthly expenses than Shen Chen. Ah, this. Yen Bing Bing was pleasantly surprised. She had only moved in a few days ago, how could she take on such a big responsibility so soon? I trust you, Bing Bing, you're a public figure after all. Unlike this kid, I bet as soon as I leave, he'll sell my quadrangle courtyard. Li Fu Gue had no choice. After his wife passed away, he became a lonely old man. His son had settled in the northeast and didn't come back to inherit the family property. After retiring from the position of director of the Zhangzhou Zoo, he had lived alone for many years until Shin Shen appeared, adding some color to his life. Despite their bickering, there was a sense of father and son relationship between them. Whenever he was injured or sick, Li Fu Gue would always be there to take care of him. It wasn't until Yen Bing Bing appeared by Shen Shen's side that he felt a bit relieved. His son in the northeast had been asking him to come and take care of his grandson, and he finally agreed. Shen Shen, I'm leaving. I won't be back until next spring, so don't do anything stupid during this time. Not everyone needs you to risk your life to save them. Li Fu Gue looked deeply at Shen Shen, and then reminded him again. Shen Shen waved his hand impatiently, let's go, Uncle Li. Tonight, I'll stew the leftover dog for you to enjoy live. Remember to feed the dog three meals of dog food and milk and give it a full body spa before bedtime. If it loses weight, I will hold you accountable. Li Fukui scolded with a smile, bid farewell to Yen Bingbing, and finally left. Shin Shen, does Uncle Li really trust us to take care of the courtyard? Yen Bingbing asked curiously after Li Fukui left. With the current urban development, Li Fukui's courtyard is almost considered a historical relic. Although not as expensive as those in Kyoto, it is worth tens of millions without a doubt. The old man actually left it to Shin Shen and ran off to the northeast. Shin Shen sneered, Humph, this old man is cunning. Can't you see all the cameras around? He's probably watching our private lives when he has nothing else to do. I'll find a slingshot later and smash them all. You. Yen Bingbing couldn't be bothered to deal with him, so she gave him a glare and went back inside to work on a video introducing Shin Shen's recent situation. In the courtyard, only Shin Shen and the leftover dog remained. Shin Shen looked around, saw no one, and suddenly kicked the dog. Dog, perform the old man pushing the cart for me. The dog was dozing under the grape arbor and was inexplicably kicked. Woof woof woof. Old man, if you don't bite me, you won't be able to survive. Looks like you won't make it through today. The dog flapped and rushed over. 
Shin Chun chuckled, Dog, try biting me. If you bite me, I'll stew you and send your three inch dog whip to Li Fugue tonight. The dog trembled in fear. Shin Chen could actually understand the dog's language? This was too bizarre. In the courtyard, Shin Chen chatted to himself, occasionally interspersed with the dog's barking. Yen Bingbing peeked curiously and found Shin Chen chatting with the dog. After muttering something about being bored, she busied herself with her own tasks. Shin Chen, can you understand what I'm saying? Of course, what about it? Your grandpa here is awesome. Shin Chen proudly smiled, realizing that the reward the system gave him this time was extraordinary. After surviving the fire disaster, the system once again rated him as S-level for his courageous act of saving people. The S-level reward for the third disaster was, Misfortune Sensing. Misfortune Sensing, the host will receive a system prompt one second before misfortune strikes, helping the host avoid it, upgradable effectiveness, in simple terms, when Shin Chen was about to have bad luck, the system would give him a warning one second in advance. For example, when Shin Chen went to the bathroom in the morning and was about to get up after finishing, the system kindly reminded him that he forgot to bring toilet paper. Or when he went to the supermarket and bought a bunch of things, just as he was about to pay, the system reminded him that his wallet had fallen out when he left the house. Although it wasn't very useful, it was better than nothing, and it could be upgraded. As for the S-level lottery prize, what he drew was amazing. It actually gave him the function of language translation. Language translation, any language spoken by a living being can be automatically translated into Chinese in the brain. In other words, Shin Shin could understand any language spoken by people from any country. What was even more amazing was that he could understand the meaning of sounds made by animals such as dogs, cats, or any other living being. For example, last night when the stray cat outside was in heat, Shin Shin experienced the temptation of the cat all night. At this moment, seeing no one around, Shin Shin couldn't help but tease the dog again. The dog looked dumbfounded, hesitated for a moment, and then extended its paw, shaking it in front of Shin Shen. How many is this? Shin Shen looked disdainful. Four. Dog, is this the extent of your intelligence? Can you solve a math problem higher than four for me? The dog's face showed extreme shock. It took a few steps back in a row, and for the first time, it found that humans could actually understand the language of animals. I say, Ara, can you stop looking at me with such a proud look? Since Li Fugue left, Let's talk about seniority. You call me grandpa, and I'll call you good grandson, how about that? Go Shang barked angrily. Li Fugue treated it like a precious son, and this guy actually wanted to be Li Fugue's father. Don't be so presumptuous. I'm telling you, I haven't been vaccinated, so if I bite you, you'll get rabies all over. Shen Long looked disdainful. You can bite me, but from now on, I'll stop all the dog food and milk. You're responsible for eating the leftovers of me and Yen Bingbing. Do you want a spa at night? Don't make me regret treating you well. If you're hungry, go to the toilet and scavenge for yourself. Don't expect me to cook for you. Go Shang was about to go crazy, never expecting to be treated like this right after Li Fugue left. It lunged at Shen Long. Shen Long didn't indulge it, kicking it to the base of the wall with one foot, then picking up a small stool. Go Shang barked a few times but didn't dare to lunge again. Shen Long, what are you doing? I warn you, don't bully Go Shang. Yen Bingbing, hearing the commotion in the yard, had to come out again. He he, Bingbing, it's okay. I'm just educating it. From now on, it'll be just the two of us and the dog at home. It has to submit. Go Shang, bow to me. Shen Long shouted at Go Shang. Can't you be serious? Yen Bingbing was completely speechless, about to say something when suddenly her eyes widened. She actually saw that Li Shu's era knelt down in front of Yen Bingbing. Oh my god. Yen Bingbing's mouth could fit a whole egg. You actually knelt down to me? Shen Long smirked, waved his hand for it to perform the old dog pushing the cart again. Go Shang, looking resentful, got up and pushed the tricycle a few steps forward in the yard. Yen Bingbing was completely shocked. It, it has been tamed by you? The unruly era actually obeyed Shen Long. That's right. Shen Long shamelessly said, through my education and influence, it has given up its bad habits and will be a good dog who likes to eat leftovers and pick up trash in the future. Go Shang cooperated by wagging its tail, indicating that it would behave as a dog from now on. Yen Bingbing returned to the house in a daze, sighing that the world was too crazy. Had she been out of touch with new things for too long? Dogs had actually learned to push carts? The yard was left with only Shen Long and Go Shang. Shen Long, I was giving you face just now, I warn you to treat me better, don't make me call my big brother to come and deal with you. Go Shang, unwilling to be enslaved from now on, growled in anger. Call your big brother? Go ahead. I, Shen Long, have always been free-spirited and fearless, the least afraid of threats. If you can get the bulldog from next door or the chihuahua from the alley, 
I'll respect you as a tough dog. Do Shang was furious. Woof woof, just you wait for me. Tonight, I'll show you what human fear is. Go Shang growled and then ran out of the house. Shen Long rubbed his nose, wondering if he had pushed this silly era too far. But there was no other way. Era Go Shang cost 3,000 yuan a month in Li Fugui's hands. When Li Fugui left, he didn't mention anything about Era's living expenses, so Shen Long had to resort to this plan. This guy, won't he call a Tibetan Mastiff over? Shen Long shook his head and went back inside. Go Shang didn't come back until after dinner. Yen Bingbing worriedly asked, Shen Long, is Era okay? It wouldn't run away and not come back, would it? Has this ever happened before? Shin Chen was also uncertain. It should be fine, this silly dog is only wanted in the courtyard, no one else wants it. So, let me finish today's live broadcast task first, and then I'll go out to look for it. Yen Bingbing had no choice but to agree. Tonight, Shin Chen was facing a live broadcast that he couldn't avoid. Fans and netizens demanded that Shin Chen must talk about the Viking incident. If he didn't, everyone would unfollow and blacklist him, so Shin Chen had no choice but to agree. At 8 o'clock in the evening, Yen Bingbing went to wash dishes and clean the house, while Shin Chen sat in front of his phone as scheduled. Oh, am I seeing this right? Shin Lao Ji is actually starting a live broadcast? No. Front row seats, the top one can get a lollipop with just one swipe. Shin Lao Ji, where are you broadcasting from? Why do I see a starry sky? Shin Chen, feeling speechless, replied irritably, there's a big hole in my ceiling at home. Just fixed it the day before yesterday and now it got hit by a crane. I'll find a craftsman to fix it tomorrow. Netizens. Ha ha, Shin Lao Ji, what unlucky thing happened today that you want to share? Don't mention those happy things, can't we share some of Shin Lao Ji's joy? Bro, have you had anything that made you happy recently? Shin Chen chuckled. You guys won't believe it, but I recently learned a skill to communicate with animals. I can chat with almost any animal I encounter. For example, this afternoon, I talked to the landlord's dog. Shin Chen recounted the afternoon's events to the netizens, somewhat showing off. Upon hearing this, the netizens didn't believe it. You say you can communicate with dogs? Shin Lao Ji, you have a hard time communicating with people who wouldn't avoid you from a distance. Diagnosis complete, Shin Lao Ji has some mental issues. I am Director Lu from the mental hospital, Shin Chen. You might consider coming to our hospital for a comprehensive checkup. Hey, don't say that. It reminds me of a news I saw earlier. I wonder if it's related to Shin Lao Ji. What news? The news said that at the closing time of the Zhengzhou City Zoo tonight, something strange happened suddenly. All the animals in the zoo became restless, barking and howling. Did Shin Lao Ji's husky go there to ask for their help? Upstairs, your imagination is too rich. Shin Chen was shocked when he saw this. Oh, it could be true. My landlord Li Fugue used to be the retired director of the Zhengzhou Zoo. I heard that in the first few years, the dog was more awesome in the zoo than the director. At its most arrogant, even the lions had to bow down to it. The netizens burst into laughter, about to say something when they all froze. The live broadcast room fell silent, with not a single subtitle being typed. Shin Shen puzzledly tapped the screen of his phone, checking if the connection was lost again. Shen. Shin Lao Ji, turn around quickly. Look behind you. Run. Shin Lao Ji, it's dangerous. Oh my god, what's going on, Shin Chen, look behind you. The netizens were extremely shocked, which startled Shin Chen. System prompt. Disaster sensing, there is a northeast tiger behind the host, please be careful. Oh my god. Shin Chen didn't have time to turn around and instead performed a tactical backflip. Bang. A furry paw smashed Shin Chen's chair. Roar. The entire courtyard echoed with the roar of the tiger. Shin Chen was almost scared to death. His left atrium was about to jump out, and the right atrium and ventricles had basically stopped beating. It was too damn scary. How could a northeast tiger suddenly appear in his room? If it weren't for the system's disaster sensing, Shin Chen would have been turned into minced meat with one swipe of its paw. Judging by where the tiger landed, it must have come in through the damn hole in the ceiling. In the live broadcast room, the netizens also exclaimed, Oh my god, how did a tiger suddenly appear? And it's a northeast tiger. Look at its forehead with several black stripes, forming a character in the middle. Its front paws are strong and powerful, with a round head, short ears, and sparse long fur. It is the largest existing carnivorous feline, with an average weight of 500 pounds for adult male northeast tigers, a body length of about 2. 3 meters, truly deserving the title of the king of the forest. No, the one above, how did you manage to type so many words in such a short time? Why are you all arguing about this? Brother Shin is in danger. Isn't Brother Shin always in danger? Shin Chen is not in the mood to joke with them, there is an adult northeast tiger in his bedroom, a life-threatening situation. 
Shinshin slowly backs away two steps, staring at the northeast tiger, afraid it might pounce again. The northeast tiger, seeing its attack fail, arches its body, also staring intently at the humans in front of it. Guys, quickly search on Baidu. What to do when encountering a tiger? Shinshin slowly circles around the room, anxiously shouting. Netizens immediately unleash their powerful search function. Brother Shin, I searched, all about what to do when encountering a tiger in the wild, no one mentioned what to do when encountering one in a house. Some scientists say, if you encounter a fierce tiger, immediately strike a pose you think is the most handsome, so you can die a bit more dignified. Oops, sorry, I found a joke. Stop messing around. Brother Shin, I suggest you kneel down and call for your father immediately, after all, a tiger doesn't eat its own cubs. Stop arguing, listen to me. If you're a man, slide under the tiger, tear open its belly with both hands, pull out its intestines, then tie a bowl and knot around its neck to strangle it. Oh, Brother Shin, do you know what sliding means? Even if Brother Shin doesn't die, you guys will drive him crazy. Let me say something serious, tigers are felines, and felines are most afraid of being scratched on the back of their necks. As long as Brother Shin grabs the soft flesh on the back of the tiger's neck and lifts it up, the tiger will behave obediently. Have you ever grabbed a cat? Just grab it like that. You upstairs, get lost. It's not the time for jokes. If you ask me, talk to the tiger. Tell it that I just drank 18 bowls of wine and I'm going home to visit my brother, who has a beautiful sister-in-law who seems interested in me. By saying that, the tiger might remember something. Shinshen glanced at the comments from netizens and completely collapsed. This group of netizens really wants him dead. Just when he was in a hurry, he heard Yen Bingbing's voice from outside the door. Shinshen, why is the door locked? Why can't I get in? Did Doggy come back? Did you go out to find him? Shinshen suddenly understood everything. It turns out Doggy really called its big brother. Shinshan regretted deeply. If he had known that Doggy's big brother was a northeast tiger, he wouldn't have dared to be so arrogant towards Doggy. He quickly said, Bing Bing, I'm live streaming, don't come in. Go back to your room, let Doggy in. Shinshan didn't dare to let Yin Bing Bing in again, there was no use for her to come in except to feed the northeast tiger. Oh, I'm not coming in? Didn't Netizen say they wanted to see me interact with you? I've changed my clothes, forget it, do as you wish, rest early. Yen Bingbing, seeing no need for herself, turned and left. By the way, don't play mysterious sounds, I just heard the tiger roar, don't scare the netizens. She muttered, her voice fading away. Shinshen finally breathed a sigh of relief, slowly moved to the door, quietly opened a crack, and saw Doggy looking smugly at him. Get your ass in here. Doggy swaggered in like it owned the place. Speak. Did you bring the northeast tiger to harm me? Doggy glared at Shin Shen, walked to the side of the northeast tiger, and barked. Netizens were shocked once again. What's going on? Was it really Doggy who brought the big brother here? Oh my, this is too surreal. Quick, call the police, Era actually brought a northeast tiger to eat Shang Lao Gu. Is this what they call a dog pretending to be a tiger? The translation of Era's barking into Shin Shen's mind goes like this. Shin Shen, are you convinced yet? Let me introduce you, this is my big brother, Pang Hu, the absolute king of the zoo, a nationally protected animal. Try touching it. If it bites you, it's considered feeding. If you kill it, it's a crime. Shin Shen was so angry, isn't this bullying? Go Shang, let Pang Hu brother sit down first, let's have a good chat. After all, we live under the same roof, if I'm gone, who will play with you? Shin Shen laughed, trying to find a peaceful solution. When netizens heard that Shin Shen was actually trying to reason with Era, they burst into laughter. Even though they knew the situation was dangerous, they couldn't control themselves. Just like knowing that Shang Lao Go was in trouble again, but everyone was especially happy. Era barked twice, chat? Sure, my big brother is hungry. Get it some food first. Shin Shen's face lit up. Pang Hu brother, what do you want to eat? Anything, I'll make it all for you. If that's not enough, I'll take you to a buffet. We can definitely teach the boss a lesson. The northeast tiger named Pang Hu looked at Era, then at Shin Shen and finally let go of its hostility. Roar! 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 It growled softly at Shin Shen. What the netizens heard as the tiger growling softly, Shin Shen interpreted as the tiger ordering food. Stop talking, 10 pounds of soy braised beef, a pot of pork stew with vermicelli, and make a chicken stew with mushrooms, 10 pieces of pancake, that's it for now, if it's not enough, let me know. Oh, and give me some pickled vegetables. While growling softly, its stomach made a loud rumbling sound, Clearly it was really hungry. Shin Shen's face turned green. Indeed, it was northeastern cuisine that was ordered. But it was late at night. Where could I get all these things for Pang Hu? He carefully negotiated. Brother Hu, let me check the kitchen. Whatever's there, I'll bring it all out for you. 
I apologize for the poor hospitality at this late hour, please bear with me a bit. Pang Hu grunted unhappily a couple of times, but didn't insist. When Shen Shen saw no reaction from it, he slowly opened the door and backed out. Phew! Bing Bing, call the police quickly! He shouted, about to run to Yen Bing Bing's room and pull her away. But as soon as he shouted, a low, hoarse growl came from inside the room. If you dare to run, I dare to eat. See if you can run faster, or if I can digest faster. Shen Shen's heart skipped a beat, he turned around and said with a smile, Brother Hu, I was just kidding. Pang Hu opened its mouth wide, showing a huge appetite. But I'm not kidding. Shen Shen dashed into the kitchen. At the same time, the system prompt finally appeared in his mind. Ding, host prompt, the fourth calamity has arrived, please stay calm and try to survive. This calamity, courtyard horror night animal attack. Preparation time for calamity, 0 hours 0 minutes, due to network delay, calamity duration, 4 hours, friendly reminder, due to the host provoking the domesticated era, the fourth calamity has arrived early. Please stay calm, do not act impulsively, life is precious, don't end up as a meal. Damn you, system, you've set me up. Shen Shen looked at the food in the kitchen, feeling helpless. The kitchen of the courtyard was located in the southeast corner, right next to the yard's door. As long as Shen Shen opened the door, he could escape. But the system prompt made him abandon this idea. Firstly, the name of the fourth calamity was, Courtyard Horror Night Animal Attack. This already restricted his place to face the calamity, how could he face it if he left the courtyard? Secondly, he wasn't sure he could escape with Yen Bingbing from the tiger's mouth. Shin Chen once watched a video that said an adult northeast tiger's paw strength can reach one. Five to two tons, and one slap can shatter a bull's lumbar vertebra. If one is not careful and lets the fat tiger catch up, they will become a meal. But looking at the ingredients in the kitchen, he was at a loss. Yen Bingbing, in order to lose weight, bought a large amount of seasonal vegetables. There were rapeseed, bitter chrysanthemum, spinach, crown daisy, as well as plenty of scallions and a large block of tofu. Shin Shin searched the kitchen and couldn't even find a piece of raw meat, let alone the small chicken stewed with mushrooms and 10 pounds of soy sauce beef that the fat tiger requested. Besides making a spicy hot pot for Brother Tiger, he really had no other food to prepare. Shin Shin could imagine Brother Tiger eating the hot pot and making a face that would make him lose his appetite. With a bitter face, he could only turn to Yen Bingbing for help. After all, having a northeast tiger come into the house and keeping Yen Bingbing in the dark was too dangerous. Bingbing, pack up and stay at the hotel for the night. Shin Shin opened Yen Bingbing's bedroom door and whispered, Nonsense. Yen Bingbing had just taken off her clothes and was about to put on her pajamas when Shin Shin opened the door. Her good figure was fully exposed to Shin Shen, making her so angry that she kicked the door. Shin Shen, without time to savor the view, urgently shouted through the door, Bingbing, I'm not joking. A northeast tiger came into our house, hurry and leave, go find the police station or the special forces team. I'll stay here and hold it off. What? Yen Bingbing exclaimed, grabbing a pair of scissors and rushing out. Shin Shen quickly took the scissors from her hand, put it away quickly, this thing is like a toothpick to it. He grabbed Yen Bingbing's hand. The tiger is in my room, it came in through a hole in the roof. Listen to me and run, go find the police station or the special forces team. I'll stay here and hold it off. Yen Bingbing was touched. Shen Shen, let's run together, why are you staying at home? I can't run. Brother Tiger said it's hungry and wants me to make something to eat, or else it will eat me. Shen Shen gestured towards the room, looking devastated. Yen Bingbing looked at him as if he were a severely mentally ill patient, and even patted his head. You're not running a fever, what's wrong with you? Let me take a look. If you're not trying to trick me with this excuse to watch a live broadcast, you're in big trouble. She snorted, shook off Shen Shen's hand, and walked to the opposite side. Bing Bing. Shen Shen hurried to catch up, afraid that Yen Bing Bing would scream in shock after seeing the situation inside. But it was too late. Yen Bing Bing opened a crack in the door, took a look inside, and quietly closed it again. She blinked and said nothing. Shen Shen breathed a sigh of relief. See, I didn't lie to you, did I? Unexpectedly, Yen Bing Bing suddenly grabbed Shen Shen's hand and put it in her mouth. MMM. She bit Shen Shen's hand in fear, trying not to scream. Shen Shen's face contorted in pain but he had to endure it. After a while, Yen Bingbing finally let out the fear in her heart. Shen Shen, let's run, guess what I saw. Yen Bingbing's eyes widened, Gosher and the tiger are live streaming. They're showing their teeth at your phone, it scared me. Not only was she scared, but the viewers in the live stream room were also scared. The first internet famous northeast tiger was born. Oh my god, tiger. Tiger brother, can you stop live streaming? It's scary to watch. Gosher, run quickly, what if the northeast tiger bites you to death later? Stop messing around, haven't you figured it out yet? 
It's this husky that attracted the Northeast tiger, it's here to teach Shun Lao a lesson. Oh my god, Gosher has become clever. At the same time, an urgent news report was finally released. Urgent reminder, around 7 p.m. In the evening, there was a major security breach at the Zhangzhou City Zoo, with dozens of animals breaking through the cages and escaping from the zoo. The Central Prefecture Police Station and the Special Fire Brigade have started a citywide manhunt. Please do not go out, stay at home and wait for further instructions. The wild animals that escape this time are fierce. When encountering them, please do not provoke them, and immediately call the police. The news repeated three times, showing the urgency of the situation. The truth of the matter finally came to light. The animals from the zoo actually all escaped. It's unclear whether it was the fault of the Siberian husky or if there was a real flaw in the zoo, but in any case, all the animals broke out. Shin Chen's Siberian tiger from the family was one of them, and after escaping, it came to cause trouble with Shin Chen following the husky. Yen Bingbing looked at the news on her phone, feeling anxious. What should we do, Shin Chen? Let's run away quickly. It's too dangerous to stay here. Shin Chen rubbed his face and sighed. We can't run away now, and you shouldn't leave either. It's probably full of wild beasts outside now. I can't rest assured if you go out on your own. How about this, you go make some food for brother tiger first, and I'll go stabilize them. Shin Chen made a plan, thinking that he had the ability to communicate with animals, comforting a crazily fleeing Siberian tiger would be a piece of cake. He asked Yen Bingbing to cook for brother tiger, then he walked into the house. The tiger and the dog turned their heads. Woof, 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 roar, roar, roar. The two of them simultaneously roared at Shin Chen. Shin Chen, did you call the police? Oh, come on. The husky's counter-surveillance awareness was too strong. Shin Chen deliberately put on a serious face, husky, it's none of your business. Don't try to intimidate me with this dog pretending to be a tiger. He glared at the husky, then smiled and looked at the chubby tiger. Brother tiger, why would you say that? My phone has been in the house all along, when did I call the police? The chubby tiger turned its head and pointed with its paw at Shin Chen's phone on the table. You're not being honest, how come the cops called you if you didn't call them, I swear. The chubby tiger's mouth was full of foul language, coupled with the character Fork King on its forehead, it looked like a big brother who had been in the business for years. Shin Chen turned to look, feeling a chill. When did Huang Xing Jun from the emergency management bureau actually call him, and the husky actually answered the call? Shin Chen, Shin Chen, can you hear me? Are you there? Shin Chen instinctively replied, Director Huang, I'm here, what's wrong? The voice on the phone breathed a sigh of relief, I thought the tiger had eaten you. We are currently chasing the escaped wild animals throughout the city, and netizens reported that a Siberian tiger had actually entered your home. Shin Chen wanted to confess, but looking at the sinister eyes of the chubby tiger, he had to lie. It's nothing, Director Huang. I'm fine, just playing with netizens on a live stream. Don't fool me, I saw it in the live stream. A Siberian tiger and a husky, what's going on? It turned out that Huang Xingjun had already seen the situation in the live stream. Shin Chen could only shrug at the chubby tiger. This has nothing to do with me, it's your own exposure. Stop talking nonsense, tell him not to act rashly, or I'll tear up the ticket right away. The chubby tiger roared a few times, making Shin Chen behave. Shin Chen cursed in his mind when did he become a hostage, waiting to be eaten at any moment. Director Huang, don't worry about it, this is a tiger model, not a real tiger. Yen Bingbing is inside, this is called role-playing. I bought it online to scare netizens. Director Huang finally breathed a sigh of relief. Alright, you young people are quite good at playing, this is considered uniform role-playing, pay attention to the boundaries. If you have any issues, call me immediately. We will all be mobilized tonight and will be busy all night. Shin Chen asked, is it because of the Central Prefecture Zoo incident? Huang Shangjun sighed. Yes, the Zhangzhou Wildlife Park has dozens of fierce beasts running loose, including tigers, lions, black panthers, wolves, and even a few black blind bears. There are also countless gentle animals. With your bad luck, you definitely shouldn't go out. You'll probably run into a tiger as soon as you step outside. Shin Chen looked at the fat tiger beside him, feeling utterly hopeless. I haven't even left the house yet, and I'm already blocked by a tiger. The phone call ended, and the live broadcast resumed. Before the netizens could speak, they heard a knocking on the door. Ah, uh, Shin Chen, I made some food for Brother Tiger. Can I bring it in? Yen Bingbing asked cautiously, her voice trembling. Why are you coming in? Go back to your room and stay there, don't come out. Shin Chen opened the door and saw what Yen Bingbing was holding, dumbfounded. Bingbing, is this the food you made for Brother Tiger? Yen Bingbing nodded blankly. Yes. Didn't you say chicken stew with mushrooms? And braised beef. 
Shin Shen looked at the two large pots of Kong Shui Fu instant noodles in front of him and fell into despair. If it weren't for Yen Bing Bing looking flustered, Shin Shen would have wanted to give her a slap on the neck. He couldn't understand why she had prepared two large pots of instant noodles for the fat tiger. Yes, it was Kong Shui Fu brand braised beef noodles and chicken stew with mushrooms noodles. It seemed like she had prepared a whole box of them. Bing Bing, are you sure this stuff can feed a tiger? Shin Shen scratched his nose, feeling like escaping this situation. It should. I'm not sure, but my family's cats used to like eating instant noodles. Is it the same? You raised cats, these are felines. Forget it, I'll give it a try. Shin Shen reluctantly took the pot of instant noodles and asked Yen Bingbing to go back to her room, feeling apprehensive as he brought it into the room. Ah, uh, brother tiger, I made some traditional Chinese cuisine, I hope it suits your taste, please enjoy. Brother tiger was obviously starving, and when he saw Shin Shen bringing in the food, he eagerly approached. What is this? It sniffed the pot with a strong aroma of braised beef hitting its nose. Then it sniffed the second pot, with a strong scent of chicken stew with mushrooms entering its nostrils. Authentic. Brother Tiger sincerely commented, it seems that this guy is also from the northeast, this flavor is quite authentic, but why don't I see any beef or chicken? Shin Shen was relieved to see that this uncultured tiger didn't recognize what it was. Brother Tiger, you don't understand. This is an improved version of traditional northeastern dishes, made by simmering 10 pounds of braised beef into a soup, then adding high-quality angry soil seasoning. The method for chicken stew with mushrooms is the same, it's all in the flavor. Would you like to try it? Brother Tiger was stunned by Shin Chen's long explanation, and despite being at a Chinese proficiency level of 3, it thought the food in the pot looked impressive. After all, it had never seen instant noodles in its life. Dog leftover, smelling the aroma, ran over and was shocked when it saw what was in the pot. Shin Chen, you actually let Brother Tiger eat this kind of stuff? Shin Chen was almost scared to death, if Dog leftover revealed the truth, it would be all over. But unexpectedly, the situation took a sudden turn. Dog leftover, with drool left behind, looked at Brother Tiger with admiration. Brother Tiger, this is a type of food that the old park director never let me eat. I've been craving it for a long time, and I didn't expect Shin Chen to make it today. We're really lucky. Really? The old park director treats you like his own son, yet he's reluctant to let you eat this? Brother Tiger, hearing Dog Leftover's praise, became more interested in the instant noodles in front of it. Dog Leftover was too busy eating to speak and had already buried its head in the pot. Save some for me. Brother Tiger, not wanting to be outdone, quickly devoured half a pot of instant noodles. In the live stream chat, the netizens were nearly dying of laughter. Shin Lao Gu, you really have talent, damn it, you have talent to open the door, talent has arrived. No, it's clearly Emperor Yuan playing with words, who by lie, who lie lie. I just want to say one thing, this is like a donkey riding on a mule's back, something's wrong. Tigers are even starting to eat instant noodles. No one expected that a dog and a tiger would be so happy eating. In less than two minutes, two large bowls of instant noodles were all gone. Shin Chen wiped his cold sweat, rubbed his hands cautiously, and asked, Tiger brother, is the food okay? Fat Tiger smacked his lips, feeling that something was off, but couldn't quite put his finger on it. The taste is good, but it's not filling enough. It ate a whole big bowl and still felt empty. Shin Chen thought to himself, be content, I've let you eat a month's worth of my breakfast in one go. Tiger brother, this stuff has a delayed effect. If you don't feel full now, your stomach will swell later and it might swell a tiger to death. Isn't that obvious? Fat tiger glared at him, licked the bottom of the bowl, and didn't dare ask for another one. Dog Shang ate less than fat tiger and was already full, lying on the ground resting. Shin Shen saw this and planned to chat with Dog Shang, asking why it brought fat tiger over. If it was meant to teach him a lesson, it didn't have to be this extreme. After all, the fourth ordeal was a night of terror in the courtyard, the animals attack. It wasn't a terrifying night, but the thunder was loud enough. Fat Tiger would growl from time to time, making the small room no different from a thunderstorm. Tiger brother, after eating, how about some tea? Shin Shen was trying to be polite, not sure if there was such a custom in the animal world. Not interested, get up, let me go outside in the yard. Fat Tiger moved its massive body, pushed Shin Shen aside, and stood in the yard. Shin Shen was startled, as Yin Bingbing was in the opposite room, not knowing what Fat Tiger was up to. Roar! 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 The next moment, Fat Tiger stood in the yard and howled to the sky. The loud noise made Shin Shen cover his ears. Yin Bingbing was trembling in the room. What the hell is this? Shin Shen had enough, grabbing Dog Shang's ear. Dog Shang, almost asleep, was startled by Fat Tiger's roar. What's the rush? Can't you tell? Tiger brother is calling the brothers to come over and share his location. What? 
Shin Chen was shocked. Was Tiger Brother planning to call the whole family over to eat instant noodles? You're overreacting. There's only one tiger in the zoo now, that's my big brother. Tiger Brother is calling other animals over, probably for a meeting. Shin Chen was puzzled. A meeting? What kind of meeting? Steamed or braised? Dog Shang raised his eyelids and looked at him. Forget it, with your small size, you're not even enough for Tiger Brother to pick his teeth with, and you're still thinking about how to eat you? Tiger Brother is the king of beasts, this gathering of animals is a big operation. Do you really think I would release the entire zoo to come after you? Shin Shen still didn't understand what they were up to, but before he could ask Dog Shang, Dog Shang ignored him and started sleeping. Shin Shen had to nervously return to his room, planning to tell his online friends to call the police for help. If another fierce beast came, and things turned ugly, he wouldn't have a chance. Just as he was about to speak at the table, he heard Yen Bing Bing scream from the next room. Shin Chen rushed out again. Bing Bing, what's wrong? Yen Bing Bing opened the door and rushed out. Shin Chen, there. There's a monkey in my room. Shin Chen breathed a sigh of relief at the news. You scared me, a monkey, not a fierce beast. It probably came in response to Tiger Brother's call. Ah, you. You better go and chase it away quickly. Yen Bingbing's face turned crimson, looking genuinely angry. Let me see, how did the monkey offend you? Shin Chen nonchalantly opened Yen Bingbing's boudoir. The next moment, he roared and began looking for a handy tool. By the time he found a shovel, the monkey had already run out of Yen Bingbing's room. Don't run, I won't let you get away. Shin Chen frantically chased it around the courtyard. The monkey, terrified, cried out, Brother Tiger, bite him, hurry and bite him, this guy wants to kill me. It jumped around, goading fat tiger. You won't get away with it today, I'll teach you a lesson. Shin Chen angrily smacked the monkey's bottom with the shovel, making it squeal in pain. Serves you right. Big brother fat tiger spoke. It was now lying on the steps of the courtyard, holding its head high, exuding an air of dominance as it sternly said, even outside the zoo, you still haven't changed your ways. Take off that thing on you, or I'll slap you to death if I see it again. Perhaps it was because it had eaten Yen Bing Bing's food, fat tiger unexpectedly stood up for her. Shin Chen had a reason to want to hit it. This pervert had actually rummaged through Yen Bingbing's room and pulled out a bright red bra, then proudly flaunted it on himself. What's more, it fit him better than Yen Bingbing. No wonder Yen Bingbing was furious, and Shin Chen wanted to teach it a lesson. The image of the perverted monkey wearing a bra was deeply ingrained in Shin Chen's mind. Just the thought of possibly getting closer to Bingbing in the future brought back that image, it was truly a sin. Anyway, Bing Bing shouldn't even think about wearing red underwear in front of him in the future. The monkey sheepishly took off the bra and handed it to Shin Chen. Shin Chen examined it, finding no damage, before handing it back to Yen Bing Bing. Bing Bing, keep it safe. It might not be peaceful tonight, don't let thieves into our house. Seeing Shin Chen repeatedly examining her bra, Yen Bing Bing blushed with embarrassment. Give it to me quickly. They're all watching. She snatched it back, ran into the room, cut it into pieces with scissors, and threw it in the trash. After doing all this, Yen Bingbing's fluttering heart finally calmed down a bit. She walked out of the door and was surprised to see the monkey chatting with Shin Chen. One squeaking, the other speaking human language, it was obvious they were having a deep conversation. She became even more puzzled, could Shin Chen really communicate with animals? At this moment, Yen Bingbing had basically accepted the fact that Fat Tiger was lying in the courtyard. Seeing it meant no harm, she grew bolder. Tiger, it's cold outside, put on a sheet. Yen Bingbing imitated Shin Chen's way of addressing it, took out a pink bedsheet from the room, and draped it over Fat Tiger. Fat Tiger turned its head, glanced at her, and let out a low growl. You're Shin Chen's little bitch? Thanks. Yen Bingbing didn't understand, but Shin Chen heard Fat Tiger's words and almost burst out laughing. Bingbing, you're really something to make the mother fasterous cur angry really got him worked up. To think of putting a sheet on brother tiger. Ha ha. Blushing, Yen Bingbing defended herself quietly. Don't talk nonsense, I think it's quite humane. Maybe if we treat it well, it won't bite us later. Shin Shen laughed for a while, but seeing fat tiger's displeased expression, he stopped smiling. Great sage, are they hunting down all the animals that escaped from the zoo in the whole city? Fat tiger looked worried, asking the monkey named great sage. Yes, brother tiger. When I arrived, that stupid hippo was lost at the intersection getting caught by humans. And the tall giraffe just reached the overpass and got knocked out. Not to mention those ostriches, grizzly bears, kangaroos with a screw loose, they were caught before even leaving the zoo. The most ridiculous thing is the alpaca, this guy spits on people when he sees them, causing them to fall down on the spot. Dashang felt lucky to be able to come to the old park director's house. 
Pan Hu fell silent for a moment, not expecting the situation to be so bad. Never mind. Dash Ang, go outside and check the situation. Don't attract humans here. Wait a while longer, see how many brothers can come, notify me immediately if anything happens. Dash Ang nodded, grinned at Yin Bingbing, and leaped onto the roof, disappearing into the darkness. Shin Chen and Yin Bingbing watched their interaction, looking puzzled. Shin Chen, you can understand what they're saying, what are they trying to do? I can only understand roughly, they seem to be gathering all the animals to our house for a meeting? Meeting? To discuss how to eat the two of us? Yen Bingbing's face turned pale with fear. Her thoughts were in line with Shin Chen's just now, but now Shin Chen no longer thought the same way. No, Bingbing, don't worry. I see that Brother Tiger is well connected in the underworld, loyal. Shin Chen deliberately said for Pang Hu to hear. Pang Hu glanced at the two, looked up at the sky, showing a solemn expression. This is a tiger with a story. Yen Bingbing was stunned, even thinking about filming the animal gathering. Bingbing, should we still call the police? Shin Chen asked quietly, respecting Yen Bingbing's opinion. Let's not. If they have no malicious intent, why should we disrupt their affairs? Yen Bingbing shook her head, wanting Shin Chen to ask if they could livestream their meeting later, but then they heard movement in the house. Oh, a roar came from inside the house. Another animal is here. The two looked at each other and quickly ran into the house. Don't be afraid, it's my good buddy Reeves. Pang Hu turned his tiger head and said, reassuring them. Reeves? Another foreign animal? Shin Chen and Yen Bingbing opened the door and were shocked. A huge creature covered in black fur, weighing 400 pounds and standing two and a half meters tall, climbed down from a hole in the roof and stepped on Shin Chen's bed. King Kong! The two exclaimed. If Pang Hu hadn't warned them beforehand, it would have been impossible not to be afraid. A giant gorilla weighing 400 pounds and standing two and a half meters tall was standing in the room. Hello, I'm Reeves, nice to meet you. The gorilla raised a hand the size of a basketball to greet the two. What did it say? Yen Bingbing figured it out. All the animals that came to the courtyard tonight were extraordinary. It said his name is Reeves and he thinks you're good looking. Shin Shin didn't have time to explain to Yen Bingbing, he was busy with Reeves. Buddy, Pang Hu is outside, shall we go out for a while? Don't stay in my room. Shin Chan was almost in tears. Although the doghouse was messy, at least it could accommodate people. Now with Pang Hu and Reeves tossing around, not only were the chairs gone, but the bed had collapsed. If a few more animals came, the whole room would probably be destroyed. Unexpectedly, Reeves shook his head and sat on the collapsed bed. No rush, brother, do you have a cigarette? Ha! Huh? Shin Chen didn't expect this guy to ask him for a cigarette. If you have one, give me one, if not, a bottle of beer will do. Reeves looked embarrassed, speaking exceptionally politely, as if Shin Chen would be very sorry if he didn't provide it. Shin Chen looked around, then ran into Li Fugue's room. He didn't smoke, but he knew there were cigarettes and alcohol in Li Fugue's room. After Reeves lit a cigarette and opened a bottle of beer, sat down, his aura suddenly changed. A sense of oppression, decadence, and despair emerged. Shin Chen, let's go out, let him be alone for a while. Yen Bingbing is sensitive and emotional. Seeing the sad look on Reeves' face, she couldn't help but tear up. On the table, in the still open live broadcast room, netizens were also shocked. Hey guys, did you call the police? If you haven't, then don't bother. This gorilla brother has a story, clearly an old victim of online negativity. Wah! I'm a grown man, but looking at the gorilla's expression, I can't help but cry. The breakdown of an adult gorilla happens in an instant. Indeed, in the world of adult gorillas, there is no room for ease. Let's not call the police anymore, let it be alone. The crowd said sentimentally. Before they could finish, Reeves stubbed out a cigarette in his hand, lit another one, noticed the phone on the table, and walked over to it. The second animal internet celebrity was born. It picked up the phone, looked at its reflection in the camera, shook its head, seeming dissatisfied. Does Hereford think I'm not handsome enough? Why did she break up with me? Then, it turned to look at Shin Chen. Bro, can you play Nourishment of Love for me again? My ex-girlfriend loved that song the most. Shin Chen covered his face. Damn, is this big brother heartbroken. Shin Chen played Nourishment of Love for Reeves, and it finally calmed down. It listened while smoking and drinking in a suppressed manner. Shin Chen had Yen Bingbing accompany it, then slipped out himself. Tiger, what exactly are you planning to do? Can you give me a hint? Let me prepare mentally. Shin Chen approached Pang Hua wanting to find out what these animals were up to. Pang Hua glanced at him and said, asking so many questions won't benefit you, just know that we won't harm you, and that's enough. He fell silent, then suddenly stood up and leaped onto the roof, howling at the sky once again. Bro, calm down, if you keep shouting, you'll blow up the neighbors. 
Xin Shen advised in exasperation, but seeing Pang Hua not listening, he had no choice but to go back inside and kick dog leftover. Get up, what are these guys up to? If you don't tell me, you won't be staying in the courtyard anymore. I'll send you to the zoo and have visitors feed you bananas every day. Dog Leftover was sleeping soundly, but after being kicked awake by Shen Shen, he was quite unhappy. But as soon as he heard about going to the zoo to eat bananas, he trembled in fear. Follow me. Dog Leftover, feeling helpless, reluctantly led Shen Shen to leave Fugue's room. It jumped onto the bookshelf and grabbed an album with its mouth. Flipped through it. Dog Leftover squatted nearby, gesturing for Shen Shen to open the album. Isn't this Uncle Lee's treasure? He never lets me see it. Shen Shen glanced at it, then opened the long-cherished album of Li Fugue. The photo showed Li Fugue in his youth, holding a newborn tiger in his arms, standing excitedly at the entrance of Zhang Zhou Dog Leftover acted as a commentator, saying, that's Tiger Brother's dad. Uncle Fugue started taking care of him when he first went to the zoo. Shen Shen nodded and turned to the next photo. Li Fugue, much older, was bathing a young black gorilla. This is Reeves, Uncle Fugue's favorite guy. As Shin Chan flipped through the album, photos of Li Fugue at the zoo unfolded. He pulled crocodile teeth, assisted in monkey births, trained elephants for performances. The album documented Li Fugue's transformation from a young graduate to a white-haired old man. Until the last photo, where Li Fugue was crying while hugging two old tigers, with a large group of various animals behind them. The animals looked sad, tears in their eyes. This is a photo taken when Uncle Fugue retired. That day, all the animals in the zoo were released to bid farewell to Uncle Fugue. All the animals envied me, being able to go home with Uncle Fugue. Dogs fell into memories, and their tone became sentimental. So, did they all come out to see Uncle Fugue? Shinshin closed the album, feeling a bit sentimental as well. Although he didn't know much about Li Fugue's past, he knew he was the best zookeeper at Zhengzhou Zoo. He worked diligently until he became the director, dedicating his youth to the zoo for a lifetime. He left reluctantly only upon retirement. Despite this, he visited the zoo every week to see his old friends. No, they are coming out for revenge. Dog suddenly changed his tone, saying fiercely. Revenge? Shin Chen was surprised, not knowing what Dog meant. Dog nodded, about to reveal everything. Don't tell him. Fat Tiger suddenly walked in and roared. Shin Chen, come out. Help me entertain them. Fat Tiger shook his head, then walked out. Entertain? Shin Chen was puzzled, so he closed the album and went into the yard. At some point, the yard had become lively. Red crown cranes, zebras, African lions, leopards, and even a giant panda holding bamboo were rolling on the ground. The courtyard had turned into a zoo. Dozens of monkeys were jumping around, and dozens of unnamed birds were perched on the eaves chirping. A snow-white young lion was cuddling in Yin Bingbing's arms, making Yin Bingbing laugh heartily. Bingbing, what's going on? Shin Chen was shocked wondering why so many animals suddenly appeared. They were all summoned by Brother Tiger. I saw they couldn't get in, so I opened the gate. Yen Bingbing held the little white lion, laughing uncontrollably, showing no sign of fear. You are so hospitable. Shin Shen saw the gate was still open and hurried to close it, but he slipped and almost fell. Looking down, he saw a golden python he had stepped on, glaring at him unhappily. Sorry. Sorry. Shin Shen smiled apologetically, feeling flustered. What were these animals up to? He decided to inform Huang Xingjun, with more and more animals in the yard, trouble could arise, affecting the neighbors. Shin Shen, why are you making noise in the middle of the night? Neighbor Aunt Zhang and Uncle Lu were awakened by the commotion. Before Shin Shen could close the gate, the couple squeezed in. It's okay, I'm watching Animal World. Aunt Zhang, you and Uncle Lu should go back to sleep, don't come in. Shin Shen tried to stop them from entering the yard. Get up and let me see what you're up to. Li Fugue just left. Are you going to destroy the house? The couple pushed Shin Shen aside and went in. What are you doing? Uncle Lu shouted loudly. Boom! The lively animals suddenly fell silent. All the animals looked at the unexpected guests. Aunt Zhang and Uncle Lu were dumbfounded. Looking around, the yard was full of various animals. A huge black chimpanzee was smoking a cigarette, squinting at them while occasionally taking a sip of beer, looking very mischievous. In the center, a large tiger was lying on the steps, growling at the couple. A golden python slithered over, hissing and spitting. Oh my goodness. What a disaster. The couple exclaimed in shock and fainted. Oh. Shin Shen quickly ran over and helped them up. I told you not to look, but you had to join in the fun. How can you scare yourselves like this? He scolded Yin Bingbing, helped the couple back to the next room, and firmly closed the door, afraid of more intruders. Shin Shen, it's so much fun. They don't harm us, let's play with them. You play with them yourself. 
Shin Shen kicked a gray wolf angrily and returned to the room. He picked up his phone, about to call Huang Shengjun to come and take these guys back. Huang Shengjun had already called. Shen Chen, are you okay? Huang Shengjun asked anxiously on the phone. Nothing major, but Huang, how did you know I was going to call you? Don't mention it, you unlucky kid. Huang Shengjun was panting on the phone, clearly running. We monitored that almost all the escaped animals are heading to your house. Did you urinate everywhere in the zoo or steal their girlfriends? Why do they hate you so much? I have no idea. Hurry up and come over, my house could be open for business soon. Huang Shengjun chuckled. Alright, don't worry. You and Yin Bingbing come out quickly, we have surrounded the place and will start a massive rescue operation to anesthetize and capture all the animals. Protecting the lives and property of the people is our mission. Applause could be heard outside. Shin Shen's face turned green. Huang, you really hate us. He hung up the phone and ran out of the yard. In the yard, the animals were all in chaos. Brother Tiger, we are surrounded. Let's fight them. Brother Tiger, you guys run first, let me go out and bite them to death. The animals were in a panic, and the yard was a mess. No one expected that humans would find them. Fat Tiger let out a roar to the sky. Shut up, all of you. The animals were intimidated by its roar and finally quieted down. Shin Shen, did you call the police? Tiger Head shook its head, glaring fiercely at Shin Shen who had just run out. The animals also snarled at him, wanting to bite him to vent their anger. Shin Shen shrugged, I was just about to, but they found us before I could. How did they find us? Shin Shen rolled his eyes. Brother, it's because of your constant roaring, who wouldn't hear it? Now the entire residential area is empty. Fat Tiger was stunned. Careless. Miscalculated. They didn't expect humans to be so cunning, actually locating their lair through the roars. Shin Shen looked at Fat Tiger's regretful expression and couldn't help but laugh. With your intelligence, you want to outsmart humans, at least watch a few Planet of the Apes movies. At the very least, watch Inception and Conquest. Tiger Head fell silent, watching the drone circling in the sky, grunting. Idiot, shoot down these things for me. Fat Tiger shouted at a vulture perched on the roof with narrowed eyes. Goo goo. The vulture flapped its wings and used its huge beak to attack the drones in the air. The technician controlling the drones was startled and hurriedly tried to evade. But no matter how agile the drones were, they couldn't match the speed of the vulture. Bang. 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 After a few rounds, all the drones hovering in the sky were shot down by the vulture. Yen Bingbing was stunned. Is this a battle between humans and animals? Shin Shen rubbed his face. Bingbing, can you not drive at this time? If we provoke them, we'll be in trouble. Yen Bingbing had no intention of driving, realizing it was a great opportunity for a live stream. She quickly opened Shin Shen's phone and started live streaming. Dear viewers, I am Yen Bingbing, the host appointed by Mr. Shen. What you are seeing now is the sudden situation at Mr. Shin's house, where the animals from the zoo are gathering here. Why did the innocent era fall victim to the poison? Why did the neighbor's grandfather stay up all night? Why were all the instant noodles in the convenience store sold out? Why is the gorilla crying quietly in the middle of the night? Is this the extinction of humanity or the loss of morality? Tonight at 10 o'clock, Shin Lao Ji's live broadcast room will continue to show Shin Chen's road of no return, please stay tuned. Yen Bing Bing's set of words immediately stirred up the atmosphere. Bing Bing, can you stop saying that you are Shin Lao Ji's exclusive, our hearts are broken. I'm going. This vulture is so powerful for the first time here. Finally saw the scene in the yard, this is. Shin Lao Ji's zoo? Why aren't they attacking Shin Lao Gu and Bing Bing? Upstairs, you must be new here, don't you know that Shin Lao Gu can communicate with animals? Hey, look, there's a snow white fox lying on the tiger, huh? The first time I've seen a real fox in a tiger's clothing. It really is, it's just a vixen, ah, being single for so long. Why do I find foxes so attractive? Netizens brought sunflower seeds, candy, and fruits, eagerly watching. Although no one could understand why the animals came to Shen Lao Ji's house, it didn't stop them from enjoying the spectacle. Outside the house, all the people involved in the capture were frustrated. The drone video communication was interrupted, and no one could see what was happening inside. Huang Bureau, order a strong attack, rush in and shoot tranquilizer darts, they all have to lie down. Someone suggested, and everyone agreed. After all, it was too dangerous. Dozens of animals had actually gathered in Shin Chen's house in the downtown area. Once they rushed out onto the street, no one could predict the consequences. Nonsense. Shin Chen and Yen Bingbing are inside. What if they anger the animals and put them in danger? Everyone fell silent. Technician Xiao Zhang stood up with his phone. Huang Bureau, do you think, in this state, can the animals eat them? 
He entered Xin Lao Ji's live broadcast room, letting everyone see the live broadcast inside. Everyone gathered around, amazed. The golden python is coiled around Xin Lao Ji's neck. Hey, is the vulture a fool? It even wants to eat the drone? Hey, look at this colorful monkey, lying in Yin Bingbing's arms. What's it doing? And there's an era, actually getting a spa treatment from the panda? Everyone marveled at this, it wasn't dangerous at all, it was clearly harmonious. Alright, stop watching the show, our goal is to capture them and get them back to the zoo as soon as possible. Otherwise, when it's daylight, how can the people of Zhangzhou dare to go out to work or send their children to school? Huang Xingjun interrupted them, turning to ask, has the director of the Zhangzhou Zoo arrived? An assistant, sweating profusely, said, Huang Bureau, not yet, we can't reach the director, we've sent people to his house to check. Huang Shengjun was annoyed, after this is over, I will definitely report and remove him from his position. The assistant said awkwardly, Huang Bureau, that may not be possible, our city's zoo has long been sold to a private company, they are paid by the company, it has nothing to do with the government. Huang Shengjun waved his hand impatiently. Contact him immediately, if you can't reach him, have the animal keepers come over. Otherwise, even if we control the animals, we don't know how to care for them, don't let them die. After all, they were all protected animals, and no one dared to be careless. He thought for a moment, then called Shin Chen. Shin Chen, what's the situation inside, can you come out? Don't tell me they've kidnapped you. Shin Chen looked at the white fox licking his own face, and the golden python coiled around his neck, looking utterly defeated. Huang Bureau, look at my live broadcast room. If I could get out, why would I be fooling around here with you? Currently, the gray wolf and the Yangtze alligator were blocking the door, ready to counterattack as soon as the people inside rushed out. Several birds of prey perched on the roof, keeping watch over the courtyard and reporting on the situation. The monkeys had moved everything they could out of the house to use as weapons. The golden python and the snow fox were responsible for guarding him and Yen Bingbing to prevent them from escaping. The African lion, leopard, and gorilla were getting ready for action. As for the less aggressive herbivores like zebras, camels, and deer, they were munching on vegetables in the kitchen. Huang Shengjun didn't know what to do. What do you think we should do now? First, bring in things that the animals like to eat. Let's talk to them and see what they want. Xin Chen hung up the phone in frustration. Originally, Huang Shengjun and his group had planned to sneak in quietly and rescue Yen Bingbing. Now, they were hostages of the animals. Xin Chen hung up the phone, had the white fox massage his back, and had the golden python coil around his waist to treat his protruding disc. Finally, he walked over to Pang Hu with a relaxed expression. Brother Hu, let's talk. What do you want to do? All the animals are here. Shouldn't we have a meeting to discuss? Pang Hu shook his head. Not yet. Our intelligence officer hasn't returned. We need to wait for it to come back before we can have a meeting and determine our target. Ha, huh, you have an intelligence officer? Pang Hu nodded, looking into the distance. There it is, coming. Outside the door, the sweaty zookeeper finally arrived at the scene. Hey, isn't this the former zoo director's house? The zookeeper Lao Zhang recognized the place and felt nostalgic. Huang Shengjun walked over, whose house do you think this is? The former zoo director's house? That's right, Director Huang. This is the house of Li Fugue. When the central zoo was still state-owned, Li Fugue was the last director. After the zoo was sold to private owners, he retired. Huang Shengjun remembered something, Li Fugue? I know him. When I was a kid, he let me ride on a tiger at the zoo. Could it be that these animals are here to visit the old director? Lao Zhang shook his head, impossible. After old Li retired, he would come to the zoo every month to chat with the animals. How could they suddenly come out to visit him? Actually, he suddenly realized something, his expression changed, and he stopped himself from speaking further. Huang Shengjun noticed that he didn't finish his sentence and asked, Actually what? Nothing, Director Huang. Why did you call me here? Lao Zhang suddenly changed his attitude, impatiently asking, Hey, what's with your attitude? These animals escaped from your zoo, and we're here in the middle of the night trying to catch them, and you're getting impatient. An assistant couldn't help but speak up seeing Lao Zhang's behavior. Lao Zhang shrugged, this is my attitude. The animals collectively escaped, what can I do? You want me to catch them? Each one of them is a big shot, who will take responsibility if they get hurt or killed. Enough, Lao Zhang, pull yourself together. It's all for work. Tell us about the animal's situation. I can't reach your director, so you're the only one who can help now. Huang Shengjun tried to smooth things over and asked Lao Zhang for his thoughts. Seeing him speak politely, Lao Zhang's attitude improved slightly. Alright, I'll give you a brief overview. 
At around 7 o'clock in the evening, we were about to go home after work, leaving old Wang on duty at the gate. A little after 7, he saw a husky running in. Yes, the dog that the old director used to keep. Lao Zhang recounted the events. The husky was a regular at the zoo. After the old director retired, he would often bring it around. Later, the new director didn't like the old director and insisted on charging him for admission. The old director came less frequently, not because he couldn't afford it, but because he felt embarrassed. Who goes home and still pays for admission? However, the husky is a dog. It just wanders in when it's free, and no one pays attention. Today was the same. Old Wang at the gate didn't take it seriously and went back to eat directly. But in just a few minutes, through the surveillance cameras, he saw that the husky had opened the cage in the wild animal area and released a northeast tiger from the zoo. Old Wang hurried out to stop it, but was scared by the northeast tiger and fainted on the spot. After that, it was chaos. The husky and the tiger released all the animals in the zoo, and they all ran away. Huang Shengjun listened with an incredulous expression. Don't you lock the doors of your zoo? How can a dog release all the animals? Old Zhang shrugged, the husky even knows where I hide my cigarettes, let alone the keys to the cages. To be blunt, it knows that place better than I do. Huang Shengjun was speechless and after some thought said, Old Zhang, the situation is very serious now. Besides the animals we have captured, the ones that escaped have all run to Li Fugue's house, and even kidnapped two hostages. I don't know what they want to do. Old Zhang, give me some advice. What should we do now? Huang Shengjun had to ask for the opinion of the animal keepers, as they had been raising them for so many years and should have some solutions. When old Zhang learned that there were two hostages inside, he became more cautious. He took the assistant's phone from Huang and looked at the situation inside, couldn't help but ask, why didn't I see Tony? Did you catch it? Huang Shengjun was puzzled, Tony? Who's Tony? Old Zhang slapped his thigh, the flat-headed brother. The honey badger. Did you catch a honey badger when you were capturing them? Huang Xingjun immediately asked the person in charge of the capture, and the response was that they hadn't caught it. That's bad. Old Zhang looked nervous, these animals may seem fierce, but they are all second-generation animals bred in the zoo. Their animal instincts have almost fully developed. If we don't provoke them, they usually won't harm the hostages. But the most worrying one in the entire zoo is Tony the honey badger. This guy was imported from Africa last year and is quite fierce. No one dares to challenge him. On the first day he arrived, he took down a gray wolf. What? You're saying a honey badger can take down a gray wolf? The assistant looked incredulous, thinking old Zhang was exaggerating. Oomph, don't doubt it. You'll know how powerful it is when you encounter it. I've never entered its cage to feed it. I always throw the food from a distance. This guy doesn't recognize anyone, he bites whoever he sees. A few days ago, there was news that Tony attacked and seriously injured six villagers in Curry Country, and it took the military to capture him. Hearing this, everyone became nervous. They thought they had blocked all the escaped animals at Chen Chen's place, feeling a bit relieved that they wouldn't harm the people. But they didn't expect one to slip through the cracks, Tony the honey badger. Tony, people had some understanding of him through the internet. This guy was either in a fight or on his way to one. A born warrior, he fought anyone he saw and held grudges strongly. Some said the honey badger was indifferent to life and would fight if challenged. There were also rumors online that one badger could fight three tigers, three badgers could sink an aircraft carrier, five badgers could fight Yen, and ten badgers could create a new era. Although it was nonsense, it also showed Tony's fierceness. Thinking that there was still a Tony lurking in the shadows, staring at them like a badger, everyone couldn't help but shudder. Ha, yeah, he he he. Suddenly, a creepy laughter echoed in the darkness. Huang Shengjun immediately got angry, who's laughing to scare people, what are you up to? Everyone turned around to look, indicating it wasn't them. Only old Zhang looked fearful and ran to a high platform. It's here. It's here. This is the honey badger's call. I won't be mistaken. Everyone, be careful. What? The crowd was shocked and nervously looked into the darkness. Swish. The next second, a dark gray figure suddenly rushed out. It was a honey badger. It made a strange sound similar to a human sneer and charged into the crowd. The crowd scattered in panic. Fire. Fire. Quickly tranquilize it. Huang Shengjun shouted, picked up the tranquilizer gun in his hand, and shot at the honey badger. The others also reacted and started shooting at the honey badger. The honey badger was agile, dodging the tranquilizer darts left and right, and lunged at the person closest to it. The person was startled, raised the gun, and pulled the trigger. Bang! The honey badger swayed as it was hit by a tranquilizer dart. It was hit, but it seemed unfazed, only fueling its ferocity. With a roar, the honey badger climbed onto the person's body and bit at his neck. The crowd screamed in fear. Roar! 
At the critical moment, a tiger's roar echoed in the yard. Just as the honey badger was about to bite the person's throat, it stopped its mouth. It let out a dissatisfied cry, turned around, and quickly ran into the yard. Despite the numerous capture team members, no one dared to stop it. Xiao Song, are you okay? Huang Xingjun hurried over to check on Xiao Song, who was sweating and collapsed on the ground. I'm fine, Huang Bureau. This guy is too terrifying, he said with lingering fear. Despite watching many videos of honey badgers online, the close encounter still felt terrifying. Although not large in size, the honey badger's fierce eyes and sharp teeth revealed the control it had over one's life. But it's only as long as an adult's arm. Xiao Song believed that if the tiger in the yard hadn't roared, he would have been bitten in the throat, his life hanging by a thread. Euro Huang, why didn't the tranquilizer work on the honey badger? Huang Shangjun sighed, even cobra venom has no effect on it, let alone tranquilizers. Well, if we encounter it again, I'll allow you to use live ammunition. Live ammunition? The crowd was shocked. The purpose of the capture was to return them to the zoo, not to eliminate them, otherwise those animals would have been shot dead long ago. Huang Shangjun looked at everyone and nodded. There's no choice. Currently, it's a threat to human life. No matter how precious the animal is, it can't be compared to human life. The crowd respected Huang's words. Only the zookeeper Lao Zhang sneered inwardly, thinking, you're only bullying the honey badger because it's not a protected species. There are giant pandas in there too. Try shooting one of them. But saying that out loud would be meaningless. He looked around, saw nothing concerning him, and decided to sit down and smoke. After instructing several members of the capture team to switch to live ammunition, Huang Shengjun called Shin Chen. Shin Chen, a honey badger just entered, are you okay? Bureau Huang, what do you think? Want to know or watch my live stream? Remember to send some gifts. Let's talk later, bye. Shin Chen hung up the phone, looking at the honey badger in front of him with a grin. Honey badger, you're called Tony, right? I'm Shin Chen, nice to meet you. Tony gave Shin Chen a cold look, sorry, I only know corpses in my kind. Which one are you? Shin Chen chuckled, thinking this guy was quite arrogant. The honey badger had already bypassed Shin Chen and was talking to Fat Tiger. Shin Chen only vaguely heard words like Footwash City and KTV, and was surprised. Are these guys planning to have a good time? Too arrogant. At this time, the capture team brought food for the animals to the door, and Shin Chen moved it into the yard, inviting everyone to eat. In no time, chaos erupted in the yard. Only Pang Hu, Levi, and the newcomer, Tony, remained motionless. What's wrong, brother Hu? Have some food. This time, we have brought you braised beef and roasted chicken. Absolutely authentic northeastern flavors. Shin Shen approached the animals who were not eating and asked, Um, Pang Hu looked somewhat embarrassed and glanced at the other animals. My brothers and I also want to try that furious death dish we had earlier. Can you ask your chef to make us some more to taste? Shen Shen was speechless. Is Pang Hu addicted to instant noodles? He waved for Yin Bing Bing to come over. Bing Bing, do we have any? Do we have any authentic braised beef noodles left? These gentlemen want to eat more. Yen Bingbing was speechless. Were these animals fooling Shin Shun? They seemed so interested in instant noodles. We're out. Brother who ate a whole box by himself, and the rest was left for the dogs. Shin Shen, feeling helpless, had to call Director Huang again to have various flavors of instant noodles delivered promptly. Although Director Huang didn't understand what Shin Shen was up to, he still fulfilled Shin Shen's request. Ten minutes later, a strange scene unfolded in the courtyard. On the steps, several big shots from the zoo were sitting on the ground, devouring instant noodles. Below the steps, the younger ones were gnawing on big fish and meat, looking envious. In the live broadcast room, netizens burst into laughter. Wow! I can only say that old Shin is amazing, even brother Hu and King Kong have fallen in love with instant noodles. And Tony, look at his naive look, Africa really doesn't produce instant noodles. Next time someone says instant noodles are bad, show them this video and let them see what true Chinese cuisine is. Ha, huh, did you see the greedy look on the African lion and leopard? They're drooling all over the place. Director Huang and the capture team also chuckled. Director Huang, while they're eating, let's rush in now. Yes, call old Shin and Bingbing to come out while they're distracted. Use live ammunition on Tony, but stun the others. Let's seize the opportunity and catch these guys. My wife is waiting for me to come home for dinner. The group was getting impatient. After a night of turmoil, it was already midnight, and the news media was closely following the developments here. Many curious onlookers were outside the cordon. If this dragged on, who knew how long it would take? Director Huang hesitated as he watched the live broadcast and saw that Shin Chen's relationship with the animals was not as tense as he had thought. Perhaps launching a surprise attack while the animals were eating could indeed be successful. 
Moreover, he had received several calls from above urging him to resolve the zoo escape incident quickly. If the animals really attacked the crowd, it would have a negative impact nationwide. All right, prepare the teams. Director Huang finally made up his mind to launch a strong attack. Everyone rallied and gathered together. Director Huang looked at everyone and began assigning tasks. Team 1, you are responsible for rescuing Shen Chen and Yen Bingbing, ensuring their safety. Team 2, your task is to subdue the fierce beasts in the courtyard and render them temporarily incapacitated. Team 3, you are in charge of the herbivores, be careful not to harm them. Team 4, as soon as you enter, grab the panda to Enchuan immediately, do not injure it. As for the other birds and monkeys, capture them slowly after the situation is under control. Director Huang meticulously explained the tasks, and everyone received their assignments. Director Huang, what if the fierce beasts resist? Someone asked with concern, and others nodded in agreement. After all, this was not a situation where they were targeting a single animal but trying to capture dozens of animals simultaneously. If there were any incidents of harm to people, what should they do? Huang Xingjun gritted his teeth, if your personal safety is at risk, I allow you to use live ammunition to shoot. Whatever happens, I will take full responsibility. Finally, everyone relaxed and began checking their firearms and ammunition. Huang Xingjun wanted to signal to Xin Chen, but was afraid of alerting the enemy, so he gestured for everyone to slowly move to the courtyard gate, preparing for a sudden attack. At this moment, everyone was ready, gathered at the courtyard gate. Huang Xingjun slowly raised his hand, about to give the order to act. Suddenly, a figure rushed into the crowd. Pang Hu, Li Weisi, Tony, run, they are about to attack. Everyone was shocked and startled by this person's actions. Lao Shang, what are you doing? Huang Xingjun was so angry that he was about to cover the mouth of the zookeeper Lao Zhang. Lao Zhang struggled desperately, shouting loudly. Run quickly. They have guns, they have bullets. You can't beat them. Listen to me, Lao Zhang, run quickly. Seeing him go crazy, Huang Xingjun had to wave his hand. Immediately, three team members rushed over and threw Lao Zhang to the ground. Zhang Mingyi, are you crazy? Why would you do this? Huang Xingjun looked at him coldly and asked. Zhang Mingyi was pinned to the ground by three people, cursing with his head turned away. You are the crazy ones. They haven't hurt anyone, haven't caused any damage, why do you have the right to harm them like this? Animals inside, run! Lao Zhang shouted hoarsely. By now, the courtyard was in chaos. When the gorilla Li Weisi heard this, he knocked over a bowl of instant noodles, leaped onto the roof, and saw the gate filled with people. It roared fiercely and jumped down from the roof. Brother Hu, humans outside are about to rush in. Pang Hu roared, brothers, prepare to fight. The next moment, all the carnivorous animals ran to the gate, crouching and preparing to attack. Herbivores stood in front of them voluntarily, acting as the first line of defense. Pang Hu shouted at the honey badger Tony, the gorilla Li Weisi, the African lion, the leopard, and other animals. Anyone who dares to rush in, bite them to death. Teach them a lesson. The animals responded with steel teeth and claws. After Pang Hu gave the orders, he roared again, the tiger's roar shook the sky. This was the call to battle. The people outside the gate were terrified, their hands holding tranquilizer guns trembling. Seeing the animals going wild, Huang Xingjun decisively gave the order to attack. Bang! Someone kicked open the gate of the courtyard. The team members behind immediately fired tranquilizer darts, first hitting several herbivores. Zebras, deer, camels fell to the ground without a sound. The animals became more enraged, letting out angry roars. The battle between the two sides was about to begin. Shen Shen, what should we do? Think of a way. Yen Bingbing saw the conflict about to happen, scared and crying, constantly pulling Shen Shen's arm. Shen Shen broke free from her and quickly ran to Pang Hu. Brother Hu, quick, take me hostage, I don't believe they will attack me. Pang Hu was stunned, not expecting Shen Shen to rush out at this moment. Get up, we have no intention of hurting you. Erha told me, you have a good relationship with the old park director. We won't harm a friend of the old park director. Pang Hu pushed Shin Chen away with his large paw. Shin Chen became anxious, blocking Pang Hu again, listen, no one should come in. If anyone takes another step, the tiger will bite off my head. He then voluntarily put his head towards Pang Hu's mouth. Yen Bingbing was dumbfounded by Shin Chen's actions and shouted anxiously, Shin Chen, what are you doing? It's dangerous. She felt that even if Pang Hu was kind and righteous, in this situation, anything could happen. Shin Chen was risking his life. Outside the gate, Huang Xingjun was also shocked and quickly ordered everyone to stop. Shin Chen, what are you doing? Do you think I'm blind? Why are you sending your head into the tiger's mouth? Shin Chen scolded angrily, Huang Zhu, didn't I say it? I was trying to talk to them, 
Why did you order the attack? What's the point of talking to a bunch of beasts? Get up, or you'll be sedated too. Huang Shengjun was getting frustrated, first old Zhang informed, then Xin Shen voluntarily became a hostage. What were they all doing? Xin Shen stopped talking, ran over and closed the door, shouting outside. Give me five minutes, just five minutes. I need to figure out what they want to do. Huang Shengjun sighed. Honestly, he really wanted to run out with Yen Bingbing and escape from this group of animals. But ever since he saw Li Fugue's photo album and heard Air Ha's words, he felt that these animals coming out were not that simple. The yard fell silent for a moment. All the animals were waiting for Tiger Brother's command. Fat Tiger looked at Chen Chen for a while, then turned back to the steps. It suddenly asked a strange question. Do you humans all call your wives cheap wife? Today I learned a new term, but unfortunately my cheap wife is gone. Fat Tiger became sentimental, tears shimmering in its eyes. Shin Shen, it's none of your business, take your cheap wife and leave. Shin Shen was stunned, why did Fat Tiger suddenly agree to let him and Yen Bingbing go? Did it not know that the people outside hadn't attacked because of the hostage situation? Shin Shen earnestly said, Tiger brother, tell me, what exactly made all of you run out of the zoo, maybe I can help. For a moment, all the animals looked surprised. Could this human really want to help them? Riva scratched his head first. Tiger brother, I think Shin Shen means no harm to us, maybe. Yes, if he wanted to run, he would have done so already. I think Shin Shen can be trusted. Tiger brother, tell him what's going on, humans are smart. Maybe he can give us some ideas. The animals also saw Shen Shen's performance just now and believed in him from the bottom of their hearts. The main reason was that only he could understand what they were saying, and the animals subconsciously felt close to Shen Shen. After all, except for the old zookeeper, no other human had gained their approval. Everything Shen Shen did to prevent the human attack moved them deeply. Fat Tiger pondered for a moment, then looked at the phone Yen Bingbing was holding. Shen Shen realized what it wanted to say, so he asked Yen Bingbing to stop the live broadcast and put away the phone. Fat Tiger finally spoke. A month ago, my wife Ao Mei disappeared. Your wife? Shen Shen was surprised, remembering Erha saying that there was only one tiger in Zhengzhou Zoo. Fat Tiger continued. A month ago, a group of humans came into the cage, shot Ao Mei with a tranquilizer dart, and then took her away in a car. I don't know what happened, but since that day, I've been restless. I stopped eating the food provided by the zoo. The keeper told me that Ao Mei was borrowed by another city's zoo and probably won't be back for two or three years. I felt upset, but there was nothing I could do. After all, we who grew up in cages since childhood can only follow the arrangements of humans. Fat Tiger spoke naturally, but all the animals lowered their heads. Yes, all the animals present, except for the honey badger, were born in the zoo and grew up there. None of them had seen the outside world, they spent their whole lives in this small place for people to visit. If they didn't listen to humans or the keepers, would they starve to death? Shin Shen felt their helplessness, and his heart grew heavy. Pine Hu Jiezhishuadao, San Tia and Jichen, Wachua Tang Dao La Tuan I Desaoxi, Tagazua, Wad De Chizi Chishir Shurbei Dong Wiyu and Yu and Jiang Dai Zoyul. Tian Shua Tai Yao Bie Wad De Chizi Mai Diao, Mai Dao He and Yu Yu and De Dai Feng. Shin Lan, Wad Ji Siang Jiu Ta Hui Lai, Hai Siang Wan Wan Dong Wiyu and Yu and Jiang, Wai Shin Mai Dia Wad De Chizi, Jian Si Ariai. Pine Hu Di Xing Hai Ho Yuja, Shua Chu Ji Nai Xing Dong De Zui Zoing Mudi. My dia? Xin Lan Leng Zhulu, Xin Shi Tua Kao Yu Wurchu, Nabu Kunung, Hu Ji, and Ishir Gua Jia Yi Jibi Ao Wu Dong Wu, Tabu Kunung Jia Mazua, Zai Shua, Ta Shir Dong Wu Yu and Yu and Jiang, Yo Yu Bi Ao Wu and M N D Wu, Z N M Kunung Chu Mai and M N. Li Wei Si Zou Yu Bu Lai, Pa La Pai Xin Long De Jia N B O, Lian Lian Tan Chi, Lao Gei Zi Song Lao Yu and Jiang Zou Yu Li Ho, Dong Wu Yu and Yi Di Yu Bu Yi Yang La. Tiang Rin Lei Shua, In Wei Wu Men Bi Ai and De Bu Mai Li, Dong Wu Yu and Bu Zhuan Qian Yu Xiao, Suo Jiang Jia Engi Dong Wu Yu and De Bi Ao Mai Ji Al Biaren, Shi An Yu and Jiang Du Wei Wu Men, Ta Bu Shi Ren, Lian Dong Wu Du Yu Buru, Da Sheng Jie Gui Ji Wei Si De Hua, Zi Song Ta Jie Shou Yu Dong Wu Yu and Eo, Wu Men Chi De Shi Wu Bian Dong Yu Lai Yu Cha, Ta Hai Zou Eng Shi Nong Zou Yu Dong Wu Yu and Li De Dong Wu, Wu Men Hao Shi An Yu Bi Ai Shi Du Oji Ho Zi, Shen Zai Jiu Shi Ol Er Shi Du Oji, Hai Di Yu Shi Lao Ru Wu Bing Sun. Jolian Ping to Ji to an I Yishir Ilia and Bushe Dong Wu Bunung Mai Mai, Washer Z E N M E Lai, Shin Long Zen Zhou Angle, Nandeo, Jia Eren de Dong Wu Yu and Yu and Jiang Jing Ran Sushi Fan Mi Dong Wu, Ta Di Shi Ying Ji Ai and Bayang Bayang Shula Shirching de Ji Ang Wu, Yen Bayang Bayang Chua Bia Ashi Buk Nung, Hu Ji, Jishir Buk Nung de Shirching, Dong Wu Yu and Yo Yu Yu and Lin Ju Guan Li, Yo Yu Yang de Guan Li Ji Du. Suo Yu Dong Wu de Chu Xing Hai Suang Du Yu Deng Ji Zais, Zhou Lian Chu Zhu Chu Li Du Yu Wu Guan Kong, Buk Nung Chu Xian Yu Enjiang Sishi Fan Mi Dong Wu De Shirching, 
Ijong Dong Wu Kanje Yen Baiyang Baiyang, Bu Xiaing Jie Shi Shen Mi, Shi Qing Jiu Shi Jiang, Dong Wu Yuan De Dong Wu Zhuang Shi Momeng Kami De Jian Shao, Zi An Jia Yuan He Qi Ang Jin Yuan Xin Lu De Shi Ho, Dong Wu Yi Bu Xi Mei O Yu Er Duo, Zhou Li An Si An Jia Yuan Yi Hua Yi Shi Yuan Jiang Tai Dai Fan Mel Taman, Bu Gua Su Er Du Dong Wu Mi Si Du Yu Shi Chu Zu Chu Lu De Mingyi, Ji Shi Zai Yi Mei O Yu Hui Legua. Jai Si Ai, Pai Ngu Di Qi Zi A O Mei, Dong Wu Yu An Wei Yi Di Yi Ji Wing Chun De Mu Lo Wu Yi Bei Lezo Yu, Zong Ju Rina. Zai Da Da Hao Zhe Ji Si Ai, Su Eo Yu Dong Wu Chou Ying Chu Lo Long, Zhou Rei Yu An Jiang, Kang Kan Ta Da Di Bi A Zi Ji De Zai O Wang Di Jie Mei, Fu Mo Hai Zi Di Yu Nong Dao Na Li Tsu La. Xin Long, Na Yao Si Ai Ying Bi A Ying Zu Wa Men, Jiu Bi A Ying Wa Men Bi A Wei Mian De Ren Lei Ni An Zo Yu, Rong Wa Men Su Zhao Dei O Yu An Jiang Wang Di Ming Bai. Pai Ngu Mu Gua Ying Zhe Zhe De Kan Zhe Xin Long, Xin Long Zai An Rul Chen Si. Dong Wen Men Yi Wei Shen Long Ho Wu Lu, Bu Yo Lu Chu Lu Shi Wang De Shans. Shen Long Taran Yi Pai Da Chui. Gone. Lao Zi Li Ying Zen Mn De Neo Zou Eng Zou Yu, Ji An Tei An Wan Chang Bishu Jiu Chu Zhe Ge Jiao Wa. Shen Long Zwa Chu Lu Ju Ding. Wu Fein Zou Eng Shi Jia An He An Kui De Ol. Yu En Zi Li Mi An Yi Pin Ying Jing, Bu Ji Do Fei Shi Ying Gul Shen Mi Shi Ching. Huang Xing Ju En Pez Men Si Ying Keng Kin Ching Kwan, Nan De O Shen Long Zhe En De Nung Chu En Su Eo Yu Dong Wu Chu Lei Zi Shou Yu. Huang Jiu, Kwai Kan Shen Long De Zibo Ji An. Zhu Shou Yu Ji Kuen Kuen Di Shang Gul Shou Ji. Shen Long Yo Ka Ai Zibali. De Ji Ya Hao, Wa Shi Shen Long. Shen Long Zhen Zai Yu En Zi Li Ni Shou Ji, Jing Tong Li, Gizou Wing Dong Wu Ji Ji Dei Li Chi, Shi Rua Jun Bei Chu Fei. Wang Ji Yo Yu Men Kan Do Shen Lao Ge De Zibo Ji An Zai Sai Kai Ki. Shu An Yo Eng Gul Jin Lail. Hua, Shen Lao Ge Hai Zai Li Mi An Ni A. Zai An Mi Yang La, Shen Lao Ge Wen Chu Jig Wa Lu Ma. Ji Bi A Ying Dong Wu Pa Chu Lai Yao Gan Shen Mi. And I'm an hai jie an xin shen long nang a dong wu go yu dong e, wu kan hai shi pai dong wu yu yan shu a jie lai bi e, di yu bi shu a wa, kui kan, shen lao ge yao gan shen mi, wan jie yu yu man ain jing xia lai, kan jie shen lao ge ju jie shou ji, ju ren kid o lo wu de xin te shang. The northeast tiger named Fat Tiger respectfully lowered its head and carried Shin Chen on its back. Then, it slowly walked to the front of all the animals. Netizens were shocked by this scene. Has brother Shin become the king of beasts? All the animals stood behind him bowing their heads, seemingly waiting silently for something. A honey badger named Tony climbed onto Shin Chen's shoulder and squatted there. Reeves stood on his left side, with an African lion on his right. A leopard crawled at his feet, licking its fangs. If it weren't for the adorable giant panda rolling around in front of everyone, this majestic scene would surely go down in history. Wow! So cool! Brother Shin is the true king of beasts. Screenshot taken, this picture will be my screensaver for life. Love it! Never seen such a domineering man. This is the modern version of Zhao Gongming. God of wealth, I bow to you. Netizens began frantically sending gifts to express their admiration. Shin Chen, however, remained serious and silent. It wasn't until the number of viewers in the live broadcast exceeded 3 million that he spoke. Director Huang, I know you can see me, as well as all the netizens, please pay attention. I am officially informing you now, I have been kidnapped by animals. I am now a hostage and translator, conveying their demands to you. Everyone was stunned, then burst into laughter. This is called kidnapping? Come on, I'd be willing to be kidnapped by animals like this once, huh? Brother Shin is up to his tricks again, it's like a grand Versailles scene. Shin Chen, you're like a blind monk pulling nonsense out of your pants. Is there such an arrogant hostage like you? Everyone laughed and watched the commotion, but noticed that Shin Chen's face showed no sign of joking. Director Huang, and members of the capture team, listen up. We are going to slowly walk out now. I hope you all step back and give us space. Director Huang Xing Jun was taken aback and couldn't help but shout, Shen Shen, what are you doing? Since they listen to you, make them climb into the cages themselves, quickly. Shen Shen shook his head, Director Huang, didn't you hear me? Step back, give us space, we are going out. Fine, step back, make way at the gate of the courtyard. Director Huang, seeing his determined look, had no choice but to have everyone disperse, step back 10 meters, and form a new encirclement. All right, we've stepped back, come out. Director Huang secretly signaled all team members to stay alert, ready to shoot at any time. However, Shin Shin said, not yet, Director Huang, do you want to hear the animals' demands first? Ha! Huh? Director Huang helplessly shouted, go ahead, what do they want? Do they want to improve the zoo's food standards, reduce interaction with visitors, or take a bath every day? He couldn't help but laugh at his own words. What could a bunch of animals possibly demand? He really thought they were ruthless kidnappers. If Shin Shen proposed any unreasonable conditions, he would never agree. If he compromised with a bunch of animals, he, as the head of the emergency management bureau, would be out of a job. Shin Shen's voice came from the courtyard. Director Huang, the animals' demands are simple. 
First, if they leave the courtyard, you cannot use tranquilizer guns on them. Director Huang readily agreed, no problem, as long as they return to the zoo, I will never order shooting. Second, to prevent them from panicking, all tranquilizer guns must be confiscated and placed in the car. Director Huang was taken aback. Shen Chen, are you kidding? If we lose the tranquilizer guns, what if they attack us? This is something we cannot agree to. Shen Chen shouted, that's easy, you brought a lot of cages, I see there's even a large iron cage over 2 meters high, isn't that right? Yes, that's the tiger cage, what's the matter? All of you get into the iron cage, then the animals won't be able to harm you. Huang Xingjun was so angry that he almost burst out cursing. Shen Shen, whose side are you on? How could you come up with such a harmful idea? Huang, either surrender your weapons or get into the iron cage, you choose, otherwise all the animals won't come out. Let's just wait like this. Huang Shengjun was getting frustrated. Fine. You're tough. We'll take the tranquilizer guns and get into the iron cage. Is that okay? But you have to guarantee that these animals must go back to the zoo obediently. However, Shen Shen said, I can't guarantee that, these guys have a third demand. Another demand. What else do they want to do? Huang Shengjun was getting impatient, if not for worrying about Shen Shen and Yen Bingbing's safety, he would have ordered a strong attack long ago. The last demand, where is the current director of Zhengzhou Zhu, Chen Yud? Huang Shengjun was a bit puzzled, why are you asking this, we haven't been in contact with Chen Yud, don't know where he went. Normally, in such a major escape event tonight, the director should definitely be present. But strangely, no one could contact him, he didn't answer calls, didn't reply to messages, as if he had disappeared. Then use the police station's phone to locate and investigate, once this matter is clarified, they will agree to return to the zoo. Huang Shengjun had a vague feeling that something was wrong, how could the animals be so clever to think of using GPS tracking? Isn't this ridiculous? After some thought, he had someone contact the police station to check Qian Yid's phone location. Although Qian Yid didn't answer the phone, it was easy to find out where he was. Five minutes later, the police station provided the location. The phone signal showed that Qian Yid, the director of the zoo, was currently in a farmhouse on the outskirts of Zhengzhou. Huang Xingjun kept a close eye and told Shen Shen that Qian Yid was sleeping at home. But no one noticed that the silly dog era had slipped out at some point and lazily nestled at Huang Xingjun's feet. Can we come out now? Shen Shen, I have fulfilled all the requests, let them climb into the cages. Huang Shengjun ordered his subordinates to open all the cages and place them in the courtyard in front of the gate. Okay, we're going out, you guys go into the cages and hide first. Go in. Huang Shengjun gritted his teeth, he had no way with Shen Shen, if it weren't for him saving the East Seaport, he would have turned against him long ago. All the capture team members had to enter one of the iron cages and close the door. Just to be safe, they only put on locks without actually locking the door, holding the tranquilizer guns in their hands, aiming at the gate of the courtyard. Only the zookeeper Lao Zhang refused to go in, squatting next to the cage smoking. The door opened. Shen Shan rode out on a northeast tiger first. Following closely behind were a group of carnivorous beasts, and behind them were herbivorous animals. Finally, Yen Bingbing walked out holding a small white lion and a panda named Tuanchuan. Seeing the gentle demeanor of the animals, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that Shen Lao had once again helped solve the problem for everyone. Shen Shen, well done, let them enter the cages one by one. Food and water are ready inside. Huang Shengjun said happily, as if he could leave work early. Unexpectedly, the next moment Shen Shen smiled apologetically at him, then raised his hand. Everyone, move out. Boom. In an instant, all the animals scattered and ran in all directions. Shen Shen, what the hell are you doing? Huang Shengjun kicked the iron cage in anger. No one expected that after all Shen Shen's talk, he would actually call for the animals to scatter. Netizens were also shocked by his bold move. What is Shen Lao doing again? I don't know, this is too dangerous, everyone finally managed to trap the animals here, why did he let them go again? Internet celebrity, there is no limit for the sake of traffic. Everyone has seen Shen Shen's true face. The crowd was anxious, not knowing what would happen. In the iron cage, after seeing this scene, Huang Shengjuan's first reaction was to rush out of the cage and have everyone shoot. But before they could do anything, a figure rushed ahead and locked the cage. Click. The lock on the iron cage was completely sealed. The caretaker Lao Zhang, holding the key, smiled and said, Director Huang, sorry, this time I'm on the animal side. He then casually threw the key far away. Lao Zhang. What are you doing? Hurry up and open the door for us, the animals have all run away. Huang Xingjun was furious, continuously kicking the cage and cursing. Good that they ran, Xian Yud is a crazy lunatic. The animals should have dealt with him long ago. 
Lao Zhang ignored Huang Shengjuan's demands and walked away with his hands behind his back. The members of the capture team were dumbfounded. What on earth was going on? Why were the caretaker and Xin Chen standing on the animal's side? What crazy things had Qian Ye done? It wasn't until this moment that Huang Xingjun realized that the animal's collective escape was actually to cause trouble for the park director. At this moment, the only ones left were Yen Bingbing, the giant panda Tuanchuan, and a small white lion. Seeing this, Huang Xingjun shouted, Bingbing, quickly help me retrieve the key. How could you let Chen Chen lead the animals out to cause trouble? If they injure someone, it will be a big problem. Yen Bingbing stubbornly shook her head. Director Huang, Shen Chen requested that they must not harm any humans, only then did he agree to lead them to find Chen Yud. You silly girl, how can you trust what the animals say? These guys will cause big trouble. Open the door quickly, or it will be too late. Huang Xingjun shook the cage while urging, truly anxious. Besides, if the park director abuses the animals, you could have just told us, why make a scene like this, it's simply ridiculous. Yen Bingbing looked at Huang Xingjun strangely. Director Huang, if these animals reporting is useful, why did they escape in the first place? Huang Shengjun was left speechless by the question. Indeed, animals cannot speak, they have no other way to express their anger except by escaping. Then let Shen Chen tell us, can't we resolve the conflict here? Yan Bingbing was even more puzzled. Director Huang, it's been over three hours since the animals escaped, you haven't even found the park director, how do you plan to resolve this? Huang Shengjun had nothing to say in response. All right, Talking about this now is useless, open the door quickly. Yen Bingbing still shook her head, apologetically saying, Director Huang, Shen Shen said to release you in half an hour, don't make it difficult for me. I warn you, if you don't open it, I'll arrest both you and Shen Shen. You are suspected of endangering public safety. Yen Bingbing smiled, don't scare me, we are hostages, how could we endanger public safety, clearly it's Shen Shen who was kidnapped by the animals, hurry and find a way to save him. You. Huang Xingjun realized that intimidating a clever-tongued host was useless, so he directly grabbed the gun from a team member. I'll do it myself. Give me the gun. He shouted angrily, aimed the live ammunition gun at the lock, and pulled the trigger. Bang! The door lock was shattered by a shot. Huang Xingjun kicked open the door of the iron cage, and everyone rushed out. We'll deal with you later. Huang Xingjun cursed in anger, beckoning everyone to get in the car and quickly pursue. Yen Bingbing stuck out her tongue, looking towards where Xin Shen had disappeared. Xin Shen, you must control them. Control? How to control? These animals scattered and fled as soon as they ran out. They rushed through the crowd watching the excitement and quickly disappeared into the darkness. The most impressive was Xin Shen, firmly holding onto Fat Tiger's neck, not letting himself fall. Pang Hu ran with all his might, leaping directly over the crowd. Roar! With a tiger's roar, it landed agilely and then ran wildly on the streets of Zhengzhou with Xin Shen. Xin Shen was in charge of navigation, while it was responsible for running. The two of them had to hurry to their destination at the fastest speed. Xin Shen, thank you. You can come down now, you don't need to worry about us. Pang Hu ran and consulted with Xin Shen, not wanting to take him to the rural farmhouse outside the city. Stop pretending, Hu Gu, I'm not underestimating you. With your intelligence, you've been played around by the Huang Bureau and don't even know it. Without Air Ha eavesdropping, you all would have run to Qian Yu's house. Pang Hu couldn't say anything. And there's Ping Tu Gu and the intelligence officer, they found out that Qian Yu is at the Red Moon KTV, why didn't he go to the footbath city? Xin Shen mocked freely, feeling proud of his superior intelligence. He was afraid that Huang Xingjun wouldn't tell the truth, so he deliberately let Air Ha sneak out to eavesdrop, and indeed heard the true whereabouts of Qian Yu. I say, what did you just say about me? Honey Badger Tony popped up behind Shin Shen, his tone unfriendly. Shin Shen suddenly remembered that this guy was still behind him and was startled. Tony, I said you have a high level, you've only been in Dasha for a year, and you already know the difference between KTV and Footbath City. Ping Tu Gu snorted, not bad, I also know that KTV doesn't do footbaths, and Footbath City doesn't sing. Shin Shen thought to himself, isn't that obvious? I even know that on stage for a minute, off stage for 60 seconds. But, Ping Tu Gu, where did you find out that Qian Yid is at the Red Moon KTV? Xin Chen asked puzzledly. Tony proudly said, Humph, I once had the chance to bite Qian Yid, he pointed at me and cursed, saying I almost made him unable to go to the Red Moon KTV for the rest of his life. Xin Chen was shocked, feeling a chill between his legs. Ping Tu Gu was ruthless, on par with a hyena. I heard that hyenas like to dig into animals' hindquarters, and Ping Tu Gu seems to be used to going for the vital parts. Better not provoke Tony in the future. This guy could easily wipe out a whole family. In fact, Shen Shen insisted on following alone because he didn't trust these animals to behave. 
If they couldn't control their emotions and bit Qian Yu to death, things would escalate. Huang Xingjun would have to kill all the animals. When we get there later, all of you keep quiet and let me ask him. I guarantee I'll find out where Hu Ji's wife is. Pang Hu didn't say anything, just kept running wildly. The fierce wind blew Shen Chen's hair, reaching a speed of at least 80 miles per hour. Shen Chen was too scared to speak, holding onto its neck fur tightly. At this moment, all the drivers on the street saw it. A very cool man riding a tiger, shouting, and showing off. What's even more annoying is that this guy kept shouting at the cars around him. Hey, buddy, have you ever ridden a tiger? Shen Chen swore he had no intention of showing off. He just wanted to ask if anyone had a similar experience and how to get the tiger to slow down a bit. Otherwise, Shen Chen was really afraid that Pang Hu would cause a traffic accident, rear-ending the large truck in front. Pang Hu was really going crazy. It knew that the capture team would never give up chasing them, and they might already be on their tail. If they didn't reach the rural farmhouse on the outskirts of the city soon, all their efforts would be in vain. However, tigers were not animals known for their speed like cheetahs. After more than 10 minutes, it gradually slowed down, starting to pant heavily. This was also related to Shen Chen riding on its back. Just when Pang Hu was extremely anxious, a taxi suddenly overtook it and maintained the same speed. The window rolled down, revealing the driver's face. Hey, Shen Chen, it's really you. You've got some guts, huh? Where are you off to this time, riding a tiger to catch a tiger-headed whale? It turned out to be the kind-hearted taxi driver master. If he hadn't taken Shen Chen to rush to the underwater restaurant, it would have been really late that day. Shen Chen was happy to see him. Master Lu, aren't you afraid? I'm riding a tiger. The other person chuckled, afraid of what? I rode it at the zoo a few years ago, but it was only two or three years old that year. Shen Chen chuckled. Master Lu waved his hand. Where are you guys going? Get in the car. Let me take you there. Old Lu didn't mind getting involved in things. He knew wherever Shen Chen was, there would definitely be something interesting to see. So, after hearing the news on the radio, he deliberately came to give Shen Chen and the others a ride. Shen Chen gladly agreed, the rural farmhouse was still over 10 kilometers away, and if Fat Tiger ran all the way there, he might get tired and collapse halfway. So, a few minutes later, Shen Chen comfortably sat in the front passenger seat, while Pingtage looked around curiously in the back seat. As for Fat Tiger, he was lying on the roof of the taxi, looking anxious. Now that's what you call speed and excitement. The taxi raced towards the outskirts at 120 miles per hour. On the way, Master Lu couldn't help but ask Shen Chen what they were going to the farmhouse for. Shen Chen told him about his suspicions. Master Lu was shocked and cautiously told Shen Chen that Fat Tiger's wife might have been gone a long time ago. Shen Chen was taken aback, Lu, what do you mean? Master Lu sighed and looked at Pingtuj behind him, carefully saying, I'm a taxi driver, I've taken all kinds of passengers. Although everyone has a car now, some people take a taxi to a certain place to prevent their license plates from being recognized by others with ill intentions. And this rural farmhouse outside the city, I've taken several groups of passengers there. Master Lu fell into reminiscence. One time, I overheard passengers chatting in the car, saying this farmhouse is the most unique, you can eat wild game there. At that time, I didn't think much of it, there are many places where you can eat wild game, wild chickens, wild birds, wild turtles, that restaurant in Zhengzhou has some special dishes. But they laughed at me, calling me a country bumpkin, saying the wild game at this restaurant is extraordinary, only open two days a month, and the prices are outrageous. Moreover, ordinary people can't afford to eat there or dare to eat. By this point, Shen Shen had already figured out what was going on and couldn't help but feel a chill run down his spine. I asked what kind of food you can eat there. They wouldn't tell me, and after I pestered them, they finally said two words. National protection. Shen Shen's head was about to explode. Could it be? On top of the car, Fat Tiger couldn't hear the conversation below. It looked ahead into the darkness, its eyes filled with confusion. It was already 12.38 a.m. M. The rural farmhouse outside the city was still brightly lit. The guests were drunk and unwilling to leave, shouting and making a scene at the entrance, drunk. In the darkness, a middle-aged man sneaked in with a package and entered an elegant room. He locked the door, cautiously checked outside the window, looking nervous. Lao Chen, why so secretive, it's so late. Hurry up and get the goods. I've been waiting all night. Yeah, there's only this little stuff. Why take all night? What are you afraid of? I think Lao Chen wants to raise the price and do some marketing gimmicks, right? In the elegant room, a few men reeking of alcohol, burping, and picking their teeth. They looked at the middle-aged man entering the room with drunken eyes, urging him on. The middle-aged man was Qian Yud. He had a bitter expression, Mr. Song, Mr. Han, Mr. Li, what goods do you want? I think I'm done for. What's wrong? 
Why are you so nervous? The fat man called Mr. Song asked in surprise. Looks like things are getting out of control. All the animals from the zoo escaped today. Many people called me all night, but I didn't dare to answer. Several bosses, what should we do? Qian Yod placed the package on the dining table, looking terrified. What? The animals escaped? Several people were shocked and quickly grabbed their phones. Tonight, everyone was focused on dinner and discussing matters, so they didn't check their phones. They didn't expect such a big incident in the city. After they finished reading the news, they gasped. Lao Qian, what's going on? How did you manage to let all the animals escape? Han Zeng asked in shock. The animals escaping wasn't the scary part. The scary part was that the authorities would notice them, especially noticing the missing animals from the zoo. Although Qian Yod handled it cleanly, either the animals that were secretly taken from the zoo were reported dead or lent to other zoos, but they couldn't withstand scrutiny from the higher authorities. Once investigated, they would discover the abnormal situation at the zoo in the past two years, especially since they had just pulled off a big deal, if exposed, all of them would be in trouble. Lao Qian, you should run away, I'll give you a hundred thousand yuan. Go abroad and hide for a while. Yes, come back when this storm blows over. Leave tonight. Remember, take care of your wife and children, don't cause trouble for us. The three men looked at each other and said fiercely to Qian Yod. Qian Yod was frightened, his hands and feet cold. Please, don't make me run away. Bosses, I've been struggling all my life, only to enjoy a few good years. How can I run abroad and suffer? Besides, who cares about my wife and children? You can't do this. The men were instantly furious. Now you're scared. When you asked us to make money together, how bold were you then? Ah, you even solemnly promised that there wouldn't be any problems. Tell me, how much money have you taken from us in these years? Two or three million at least. You're not willing to endure a little hardship for two years? Let me tell you, if you don't run away, I'll have someone kill your whole family right away. The three men threatened, turning hostile. Xian Yod looked at them, surprised at how ruthless they were. You, you want to kill me too. Damn it, I'm leaving now, I'll surrender to the police, none of us can escape. Xian Yo decided to take a stand, picked up the package on the table, and was about to leave. You dare! The three men looked at each other, determined, and picked up the wine bottles on the table. Roar! Suddenly, a fierce tiger roar echoed through the room. The four people in the room were stunned. What's going on? Roar! Another tiger roar sounded outside the farmhouse. This time, it sounded closer. Song Zong and the others were puzzled. What's going on? Why are there tiger roars? Lao Qian, did you secretly bring in a tiger again? Why didn't you tell us? You want to keep it all to yourself, huh? The three men looked at Qian Yod with even more anger. But Qian Yod's eyes widened, and his legs went weak when he heard the roars. He shouted in fear, damn it, it's coming, it's coming, run. Saying that, Qian Yod staggered towards the door to escape. Explain clearly, who's coming? Song Zong grabbed him, refusing to let him leave. Xian Yod was on the verge of tears. Let me go, let me go quickly. The Siberian tiger is coming, the male tiger of that female tiger is coming. Run now, or we'll all die. What? The three men were shocked, the male tiger from the zoo is coming? How does it know we're here? I, I don't know, all I know is if it sees what I have in my hands, all four of us will die. Xian Yod threw the cloth bag in his hand onto the dining table, causing several people to try to escape. Song Zong and the others also realized the danger, exchanged glances, and rushed towards the door, but it was too late. Boom! The wooden private room door suddenly burst open with a big hole. A huge tiger head stretched in, roaring angrily at the group. The four people were scared and kept retreating, backing up to the corner of the wall. Fat tiger is here. As soon as it got off the car, it found Chen Yud's location by scent and charged straight at him. Shin Chen and Honey Badger Tony chased desperately from behind and finally caught up. They saw Fat Tiger stuck in the big hole of the wooden door, roaring angrily inside. Tiger brother, don't be impulsive. Shin Chen was startled and grabbed Fat Tiger's tail tightly, preventing it from rushing in to bite people. Annoyed, Fat Tiger shook its tail, throwing Shin Chen out, then slapped the wooden door with its claws. The five centimeter thick wooden door was smashed by its paw, creating a big hole. Roar! It roared again, continuously striking and smashing the wooden door of the private room. Swish! Before Fat Tiger could rush in, a black figure had already slipped in. It was Flathead Tony. It was even more excited than Fat Tiger, opening its mouth as soon as it got in. The room was filled with screams. Then, Fat Tiger finally tore down the entire wooden door and was about to rush in to bite the people inside. Shin Shen had already climbed up and held onto it tightly. Tiger brother, didn't you promise me to come and ask what's going on? 
Why do you want to eat people as soon as you arrive? Roar! Fat Tiger angrily roared, Shin Chen, let go of me. I smell something wrong. Let me bite someone first before we talk. Beasts are most sensitive to smells. As soon as Fat Tiger got off the car, it smelled the kind of bloody scent that only animals could emit, instantly turning its eyes red. At that moment, it had long thrown its promise to Shin Chen out the window and just wanted to bite someone to vent its anger first. Damn it! You guys, run faster! Do you want the tiger to bite you to death? Shin Shen held on to Fat Tiger and didn't let go, dragging himself into the private room. He saw the four men still cowering in the corner, shivering, and couldn't help but curse. Xian Yud also wanted to run. He was bitten on the ear by the sudden attack of Honey Badger, screaming in pain. Song Zong and the other two saw Shin Shen blocking the tiger, and immediately ran towards the door. Wait for me. Seeing the three of them running out, Xian Yud was horrified and desperately broke free from the Honey Badger. Put. He shook off the honey badger, but it bit off his ear. Xian Yud screamed in pain, following the others to escape through the door. Shen Shen, what are you doing? Fat Tiger saw Xian Yud and the others running away, opened its mouth in anger, and roared at Shen Shen. Only Flathead Tony remained silent and chased after them. In the room, only Shen Shen and Fat Tiger were left. Shen Shen punched Fat Tiger and stood up. You're not trustworthy. You said you believed me and let me ask what's going on before helping you escape. How can you just bite people as soon as you see them? He is Qian Yud. He is the zoo director. So what if he's Qian Yud? Let me ask first. What else do you need to ask? Look at the table. What's all this? Fat Tiger's roar almost deafened Shin Chen, who subconsciously turned his head to look. Buzz. Shin Chen was stunned on the spot. He saw a mess on the table, all kinds of meat that he couldn't name. But there was one thing he recognized. Bear paw. A half-eaten bear paw was casually placed in the plate. Shin Chen felt a chill all over his body and instinctively looked up. On the wall of the private room hung a propaganda poster with the words shining brightly on it. Reproduce century-old delicacies taste mountain and see delicacies introduction of our dishes, eight treasures of beasts, bear paw, elephant trunk, camel hump, gorilla lips, deer tail, monkey brain, leopard fetus, rhino tail, eight treasures of birds, red swallow, flying dragon, quail, swan, partridge, colorful sparrow, ring dove, red-headed eagle. Shin Chen finished reading the introduction on the wall, then looked at the dishes on the plate, a huge sense of nausea rose in his stomach, almost making him vomit on the spot. In that instant, he understood everything. Where have all the animals from the zoo that have been disappearing gone to? He came to his senses and found that Pang who had already run out again at some point. Shin Chen hurried to chase after him, but was suddenly attracted by a package on the dining table. He opened the package and saw what was inside. At this moment, many fast-running animals had already arrived here. African lions, leopards, gorillas, vultures. They followed Tiger Brothers' call and tracked all the way here. The four people who were about to run out of the door saw this and were so scared that they turned and ran into the nearby woods. Pingtuj continuously made calls to attract other animals, while relentlessly pursuing the four people. Pang who also ran out, leaping onto the roof and roaring. He gave a command to all the animals. Catch them! All the animals seemed to smell the scent of their kind and went madly rushing into the woods. When Shin Chen chased out, there was no trace of the animals. He cursed angrily and ran after them. At this moment, the taxi driver Lao Lu, who brought Shin Chen here, was scared to death. He realized that he seemed to have caused a big disaster. It's a matter of life and death. Lao Lu hurriedly took out his phone and dialed the emergency management bureau's hotline. The call was quickly transferred to Huang Xingjun. Lao Lu panicked and said, Hello? I'm calling the police, I'm at a farmhouse outside the city, please come quickly. Many animals have gone crazy here, they are going to bite people to death. Huang Shengjun was furious on the phone. Shin Shen, this is all your fault. Sir, find a place to hide immediately, our team will be there soon. Lao Lu cried, I'm fine, they didn't bite me. They are heading towards the farmhouse owners, please hurry, if you're late, the animals will have finished their meal. Damn it. Huang Shengjun cursed and hung up the phone. In the late night in the mountains, dozens of cars with flashing lights rushed over. In the dense forest, Shin Chen wandered in it step by step. He hesitated whether to pick up the bag dropped by Qian Yud. If Tiger Brother saw what was in the bag, the fate of those people would definitely be death. But he couldn't do such a thing behind Tiger Brother's back. Another roar from Pang who came from ahead. Shin Chen heard it. Brothers, surround them. It seemed that the animals had already surrounded Qian Yud and the others. Shin Chen thought for a moment and decisively turned away. Ahead, at the foot of the hill, Xian Yud and the other three were blocked by the animals at the foot of a hill, with no way to escape. The four huddled together, looking at the dozens of pairs of green glowing eyes around them, 
trembling with fear. Gentlemen, spare us. We were wrong, Tiger Lord. We will count out to you, is that okay? Help! Is there anyone to save us? They knelt on the ground, scared out of their wits, continuously kowtowing and begging for mercy. Pang who remained unmoved, staring coldly at them, leading all the animals to slowly close the encirclement. At this moment, all the animals let out angry roars. They were not fools. When they smelled the bloody smell of the farmhouse. When they saw the scattered animal bones in the back mountain. When these people knelt down and begged for mercy. All the animals had already understood the whereabouts of those brothers and kin. They didn't die of illness, nor did they lend themselves out. Even they were not sold alive to others. They were eaten. Brother Tiger, let's go. What are you hesitating for after eating them? Yes, Brother Tiger, if we don't bite them to death, how can we face our dead brothers and sisters? Are you still afraid that humans will kill us? Just bite them to death, and we can hide in the mountains. The animals kept urging Brother Tiger to give the order to bite the four people in front of them. Fat Tiger shook his head and let out a low growl. Wait, they are doomed, I'm waiting for Shin Shin. I want him to ask how my sister is doing. The animals became restless and agitated, their patience wearing thin. Fat Tiger roared to the sky, calling for Shin Chen. Shin Chen was about to walk out of the dense forest when he heard Fat Tiger's call. Shin Chen, where are you? We are in the dense forest, come over quickly. I blocked them, please help me ask where my wife has gone. Fat Tiger's repeated calls made Shin Chen unable to move his feet. He had intended to seek revenge for the animals, to pretend he hadn't seen anything. But Fat Tiger's calls weighed heavily on his legs. In the distance, the lights of numerous cars lit up. Huang Xingjuan's shouts came, the capture team had arrived. The crowd began to search the dense forest for rescue. Shin Shen gritted his teeth, turned back, and ran deeper into the forest. Brother Tiger, I'm here. Shin Shen, carrying a package, emerged from the darkness. All the animals looked at him. Help! Help! Save me! Quick, call the police, these beasts have surrounded us. Come over quickly, drive them away. Xian Yun and others saw someone approaching and instinctively called for help. Shin Shen didn't even look at him, but went straight to Fat Tiger. Fat Tiger looked at him. Shin Shen, you're here. Quickly ask them where my sister has gone. Shin Shen instinctively tightened the package in his hand, feeling a pang in his heart. He he, brother Tiger, the capture team is coming, you have two choices now. Shin Shen, I told you to ask where my sister has gone. Not to say anything else. Fat Tiger impatiently shouted. Shin Shen seemed not to hear, but continued speaking on his own. Brother Tiger, the first choice. Surround them, wait for the capture team to arrive, catch these people. You will be taken back to the zoo. However, they will all be judged, they will receive the punishment they deserve. I promise you, not one of them will escape. I guarantee it. I told you to ask where my sister has gone, Shin Shen, didn't you hear me? Roar! Fat Tiger, hearing him ramble on, opened his mouth wide in anger and roared at Shin Shen. The roaring echoed through the mountains and forests, and the entire suburb could hear Fat Tiger's anger. In the distance, the capture team heard the commotion and ran even faster. Shen Shen bit his lip and continued. Brother Tiger, listen to me, there's no time. The second choice, if you are tired of zoo life, stand behind me, and we will wait together for the capture team to come. I will explain to them that I will release you. I will take you to the old forests in the northeast, take Ravis to the primeval jungle, and take Tony back to its homeland. Shin Shen looked at the animals in front of him and spoke word by word. I promise all of you animals, no matter how much it costs, I will send each one of you back to nature, no matter where your hometown is, no matter how far. I guarantee that you will completely leave the zoo. Shin Shen looked at the four trembling people. As for them, let them go. The police station will naturally catch them. Don't let the capture team misunderstand and shoot you. The most important thing is that once you take a bite, you can never return to nature in this lifetime. All the animals were stunned. Shin Shen asked what this meant. Some animals couldn't help but show a longing expression. Could it be true that we can really leave the zoo and return to nature? Some animals instinctively resisted. They have been in the zoo since birth, and if they leave, they wouldn't even know how to find food. But most of the animals were tired of the narrow and cramped iron cages, as well as being observed by people year after year. Hearing that Shin Shen was going to send them home, they all lowered their heads and began to contemplate. For a moment, the restless emotions eased a lot. Fat Tiger also froze, staring blankly at Shin Shen, not knowing what to think. Only Tony, with a flat head, looked at Shin Shen coldly, unmoved. Tiger brother, don't be fooled by him, humans are not trustworthy. Tony suddenly leaped up and bit Shin Shen's hand holding the package. Shin Shen winced in pain and instinctively shook off the package. 
The package flew into the sky, and everything inside spilled out and fell to the ground. When all the animals saw what was inside the package, they were all shocked. Tiger bones. The package was full of tiger bones. A whole package of tiger bones spilled out. There were even four tiger claws, bloodily displayed in front of everyone. Roar. Howl. Fat Tiger saw the tiger bones and claws on the ground, and finally understood where his sister had gone. His sister was dead. These four humans killed his sister. It roared to the sky, emitting a terrifying roar. Then, it pounced suddenly and knocked Shin Chen down. Shin Chen, why did you keep this from me? It roared, tears of blood flowing from its tiger eyes. Shin Chen was heavily knocked to the ground, with several ribs broken. He struggled to get up, looking at Fat Tiger. Tiger brother, Sister Ao is dead. I didn't want you to be killed by people too. The capture team is here, you must not harm them. Let them go. They will receive the punishment they deserve. I promise you. Promise my ass, I'm going to tear them apart now. Fat Tiger roared. Bite them to death for me. Fat Tiger fiercely pounced towards the four people. All the animals, upon hearing Tiger Brother's command, also pounced towards the four people. The four people let out a scream and were knocked down by the wild animals. Bang! A gunshot! Huang Sheng Jun and the rescue team finally arrived. Shoot! Shoot! Use live ammunition! Kill them! Huang Sheng Jun saw that four people were being torn apart by this group of wild animals and ordered in panic. All the members of the capture team immediately raised their guns. Bang! 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 A series of gunshots rang out. Don't shoot! A figure suddenly flew over and stood in front of them. It was Xin Chen. Huang Xing Jun was so scared that he hurriedly ordered his men to stop shooting. It was too late. After several bursts of blood mist erupted from Xin Chen's body, he fell to the ground. The animals that were tearing at Qian Yid were stunned. They let go and stared blankly at Xin Chen. Xin Chen felt intense pain all over his body, struggling to turn his body. Tiger brother, Li Weisi, Tony. Don't move. As long as you don't move, they won't harm you. Please. I beg you. Xin Chen said, feeling darkness closing in as he slowly closed his eyes. Just as Fat Tiger and the others were stunned, a series of tranquilizer darts were shot at them. All the animals suddenly felt weak all over, collapsing to the ground and unable to get up. Save him. Huang Xing Jun shouted, frantically ordering people to lift the unconscious Xin Chen and take him to the ambulance. System prompt, the fourth ordeal nightmare in the quadrangle animal attack has ended. Now begins the comprehensive evaluation of this calamity rating. System detected that the host has left the courtyard area. System considers the host resisting the calamity, resulting in a significant decrease in this rating. Final rating result is B level. B level rating reward, intermediate physical recovery technique, can recover gunshot wounds and instant injuries such as crushing, cutting, impact damage in a short period of time. System detects unexpected situation, initiates detection program. System prompt, due to the host being bitten by a wild animal honey badger, unexpectedly gained the ability to share with the honey badger. Shared abilities are as follows. 1. Courage and persistence, the host will possess the excellent qualities of the honey badger's fearlessness and invincibility, also gaining the system title, indifferent to life and death, ready to fight. 2. Sharing the honey badger's powerful detoxification ability, the host will gradually develop immunity antibodies against poison injuries. 3. Sharing the honey badger's anti-strike ability, gaining top defense capability, soft hedgehog armor. A long string of voices echoed in Xin Chen's mind. Xin Chen heard it clearly, but he couldn't open his eyes or mouth. He couldn't help but curse in his heart, leaving the courtyard and being considered as resisting the calamity? If he ignored it and let Fat Tiger and the others rush out, not only would the people in the farmhouse be bitten to death, but half of Zhangzhou would be in chaos for a while. But the B-level reward given by the system is still good. Intermediate physical recovery technique This is like having another life-saving ability. Even if he suffers gunshot wounds, crushing injuries, or other instant injuries, he won't be afraid of dying on the spot. Seeing this ability, a bold idea arose in Xin Chen's mind. If there were the Sunflower Manual or the Evil Repelling Sword Manual in the world, could he become the best in the world? At the very least, he could become Pinocchio, as long as he kept cutting, could he grow longer? Host reminder, if you keep thinking about it, the wound will heal and scab immediately when cut. Please feel free to try it when you have time. Hearing Shin Chen's crazy idea, the system couldn't help but issue a reminder. Shin Chen was startled and decisively gave up the idea of becoming Pinocchio. As for unexpectedly sharing Tony's abilities, it made him pleasantly surprised. Before losing consciousness, Tony bit Shin Chen's wrist, causing him to drop the tiger bone of the tigress, unexpectedly sharing Tony's abilities. And there were three in total. 
The first one, courage and persistence, Shin Chan was speechless. Even if he didn't share these two abilities, he was the kind of person who faced difficulties head on, and gaining these two excellent virtues it most changed him from not fearing death to not fearing not dying. The second shared ability was impressive, Shin Chen became immune to all poisons. One of Tony's honey badger's unique abilities was complete immunity to poisons. No matter how severe the neurotoxins, cytotoxins, hematoxins, etc. As long as he slept, he would fully recover. This meant that Shin Chen became an antibody to any poison, just like a little cow riding a roller coaster, flipping around. As for the third shared ability, soft hedgehog armor, Tony's anti-strike ability. Tony could single-handedly fight lions, wild wolves, and even African longsnout crocodiles, relying on its soft skin, with flesh and bones separated. When the opponent bit down, they could only bite its skin, unable to reach the flesh. Although rated as B, Shin Chen, who gained Tony's bug animal abilities, felt secretly pleased. He wondered how those animals were doing, and Shin Chen finally fell into a deep sleep. At this moment, he had just been urgently taken to the First People's Hospital of Zhengzhou City. The old dean had received the notification from above about the animal attack incident in the outskirts of the mountains and forests, with five people severely injured, prompting him to immediately organize the hospital's capable staff for rescue. Quick, save Shin Chen first. He's been shot. It's a matter of life and death. The medical staff accompanying the arrest team pushed Shin Chen into the hospital like crazy. Following closely behind were Qian Yud and Song Zong, who were bitten to a bloody pulp, along with four others. The old dean, upon seeing Shin Chen again, rushed over with a heavy heart. What's the situation? Where was he shot? The medical staff hurriedly said, two shots to the chest, one shot to the abdomen, it seems like there are four or five shots on the legs as well. It seems like they all hit arteries, blood is spraying everywhere. Quickly prepare a large amount of blood plasma and an extracorporeal membrane oxygenation machine, he might not make it. The old dean was shocked, he hadn't expected Shin Chen's injuries to be so severe. He's practically riddled with bullets. Without further ado, he had the nurse push the stretcher into the emergency room. The other four people behind them were also in bad shape, they were attacked by angry animals like Pang Hu and Reeves, and within a few seconds, they were torn to shreds. The old dean took a glance and shuddered. He couldn't even distinguish their noses and mouths. Send these people in as well, notify their families, they probably won't make it. The old dean was in a panic, he was instructed to save these people to prevent serious social repercussions. But looking at their injuries, each one was more severe than the last, he had no confidence. Notify all surgical specialists and chief-level doctors, follow me to save the wounded with all our might. He shouted, leading a dozen surgeons into the emergency room. Dean, who should we save first? Even though they were seasoned veterans, seeing five critically injured patients arrive simultaneously left them at a loss. Save Shin Chen first. The old dean didn't hesitate at all. The news spread quickly, there was a farmhouse amusement park on the outskirts run by the zoo director and several businessmen, who had secretly taken animals from the zoo, killed them, and smuggled them for sale. They even turned many precious protected animals into dishes for sale, it was truly despicable. These people were lucky not to have been killed by the animals, and now they wanted to be saved instead of Shin Chen, how could that be possible? We'll follow your lead. All the doctors nodded and rushed towards Shin Chen's location. Once all the monitoring devices were set up on Shin Chen, they were all dumbfounded. Blood pressure, normal. Heart rate, normal. Blood oxygen level, normal. Over a dozen monitoring data showed that all of Shin Chen's values were normal. What was going on? The old dean quickly grabbed a pair of scissors and cut off all of Shin Chen's clothes. He was stunned. Wow! All the doctors and nurses exclaimed in amazement. Shin Chen's body was snow white and robust, his physique was flawless. It made men silent and women teary-eyed. Many unmarried nurses even discreetly licked their lips. This was considered critically injured and dying? This was considered riddled with bullets? The arrest team outside were simply talking nonsense. There wasn't a single scratch on Shin Chen's body, he was in perfect condition. Dean, come take a look, these people are in bad shape. A nurse responsible for monitoring the four critically injured patients exclaimed. The old dean said impatiently, let's go, let's save them. I knew this guy would be fine, worried for nothing. Everyone rolled their eyes and ran over to organize the rescue for Qian Yud and the others. As they were leaving, two single female nurses even took the opportunity to touch Shin Chen's chest. That feeling was amazing. With no one paying attention to him, everyone focused on rescuing the other four people. Ten minutes later, the old dean suddenly shouted, throw Shin Chen out for me. That snoring is so loud, I'm going deaf. Online, netizens were still in a state of excitement. Shin Chen seeking revenge on a tiger had everyone buzzing, especially the scene of him racing a tiger in a car, 
which was turned into a meme and circulated all over the internet. At the same time, netizens who have figured out the truth began to express their opinions. Most people firmly support Shin Chen's choice, believing that they should lead the animals to seek revenge and retaliate. The actions of Qian Yud and others have made conscientious netizens hate them, selling live animals can be forgiven, but their cruel killing of protected animals, selling animal fur in bones, even daring to eat nationally protected animals, this touches everyone's bottom line. Only a few people say that Shin Chen is a traitor, actually taking the animal's side, in this situation, it should be handed over to the capture team for handling, now four people are seriously injured, causing panic among the people. Yen Bingbing saw these comments and directly started arguing in the live broadcast room, arguing with them. Anyway, she is no longer a host now, there is no need to stand in the middle ground, blindly supporting Shen Shen. However, the argument soon stopped, Yen Bingbing received a message from Huang Xingjun, Shen Shen was critically injured and now has been taken to the hospital for treatment. She hurried to the hospital, just as she walked to the door of the emergency room, she saw medical staff coming in and out in a panic. Yen Bingbing grabbed a nurse and asked anxiously, Nurse, how are the people inside? The nurse shook her off, let go of me quickly, two people have died inside, the others are still being treated, but the situation is not optimistic, I won't tell you, wait outside. After speaking, the nurse rushed back into the emergency room. What? Yen Bingbing felt her legs go weak, she sat down against the wall, feeling anxious and confused. She began to regret letting Shen Shen meddle in, helping the animals, it would have been better if he didn't interfere. This wouldn't have happened now. In the live broadcast room, netizens were also stunned. Could it be that brother Shin is really in trouble this time? Just now the nurse said two people have died, the others are still being treated. According to brother Shin's invincible bad luck, it is very likely that one of the two dead is him. But no one dared to say it out loud. Bing bing, they are still being treated inside, don't worry, we believe brother Shin will be fine. Brother Shin is lucky, how could something happen? Bing bing don't cry, we will wait with you. My dad is a doctor at Zhengzhou Hospital, I just asked. Several people inside are seriously injured, they may all end up. Upstairs, shut up, no one thinks you're mute if you don't speak. Netizens gradually fell silent, only silently accompanying Yen Bingbing outside waiting for the final result. At 3 o'clock in the morning outside the emergency room, there were only flashing red lights, hurried medical staff, and a worried Yen Bingbing. Gradually, even the hospital staff stopped moving back and forth, each person who came out shook their heads and left with heavy steps. Yen Bingbing bit her lip tightly, afraid to go forward and ask again, fearing to hear the news that would make her despair. In the end, the old dean of the people's hospital let a few nurses out, looking tired and pale. Old dean. Yen Bingbing struggled to stand up, ran over to look at the old man. Is there anyone left in my family? Inside? She asked incoherently, just not daring to ask if Shen Shen was still alive. The old dean sighed as he looked at Yen Bingbing, shaking his head. After our best efforts, only one survived, the others were too seriously injured, lost too much blood, all. Alas, it's really unfortunate. One survived? Who is it? Is it Shin Chen? Yen Bingbing grabbed the old dean's sleeve, asking anxiously. The old dean looked at her strangely, no, it's not, it's the director of the zoo, Chen Yid. Although he is injured all over, with limbs missing, his physical condition is slightly better than the others. The old dean rambled on. But he noticed that Yen Bingbing had already closed her eyes and fainted. Hey, what's wrong with you? Is it worth fainting over such a small matter? Bingbing. The old dean and a nurse beside him hurriedly supported her, pinched her philtrum, patted her forehead, and finally let Yen Bingbing wake up. Dean, can I? Can I go in and see? Yen Bingbing, who had just woken up, burst into tears and was about to walk towards the emergency room. The others hurriedly stopped her. What are you going in to see? It's bloody in there. He will be taken away soon. Are you not afraid of having nightmares? I'm not afraid. I want to send him off on his final journey. Yen Bingbing's mind was filled with the image and smile of Shin Chen. Has this man finally passed away? Send who? Are you talking about Shin Chen? He was taken out a long time ago. He should have left the hospital by now, right? The old dean's expression became even more strange. Taken out? And he has already left the hospital? Yen Bingbing felt a pang in her heart, and tears kept flowing. Could it be that she wouldn't even see Shen Chen for the last time? In the live broadcast room, there was a sense of sadness. Farewell, brother Shen. Regret that the extraordinary figure has passed. There will never be another unfortunate person like him. Angry with 100 rockets, bidding farewell to brother Shen. Wuhu take off, brother Shen is the brightest star in the sky. For a moment, gifts filled the live broadcast room, as everyone bid their final condolences to Shen Chen. The more the old dean looked at Yen Bingbing, the more something seemed off, so he quickly said, No way, Bingbing. 
You don't think Shen Shen has also died, do you? Ah, Yan Bingbing was stunned. The person who could kill him probably hasn't been born yet. You, foolishly waiting at the door for half a day, couldn't you ask a nurse or doctor? The old dean scolded Yan Bingbing impatiently. Shen Shen had been sleeping soundly in the emergency room, but the thunderous snoring had become unbearable, so he had to leave. Now, no one knew where he was. Xiao Shang, where did you push Shen Shen to? The old dean asked a nurse. Brother Shen? Oh, don't mention it, I pushed him to the ward, and the patients protested heavily. I pushed him to the corridor, but the family members in the corridor objected, so I had to push him to the nurse's restroom. He should be waking up by now. Nurse Xiao Zhang said with a hint of resentment. Such a handsome man snoring, it was like eating a pancake with spicy strips, unbearable. Everyone laughed when they heard this, except for Yin Bingbing, who looked confused. The turnaround was too fast. Not only was this guy not dead, but he was also sleeping soundly? The netizens in the live broadcast room exclaimed again, this had happened several times. Shen Shen had faked his death three times, tricking them into giving him a lot of gifts. Who could stand this? However, since Shen Shen was not dead, everyone breathed a sigh of relief and felt happy for him. The group led Yen Bingbing to the nurse's restroom. Before they reached the door, they heard loud snoring inside. He's still sleeping. Bing Bing, wake him up and send him home to sleep, he'll have to pay if he sleeps here. The old dean said impatiently, and everyone laughed again. After experiencing such a serious incident, Shen Shen could still sleep soundly, there was no one like him. As for the gunshot wound, it didn't even hit brother Shen. This unlucky guy even managed to dodge bullets. Yen Bing Bing suppressed a smile, walked to the door, and heard two people inside talking. Oh my, he should change his name to Shinju Jiki. This looks, this figure, this skin, he's simply a Korean appa. I think calling him Shingunshuai is also fine, it's more in line with his own conditions. Wang Meili, where are you looking? Aren't you embarrassed? Han Xiaoya, are you still able to say that to me, your saliva has fallen on the appa? Hey, I'm willing to, I tell you, from now on, I won't respect anyone else, only Shinjujiki. Bah, shameless, don't you see my Shingunshua, will you respect him? Jujiki is mine, don't try to snatch him from me. Get lost, Genshua is mine, keep your hands off. The two seemed to be arguing over something inside, unwilling to give in to each other. When Yen Bingbing heard this, she couldn't hold back anymore and pushed the door open and rushed in. What are you two doing? Bang! Yen Bingbing pushed the door open. The two nurses were startled. At this time, Shin Chan was still sound asleep. He was lying flat on the mobile bed, completely relaxed. But because his clothes had been cut off in the emergency room earlier, he was only covered with a sheet. The two nurses were standing by Shen Shen's bed, discussing something, not expecting to be discovered. Shameless. Yen Bingbing spat out, expressing her indignation towards the two nurses. She thought Shen Shen was being bullied. The two nurses looked ashamed and embarrassed. Director, chief, why are you all here? They were about to cry. This scene was so embarrassing that they could never turn things around in their lives. The old director waved his hand to dismiss the two nurses, then patted Shen Shen on the shoulder. Hey, wake up. Shin Shen, if you disturb the normal operation of my hospital again, I will call the police. Shin Shen was sleeping soundly and suddenly felt a hit, causing him to sit up abruptly. What are you doing? He was angry, feeling exhausted after a night of turmoil. Old director? Shin Shen was about to get angry, but then he saw the old director standing next to him with a stern expression, surrounded by a group of doctors and nurses. Everyone couldn't help but chuckle, watching him. Only he could sleep so soundly in the emergency room without anesthesia. Why are you all looking at me? The old director said impatiently, Are you awake? Put on your clothes and go home. Shin Shen looked at himself, feeling overwhelmed. With so many people looking at him, he quickly covered himself up. Oh my! Who stripped me again? This is outrageous! Yen Bingbing had rushed over and couldn't bring Shin Shen's clothes with her. In the end, Shin Shen reluctantly borrowed a white coat to cover himself up. Goodbye, old director, chief, and nurses. I'll bring you some delicious food next time I come. He and Yen Bingbing stood at the hospital entrance, waving to their old friends. The old director's face darkened, never see you again. Please leave now. I found that the chance of death for patients rescued in the same emergency room as you increases by 80%. Don't harm them. Shen Shen shrugged and had to leave with Yen Bingbing. On the way, Yen Bingbing asked Shen Shen angrily, Shen Shen, were you drugged in the hospital? How could you sleep so deeply? If he hadn't been sleeping so soundly, she wouldn't have been so worried and scared. Shin Shen just smiled and didn't explain. In fact, he had a dream where he went back to his time in the orphanage. In the orphanage, everyone avoided him, no one wanted to play with him, 
except for an older sister who was 10 years older than him, who stayed by his side all the time. But the good times didn't last long. After the sister was adopted and taken away, she disappeared without a trace. The scene Shin Shen dreamed of this time was similar to the one he dreamed of in the courtyard, with the older sister playing with him. However, this time, when the sister was about to tell him something mysterious, she was awakened by the old director. He was also puzzled. He had dreamt of her twice recently. Was there a hidden meaning behind it? Two days had passed since the zoo escape incident. The investigation results revealed that Qian Yud had deceived and collaborated with three unscrupulous businessmen to smuggle and sell protected animals, which was a serious crime. Although he was rescued, he was sent directly to prison and was in a pitiful state, unlikely to ever come out. As for the other three businessmen, they were severely injured and died, saving the trouble of another trial. However, the news did not receive much coverage, minimizing the impact. The animals were unharmed and were all anesthetized and returned to the zoo. As for holding them criminally responsible? How is it possible? There is no animal prison in the world. The final report stated that due to mismanagement by Qian Yud, the zoo had significant management loopholes, leading to the escape of the animals. Qian Yud is also suspected of trafficking animals, compounding the crimes. The report even mentioned that after the animals escaped, they kidnapped two innocent civilians, causing them severe physical and emotional harm. After investigation, the management company of the zoo was ordered to compensate each of the two victims with 500,000 yuan as an apology. Netizens across the country were almost laughing to death. Shin Shen caused a commotion in Zhengzhou at midnight and received another 1 million yuan in compensation. Coupled with the barrage of messages from netizens in the live broadcast, the fourth calamity brought him nearly 2 million in income. Tiger brother is really something, coming out once is like sending me warmth. In the courtyard, Shin Shen looked at the balance in his account and couldn't stop smiling. Forget it, how can you be so heartless when Tiger Brother is in such a bad state? I heard he hasn't eaten or drunk anything these days. Yen Bingbing put on her coat, packed her bag, and was about to take Shin Shen out. They decided to visit their friends at the zoo, although they hadn't spent much time together, they had already formed a deep friendship. Especially after Shin Shen took a bullet for all the animals, they were willing to give their lives for him. It is estimated that only the old park director Li Fugue could match that level of friendship. Just as they were talking, Li Fugue called. Uncle Fugue? Why did you suddenly call me? Shin Shen saw Li Fugue's call and wondered if he needed to pay the rent again. Ah, there was a sigh on the other end of the phone, and Li Fugue said somewhat dejectedly, If I don't call you, will you demolish my house? He he, that's not true. Except for a group of monkeys running all over the place, the other animals are staying obediently in the yard and not entering the house. Shin Shin didn't have the heart to mention that Rivas had collapsed the bed. Li Fugue didn't speak for a while, followed by a few more sighs. Actually, I saw the news that night, but I didn't know whether to stop you or how to persuade those animals. I didn't expect you to be able to communicate with animals and ultimately resolve the situation. Thank you. Li Fugue's mood was actually very complicated, it was a struggle between humanity and reason. If he had called that night, should he have persuaded the animals to give up, or let them seek revenge on Qian Yud? Giving up meant letting them watch their enemy roam freely. But not persuading them meant these animals would definitely do outrageous things. He could only remain silent. In the end, Xin Chen made the choice for him and kept the situation under control. Now, including Huang Xingjun, Li Fugui, Yan Bingbing, and others, no one would question whether Xin Chen had ulterior motives that night. Who is more important, animals or humans? Please take care of them for me, say hello for me, and tell them I'll come back to see them next spring. Shin Shen agreed, took the husky at the door, and headed to the zoo with Yen Bingbing. After a few days of rectification, the zoo had reopened today. Due to the animals' performance that day, the park was packed with visitors today, with many people from out of town bringing their children to visit. However, Shin Shen and the others encountered trouble as soon as they arrived at the zoo entrance. I'm sorry, both of you can go in, but this dog cannot. At the zoo entrance, the ticket inspector looked at them with a face of despair. These three troublemakers are here again. Shin Shen, Yen Bingbing, and a husky named Gosher were on the permanent blacklist of Zhengzhou Zoo. The new park director had issued a strict order that anyone could enter, even without buying a ticket. But these three troublemakers were an exception. If you can't stop it, the era named Dog Shang absolutely cannot enter the zoo. The main culprit of the entire escape incident is Dog Shang. If it weren't for it being a dog, it would have been caught long ago. Shin Shen saw the ticket inspector looking uncompromising, so he had to tie Dog Shang at the entrance. Shin Shen, remember to come back early, don't let someone catch me and stew me. Dog Shang lay unhappily at the door. Hey, who is so kind? I'll go thank them with a pair of chopsticks. 
Xin Shan laughed and led Yen Bingbing into the zoo. Just as they entered, a large group of people surrounded them. Among them was a female reporter from Zhengzhou TV station. When she saw Xin Shan, she excitedly thrust the microphone into his face. Brother Shin, it's all over the internet that you are an extremely unlucky person, is that true? As soon as Xin Chen entered, he was recognized by the tourists and the TV crew. People immediately surrounded him, especially the female reporter from Zhengzhou TV station, who happened to be doing a live program, introducing the current situation of the zoo after the escape incident. When she saw Xin Chen, she hurried over. Xin Chen looked puzzled at the camera and became angry upon hearing the host's question. Because his fame was now significant, online he had already acquired a series of nicknames given by netizens. For example, the Grim Reaper's little nephew, the unlucky son of the crooked mouth war god, the toenail of the king of hell, the behind the scenes boss of the broom planet, listen, what a bunch of crappy names. Seeing the female reporter aiming the camera at him, with a large group of tourists around, Shin Shin sternly declared, who is spreading rumors and slandering me. I reserve the right to pursue legal action. How could I possibly be so unlucky? Before he could finish, a system prompt sounded in his mind. Urgent evacuation reminder. A large tree behind the host is about to fall. Damn. Shin Shen turned around and saw a pine tree about to collapse. Get up quickly. The tree is falling. He shouted, pushing the crowd away. The next second. Bang. A thick pine tree fell beside Shin Shen, narrowly missing his head. The tourists scattered in shock. Damn, risking their lives. How dare they join in Shin's excitement. The female reporter stared blankly at Shin Shen. Um, Mr. Shin, are you considering retracting what you just said? Shin Shen was fuming. This is too much. He had just denied being unlucky, and a tree fell. Did even God find it unbearable? At the same time, the netizens in the live broadcast room of Zhengzhou TV station were laughing hysterically. Ha, huh, I told the host not to get too close. Now look, it almost ended in disaster. Only our goddess Bing Bing dares to stay by Shen's side, no one else can. Thinking that Bing Bing has become Shen Chen's girlfriend, I feel like crying. I wonder why Shen Chen came to the zoo again, is it his daily routine to court death? The female host deeply regretted interviewing this guy. The zoo had just reopened after much effort, and if Shen Chen caused it to close again, she would face a lot of criticism. She hesitated, not knowing whether to stay or leave. Yen Bing Bing gave her a way out. Let's go, Shen Chen. Miss, we are not accepting interviews, thank you. Shen Shen felt like he had been granted a reprieve and quickly ran off with Yen Bingbing. The park staff rushed over to inspect why the pine tree had suddenly fallen. After a thorough check, they concluded that it had been unstable due to the rain and thunder the previous night. The passing crowd caused it to sway, and it happened to fall when Shen Shen stood there. Coincidence, it was just a coincidence. The female host clenched her fist as she watched Shen Shen walk away. No, I must interview him. Who doesn't encounter a coincidence once in a lifetime? It was just an accident. No way, no way. Host, I advise you not to rush up and court death. Shen Lao Gu is such a jinx, everyone avoids him when they see him. Why are you going up there? Ah, perfect. Bing Bing is not live streaming. Let's follow the host to see what Shen Lao Gu is up to today. The netizens no longer tried to dissuade the female host from courting death, eagerly watching. Soon, many people heard that the live broadcast room of Zhengzhou TV was going to interview Shen Chen, and they all rushed in to watch. The station manager was ecstatic. Since the start of their live broadcast room, they had never had over a thousand viewers, and now in just a few minutes, it had skyrocketed to over a hundred thousand. He quickly informed the on-site host and cameraman. Xiao Wu, Xiao Lu, you must keep a close eye on Shen Shen, don't let him leave your camera's sight. Leader, we promise to complete the mission. The two had never been so valued, suddenly feeling energized. The station manager wiped away tears of emotion, our employees all have accident insurance, you can go boldly, the station will remember you. The two looked stunned, chasing after him as if facing death. Shen Shen had already brought Yen Bing Bing to where Levi was staying. The Gorilla Exhibition Hall. This was indoors, Levi sat on a rock yawning. Not far away, another gorilla was grooming its fur, although the two gorillas were close, they had no communication between them. Levi was excited to see Shen Shen had come. Because of the last incident, all the animals were worried about how Shen Shen was doing, but the caretaker reassured everyone that Shen Shen was fine. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Roar. Roar. Shin Shen, you came to see me. Hey, got a cigarette? Beer is fine too. Levi gestured to him eagerly. Shin Shen was puzzled. Bing Bing, didn't you give it a Li Fugue stash last time? Why is it asking me for a cigarette now? Is this guy addicted? Yeah, Levi, it's only been a few days, and you finished a whole pack of cigarettes? Yen Bing Bing was also surprised. 
This guy had such a big smoking habit. Shen Shen, can you tell your wife not to look at me like that? I'm worried, ever since Helif left me, she completely ignores me, so why not smoke? Sucking on fingers, Levi gestured to the side, indicating the female gorilla was Helif. Shin Shen chuckled at the words. I don't have a cigarette, but do you want to win back your ex-girlfriend? I have a way. Levi's eyes lit up. What way? Nearby tourists saw Shin Chan actually communicating with a gorilla and became interested, gathering around. Some recognized Shin Chan and remembered the live broadcast from that day. Isn't this Shin Lao Gu? Hey, coming to see your top general? Right, it's called Levi, I remember, this guy broke up with Helif. What's up, Shin Lao Gu, do you need help again? Everyone said cheerfully, wanting to see what Shin Chen had in mind. Yen Bing Bing also didn't know what Shin Chen was up to. Shin Chen chuckled, pulled Yen Bing Bing over and said a few words, then took something out of her bag, Yen Bing Bing pushed him away impatiently. He threw the thing in his hand into the cage and whispered a few words. Levi took it eagerly, blushing. Brother Chen, this isn't good, will Helif hit me? I've given you the method, whether you go or not is up to you, hurry up, I'm still waiting to see Fat Tiger and the others. Finally, urged by Shen Shen, Levi slowly approached Helif. Darling, I had a hot dog this morning, do you want to know what kind of dog? Your lap dog. He whispered, his face as red as a tomato. The words were too provocative, even making Helif feel nauseous. Helif was grooming its fur, turned around in surprise. Are you crazy? Levi's face immediately collapsed, and it turned to look at Shen Shen. Shen Shen signaled him to continue, not to be afraid. The tourists didn't know what was going on, they just saw Levi's gesturing and making noises with his hands. Baby, don't blame me, hold me tight. Baby, this is the back of my hand, this is the back of my foot, and you, are my treasure. Baby, can you please shut up, why is my mind full of your voice? After a long string of cheesy love words, Helif was confused. Lee, Levi's, am I really that important to you in your heart? As a simple mother orangutan, when has she ever heard such flirtatious words, her heart was completely intoxicated. Seeing the effect, Levi's began to increase his efforts, bombarding with more affection. Baby, do you know, I caught a cold, because I have no resistance to you at all. Baby, why do you harm me, make me like you so much? Baby, I love you, like a tractor, passionately. Baby, I wandered around in the first half of my life, and in the second half, I just want to cook soup for you. Baby, you are like a philosophy book, I see you and all I want to do is sleep. Levi's felt like he was about to vomit, but he endured and said all the affectionate words that Shin Shen had given him. Helif trembled as she listened, never expecting that Levi's actually loved her to the core. It's on. Levi's quickly took out the things Shin Shen had given him and knelt down on one knee. Baby, these are eyebrow pencils and lipstick that I specially prepared for you. From now on, I am willing to draw eyebrows and apply lipstick for you every day. With this ace up his sleeve, Helif finally broke down. Woo woo, darling. I shouldn't have been mad at you, it's all my fault. She cried and hugged Levi's. Levi's wasn't stupid either, and he responded with a, three, why dash? And then, the two orangutans passionately kissed. Oh my, what's going on here? The tourists were all shocked, no one expected that Helif would actually forgive Levi's. The two orangutans were showing affection in front of so many single dogs. Shin Chen watched with emotion, then hugged Yen Bing Bing next to him and leaned in for a kiss. Baby, get lost. Yen Bingbing's reaction made Shen Shen very sad. The two held hands and squeezed through the crowd, leaving the orangutan pavilion, feeling like the end of a grand journey. Bingbing, Levi's and Helif have finally become a couple. Let's go see Fat Tiger. After leaving the venue, Shen Shen let go of Yen Bingbing's hand, took her backpack with a smile. Well, let's go. Yen Bingbing felt a sense of loss when her hand was released, this guy, playing hard to get, clearly a master in love affairs. She wondered, what method did Shen Shen use to successfully win over Helif? It's unlikely that he did it with just eyebrow pencils and lipstick. She must seize the opportunity to interrogate him about where he learned his flirting skills. Otherwise, one day she might be so moved by him that she wouldn't even realize she's been PUA'd. Along the way, the two encountered many animals in the courtyard and greeted them one by one. When passing by Monkey Mountain, the colorful Monkey King was having salt grains picked off its body by two female monkeys, and another female monkey was peeling a banana for it. When Shin Shen appeared, it was surprised and opened its mouth wide. Kek, Shin Shen, you finally came to see us. Let me see, what gifts did you bring me? Shin Shen threw a pile of snacks over, watching its contented look with envy. Great king, are you the monkey king? How come so many female monkeys surround you? The monkey king immediately became proud. Of course. In this monkey mountain, 3,000 beauties are at my disposal, unlike you, stuck with just one A, can't even afford to say no. 
Xin Shen was sweating profusely. Oh my, you're just teasing Yen Bingbing because she doesn't understand, otherwise she would definitely beat you to death, you scoundrel. Yen Bingbing felt something was wrong and grabbed Xin Shen's ear. Xin Shen, what did Di Shang say? Can you translate it for me? Her eyes narrowed, a cold wind in her words. Ouch, that hurts. Xin Shen exclaimed, Bing Bing, stop twisting, Di Shang said if the three of us play landlord, I have the J as the landlord, you have a pair of A and AQ, and it has a 2. You said you would play the Q to beat my J, or play the pair of A for safety. Of course, I'll play the pair of A. Yen Bing Bing let go of his hand, saying naturally. Xin Shen shrugged, see, you can't beat me. Di Shang burst into laughter, rolling on the ground holding his stomach. Yen Bing Bing was stunned, finally reacting. Her pretty face turned from white to red, then black, a spectacular sight. Xin Shen, I'll make you regret this. Yen Bing Bing picked up a stick and charged at him. Xin Shen yelled and ran into the crowd, feeling wronged. It wasn't me who said it, I just conveyed Di Shang's words in a tactful way. Damn unlucky. When he finally shook off Yen Bing Bing, he breathed a sigh of relief. Looking up, he realized he had reached the beast zone, right in front of Brother Pang Hu's territory. Tiger Mountain. This place always had the most visitors, coming to the zoo without seeing the tigers was a waste. At this moment, the place was crowded with hundreds of tourists scattered on the high spiral staircase, looking down. Shin Shen took a quick look and found that Tiger Mountain was quite spacious, with mountains, water, and greenery. Unlike other animals confined to a small area, but without a female companion, what's the use of a large space for Brother Tiger? He sighed and prepared to go in and chat with Brother Tiger. Shen Lao, I finally caught up with you. Someone suddenly patted Shen Shen's shoulder, panting. It was a female host from Zhangzhou TV. She almost broke her high heels, finally finding Shen Shen in the crowd. No, beauty, why are you following me? Am I that worth your attention? Shen Shen saw her following him again, feeling uneasy. The female host blushed and pointed to the camera behind her. Mr. Shen, I'm live, please watch your words. Shen Shen pursed his lips, I have nothing wrong with my words, I don't want to be interviewed, you better go off work early. I have things to do, let's not chat. With that, he swayed left and right, squeezing into the crowd. What a joke. He was planning to sneak into Tiger Mountain and chat with Brother Tiger, letting the host broadcast the whole thing. The female host was furious, pounding her chest and stomping her feet, leaving the cameraman speechless. Hong Jie, stop pounding, you're swelling. Get lost. Go find Shin Shin quickly, I won't give up until I interview him. The female host, Chao Hong Yu, had a heroic spirit and was determined to interview Shin Shen. Leading the cameraman, she squeezed into the crowd to find Shin Shen's whereabouts. Shin Shen had already seen Brother Pang Hu, who was now lying by the pool, looking melancholic. His face of melancholy puzzled the tourists. What's wrong with this tiger? He's been lying here for half a day? I don't know, I just threw an Oreo to it, and it didn't eat it. Why are you randomly throwing things? The zoo doesn't allow feeding, let me throw a water bottle to stimulate it. With that, a male tourist rushed down and threw a mineral water bottle at Brother Pangu. The bottle still had water in it and hit Brother Pangu's body. With a bang, the mineral water bottle bounced high off Brother Pangu's body. Brother Pangu shuddered, looked up at the crowd. The male tourist was smug, see, this tiger needs stimulation, without it, it's as good as dead. As he spoke, he was suddenly grabbed by the collar. If you throw it again, I'll throw you down. Shin Shen lifted his collar with one hand, causing his feet to leave the ground. The male tourist was scared and quickly waved his hands, begging for mercy. I won't throw it, I won't throw it. Big brother, I was wrong. Shin Shen then let him go and looked down. The commotion above naturally caught the attention of Pang Hu, who lifted his head and saw Shin Shen. Shen Chen, you're here. Pang Hu suddenly stood up, roared towards the sky, looking happy. Shin Shen waved his hand from below. Brother Hu, wait for me, I'll find a place to meet you. Pang Hu excitedly spun around, continuously roaring. Find Lao Zhang, he has the key to Tiger Mountain, ask him to let you in. Pang Hu was so excited, like a child, and ran towards the feeding entrance. However, after not eating for days, he looked emaciated, which made Shin Chen feel a pang of sadness. The tourists beside finally recognized Shin Chen. Wow, isn't this Shin Lao Gu? Are you here to ride the tiger again? Shin Chen, can you give me an autograph? I'm your loyal fan. Everyone, let me bow to Shin Lao Gu on the spot. I admire him so much. The crowd stirred, the animals were ignored, all gathered around Shin Chen curiously. Shin Chen was much more interesting than the tiger. Shin Chen was surrounded by everyone, unable to leave for a while, sweating on his forehead in a hurry. Everyone, please make way, I have something to do, let's chat another day, okay? No way. The crowd unanimously replied, teasingly surrounding him. 
The male tourist who was just threatened by Shen Shen became emboldened. Damn it, no wonder you look familiar, you're the guy who rides the tiger, everyone listen up, he actually threatened me just now, saying he would throw me into the tiger enclosure to be eaten by the tiger. I'm calling the police. I'm going to make the police come and arrest you. As he spoke, he pushed into the crowd. Unbeknownst to him, due to his forceful actions, he happened to push against a father holding a child. The father, pushed by the male tourist, subconsciously took two steps back, lost his balance, and the child in his arms slipped and fell. Boom! Everyone was shocked. Below was the tiger enclosure. The little girl screamed as she fell through the air. At that moment, Xiao Hongyu also squeezed into the crowd. The photographer carrying the camera recorded the entire process. In the live broadcast, netizens exclaimed in unison. A little girl actually fell into the tiger enclosure. A major incident occurred. No way, is Xin Lao Gu having another stroke of bad luck? If so, Xin Chen will be in big trouble. What nonsense are you talking about? Everyone saw it. Clearly the male tourist was pushing and shoving. He accidentally pushed the father to the railing, causing the child to fall. Exactly. What does this have to do with Shen Shen? Those upstairs are just a bunch of crazy dogs barking. Stop talking. Let's see how the little girl is doing. Don't let that tiger eat another person. I heard it killed someone a few days ago. Was there really casualties in the last escape incident? Netizens discussed, but more people's attention was focused inside the tiger enclosure. Tiger Mountain is set up with a suspended sightseeing ladder. A winding steel suspension bridge is built above Tiger Mountain, allowing visitors to view the tigers by walking across the bridge. Due to the fear of visitors jumping into the tiger enclosure to tease the tigers, the distance of the ladder from the ground is very high, at least 7 to 8 meters. This distance, even if the little girl wasn't eaten by the tiger, the fall would still be dangerous. So, at the moment the little girl fell, everyone's hearts were in their throats. Shin Chen was even more anxious, pushing through the crowd to get to the railing. The little girl screamed and fell into the pool below. Splash! The pool water splashed up in a huge spray, instantly covering the girl's head. Nyo nyo! A cry. The father holding the child lifted his leg and climbed over the railing, ready to jump down. But just as he was about to jump, he hesitated. He actually was afraid. He struggled for a few seconds in his heart, not knowing if he would die if he jumped down. He had seen many news reports of zoo tigers injuring people, knowing that tigers do not understand human nature and would instinctively bite and kill humans smaller in size than them. He didn't know if jumping down would be a futile sacrifice. After hesitating for a few seconds, the man actually turned around and jumped back, shouting for help in panic. Lu Wei, hurry and save Nyonyo. A woman suddenly rushed over, grabbing the man and pulling him back. There's a tiger down there. Are you crazy? The father shouted, Joe Xiaofen, calm down, go quickly find the park staff to save Nyonyo. I'll stay here and watch. Watch what? Watch Nyonyo get eaten by a tiger? Smack! The woman slapped him. Lu Wei, I see through you. You cowardly man. Go to hell. The woman called Zhou Xiaofen should be the child's mother. After slapping the man, she jumped down without hesitation. Splash! The woman jumped into the pool and was instantly submerged. Everyone was shocked by this scene. Women are gentle by nature, but become strong for their children. Only in times of danger can one see the hidden strength within a woman. People looked disdainfully at the man, then nervously at the water's surface. Both the mother and child disappeared after falling in, and no one knew how deep the water below was. Shin Shen finally squeezed through the crowd and reached the railing. This is a mess. Shin Shen cursed under his breath, then climbed over the railing. Why did things always go wrong wherever he appeared? Brother Shen, it's dangerous. There's a tiger down there. No, you're not afraid of tigers, but the water below is too deep. Let's wait for the staff. Yeah, the tiger has been hungry for so many days, it might not spare you either. Don't go down. The crowd couldn't help but try to dissuade him. Even the child's father didn't dare to jump, so what heroism were you showing by going down? When there's injustice, a shout is heard, and it's the tiger roaring below. Shin Shin glared at the crowd, thinking to himself that they were more interested in watching the show, recording it was secondary. The third step was to post it on social media. When he got home that night, drinking wine and discussing the day's events with friends. But one should know, these events may have come at the cost of someone else's life. Who the hell thinks about saving people? Shin Shan dived in with a splash. Splash. The third sound of water rang out. This time, Shin Shan didn't disappear in the pool. He resurfaced, shouting, Brother Tiger, come help. Then he dived back in. At the same time, he kept cursing in his heart. Did that grandson who built the pool not fear drowning the tiger too? Even his one. 85 meter height couldn't touch the bottom. 
The fat tiger naturally noticed what was happening and, seeing Shin Shin jump in, it unhesitatingly plunged into the pool. Boom! The crowd was shocked again as the tiger approached. Was it going to eat the three people in the water? In the live stream, netizens also exclaimed. Oh, the tiger jumped into the water. What should we do? This reminds me of the tiger attack at the Kyoto Zoo. Is it going to happen again? It shouldn't. With Brother Shin there, it won't dare to act recklessly, right? Hey, upstairs, have you forgotten what happened at the farm stay? Everyone was shocked, remembering the incident that had been downplayed. During that accident, Brother Shin was also present, but he didn't stop the fat tiger from hurting people, did he? Indeed, animals will always be animals, never forgetting their nature. People watched anxiously, fearing another tragedy. In the pool, Shin Shen opened his eyes and saw the little girl had fallen to the bottom. He dove down and lifted her up. As he surfaced, the fat tiger's massive body also jumped in. Shin Shen gestured to it to help pull the child's mother up. With fat tiger's big mouth open, a large string of bubbles popped out, meaning everything was fine. Shin Shen floated up to the surface of the water with relief. Just as he had placed the little girl named Nyonyo on the shore, fat tiger also swam up. Truly a swimming master in the animal kingdom. It held the child's mother's clothes in its mouth and with a few strokes, leaped onto the shore, much more agile than Shin Shen. However, both the mother and daughter had inhaled water and fell into temporary unconsciousness. Shin Shen waved his hand, signaling for Fat Tiger to help the child's mother while he rescued the little girl. After instructing Fat Tiger, he turned his attention to performing CPR on the little girl. Fat Tiger nodded and tried to imitate Shin Shen, but when it opened its mouth wide, it almost swallowed the whole person. Startled, Fat Tiger said, Shin Shen, do you realize how strong you are? I'm a tiger, how can I give her CPR? If I do it, she might not survive. Also, are you sure you want me to perform chest compressions on her? My paw has the strength of a thousand pounds. If she's not afraid of death, I can give it a try. Shin Shen suddenly remembered the tiger's weight and awkwardly waved his hand. Forget it, just watch from the side. I'll handle it myself. After saying that, he began to save the little girl Nyonyo. After performing CPR and a few chest compressions, she spat out the water from her stomach. Shin Shen then turned Nyonyo over and patted her back. The child woke up, crying loudly. Rescuing the mother was simpler, as she was an adult with a strong ability to recover from respiratory and cardiac arrest, appearing to be in a simple state of unconsciousness. After turning her over and patting her back, she coughed up the water from her lungs, waking up the child's mother as well. Mom! Nyonyo cried and rushed over. The mother, in a panic, hugged the child when she saw her and started crying. Everything was fine. Both of them were saved. The people on the suspension bridge breathed a sigh of relief and couldn't help but applaud, especially praising Fat Tiger's rescue efforts. Truly, there is tiger love in this world. After the commotion, the park staff and zookeepers, including old Zhang, were alerted. The newly appointed zoo director was terrified. Ever since Shin Shen entered the zoo, there had been nothing but trouble. When they ran over, they saw Shin Shin sitting next to the tiger, talking to a woman. The new director anxiously shouted, What is he doing? Quickly drive away the tiger and let them come up. Old Zhang, feeling helpless, didn't know what this guy was up to. Shin Shen, lead them out quickly, I'll open the gate for you. Falling into the tiger enclosure was a very dangerous safety incident for the visitors. If not handled properly, the zoo might have to close down. The priority was to save people. Shin Shen looked up helplessly and said, I want to leave too. If the child's mother doesn't come out, what can I do? He had saved the mother and daughter, so they should leave. But this woman named Zhou Xiaofen refused to leave. Lu Wei, I'll give you one last chance. If you jump down now to save me and Nyonyo, I'll forgive you. Otherwise, we'll get a divorce. Zhou Xiaofen was heartbroken. How could she stay with a man who wouldn't risk his life to save their daughter? I, Zhou Xiaofen, what's wrong with you? Come up quickly. Don't embarrass me. Lu Wei shouted in frustration. He wouldn't dare to jump into the tiger enclosure even if he had a hundred times more courage, but he found it easy to insult his wife. Zhou Xiaofen burst into tears. Shin brother, did you see that? How can I forgive such a man? If he doesn't dare to jump down and save me and Nyonyo, just let the tiger eat me. There's no point in living anyway. With that, she hugged her daughter and cried again. In her emotional state, she even approached Fat Tiger, urging it to eat her. Fat Tiger was frightened and kept retreating. Stop messing around. Indeed, women are like tigers. No, it's even scarier than Panghai. Shin Chan also looked devastated. Sister, why are you making things difficult for Panghai? He didn't eat you, he even kindly saved you. Instead of saying thank you, you insist on throwing yourself into the tiger's mouth. Please behave like a human being. 
Zhou Xiaofen didn't care about that, she just wanted to see if her man would come down to save her. She kept getting closer to Pang Hai, even grabbing the fur on the back of Pang Hai's neck. Come on, eat me. If you have the guts, just eat me. I don't want to live anymore. Pang Hai looked to Shen Shen for help, but Shen Shen shrugged, indicating that there was nothing anyone could do with a woman like this. Who knew? The next second. Splash. Another sound of water. The child's father named Liu Wei actually jumped into the pool. Shen Shen looked up. Above, Yan Bingbing stood at the railing, clapping her hands. Scumbag. Hurry up and go down to pick up your wife and child. Shen Shen was horrified. Bing Bing, when did you become so fierce? No one expected that Yen Bing Bing would actually push Liu Wei directly off the ladder. What are you doing? The principal was furious. There were already three people below with the tiger, how could another one be pushed down? Are they going down to play Mahjong? In the live broadcast room, many netizens were also shocked by Yen Bing Bing's actions. Ah, uh, am I seeing things right? Did Bing Bing really do that just now? You're not mistaken, this scumbag doesn't even dare to save his wife and child. What's the use of keeping him? The key is that the child's mother is also unreasonable, taking advantage of the good relationship between Shen Lao and Pang Hai, constantly getting closer, isn't she afraid of being bitten by them? Ah, why worry so much, let's just enjoy the show. Lu Wei was pushed into the pool, floundering continuously. He could swim, but he was just too scared. After adapting, he quickly swam towards the shore, and once on land, he desperately began to seek help. Save me, please save me, I don't want to be eaten by the tiger. People from the zoo, come down and save me. He shouted loudly to the principal and others on the ladder. Lao Zhang quickly shouted, Sir, run to the north, there's an iron gate there, I'll go there to open it and let you out. With that, Lao Zhang hurriedly ran down. Following his words, Lu Wei indeed saw a small door about the height of a person to the north, and decisively ran towards it. Come back. Yen Bingbing shouted angrily, Your wife and child are still next to the tiger. Lu Wei impatiently retorted, She's looking for death herself, what can I do? You're Yen Bingbing, right? You wait for me, I'll go up and sue you for attempted murder. Yen Bingbing was furious, she didn't expect this man to be so cowardly. She originally hated men's cowardly behavior, and pushing him down was also to let the man go down to rescue his wife and child. Let the family of three reunite. But after the other party fell down, he actually wanted to escape alone as quickly as possible. Such a man is truly beyond redemption. Roar. But unexpectedly, Pang Hai suddenly roared. It seemed that Zhou Xiaofen's reckless behavior had angered it. The tiger opened its big mouth, let out a long roar, and the entire zoo could hear its roar. Zhou Xiaofen was startled and kept retreating. Mom! Nuonyuo hurried to her mother's side. Zhou Xiaofen hugged her daughter and looked at Pang Hai walking towards her, she was suddenly terrified. Help! Help! She screamed, panicked, and ran to the edge of the pool, with nowhere to go. Pang Hai roared angrily, approaching her step by step. At the same time, it opened its mouth revealing its terrifying fangs. Roar! It roared again, scaring everyone to the core. Is the tiger going to eat someone? At this moment, there was only a three-meter distance between Pang Hai and Zhou Xiaofen and her daughter, as if a leap could knock them down. Zhou Xiaofen could even see the meatballs in Pang whose throat shaking non-stop. She was about to faint from fear. The only thing supporting her was her daughter Nyo Nyo in her arms. Nyo Nyo cried silently, holding onto her mother tightly, her face pale. Quick! Go get the tranquilizer gun, hurry. The principal was so scared that he hastily instructed the staff to fetch the tranquilizer gun from the office. Oh, okay. The staff subconsciously nodded and hurried to the office area. But he was too scared, his legs were weak, and he fell several times without getting up. Not to mention getting the tranquilizer gun. The tourists were all stunned. Didn't they say it doesn't eat people? What's going on? Oh my god, Shen Shen, you need to stop it. Something big is happening. The tiger is really going crazy this time. The crowd exclaimed in shock. Some brave individuals took out water bottles, food, and even cameras from their backpacks and threw them at Pang Hu. Pang Hu was hit several times by heavy objects and became even more furious. Roar! It glared fiercely at the tourists on the suspension bridge, scaring them from throwing anything else. In the live stream room, netizens were anxious, wishing they could jump into the screen. Quick, do something. Someone is going to get hurt. Shen Lao. Why are you hesitating? Go save them. Damn it. Let this woman face the consequences of her actions. Hey, upstairs, don't be so negative. Think of a way to save people quickly. Everyone brainstormed ideas, but unfortunately, they couldn't do much in the live stream room. The only one who could save the mother and daughter was Shin Chen, but he stood still. He watched as Pang who approached Zhou Xiaofen and her daughter step by step, shaking his head. Then, unexpectedly, he sat down on the ground. 
Shen Chen, what are you doing standing there? Yen Bingbing shouted angrily on the suspension bridge, make brother who stop. Shen Chen looked up at her and smiled. Don't bother. No mercy, no end. Everyone was shocked. How could you be so heartless this time? Yen Bingbing was so angry that she couldn't speak. She ran towards the small door, wanting to rush in to save people. At the small door, Lao Zhang had just unlocked the door. Lu Wei was standing at the door, at a loss. Hurry up! The tiger is going crazy. Lao Zhang picked up a shovel and ran towards the pool. At the same time, he wondered if Pang who was really starving and desperate. It hadn't eaten anything for three to five days, and now seeing tourists, it might have lost its sanity. Lu Wei saw the door open and instinctively wanted to escape. But, he turned back and saw his wife and child shivering by the pool. Mom, I'm scared. Nyo Nyo's voice made his heart race. Help! Someone help us! His wife Zhou Xiaofen's cries echoed in his heart. He swallowed hard, then looked at the small door. Outside the door was heaven. Inside, it was about to turn into hell. Lu Wei felt his legs go weak, trembling all over. He leaned against the door, gritted his teeth, and reluctantly walked outside. Wife, daughter, don't blame me, don't blame me, I'll go find help, I'll call the police, I'll find a weapon, yes, find a tranquilizer gun. Wait for me, you must wait for me. He muttered to himself, as if explaining something to his wife and child, and comforting himself. But his voice was so low that he couldn't even hear it himself. I'm rational, I know, the tiger wants to eat people. The tiger can kill me with one bite, slap me to death with one paw. Going up there is useless, just a death wish, I'm seeking help, I didn't do anything wrong, I'm not wrong. Lu Wei had moved to the edge of the door, one more step and he could successfully escape. Damn it! But suddenly, he roared, picked up a wooden stick at the door, and ran towards the tiger like a madman. Let go of my wife and child, you mother fasterous cur, eat me instead. Boom! Everyone saw it. The timid father suddenly went crazy. He picked up a stick at hand and rushed madly towards Pang Hu. He shielded his wife and child behind him. Husband! Daddy! Zhou Xiaofen and Nyo Nyo cried out. Don't be afraid! Don't be afraid! I'm here, wife! Nyo Nyo, daddy is here! It can't hurt you. You guys run. Run. Lu Wei shouted, waving the stick in front of Pang Hu. Get out of here. If you want to hurt my wife and child, you have to step over my dead body. Although his legs were trembling with fear, and he was shaking all over, he still stood in front of his wife and child, waving the stick. At that moment, the zookeeper Lao Zhang just grabbed Pang Hu's tail, but Pang Hu shook him off, sending him flying far away. Roar! Pang Hu suddenly leaped forward, its huge tiger head reaching towards Lu Wei's face. Lu Wei, terrified, struck Pang Hu's head hard with the stick. Bang! This seemed to completely enrage it. Pang Hu's two front legs lifted off the ground, landing on Lu Wei's shoulders, while it opened its mouth wide, aiming for his head. Everyone couldn't bear to watch anymore. Tourists, viewers in the live broadcast room, all closed their eyes in fear. Silence fell. After about 10 seconds, they slowly opened their eyes and saw an incredible scene. The Lu Wei family was miraculously unharmed. Pang Hu had leisurely walked over to Shen Chen's side and lay down. Did that hurt? Shen Chen shook his head, patting Tiger Brother's head. He he. Shen Chen chuckled, Tiger Brother, you're a good guy, not a good tiger. He pointed to the staff on the suspension bridge. See, if you scare them for a few more seconds, you'll be lying on the ground being destroyed by people. Pang Hu glanced indifferently. Whatever, even if I die. Shen Chen was speechless. On the suspension bridge, four or five staff members were about to shoot with tranquilizer guns. At this moment, they watched Shen Chen and Pang who at a loss. Not only them, even the tourists didn't understand why the tiger spared the family of three again. In the live broadcast room, the all-knowing netizens were the first to react. Ah, I get it, tiger brother wanted Lu Wei to man up. It actually thought of using scaring the mother and daughter to make Lu Wei wake up. Brilliant, too brilliant. This tiger is so cunning. Woo woo. Why are my tears falling, Pang Hu, do you know, if you had waited a little longer, you would have been in danger. No wonder Shen Lao didn't move, it seems like this man and tiger had planned this in advance. Shen Chen did not plan this with Pang Hu, this time it was purely tiger brother's own initiative. When it saw this family of three, the man actually abandoned his wife and child, and even shamelessly. It wanted to teach the man a lesson, to bite him so he couldn't take care of himself. But what's the use? Pang Hu could even imagine that after they left the zoo, they would argue endlessly, they would immediately separate, and even make this small family fall apart. The little girl would definitely lose her father, or her mother. They would never find their old life again. All because of accidentally dropping the little girl Nyo Nyo? What's the difference between that and it accidentally losing Aomei? If it had been the one sunbathing outside that day, 
would Ame still be alive? So, it decisively scared the mother and daughter, to see if that man would sacrifice himself to save them. It won the bet. Human destiny, or rather tiger destiny, can be changed. A family reunited. Lu Wei, seeing that the tiger didn't eat him, excitedly dropped the stick, and hugged his wife and child tightly. The three of them hugged and cried together. Honey, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been so stubborn and angry. No, wife, it's my fault for being too weak. I should have jumped down immediately to save Nyonyo. Mom, Dad, please don't cry, Nyonyo wants a hug. Misunderstandings resolved. The family of three returned to their happy state from not long ago, even more appreciative and understanding than before. Lu Wei held Nyonyo, held his wife Zhou Xiaofen, and approached Xin Chen and Pang Hu. Thank you, brother Hu. He bowed deeply to Pang Hu. By this time, he and Zhou Xiaofen also realized that everything was this tiger helping them. The two were extremely grateful. Pang Hu glanced at them, too lazy to speak, turned his head and lay down. Lu Wei smiled awkwardly, had to thank Xin Chen and leave with Nyonyo in his arms. Dad, I want to ride on Big Brain Axe. Nyonyo suddenly broke free from Lu Wei, climbed down from him, and ran towards Pang Hu. Nyonyo! The couple exclaimed, seeing their daughter had already climbed onto Pang Hu's back. Pang Hu shuddered all over, feeling a sudden weight on his body. He he, don't be afraid, brother who won't scare you anymore. Xin Shen smiled and reassured the two not to be nervous. The zookeeper Lao Zhang also walked over, patting his butt, he he, this girl is lucky, how many years has it been since a visitor rode a tiger? Wait, Xin Shen doesn't count. He also chuckled, knowing that Pang Hu wasn't going crazy. Pang Hu slowly stood up, carrying Nyonyo and started walking around the yard, round and round. The entire tiger park echoed with Nyonyo's laughter like silver bells. He he, alright, brother Hu, this family of three is all soaked, you better let them go home quickly, don't catch a cold. Xin Shen waved to call back Pang Hu, who seemed reluctant and grunted unhappily. In the end, it slowly placed Nyonyo on the ground and watched as the family of three happily left. On the suspension ladder, the tourists watched the scene with smiles. They were even a bit envious of them falling into the tiger park. Only the man who pushed Nyonyo away looked ashamed. He took the initiative to explain everything to the staff and was willing to compensate for the losses of Nyonyo's family. In the end, they all smiled and reconciled, waved to Xin Chen and Pang Hu, and left the tiger park. The tourists watched for a while and slowly dispersed. Lao Zhang warned Xin Chen not to act recklessly and left them alone. Director, let's go. Let Xin Chen work with Pang Hu, or else they might starve to death in our zoo. Lao Zhang returned to the suspension ladder and led the new director away. The director grumbled as he led the staff away. Remember, a sign must be placed at the entrance. Xin Chen is strictly prohibited from entering the zoo. The staff burst into laughter. In the end, only the host Xiao Hongyu, the cameraman, and Yen Bingbing were left in the tiger park. They silently watched the man and the tiger communicating in the park. It's amazing, I never believed Mr. Shin could really communicate with animals, it seems I was shallow. Xiao Hongyu looked at Shin Chen's back with undisguised admiration and appreciation. I want to make a special video about Mr. Shun, I want to enter his inner world. Xiao Hongyu said firmly to herself. Hey, I am his agent and live broadcast host now, and also his end-of-life care provider. Don't get any funny ideas. Yen Bingbing anxiously reminded her. Xiao Hongyu chuckled. Do you usually wear such heavy makeup, sister? Unlike me who never wears makeup and looks natural all the time. Yen Bingbing retorted, ready to argue. Ladies, we are live streaming here. The cameraman said, sweating profusely. One man and one tiger. Facing each other in the cold pavilion. Solemn, desolate, autumn wind rising. You came. I came. You shouldn't have come. But I'm already here. One person and one tiger exchanged two sentences. Shin Shen looked completely defeated. Brother tiger lying on the grass. When did you start listening to Chimao audio novels? Recently, have you been listening to Passionate Swordsman, Heartless Sword? Wow! Shin Chen exclaimed. Who said Brother Tiger was depressed, and a little joke made him happy? Fat Tiger grinned, it was Lao Zhang who left a radio to cheer me up. I have been listening to it these days, it has become a habit. But Brother Tiger, do you have any troubles? You don't have to pay off a mortgage, raise children, eat and sleep every day, nothing. Shin Chen couldn't continue. Why did he think of Ame again? Fat Tiger sighed. Actually, I have figured it out. Ha! Huh? Shin Shen was stunned, not understanding what Brother Tiger meant. Shin Shen, do you know, it's not love that makes you sad, but the end of everything, love still remains. Wow! Shin Shen's body was covered in goosebumps, unable to resist standing up and walking around Fat Tiger twice. Is this still a tiger? How could this guy say something so profound? Fat Tiger shook his head and continued. 
The radio also said, a partner doesn't have to be there until the end. Along a certain path, if the other person brings you beautiful memories, that's enough. Shen Chen. He couldn't help but ask Brother Tiger. Big Brother, which channel are you listening to, daring to play such toxic chicken soup? Don't be surprised, I have listened to a lot of soul chicken soup, the masters are so right. Just look at the family of three just now, the man is afraid of death and doesn't care about his wife and children. The woman is angry, but can't let go of her husband. The child cries loudly, not caring at all about what happened to the parents. This is life. Only by being indifferent to everything can we get along calmly. When reality cannot be changed, I can only be strong. Flowers bloom and wither, all things have a beginning and an end. For the rest of my life, I will live well for Ame. After listening to Brother Tiger's generous words, Shin Chen gave him a thumbs up. Poisonous, too poisonous. Shin Chen felt that Brother Tiger understood emotions completely. He secretly tore up the chicken soup note he had prepared before coming, not daring to show off in front of Fat Tiger. He he, Brother Tiger, are you enlightening me, or am I enlightening myself? Ha, it was only when a little girl rode on my back that I understood. You don't need to worry about me. Go see Tony that guy. He has been thinking about going back to his hometown all day, trying to escape every day, like he's possessed. Shin Shen became serious at the words, Brother Tiger, do you want to go back to the old forest in the northeast? I can try to arrange for your release. Fat Tiger directly refused. Forget it, after I take revenge, I am destined to be kept in captivity for life. You don't need to bother. And I grew up in the tiger park since I was a child, if I really go back to the old forest, who will feed me roast chicken and braised beef? I have to find my own food. Shin Shen laughed, no one will feed you instant noodles anymore. Get lost. Lao Zhang told me that only losers like you eat that kind of food. With a daily food standard of 500 yuan, isn't it delicious to eat meat? Underscore, Shin Shen felt like he had been hit with 10,000 critical strikes. He now had 2 to 3 million all over his body, most of which were brought by Brother Tiger. People are more annoying than tigers. When he left the tiger park, he was still unhappy, but after changing into a dry shirt, his mood improved slightly. Don't ask where he got it from, after going home naked twice, Shin Shen had to prepare two sets of clothes when going out. He originally wanted to go see Tony with a crew cut, but was dragged into the reptile exhibition by Yen Bingbing. Shin Shen, don't think about running around, quickly shake off Chao Hongyu, that scheming woman. Yen Bingbing took Shin Shen into the reptile exhibition while Chao Hongyu and the cameraman were left behind. There is a spider performance here, adults and children are crowded here, it's packed with people, the host and cameraman are really lost. Shin Shen asked strangely, are you okay, Bingbing? Why are you hiding from them? Yen Bingbing didn't speak until she squeezed into the crowd, then she breathed a sigh of relief. She looked back vigilantly. I warn you, you must not participate in interviews at Zhongzhou TV station in the future. If you want to participate, you must get my consent first. Shin Shen laughed, Bingbing, are you jealous? Are you unhappy because you think others are scheming? Scheming you. Don't I have you as a fool enough? Yen Bingbing pushed him. Hey. Shin Shen was caught off guard, not standing firm and took two steps and fell to the middle of the stage. What are you doing? The staff performing the snake dance were startled. The green bamboo leaves in their hands were thrown into the sky. Boom. The crowd stepped back a few steps, joking. Bamboo leaves, this is a venomous snake. It wouldn't be fun if it bit someone. But the bamboo leaves flew high into the sky and fell towards the crowd. People panicked, especially women and children, screaming, come and get it. Just as the bamboo leaves were about to fall into the crowd, a hand suddenly reached out, firmly grabbing it. It was Shin Chen. He smiled and coiled the bamboo leaves around his wrist like a bracelet. Its body was cool and fun to play with. The crowd breathed a sigh of relief, gathered around, watching this guy skillfully handling the snake, looking surprised. But Yen Bingbing was startled. Shin Shen, what are you doing? Give the snake back, it's poisonous. Although the bamboo leaves were transparent green, they contained a deadly poison, and untrained people should not put snakes on themselves. Especially, Shin Shen casually put the bamboo leaves around his neck like a scarf. He smiled carelessly, it's okay, we are old friends from the courtyard, how could it bite me? Right, buddy. The bamboo leaves made a hissing sound and shook its triangular head. Are you crazy? I wasn't there that day. Who are you to me? Then, when Shin Shen wasn't paying attention, it bit him on the neck. Damn. Shin Shen looked at the bamboo leaves biting his neck and felt like crying. When the system warned of danger, it was too late to avoid it. He was bitten. And on the neck, a vital spot. The toxin quickly flowed through his blood to his heart. Shin Shen began to feel a panic. Buddy, let's talk, why did you bite me? He didn't expect that the snake hadn't been to the courtyard that day and didn't know who he was. He was careless. 
Superficial. Now he was in trouble. The bamboo leaves ignored him, wriggled its butt and ran away after breaking free. Shinchen felt his vision darken and immediately passed out. At the same time, a series of system alert sounds rang in his mind. Ding. Reminder to the host, the fifth calamity is officially starting. Friendly reminder, the difficulty of this calamity is S level. Please prepare accordingly. Fifth calamity, poison, due to the host's shared immunity to honey badger toxins, the fifth calamity has been temporarily changed from the original lightning strike to poison calamity. The difficulty has been raised to S level. From now on, the host will experience 100 kinds of earthly poisons, please experience them one by one. Duration of this calamity, 7 days, preparation time for the calamity, 0 minutes 0 seconds, immunity to toxins, 1 out of 100. Immunity details, snake venom. At the last moment of Shin Chen's unconsciousness, he knew that the fifth calamity had begun. The most ridiculous thing was that there was no preparation time this time. It was like Yen Bingbing suddenly kneeling down and proposing to him, saying, if you don't marry me, I'll die. Let him not know what to do. Although I'm just thinking nonsense. But the fifth calamity is really fancy, just got the immunity to poison from Ping Tu Gu, and it was arranged. And the system is getting tougher on him, actually planning to use 100 poisons to kill Shin Chen. Someone is going to die. In the reptile house, the crowd exclaimed. The guy who was courting death was lying on the ground, motionless, his face turning green. Yen Bingbing was so angry that she really wanted to kick Shin Chen to death. I told you not to do it, don't do it. You're courting death again. That day, the golden python went to the courtyard, thinking that these poisonous snakes also went. But despite being angry, Yen Bingbing hurriedly called the staff to carry Shin Chen out. The staff explained anxiously, Miss, this has nothing to do with me. He wanted to play with the snakes himself, luckily it was bamboo leaf green, if it was our eyeglass king, he would be done for. It has nothing to do with you, he scratches himself to death several times a day. Yen Bingbing angrily hammered Shin Chen and ran to the entrance of the zoo. The director had received the news and sent a car to wait here. Quick, get him in the car. Take him to the third hospital, they have the serum there. He looked at Shin Chen's miserable green face and burst into tears. Miss Yen, I beg you, don't let him come to the zoo in this lifetime, okay? It's only my first day on the job, and I've had two heart attacks already. Yen Bingbing looked embarrassed. Director, I promise not to let him come again. If he wants to see animals, I'll just take him around the entrance to listen to the sounds. No, if he wants to see any animals, I'll bring them to your place, okay? The director helped lift Shin Chen into the car and told the driver to hurry to the hospital for treatment. As Yen Bingbing was about to leave, she didn't forget to bring Dog Leftover into the car. When Dog Leftover saw Shin Chen's miserable state, it grinned and bubbled with joy. Ha! You didn't take me in. You used chopsticks to thank others. After saying that, it sat on Shin Chen's chest and started holding in a fart. Put, put. Two consecutive farts filled the entire car. The driver, looking through the rearview mirror, was startled. Miss Yen, what grudge does this dog have against its owner? It's causing so much trouble for him. Yen Bingbing pushed dog leftover away impatiently. Both of them are crazy, don't mind them. Master, please drive faster. The driver, covering his nose, said in despair, I also want to, can you ask the dog not to fart, it's stinging my eyes, I can't keep them open. Yen Bingbing. At this moment, Shin Chen suddenly moved. He woke up. System prompt, due to the shared detoxification ability of the honey badger, the snake venom in the host's body has been decomposed and digested, and he can wake up at any time. Shin Chen was stunned and couldn't help but ask in his mind, is that so, it decomposed so quickly? System, why can't I smell it? System. Host, be nicer to your dog, next time it might not be just a fart. Damn it. Shin Chen suddenly opened his eyes and sat up. I knew something was wrong. Whose snake venom smells like leek dumplings? He opened his eyes and saw Era grinning and trying to hold in the third fart, which made him so angry that he punched Era in the face. Are you done? Era, why do you hate me so much? When Era was preparing, he was punched by Shin Chen and was confused. Woo, why did you wake up so soon? If I don't wake up, you'll suffocate me with your farts. Get lost. He kicked him angrily. Era whimpered and curled up in the corner, not daring to be presumptuous. Shin Chen, are you okay? Yen Bingbing had just opened the window to let in some fresh air, and when she turned around, she saw Shin Shin sitting up, and the green color on his face had disappeared. I'm fine, this stupid dog woke me up with its stink. Yen Bingbing looked surprised, is it that effective? After that, if you are in danger again, let the husky help you. Shin Shen's face turned as dark as the bottom of a pot, there won't be a next time. When I go back, I'll buy a hemorrhoid suppository to plug it up. Ha ha ha. 
The driver in front burst into loud laughter. This guy is really as crazy as a dog. It's a miracle that he woke up so quickly after being poisoned by the bamboo leaf green, but when the driver thought about the fact that he was Shen Lao Gu, he wasn't surprised. Um, driver, thank you very much. Just leave us here. Yen Bingbing looked embarrassed, feeling ashamed to be seen with these two jokers. I'm fine going back, I'll just take you home directly. Ha ha, he actually bought a hemorrhoid suppository to plug the dog, why not use a big needle to sew it up completely, ha ha. The driver joked, but he found that the dog had jumped onto the passenger seat, glaring at him with bared teeth. He was speechless. Back at home, Yen Bingbing wanted to ask Shen Shen if he was okay, but Shen Shen had already locked himself in the house. He needed to research what the fifth calamity was all about. If it was true what the system said, that he had to endure the invasion of 100 toxins in 7 days, it would be too dangerous. Although he had detoxification abilities, he couldn't control it once the poison took effect. Like today, the snake venom made him pass out, luckily there were people around, otherwise, it would have been more dangerous. Moreover, he was now living under the same roof as Yen Bingbing, if he got poisoned, would Yen Bingbing be affected too? Most importantly, his detoxification abilities were limited, if the toxin was too strong, what would happen if he died? That would be very bad. Soon, Shen Shen decided to stay alone in the house for a few days, not sharing meals or water with Yen Bingbing to avoid getting poisoned together. However, prevention is always better. With that in mind, he started searching on Baidu. How many types of toxins are there in the world? What is the lethal dose of each toxin? If a person is poisoned, amputation can be done below the hairline. Come and learn about a hundred clever ways to use poison against poison. All kinds of information opened Shen Shen's eyes, and he finally understood all the poisonous things in the world. For example, water. Shen Shen looked at the bucket of purified water on the table. Online it said that if a person drank too much water in a short period of time, it could cause water intoxication, leading to fainting and even death. He was initially skeptical when he read it. Can drinking water really cause harm? How is that possible? Now, a small idea suddenly popped into his mind. Shen Shen smirked and shouted to Yen Bingbing outside. Bingbing, come and check on me in half an hour. If I'm lying on the ground, call 120 for me. Yen Bingbing, who was cooking, was surprised by his words. What's wrong with you? Is the snake venom not cured? Shall we go to the hospital now? Shen Shen directly refused and locked himself in the room. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Acting on his impulse was his usual style. He picked up the water bucket and started chugging, quickly finishing half of the 16-liter bucket of purified water. Burp, um, too full. Shen Shen looked at the remaining half of the purified water, unable to drink anymore. It turned out that it was not easy to give oneself water intoxication. Unless a person loses a large amount of body fluids, how could they replenish so much water? But, burp, why do I feel dizzy? Shen Shen blinked, feeling a white haze in front of his eyes. Water intoxication. The large amount of water entering the cells caused compression, resulting in dilutional hyponatremia. The brain began to lack oxygen, and the heart rate increased. Clang! Shen Shen happily dropped the water bucket and collapsed on the ground. Fainted. Ding! System prompt, host immune to water intoxication. Toxins immunized this time, 2 out of 100. Immunity details, snake venom, water poisoning. Shen Shen, it's time to eat. Half an hour later, Yen Bingbing pushed the door open and looked at the half bucket of purified water on the ground, then at Shen Shen lying on the floor. Bubbles kept coming out of his mouth. I'll take you straight to the crematorium and burn you. Yen Bingbing rushed over in anger. An hour later, Shen Shen sat at the dining table, looking ashamed. I promise you, I won't act recklessly again, Bingbing. Don't be angry, this will definitely be the last time. Yen Bingbing glared at him, feeling so wrong she wanted to cry. It was too distressing. If his parents found out he had a boyfriend who liked to play dangerous games, they might cut ties with him. Who would drink 8 liters of purified water just for fun? Shen Shen looked embarrassed, not knowing how to explain. Mainly because he didn't believe that drinking water could be poisonous. It was only after drinking 8 liters of water in a row that he realized science was no joke. If Yen Bingbing hadn't punched his stomach several times and made him throw up a lot of water, he wouldn't have woken up so quickly. Bingbing, listen to me, this world is too dangerous. Shen Shen suddenly looked serious and began to show off the latest knowledge he had learned online. Do you know that drinking 113 cups of coffee in a short time can cause sudden death? Eating 20 pounds of chocolate in an hour can cause a heart attack. Smoking 75 cigarettes continuously without a break can lead to a fatal brain hemorrhage. If you eat 400 bananas at once, it can cause potassium poisoning. 
The scariest thing is, if you eat a pound of salt in one meal, it can lead to a big problem. After Shen Shen finished speaking, he looked terrified. Luckily I know these things, otherwise it would be very dangerous if consumed by mistake. Yen Dingbing looked at Shen Shen and took out her phone to call the mental hospital. Please, just act like a normal person. Who would eat 20 pounds of chocolate and drink 113 cups of coffee for no reason? And 400 bananas, do you think you own a banana shop? Eating a pound of salt in one meal, are you trying to pickle yourself into a spicy snack? Let's eat, let's eat. We have a live broadcast to make money in the afternoon, don't give me any excuses. Yen Bingbing couldn't be bothered to deal with him, so she picked up her bowl and started eating. Stop. Shin Shen suddenly grabbed her bowl and started eating from it. Let me test the food first, if I'm fine after eating, then you can eat. He was really afraid that the system had arranged some poison in the food. This. I just ate from this bowl, and the chopsticks too. Yen Bingbing's face turned red. How could this person be so unhygienic, grabbing my bowl and eating from it? Shin Shen took a few bites and found nothing wrong, so he returned the bowl to Yen Bingbing. Seeing that the bowl of rice had been devoured by him, Yen Bingbing had to serve another bowl and eat while talking. Shin Shen, I signed a contract for you with a live streaming platform yesterday. Starting this afternoon, you will have to live stream for three hours every day. There is a probation period, if you don't meet the time requirement or fail to attract viewers, the contract will be automatically terminated, and you will have to return the money to the platform. Ah, Shin Shen was stunned, Bing Bing, don't we have two or three million? Why are you in such a hurry to start performing to make money? Yen Bingbing smiled and didn't say anything, she held up five fingers. What do you see on my hand? Shin Shen looked for a while and saw that Yen Bingbing's hand was tender like an onion root, with white wrists and red skin. Besides being good looking, what else was there? He shook his head. Silly, I'm a bit tight on money. Yen Bingbing clenched her fist and waved it at Shin Shen. I'm saving that money to rescue you when you're in danger. No one can touch it, not even you. Ah. This, Shin Shen was touched and couldn't tell her about the system he had. So, we need to find ways to make more money. You are responsible for the live broadcast, and I am responsible for planning. When I have free time, I will go outside to host the show. Taking care of both of us should be enough, Yen Bingbing said matter-of-factly, but Shin Shen felt a pang of sadness. Before meeting him, Bingbing was a popular host on central radio and television, and even had the potential to become a pillar of the central radio and television station. Rumors even said that Bing Bing might host this year's Spring Festival Gala. But a live broadcast accident brought her to his side, and now planning their days, she completely resembled a caring daughter-in-law. He held back his tears, and decisively showed his own thigh. Bing Bing, what do you see on my leg? Yen Bing Bing looked at Shin Shen's smooth and white thigh, shaking her head slightly. There's no hair. Go to hell. Yen Bing Bing kicked Shin Shen under the table, and even she couldn't help but laugh. All right, stop messing around. Let me tell you something. I won't be in Zhengzhou these days, so take care of yourself. Shen Shen's heart tightened at her words, and he said in a trembling voice, What's wrong? Where are you going? Seeing Shen Shen's face change drastically, like a helpless child, Yen Bingbing quickly explained, Don't overthink it. Central Radio and Television Channel 5 has an important hosting program, and they asked me to help out for two days. I'll be back soon. Central Radio and Television Channel 5 is a sports channel, about to host an important match. But the main host suddenly had a family emergency, and the substitute couldn't handle the task. So, the leaders of Central Radio and Television had to ask Yen Bingbing to help out, as she had previous experience on the sports channel. Shin Shen finally breathed a sigh of relief. It was good for Yen Bingbing to leave for a few days. The fifth calamity was too flashy, and he was truly afraid that Yen Bingbing would be accidentally harmed by the system. After the poison calamity passed, he could bring her back. Shin Shen nodded in agreement and ate his meal in silence. Yen Bingbing smiled, finished cleaning up the house, bought a lot of vegetables and fruits, and told Shin Shen not to starve himself. Finally, after instructing him to do the live broadcast, she left home with her luggage. As for Shin Shen sending her to the station, there was no need to go out. The train would definitely be delayed, and the plane would surely be grounded. Shin Shen watched Yen Bingbing leave, then followed her instructions and logged into the live streaming platform. So far, his show Shin Lao Ji's Happy Life had attracted 800,000 followers and gained some fame in the live streaming world. As soon as he logged in, thousands of netizens flooded into the chat room. Wow, what do I see? Shin Lao Go is actually live streaming? Ha, <laughs> the roof is fixed again, this time there won't be any crane accidents, right? Stop fooling around, let me give Shin Lao Gu a salute first O, oh, underscore underscore O, oh. 110, 120, 119, be on high alert, 
Which department needs to respond urgently this time? Shen Shen, I'm from the Zhengzhou police station, come by when you have time to discuss a case. Netizens started teasing Shen Shen as soon as they entered the live stream. Shen Shen watched them joking around, feeling quite annoyed. Stop fooling around, Bing Bing is in the chat room. Behave yourselves, report if you have any issues, and leave if you have nothing to say. The netizens exploded in response. No way, no way, brother Chen, you've only been streaming for a few minutes, at least let us send you a gift before you end the stream. Brothers, let's send brother Chen some rockets. One rocket for 10 minutes, I'll send one for an hour first. Hey upstairs, you're too superficial. Didn't you hear Shen Laogu say that Bing Bing is in the chat room? He wouldn't dare to end the stream. Just as this netizen finished speaking, Yen Bing Bing left a message. It was Bing Bing, Yen Bing Bing Shen Shen, you better remember three hours. I'm watching you on the train. If you're a minute late, I'll sneak into your bed at night and scare you. Shen Shen was shocked and quickly replied, three hours, definitely three hours. You can rest assured, Bing Bing. Even if I have to recite Journey to the West, I'll make sure it's three hours. The netizens burst into laughter. Shen Lao Gu, if you dare to read Journey to the West to us, I will report you on the spot. Yes, I want to listen to Jean Ping Mei. No, how about Shen Lao Gu reading 3,000 questions on married life to us? Shen Shen's face turned green as he saw that the netizens were trying to get his live stream shut down. On the train, Yen Bingbing also furrowed her brows. This won't do, if the netizens keep criticizing, it will ruin the atmosphere. It's Bingbing, everyone, stop messing around. Shen Lao Gu, what are you going to live stream today, listen to me, okay? The netizens naturally agreed when Bingbing spoke. Bingbing's sister, you say it, we'll listen to you. Yes, even if brother Chen reads Journey to the West to us, we'll accept it. Come on, I'm all ears. Yen Bingbing looked at her phone and smiled helplessly. Besides being unlucky and funny, Shin Shin didn't seem to have any special talents. It's better to let him be a negative image and comfort those netizens who have encountered setbacks. No matter how difficult life is, is there anyone more miserable than Shin Shun? She thought for a moment and started typing subtitles. It's Bing Bing, here's the deal, Shin Shen has been single for 20 years, penniless, wandering around, but he always maintains an optimistic and positive attitude. If anyone is unhappy today, why not share your troubles with Shin Shen? He will comfort you with his own experiences. The netizens were happy to hear some soul-soothing words. Shin Lao Ji's chicken soup probably took hundreds of years of chicken essence to brew, otherwise it wouldn't be so rich. Shin Shen was speechless for a moment. Is Bing Bing asking me to play the victim voluntarily? But the netizens bought it, so it's fine. He adjusted his mood and prepared to comfort everyone with his most pitiful past. Sure enough, a netizen immediately shared their worries. Shen Lao Gu, I am very poor like you. I come from a difficult family, started working at a young age, but now at 30, I have achieved nothing. I feel lost and jealous of those who are richer than me. Can you comfort me and give me the courage to face failure, to accept failure? Tell me, those rich people are nothing special, it's the ordinary life that is real. Wow. The netizens fell silent. This netizen's situation is quite representative. In fact, his situation is similar to most people, everyone is ordinary, everyone has experienced many setbacks. But failure is not scary, and rich people are not as happy as they seem. Only by accepting failure can one live more bravely. Everyone wanted to see what Shen Lao Gu thought about this. Shen Shen spoke slowly. Um, to this netizen, I want to say to you, failure is not scary. What's scary is that you still believe in this statement. Do you think rich people are happy? No, you can't even imagine their happiness. Boom. After hearing Shen Shen's words, the netizens exploded. Yen Bingbing was drinking water on the train and almost choked when she heard Shin Shen's words. Listen, is Shin Shen speaking human language? Failure is not scary. What's scary is that you still believe in this statement. Do you think rich people are happy? You can't even imagine their happiness. Too harsh, it's like grilling on a wound and adding salt. The netizens asked you to tell everyone with your own experiences that no matter how hard you try, ordinary people will always be ordinary. Just accept yourself, face reality. Although life may be a bit tough, you should still live optimistically. But you, you directly launched a destructive attack, leaving nothing behind. The netizens were stunned. Brother Chen, seriously, you're so harsh. Although that statement sounds harsh, but, after some thought, it seems to be true. Oh my, Shen Lao Go, what you said made me shut down, I never imagined the happiness of rich people, sob sob sob. Ha, huh, this sounds so refreshing. I was just thinking, so what if you fail? So what if someone richer than you is richer? Who hasn't worked hard to get where they are? Why do you have to find so many excuses for yourself, telling yourself it's fate, isn't that nonsense? The key is, you can't be so blunt about it. 
Look, that netizen isn't saying anything now, probably feeling discouraged. Shen Shen looked at everyone's comments and took a deep breath. Yes, I've had bad luck, even worse than every one of you, but I'm not giving up. Have you ever experienced the despair of losing your exam admission ticket and ID on the day of the college entrance exam? Have you ever felt the sense of loss when you found a dead bug inside the cake you bought with all the money on your birthday? Have you ever felt the awkwardness and embarrassment of the principal forgetting to give you your award certificate on the stage? These years, my life has been a series of failures, but I have never accepted failure as something I can live with. The famous football poet Hee Wei once said, success in life is temporary, but failure is the main theme. How you face failure divides people into different categories. Some people are crushed by failure, while others can keep getting up and moving forward. There is only one true heroism in this world, and that is to recognize the truth of life and still love it. So, Shin Chen completely disregarded the discussions of the netizens and continued, I think failure is very scary. What's even scarier is that you don't even know where you went wrong, repeatedly using this excuse to numb yourself, tolerating your failures, wasting time, and ultimately becoming a person with no achievements. In the live broadcast room, the netizens fell silent. No one spoke, they were all silently pondering Shin Chen's words. Though harsh, it was very effective. At least, they knew that failure is terrifying, but accepting failure is even more terrifying. Ding, system prompt, host immune to toxic chicken soup. This time, toxins immunized, 3-100. Immune details, snake venom, water poison, toxic chicken soup, wow. Shin Chen was surprised to hear the system prompt in his mind. So toxic chicken soup is also considered a toxin. Ha ha, he didn't expect to experience toxicity so easily again. Poisoning himself. That netizen probably also realized Shen Lao's good intentions and silently licked his wounds. Although the netizens were somewhat unwilling, they couldn't come up with any rebuttals, so they felt frustrated. Soon, another netizen jumped in, Shen Lao, you are absolutely right. It's that kind of spiritual chicken soup that has harmed many people, allowing them to just drift along without ever reflecting on why they are failing. Unlike me, I always reflect on why I'm both ugly and stupid. I'm always cautious in everything I do. Shen Lao, can you tell me if I'm too self-deprecating, maybe my perception is off. I'm not ugly or stupid, I just lack confidence. Shen Shen smiled when he saw this and another troublemaker appeared. Clearing his throat, he bluntly said, to this netizen, first of all, congratulations, your perception is not wrong. When you feel you are ugly, poor, and worthless, don't despair. At least your judgment is still intact. All netizens. I can't take it anymore, huh? This guy is just asking for trouble. Amazing. Shen Lao, you're right. God is fair, giving him an ugly appearance and low intelligence to avoid making him look out of place. Otherwise, how could he ask such a stupid question? Exactly, some people always live in the corner of self-deprecation, even though they know the truth but refuse to accept it. Let me tell you, brother, being ugly is a disease, why else would a plastic surgery hospital be called a hospital? Ha, uh, but don't be mad, we're in the same boat. That netizen, after hearing Shin Shen's words and looking at everyone's comments, felt a sense of loss while holding his phone. Shin Shen saw that he didn't say anything and continued, for example, me, I'm just unlucky, always in bad luck, everyone avoids me, stays away from me. Do I care about that? Hey, I'll just come over to you, if you can't stand me, then bite me. The netizens burst into laughter again. This netizen couldn't help but laugh too. Yes, even though he felt inferior and suppressed, at least he had friends, family, which was a world of difference compared to Shin Shen. Why be so self-deprecating? Suddenly, he felt a sense of enlightenment. It seemed that accepting flaws wasn't such a big deal. If he didn't care, then who would? This netizen couldn't help but laugh and typed, I get it, thank you Shin Lao Gu, from now on I won't treat this matter as a worry anymore, let whoever wants to talk, talk, I don't care anyway. After saying that, he felt relieved. Alright, problem solved, next. Shin Shen was still worried that this guy might not take it well, but seeing him calmly accepting himself, he breathed a sigh of relief. However, he found that this group of netizens was even more sharp-tongued than him, making him unable to control his mouth even more. Shen Lao Gu, I'm as unlucky as you, I envy others for everything going so smoothly, is there any way to comfort me? Don't just look at others smooth sailing on the surface, in reality, they also have their own struggles. Shen Lao Gu, I lack perseverance, I've given up trying to lose weight to chase girls many times, can you help me? Who says you lack perseverance? Being single for so many years is a form of perseverance. Shen Lao Gu, I admit that I'm ugly, no girls like me, but can you make the school's beauty fall in love with me? You can, even though you're ugly, you have beautiful thoughts. Shin Shen, I'm an unhappy woman, my husband drinks and smokes every day and doesn't care about the family, how can I persuade him to quit smoking and drinking? 
Tell him, when he's old and has a stroke, you'll push him in a wheelchair to the square every day, let him watch you dance with other old men. Each question from the netizens was met with Shin Chen's sharp tongue. Although everyone was furious, they couldn't help but admit that it was true, without any ability to refute. Finally, a netizen couldn't help it, Bing Bing, please, ask Shin Lao Go to stop, I can't take it anymore, he's been scolding us for over an hour. Yeah, stop scolding, Shin Lao Go, I know I'm poor, ugly, and unloved, I'm going to work hard to make money now, and I won't watch your live stream anymore. Great sage, stop using your divine powers. Yen Bingbing was laughing heartily on the train, she didn't expect Shen Chen to be so sharp-tongued, making the netizens who were used to it constantly begging for mercy. However, the effect was quite obvious. The number of people in the live stream room had skyrocketed from over a thousand to over a hundred thousand, and it was still rising. The live streaming task given by the platform was definitely a success, attracting tens of thousands of fans at least. Yen Bingbing couldn't help but think about how to reward Shen Chen, and as she thought about it, a blush appeared on her face. Shin Shen didn't need Yen Bingbing's reward at all, he was already grinning from ear to ear. Just now, the system issued another prompt. Ding, system prompt, host has been immunized against sharp tongue remarks. This time immunized toxins, 4 slash 100. Immunity details, snake venom, water poison, toxic chicken soup, sharp tongue, please prepare to face the upcoming challenges, immunization against more powerful and intense toxins. At the same time, in the emergency management bureau of Zhengzhou City, Huang Shengjun was holding a cup of tea, just took a sip, and sprayed water all over the computer. He hurriedly looked for paper to wipe it off. Old Huang, what are you doing? You're so old, yet so impulsive. Sitting across from him was a man around 50 years old, who also had tea splashed on his face by Huang Shengjun. He was now helplessly wiping his face. This person has a square face, full of righteousness, sitting there looks majestic, making people feel exceptionally at ease. He looks like an old-fashioned inspector. Huang Shengjun laughed heartily, pointing at the computer screen. Lao Qin, I'm watching the live stream. You have no idea, this kid's mouth is so sharp, he silenced tens of thousands of viewers in the live stream room. The officer referred to as Lao Qin furrowed his brow deeply. Lao Huang, not to criticize you, but we are both veterans of the same year. When we return to our hometowns, we should maintain military discipline and appearance even more. Look at yourself now, what are you doing? Watching young people's live streams at work, isn't that a violation? He didn't give Huang Shengjun any face at all. Huang Shengjun retorted impatiently, Xin Baogua, don't give me that. If there's a problem, take it up with the higher-ups. The leaders in the province have instructed me to pay more attention to this young man and see if we can recruit him into our team. I'm just watching the live stream, don't wrongly accuse me. Recruit him? A internet celebrity? Xin Baogua curiously walked to the computer. He is the director of the Zhengzhou City Police Department, responsible for the safety of the lives and property of the people of Zhengzhou. Huang Shengjun is the director of the Emergency Management Bureau, responsible for emergency rescue and major accidents in Zhengzhou. The two can be said to cooperate frequently, as well as old comrades in arms, with a very close relationship. Today he came to find Huang Shengjun to borrow someone, but unexpectedly, he was attracted by Shen Chen in the live stream room. Oh, isn't this Shen Chen? How did he become an internet celebrity? Xin Baogua naturally recognized him at a glance. This guy has become quite famous in Zhengzhou City recently. He is the victim of the meteor shower injury incident. He is the victim of the East Port oil tanker fire incident. He is also a hostage and victim of the zoo escape incident. Xin Baogua even vaguely remembers that he was also a victim of a serious medical disturbance incident at the People's Hospital. Well, in the recent major events in Zhengzhou, he is the victim of all of them. Even the Book of Exonerations doesn't have his grievances. How could Qin Bagua not recognize him? This is a young man who is extremely unlucky to the point of being exquisite. Huang Shengjun smiled, it's Xin Shen, I was just thinking of introducing him to you. Introduce him? At this moment, Xin Shen was being sarcastic in the live stream room. This netizen, as the saying goes, life is not just about the present hardships, but also about the wedding invitations from exes. If you want to get by in life, you must wear a bit of green on your head but there are different levels of green. Your emperor green is a bit too much. Xin Baogua was immediately drawn in by Shen Chen's sharp words. Ha, emperor green, this kid's words are really sharp. Huang Shengjun also had a smile on his face, gesturing for him to continue watching. Shen Chen continued to educate his viewers, speaking of being a licking dog, there are three levels. The first level is the spare tire, used as a replacement when dumped. The second level is the jack, used to support when changing the spare tire. You belong to the third level, the air pump. Only when the goddess has a flat tire do you get used, 
and you still say you're not Emperor Green. What? You haven't even married her yet, just in the pursuit stage, and you don't count as Green? Shen Shen looked furious, you even went to the police station to change your name to her son's surname, and you're not called Emperor Green? You really are like a big piece of date cake pulled out after eating white bread, making a profit. Qin Bagua. He was speechless, this guy's mouth was too sharp. Huang Xingjun laughed and explained, this is just Shen Shen's way, the more you interact with him, the more you'll get used to it. However, Xin Bagua asked in confusion, wasn't he shot? I remember a few of my men accidentally injured him, why is he so spirited? That's why. Huang Shengjun patted Lao Qin's shoulder, I wanted to introduce him to you. This guy is different from others. He wasn't injured in the oil tanker explosion, the police shooting didn't hit him, and the animals didn't bite him. Isn't that amazing? Xin Bagua stroked his chin and nodded. After experiencing so many hardships, an ordinary person would have died long ago, or at least would have been completely paralyzed. But this guy, with his eloquent speech in the live broadcast room, seemed completely fine. Huang Xingjun closed Qin Chan's live broadcast room and his expression turned serious. Lao Qin, I've heard about the difficulties you're facing. This time the situation is serious, and the criminals are very arrogant. But my firefighters are not suitable to cooperate with you and carry out the mission. You want them to rush into the fire scene at all costs, they won't hesitate. But to have them disguise themselves to attract the criminals, that's a bit too much. Huang Xingjun wasn't unwilling to lend people, but he knew that lending someone like Qin Baoguo wouldn't get the job done and could even ruin things. He continued, I know a bit about this kid Shen Chen. He's passionate and courageous. If you can get him to help, this serious case will definitely be solved. Qin Baoguo was moved by his words. All right, Shen Chen is brave and enthusiastic, physically different from others, and most importantly, he's good at provoking hatred. The key is, whether he agrees or not. Qin Baoguo was somewhat worried. According to Huang Xingjun, Xin Chen was indeed the best candidate. But for such a dangerous matter, it was impossible to force someone without their consent. Huang Shengjun chuckled. You are the black cat sheriff of Zhengzhou. Just give him a call personally, and he will obediently come over. Is that so? Qin Bagua hesitantly called Xin Chen. Xin Chen, who was passionately educating his fans in the live broadcast, received an unfamiliar call. Hello, who is this? Is this Xin Chen? This is Zhengzhou Police Station. Are you currently live streaming? Xin Chen was surprised, looking at his live broadcast room and then around himself. Yes, how did you know? Hee <laughs> hee, kid, never mind how I know. We have some matters to discuss with you. When can you? Xin Chen looked disdainful. No, buddy, I have no record of staying in hotels, my bank account is almost zero, my credit card has been chewed by my dog, I don't like tea or stock trading either. What else do you want to scam from me? What else can you scam? Qin Bagua. He almost couldn't hold back from cursing out loud. This kid thought he was a scam caller. He sternly said, stop talking nonsense. Come to room 606 of Zhengzhou police station at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be waiting for you. Xin Shen, with an attitude, retorted upon hearing this. You wait for me, I'm not your father. Your scam skills are too low level. Let me tell you the truth. My uncle is the director of Zhengzhou police station. A word from him can dismantle your entire organization. After saying that, Xin Shen hung up the phone. With a serious expression, he warned his fans, Brothers, did you see that? Nowadays, phone scams are rampant. You must be careful. In the live broadcast room, fans expressed that they had also encountered similar situations. There were often people pretending to be from the police station or court making scam calls. Xin Lao did the right thing. Some even said that if they encountered such scam calls again, they would just scold them, without giving them a chance, as it was intolerable. Xin Shen said he had no problem with that, as long as they dared to call again, he dared to scold. Indeed, in just a few minutes, the phone rang again. Seeing the same number, Xin Shen answered and immediately started scolding without waiting for the other party to speak. I'm telling you, you've crossed the line. To someone as wise as me, your behavior is like a eunuch going to a brothel, seeking trouble for yourself. It's like a lobster showing its child to a hen utter nonsense. It's like a dung beetle wearing a mask, shameless. It's like Wu Song marrying Kardashian, clueless. It's like, shut up. The other party suddenly shouted. I am Qin Bagua from the Zhengzhou police station. Let me tell you, you're in big trouble, kid. The other party roared and hung up the phone. Hey, trying to scare me? Do you think I'm a graduate of Xiamen University? Xin Shen smirked, feeling a bit unsatisfied. Brothers, in the future, when you encounter scam calls, you should angrily scold them like I did, scold them a few times and they won't dare to call again. But for some reason, there was dead silence in the live broadcast room. 
After a while, a local netizen from Zhengzhou whispered, Brother Shen, it seems. It seems that the director of our Zhengzhou police station is named Xin Bagua. What? Xin Chen fell directly from his chair. Early the next day, Xin Chen nervously arrived at the Zhengzhou police station. Before coming, he specifically fed Goshing a meaty meal and gave it a chicken-flavored ham sausage. Finally, he left a hundred steamed buns before he could leave with peace of mind. In order to prevent Goshing from starving to death at home if he was detained. After registering at the gate, the gatekeeper looked at him with a smirk. Your name is Xin Chen, right? Yes. Tsk Tsk, impressive. The gatekeeper gave Xin Chen a thumbs up, making Xin Chen feel that life was full of darkness. Inside the police station, the passing police officers all looked at Xin Chen, causing him to be flattered. Am I that famous now? He grabbed a young police officer and asked in a low voice, Comrade, do you know me? The officer was startled when he was grabbed. You're the fearless Shen, right? Xin Chen nervously nodded. Do I have a new nickname again? What's going on? Why does it seem like everyone knows me? The officer looked pitiful. What do you think? You really let it out yesterday. Director Qin was furious and held an emergency meeting overnight to crack down on the telecommunications fraud groups in our Zhangzhou city. Bro, do you know? They arrested hundreds of people in one night. We haven't slept a wink until now. He rubbed his face, looking at Xin Chen with a look of despair. Last night, how many undercover scammers in Zhengzhou wished they could swallow Xin Chen alive? He had really provoked Qin Baogui to the extreme. When Qin Baogui returned to the police station, the first thing he did was to launch a decisive operation, announcing a crackdown and wiping out all the fraud gangs overnight. Somehow, the news leaked out that Xin Chen was Qin Baogui's nephew, and a single phone call ended a criminal industry. It was terrifying. Oh my, is this so bizarre? Xin Chen touched his nose and went straight to room 608, knocking on the door. Come in. A dignified voice came from inside, and Xin Chen pushed the door open. Who are you? Qin Baogua was reviewing documents, and when he saw Xin Chen, he raised his head slightly without stopping his hand. Director Qin, I'm Xin Chen. Didn't you ask me to come yesterday? Xin Chen cautiously walked in and looked around. Except for Qin Baogua, there was no one else in the room, which made him breathe a sigh of relief. It seemed that he wasn't going to be detained directly. Is that so? Your name is Xin Chen? I don't remember, did you come because of the telecom fraud? Qin Baogua put down his pen and looked at him with a forced smile. Suddenly, a sense of high pressure came rushing towards Xin Chen. Xin Chen felt a tightness in his heart and quickly laughed. Ah, how could that be? Director Qin, when I heard the call yesterday, I knew it was you. In order to not expose our close relationship, I had to play along and make you feel a bit wronged. Qin Baogua was stunned when he heard this. What relationship do we have? What are you talking about? Xin Chen shamelessly whispered, Don't I call you uncle? Get out! You rascal! Qin Baogua was broken by him and showed a helpless smile. Lao Huang, come in, I can't scare this kid. Lao Huang? Xin Chen turned around and saw an old acquaintance, Wang Shengjun from the Zhengzhou Emergency Management Bureau. Ha, you are always in trouble wherever you go. Lao Qin is famous for being unperturbed by favor or disgrace. Yesterday, you almost drove him crazy. You're so funny. Huang Shengjun walked in with a smile, reassuring Xin Chen to relax and sit down to talk. Xin Chen looked back and forth between the two of them, looking puzzled. So, Director Huang, Director Qin, why did you call me here? It is not necessary for two departments to join forces to catch me. I haven't committed such a serious crime, right? The two looked at each other. Huang Shengjun smiled, why would we catch you? You've done so many good things for us. Sit down, we called you here to ask for your help. Qin Baogua also nodded reservedly, feeling a bit embarrassed. Ask me for help? Seeing the two smiling faces, Xin Shen suddenly relaxed. Hey, you should have said so earlier. He wiped the cold sweat from his forehead, this guy had me all worried, even had my will prepared. I couldn't even bear to eat breakfast, thinking it was prison food. Qin Baogua was speechless, wondering how stingy Xin Shen could be to even scrounge for prison food. Xiao Shen, have some water first then we can talk. Xin Shen nodded, took a few steps back and relaxed. He picked up the teacup and drank it in one gulp, then noticed the cookies on Qin Bagua's desk and unabashedly grabbed one. All right, tell me, what's the matter? I won't hesitate to help. Crunch, crunch. Xin Shen chewed on the cookie, taking another piece without hesitation. Surprisingly, it was delicious. Little did he know, Qin Bagua's face turned green. He watched Xin Chen munching away, looking shaky and holding his hand in the air as if he had Parkinson's syndrome. It's just a cookie, no need to be so uptight about it. Xin Chen sarcastically commented, not expecting Qin Baogui to be so petty. This, this, this is evidence containing rat poison. Why did you eat it? 
Shin Baguo was terrified. Finally, he shouted and snatched the cookie from Shin Chen's hand. Then he desperately tried to pry open Shin Chen's mouth. Lao Huang, hurry, don't just stand there, make him spit it out, quickly. Huang Sheng Jun was also half scared, rushing over. The two grabbed Shin Chen, who looked bewildered, and punched him in the stomach. Ugh. Shin Chen felt his vision darken and passed out. Ding, system prompt, host immune to rat poison. This time immune to toxins, 5 slash 100. Immunity details, snake venom, water toxin, toxic chicken soup, toxic tongue, rat poison. Shin Shen never expected that life was full of traps. Who the hell would know that there were cookies laced with rat poison on Shin Bagua's desk? He woke up to the strong smell of formaldehyde around him. In a daze, he heard voices. Shin Shu, I've said it before, no need to take him to the hospital, this guy is fine, didn't you hear him snoring? A cold female voice entered Shin Chen's ears. Su He, can you be sure? This is a matter of life and death. Huang Sheng Jun spoke, his words filled with concern. Yeah, Xiao Su, Shin Shin just accidentally ingested rat poison, the last victim died like this, are you sure he's fine lying here? Qin Baogua also spoke, sounding very skeptical. He's fine, I gave him first aid, and he woke up. The cold female voice got closer, and a pair of cold hands rested on Shin Shen's head. First aid? Shin Shen couldn't help but think of artificial respiration. He he he. This female voice sounded strangely pleasant, and her appearance was not bad either. Although her hands were cold, a unique fragrance of a girl entered his nostrils. If. He he he. Shin Shen decided to wait a few more minutes before waking up, just in case the toxin hadn't subsided yet. What if he was lacking a bit of oxygen? His heart was pounding, and he closed his eyes, waiting for the cold first aid. In a daze, he felt the other person slowly bending down, the fragrance hitting his nose. A pair of small hands gently opened his mouth. At this critical moment, Qin Bagua spoke again. Su He, are you sure about this? You're a forensic doctor, why do you have to meddle in the affairs of the living? Xin Chen was suddenly startled. What's going on? A forensic doctor? He subconsciously tried to open his eyes. However, a plastic tube was deeply inserted into his mouth. Okay, let's wash your stomach first. Ugh. Shin Shen felt a strong sense of nausea coming from his stomach. Why insert the tube so deep? I'm not pretending anymore, I'm awake. He struggled to pull out the plastic tube, gagging. Awake. Coldly, Shin Shen glanced at Shin Shen, as if she had known all along that this guy was faking it. Shin Shen admitted honestly. I'm awake, but just woke up a second ago. In front of him stood a tall and beautiful woman, slim waist, long legs, and a white neck, but with a cold and unapproachable look. But she was a forensic doctor, not meant to be likable. Shin Chen, are you okay? Qin Bagua and Huang Shengjun saw Shin Chen sitting up and hurried to his bedside. The two were sweating cold. Too mysterious. When the poison cookies used as evidence were placed on the table for examination, Shin Chen picked one up and ate it. It contained a large amount of rat poison, this guy was really unlucky. Seeing that he was fine, the two could only attribute it to Shin Shen vomiting it out. Qin Bureau, can we not put such dangerous things out in the open? You've given me a great fear of Oreos. Shin Shen looked at Qin Bagua irritably, then glanced around. Wow. It's so cold here, no wonder you guys brought me straight to the forensic room. Shin Chen's gaze fell on the surrounding refrigerators. The room was chilling, explaining why the forensic doctor's hands were so cold. Qin Bagua and Huang Sheng Jun looked embarrassed. They wanted to take him to the hospital directly, but Shin Shen had just fainted when the forensic doctor Sui entered. In an emergency, she had him carried to the forensic room for treatment. But she later found out that Shin Shen was perfectly fine and was even asleep. When she mentioned rescuing him, he gave her a strange smile, and Su He knew what was going on. Unable to tolerate his antics at the police station, she couldn't help but give him a lesson. It would be easier, if you die, I'll just do an autopsy on the spot, saving the trouble of back and forth. Su He made a cold joke, making Shin Chen shiver. This woman was so cold. He he, it's good that you're okay, it's good that you're okay. Shin Chen, your constitution is really different from others, if it weren't for the poison cookies killing someone, I would suspect the rat poison had expired. Qin Bagua walked over, wanting to help Shin Chen off the bed. The more he looked at Shin Chen, the more delighted he became. This kid was perfect for the upcoming task. Seeing that Shin Chen was fine, he wanted to take him back to the office to talk. Qin Bureau, let's discuss the case here, everyone is present. No need to go back to your office, it's convenient. The forensic doctor Su He suddenly spoke as they were about to leave. Hmm. Qin Bagua immediately understood what she meant. Right, everyone is here, let's discuss it here. Qin Bagua looked at Shin Chen with a questioning look. Mister. 
Shen, you were called here because Director Huang highly recommended you, saying you are courageous and warm-hearted. We happen to have encountered a difficult matter, and we are seeking your help. Shen Shen smiled and waved his hand. Uncle Qin, just tell me what's going on, I will do my best and won't refuse. He couldn't refuse. With the crossing tribulation system in place, as long as Shen Shen stayed in Zhangzhou, he would often interact with these two people in front of him. One was in charge of major accident rescues, and the other was responsible for public safety. There was also the old director of the People's Hospital, in charge of treating and saving lives. It could be said that Shin Shin couldn't do without these three people. Moreover, he keenly felt that Qin Bagua's request must be related to the poison, even to the crossing tribulation. Otherwise, it wouldn't be so coincidental. Qin Bagua was a bit surprised when Shin Shen readily agreed to help, not expecting this guy, who was so sarcastic, to agree to help so readily. That's good, Lao Huang, you can go first. Let's talk about the case among us. Qin Bagua happily sent Huang Xingjun away, leaving the three of them in the forensic room. Xin Shen, are you afraid of dead people? After Huang Xingjun left, Qin Bagua suddenly asked. Xin Shen was taken aback and instinctively shook his head. Not afraid? What's wrong, Uncle Qin? During the time on the Viking cruise ship, Nia from the Bald Eagle team died in front of him, and there was nothing to fear. Facing death for so many years, the idea of narrowly escaping death no longer applied, it was more like facing death at every turn. It's good that you're not afraid, now that the nine of us are all here, let's talk about this matter. Nine people? Xin Shen was puzzled, where did Qin Bagua learn to count like this? Xin Bagua began to speak. Xin Shen, let me introduce you, this is our police station's top forensic expert, Sui. Xin Bagua formally introduced Su He to Xin Shen. Xin Shen nodded, intending to greet him, but Qin Bagua continued speaking. This is one of the victims of the 7-16 case, Wang Daqing. As he spoke, he reached out and opened a freezer, pulling out a stiff corpse. Xin Shen grimaced. Uncle Qin, your way of introducing people is quite unique. Familiar at first sight, but it was a sight of the deceased. He probably figured out how the remaining five people would be introduced. This is one of the victims of the seven. 16 case, Li Wanxia, she is Wang Duqing's wife. As Qin Baogua continued to open the freezer, more bodies were revealed. This is Wang Fusheng, Wang Duqing's father. This is Song Ruifen, Wang Duqing's mother. This is Li Xingqi, Han Yumei, the parents of the deceased Li Wanxia. Six cold bodies were displayed in front of Xin Shen. Xin Shen felt a chill run down his spine. A massacre. No wonder old Qin said there would be a meeting of nine people. Turns out it was three living people and six dead people having a meeting together. Xin Chen was suddenly alert. Everyone is here, Su Yi, please brief Xin Chen on the situation. Two days later, Xin Bagua, still looking solemn, saw the bodies of these people again. Su Yi nodded, approaching the six bodies. Xin Chen, as you can see, all six of these people died from poisoning, using cyanide, arsenic trioxide, rat poison, castor bean extract, silver ring snake venom, and dichlorvos. Six people, six types of poison. Xin Chen looked at the six bodies, feeling a wave of coldness. Some looked peaceful, as if they were just sleeping. Some had terrifying expressions, looking exceptionally horrifying. One person was curled up in extreme pain when they died. Are all these people part of one case? Xin Shen held back his question and pushed them into the freezer himself. It was too distressing to look at. Xin Bagui nodded, yes, two days ago, on July 16th, six people experienced poisoning at three different locations simultaneously. Our team arrived but all the victims had already died, leaving no chance for rescue. The culprit was extremely audacious, using six types of poison at three locations simultaneously, causing great panic among the residents of the three areas. Xin Shen, I brought you here to ask for your help in solving this case and catching the culprit. Xin Shen asked in confusion, Uncle Qin, what can I do? He knew his own abilities, immune to poisons, with strong resistance to attacks, and a meteorite phone in his head. It seemed like he wouldn't be able to solve the case. Qin Bagua looked at him, Xin Shen, we found that your constitution is different from others, and your luck. Cough, your luck is not good. After much consideration, we can only ask you to help us protect one person. Who? Qin Bagua stared at him intently. Wang Bauer, the only surviving bloodline of the six deceased individuals. After Xin Shen walked out of the forensic room, the sense of frustration in his heart subsided a bit. It wasn't the coldness inside. But the thought of a family of six dying under a deadly poison that sent a chill down his spine. What kind of deep-seated hatred could drive the killer to murder a family of six? In the office, Qin Bagua briefed him on the origins and details of the case. The deceased Wang Daqing and Li Wanxia were both from Zhangzhou. They were just 30 years old this year, running a supermarket in the neighborhood, leading a happy and fulfilling life. 
They had a daughter named Wang Bauer, who was in the kindergarten middle class. Two days ago on July 16th, the kindergarten teacher waited in vain for Bauer's parents to pick her up, so she personally took her home. The supermarket downstairs was closed, so Bauer went upstairs to get a spare key. When the teacher opened the door, her parents were already dead inside. At the same time, residents of two houses in the north and south of the city also reported finding bodies. Through autopsy, it was discovered that the six members of the Wang family died almost simultaneously, all poisoned by someone. This was an extremely heinous poisoning case. The surrounding residents were in great panic, with many moving out overnight, afraid to return. This case attracted high attention from the city and the province. They gave Qin Bagua a strict order to solve the case within five days. Now, two days have passed, and Qin Bagua and his investigators have not found any clues. The killer was extremely cunning, to the point that it was still unclear whether the killer acted alone or as part of a group. To prevent any harm to the last survivor, Wang Bauer, Qin Bagua deployed a large number of personnel to protect her openly and covertly. At the same time, a considerable amount of police force was stationed at the police station. He called Shen Shen over to have him take care of protecting Wang Bauer for a few days, so they could focus all their efforts on finding the real culprit. And there was another reason. This guy was unlucky enough. Shen Shen, I'll ask for your opinion one last time. This matter is extremely dangerous, and any slight mistake could endanger your life. You can choose not to participate now. We'll pretend we never called you. After Qin Bagua finished speaking, he stared at Shen Shen closely, unsure of his final decision. Shen Shen crossed his hands and raised his head. Director Qin, I have a question. Since Wang Bauer is in such a dangerous situation, why are you having me protect her personally instead of placing her in the police station? I think that would be the safest place, right? After hearing Shen Shen's words, Qin Bagua secretly praised him. This kid was not only sharp-tongued but also quite clever. Good question. First, this little girl has suffered extreme trauma and can only find peace at home and in the kindergarten. Second, the police station cannot watch over her 24-7, and she needs to return to a normal life. Lastly, he paused for a moment, not mentioning the final reason. Shin Chun chuckled and said, Lastly, Wang Bauer is likely the next target of the killer. If you want to catch the killer, you have to wait for them to reveal themselves, right? Qin Bagua smiled bitterly, this guy was indeed sharp. Exactly, we have considered this. We have deployed a large number of personnel to protect her openly and covertly, but the killer seems to have vanished into thin air, leaving no trace. Director Qin, aren't you afraid that Wang Bauer might be harmed by the killer due to an accident? Shen Shen frowned, thinking it was too risky. No, we have officers protecting her at all times. There is an officer disguised as a teacher in the kindergarten and there are people to pick her up after school, so there won't be any accidents. Is that so? Shin Chen also stared at Qin Bagua intently. How can you guarantee that there won't be any accidents? What if the killer manages to kill the officers as well? Shin Chen persistently asked, disregarding the other party's identity. Qin Bagua was stunned, looking at him for a long time, finally realizing another side of this young man. Respect for life. In Shin Chen's view, every life deserves respect. If Wang Bauer were to be put in danger because of solving the case, he would be very resistant deep down. Qin Bagua couldn't help but value Xin Chen more. It was because of his respect for life that he got involved in a series of sudden events, desperately trying to save innocent people or animals. To the point of sacrificing himself? Xin Bagua chuckled and waved to Sui standing beside him. Xin Chen, Sui is the one responsible for protecting Wang Bauer personally after school. She is proficient in various poisons, can identify potential dangers, and can even sacrifice her life for Wang Bauer at critical moments. Do you think that's not enough? Sui saw Shin Chen remaining silent and sneered. Just say whether you agree or not, stop beating around the bush, are you a man or not? Shin Chen looked at her and stood up. Agree, of course I agree. From today onwards, I will be responsible for protecting Wang Bauer until you catch the lurking murderer. He eventually agreed. With antibodies to toxins in his body, and the fifth great calamity system, Shin Chen had no reason to refuse Qin Bagua's request. Most importantly, this five-year-old Wang Bauer was truly pitiful. He had seen Wang Bauer's photo, a pure and lovely little girl, which reminded him of his own childhood. Even without the fifth great calamity, this child was already destined. Qin Shu, in what capacity am I accompanying Wang Bauer? Qin Bagua visibly relaxed when Shin Chen agreed. With this, the large number of police officers guarding downstairs could temporarily focus on catching the culprit. You are Wang Bauer's uncle, and Suhi is Wang Bauer's aunt, who came from out of town specifically upon hearing about the incident, and will stay at the Wang family for these two days. Whoa! Shin Shen couldn't help but glance at Suhi. 
he already had a wife? If Bingbing found out, would she scratch him to death? Wife, he tentatively called out, wanting to see her reaction. Su He, she looked coldly at Xin Chen, not even bothering to respond to him. Xin Shu, look, she's not cooperating. If the culprit is someone close to the Wang family, won't we expose ourselves? Xin Baogua looked helpless. Su Forensic, please cooperate with Xin Chen. If the culprit is really someone close to the Wang family, it will be easy to see through their facade. Su He reluctantly smiled. Fine. Xin Chen grinned. Wife? Whom? Shall we sleep together tonight? Get lost. Ha ha. Xin Chen burst into laughter, finally getting back at her for the tube she put down his throat. Seeing her pale face blush, he smugly walked out the door. Dad, just to clarify, if he dares to provoke me again, I won't mind dissecting him. Su Yi suddenly said coldly behind Xin Chen. Xin Chen was almost scared out of his wits by her words as he reached the door. Ha! He slowly turned around to see Qin Baogua looking furious. Are you two father and daughter? What do you think? Qin Baogua glared at Xin Chen through gritted teeth. I warn you, Xin Chen, if you dare to have any ideas about my daughter, I won't mind sending you to the brothel to have a taste of your own medicine. Xin Chen immediately covered his face. You two are family, why didn't you say so earlier? Teasing someone's daughter in front of Qin Baogua. How embarrassing. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon, in the city center district kindergarten, Xin Chen and Su He were waiting at the door for Wang Bauer to finish school. Wife, call me Su He. Xin Chen grinned, okay, Su He, can I ask why your surname is Su, is your dad's surname Qin? Could it be that Qin Shu is actually a son-in-law, doing the dishes and laundry at home every day, like a crooked dragon king? Su He gave him a cold glance and pursed her red lips. Foster father. Okay, I'm sorry. Xin Chen couldn't help but slap himself in the face, then asked about the other person's sadness. Su Yi looked at Xin Chen's reaction, somewhat surprised that this person would actually apologize. It's nothing serious. My parents died when I was young, and my foster father adopted me. Besides, my dad was not a son-in-law, he remained unmarried and childless his whole life. Su Yi said without any emotion, but it touched Xin Chen. He was about to say something. The school bell rang, and the children all ran out. Bauer, over here. Su Yi rarely smiled, watching a doll-like little girl walk slowly towards them. Bauer, your aunt is here to pick you up. The kindergarten teacher brought Bauer and handed her over to Su He. At the same time, she discreetly made a gesture indicating that everything was normal. Xin Shen thought to himself that this teacher was probably an undercover police officer. Su He nodded to her, squatted down, and asked Wang Bauer affectionately, Bauer, how was your day at kindergarten? Did you play with your friends? What did the teacher teach you? Wang Bauer looked blankly, only lifting her eyelids to look at the other person when Su Yi called her. Then she took two steps back. No, she taught me how to draw. After speaking, Wang Bauer lowered her head again to study her hands. At just five years old, she seemed to have no understanding of what a family tragedy was, or what it meant to have both parents dead. She just instinctively resisted the stranger in front of her. Su Yi felt a pang of heartache, picked her up, called Xin Chen, and was about to leave. Oh, Bauer, your aunt is here to pick you up again. A child's mother suddenly came over to them. Yes, Aunt Yunxian, we're leaving now. Su Yi politely greeted the other person and was about to leave. Wait, why does this person look so familiar to me? Who is he? Aunt Yunxian, full of gossip, stopped the two of them. Many parents who were picking up their children also noticed and gathered around. Everyone had heard about the tragedy in the Wang family, and while feeling sorry, they were also curious about the person appearing next to Bauer. All six members of the Wang family had died, and it was said that the aunt who had come from out of town was now taking care of Bauer. This is. Su Yi looked at Xin Chen, feeling a bit flustered, and didn't have the heart to shamelessly claim that he was her husband like Xin Chen did. Xin Chen chuckled, it was his turn to shine now. Seeing everyone asking about him, he pondered for a moment, closed his eyes for a second. When he opened his eyes again, a hint of sadness was already visible. This was a basic quality required for a good actor and undercover agent. He looked up at the sky, a tear fell from the corner of his eye. When the tear reached his lips, he gently wiped it away. When he had the right feeling and his state was fully prepared, he slowly spoke. I am. You're Shen Chen, right? Aunt Yun Shen exclaimed, hey, everyone come and see. Brother Shen is here. What? Shen Chen is here? Where, where, I want to see. Hey, isn't this the unluckiest guy in history? Ha, he looks pretty spirited. Brother Shen, can you give me an autograph? I'm your fan, I've been following you for a long time. Everyone surrounded him, looking at Shin Chen as if he were an alien. Shin Chen looked overwhelmed. What's going on? I haven't even said who I am yet, how did they all recognize me? 
If this were an undercover operation, I would be dead before the first episode's theme song finished. He hadn't expected, and even Qin Baogua and Sui hadn't expected, that Chen Shen's name was almost universally known in Zhengzhou. Including his appearance, everyone had a deep impression. It was quite normal for these moms who spent their time watching live streams to recognize him. Xin Shen had to force himself to remain calm and waved his hand to explain. You've got the wrong person. I'm not Xin Shen. I'm Xin Dehai. Everyone rolled their eyes. Who would believe that? Brother Xin, when did you get married? Originally, you are little Bao's uncle? Hmm, indeed. Impossible, this kind of thing. Ah, this is. I just remembered that I didn't close the windows at home. There's still millet porridge simmering at my house, hurry, hurry. Everyone wanted to ask more questions, but suddenly thought of something and all quickly moved five meters away from Shen Shen. They glanced at each other and hurriedly ran off, no one dared to stay for long. The previous enthusiasm suddenly turned into avoidance. At the entrance of the kindergarten, only Shen Shen and two others were left. Sui felt strange, why did these people leave as soon as they said so? Shen Shen remained silent, picked up Wang Bauer and walked away. Sui watched his back and seemed to understand something, sighed slightly and quickly followed. At that moment, a miniature camera hidden on Shin Shun captured everything. In the office of the 7. 16 special case team at Zhongzhou police station. The big screen was playing everything that just happened. Shin Bagua looked at Shin Shin being suddenly shunned by everyone, feeling a pang in his heart. Naturally, these people thought that if Shin Shen was really Wang Bauer's uncle, it would explain the tragic death of Wang Bauer's family of six. How could they know that Shen Shen was just helping out of righteousness and had nothing to do with the deaths of Wang Duqing and his family? Lao Qing, seeking gain and avoiding harm is human nature. Shen Shen's ill fate has made everyone avoid him. Beside Qin Baogua, an older police officer sighed. But this is also good, at least everyone won't gather around, and the killer is more likely to show up. We will have a better chance of catching him. Let's not mention him. Qin Baogua waved his hand, interrupting the old police officer, and looked solemnly at the members of the special case team. Everyone, you've been busy all day, tell me, do you have any leads? The members of the special case team all lowered their heads. Sheen Bureau, I investigated all the chemical and pesticide stores in the city, but found no clues of private purchases of banned chemicals. It indicates that the killer did not buy the poison from Zhengzhou. We reviewed all the surveillance videos at the crime scene, but found no clues. We plan to review them again. Our team investigated all the victims' relatives, friends, and neighbors, but have not found any leads yet. We plan to expand the search tomorrow and check the places the victims had been to. Everyone reported their work, but it was another day of no progress. Everyone was disheartened. Qin Baogua seemed to have anticipated this, and he slowly stood up. Everyone, the directive from the higher-ups is to solve this case within five days. But I want to make a request to all of you. Everyone looked at Qin Baogua. My personal request is that the 7. 16 case must be solved within 72 hours. Ah, everyone was incredulous, how could this be possible? Qin Baogua got up from his seat and looked at everyone. Everyone, since the founding of the Great Xia Nation, there have been only three cases of family extermination in Zhengzhou. All three cases were solved on the same day, giving justice to the victims and the people of Zhengzhou. And now, two days have passed, our special case team has not found any clues, not identified a single suspect, what does this indicate? Xin Bagua's voice grew louder, and the heads of the special case team members drooped lower. It means, it's my dereliction of duty. It's my leadership's incompetence. With a loud bang, Xin Bagua slammed the table. I declare that if the 7. 16 case is not solved within 72 hours, I, Xin Bagua, will resign in disgrace. Otherwise, I will be sorry for the 6 victims. Sorry for the only bloodline they left behind, and even more sorry for the trust of millions of people in Zhengzhou. His words were resolute, echoing in the room like thunder, causing everyone to stand up in a panic. The Qin Bureau, this. We didn't investigate thoroughly enough, we will go investigate again immediately. Qin Bureau, our team will watch the video again tonight to ensure we find clues. Everyone felt ashamed when Qin Baogua took full responsibility, not knowing what to say. Qin Baogua raised his hand, about to speak. Everyone, look, what is Xin Shen going to do? The old police officer suddenly pointed at the big screen asking in confusion. Xin Shen, Su He, and Wang Bauer did not go home. Since their home was a crime scene and still under investigation, they had to stay temporarily in the supermarket in the community. Su He opened the rolling door, allowing Xin Shen to carry Wang Bauer inside. It was a small supermarket converted from two private garages, one for displaying goods and the other for receiving deliveries. This setup was common in most northern communities. Bauer returned to a familiar place, her tense little face finally relaxing a bit. 
She wriggled out of Shin Chen's arms, jumped down, and skillfully turned on the TV on the wall. Then, she sat on a small stool, hugging her legs, watching cartoons. She didn't say a word to Shin Chen and Su He the whole time. Ah, uh, Su He, how have you been these past few days? Shin Chen didn't know what he could do, feeling like his presence was unnecessary in the cramped space. Su He stood behind the cash register, tilting her head. What can we do? Bauer hardly talks to me. I just sell things here and handle deliveries when someone comes. But after what happened, no one has come to buy anything. At most, they come to pick up deliveries. Shin Shen looked at the small bed in the next room and the scattered delivery boxes. Do you sleep here at night? Where else? I tried taking Bauer to a hotel or back home, but she kept crying nonstop. Only here and at the kindergarten can she be quiet. Shin Shen fell silent. He empathized. He remembered when he was first sent to the orphanage, he cried and screamed all night until he finally calmed down. Compared to Wang Bauer's silence, he felt inadequate. But this kind of silence was more worrying. The more silent she was, the bigger the problem in the child's heart. He sighed, picked up a bag of chips, and walked over to Bauer, about to open it. Five yuan. Suhi said coldly from behind the counter. Shen Chen. Suhi said, don't try to use other people's things to please the child. The money from sales should all go to Bauer. Shen Chen, helpless, reluctantly gave Sui five yuan, then walked back to Bauer, trying to force a smile. Bauer, do you want some chips? Wang Bauer glanced at Shen Chen timidly and said, My mom doesn't allow me to eat snacks from the store. She hugged her legs, looking so obedient it was heart-wrenching. Shen Chen's expression darkened, about to speak. But my dad allows it. He always secretly gives me some. Uncle, I want to eat. Wang Bauer seemed temporarily distracted by the chips, blinking at Shen Chen. Shin Shen breathed a sigh of relief, the child finally spoke to him. Suhi behind the counter also looked surprised. What charm did Shin Shen have to make Bauer talk to him for the first time in days? She had only nodded or shaken her head in response to anything Suhi said, at most uttering one or two words. Was this guy so good with kids? Shin Shen chuckled, ready to open the bag of chips. Ding, emergency warning, the host is about to be poisoned. Just as he was about to open the bag of chips, the disaster warning system unexpectedly issued an alert one second early. Shin Shen's face turned pale, and he turned to walk towards the supermarket entrance. Hey, Shin Shen, where are you going? Sui saw that he was about to open the chips for Wang Bauer, not realizing he was deceiving the child. Don't say anything. Shin Shen waved his hand at Su He and arrived at the supermarket entrance. His sudden actions and serious expression made Sui curious and she followed him. What's wrong? Shin Shen pointed to the unopened bag of potato chips in his hand, I suspect there's something wrong with this bag of chips. Sui stared at him speechlessly, Shin Shen, are you scared? Do you really think there are poisoners everywhere? This bag of chips is unopened, it's just air inside, what poison could there be? If you want to eat it, go ahead, stop making excuses. She scorned Shin Shen's gluttony, this guy wouldn't have eaten the police's poison cookies if he wasn't so gluttonous. He he. Shin Shen couldn't be bothered to explain, he walked five meters away from Su He and tore open the bag of chips. Puff. The next second, a black smoke billowed out, enveloping Shin Chen's face. Ding, system prompt, host immune to cyanide toxin. Toxins immunized this time, 6 100. Immunity details, snake venom, water toxin, poison chicken soup, toxic tongue, rat poison, cyanide, see, there are dangers everywhere in life. Shin Chen, covered in black smoke, shrugged and said to Su He. Then, he happily fainted again. Damn, this was the fourth time. Before Shin Shen fell, he reflected on why he didn't wear something thicker. Falling on the ground was really painful. Shen Chen. Su He was shocked, staring blankly as Shin Shen collapsed. A strong smell of bitter almonds filled the air. She hurriedly covered her mouth and nose, unsure of what to do. It was cyanide. How could cyanide gas come out of the potato chips? Shin Bug was angry shout came through her earphones. This poor kid. Xiao He, we're almost there, you saved Shin Shen first. The task force was in chaos, no one expected a bag of potato chips in the supermarket to emit a deadly poison. Everyone rushed out and hurried to the scene. Sui forced herself to calm down. At this point, the cyanide smoke had dissipated into the air outdoors. She quickly pulled down the shutter door, held her breath, and ran to Shin Chen's side. Shin Chen's face was red, his body was hot, the most obvious symptoms of cyanide poisoning. Sui dragged him to a flat area in the community where the air was fresher. Then, she nervously felt Shin Chen's neck and was shocked. The major artery had stopped pulsating. Placing her hand on his nose, she realized he had stopped breathing. Su He was pale with fear, quickly straddled Shin Chen, pressed hard on his heart, and began CPR. 
30 compressions, 2 rescue breaths, 5 cycles. 30 compressions, 2 rescue breaths, 5 cycles. 30 compressions, 2 rescue breaths, 5 cycles. Normally calm, so he was now trembling, at a loss, reciting the knowledge she had learned in school. Although she was used to seeing dead bodies, it was the first time she had seen a living person die in front of her. Especially Shin Chen. Shin Chen had told her the chips were suspicious, and she had mocked him for being gluttonous. She was one of the accomplices who had caused Shin Chen's death. She mumbled, crying as she pressed on Shin Chen's heart. Shin Chen, don't die. Hang in there. The ambulance is coming soon. I'm sorry, it's me. I caused this to you. She rambled, tears streaming down her face and falling on Shin Chen's face. After 30 compressions, Sui decisively opened Shin Chen's mouth, took a deep breath, and gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Who? Who? After five breaths, Sui felt like all the oxygen in her body had been depleted, feeling dizzy. In fact, it was a trace of cyanide remaining on Shin Chen's lips that also poisoned her. She didn't care, continuing to press on Shin Chen's chest. Hang in there, hang in there, don't die. She cried and begged, pleading with Shin Chen not to get into trouble. After pressing 30 times, Sui put her mouth back on. Unexpectedly, Shin Chen under her suddenly opened his eyes. Wife, why are you kissing me? Ah! Suhi looked as if she had seen a ghost and fell directly off Shin Chen. How did you wake up? Shin Chen smiled and sat up. What if I didn't wake up? This time I dare not pretend to sleep, so you won't insert a tube to wash my stomach again. This time the coma lasted even shorter, probably only 3 to 5 minutes. Shin Chen found that his immunity to toxins was getting stronger. He said, subconsciously licking the corner of his mouth, tasting a mouthful of bitter almond flavor. He understood the bitter almond flavor, which was cyanide. However, strangely, there was a hint of sweet strawberry flavor in the bitter almond taste. What are you doing? Sui saw Shin Chen licking the corner of his mouth, looking flustered. Shin Chen asked in confusion, No, I'm wondering, why do I taste strawberry at the corner of my mouth? Did you feed me strawberries? Sui hurriedly wiped her mouth and nodded repeatedly. Yes, yes, that's right, you were poisoned, strawberries can neutralize the toxicity. She said, secretly throwing away the strawberry-flavored lip balm in her pocket. If he found out that she had given him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, he would probably die laughing. Is that so? Shin Shen suddenly realized, Sui, I learned something from you again. Do you know that if a person eats 400 bananas in a row? He began to show off the little knowledge he had learned to the forensic doctor and suddenly the alarm bell rang loudly in the neighborhood. Sheen Bagua arrived with a large group of people. Surround them all, martial law. No one is allowed to come near. Sheen Bagua shouted in panic and ran down from the car. The detectives from the police station followed closely behind, as if facing a major enemy. A group of people ran to the entrance of the small supermarket, only to see Shin Shin sitting on the ground, teaching Suhi in a proper manner. Not only bananas, but if you eat 24 tubes of toothpaste in a row, you'll die too and oranges, but that's a bit more troublesome, you need to eat 11,000 in one meal, which will cause a serious excess of vitamin C. Sui listened with a speechless expression, if it weren't for Shin Chen's reasonable words. She would have thought that Shin Chen had been stupefied by cyanide. Xiao He, Shin Chen, are you both okay? Shin Bagui ran over, looking at the two of them, somewhat stunned. How harmonious they were. Sui seemed to be rescued and quickly stood up. Dad. Shin Biro, Shin Chen is fine. Ah, so fast? Shin Bagua looked at Shin Chen, looking incredulous. Seeing the large group arriving, Shin Chen also patted his butt and stood up with a smile. Shin Chen, are you sure you're okay? Xiao He, do you want to take him to the hospital for a checkup? Shin Bagua doubted whether this guy was poisoned or not, seeing Shin Chen jumping around. Su He was also puzzled. She clearly saw the cyanide smoke spraying on Shin Chen's face, how could nothing happen? Ah, uh, Shin Chen saw everyone looking at him in confusion so he had to explain. I ate snake bile when I was a child, and then I became immune to all poisons, yes, that's it. That snake bile was so bitter. Everyone looked incredulous, if snake bile could make one immune to all poisons, that species would have been extinct long ago. But seeing that he was really fine, Shin Bagua had to let the ambulance leave first. Shin Shen, what happened just now? He led a few people into the small supermarket to investigate. Wang Bauer seemed completely insensitive to what had happened, still hugging her legs and watching TV. I said to let Bauer eat potato chips, suddenly felt something was wrong, opened it and found it was cyanide gas, as for when it was placed here, I don't know either. Shin Chen explained the course of events. In fact, everyone saw it through the camera, but no one expected that the potato chips contained such a deadly poison. If it weren't for Shin Chen's high vigilance, the consequences of running to the door and opening the bag of potato chips would be unimaginable. The killer is simply insane. 
Now, even Qin Bagua dares not say that Wang Bauer will definitely not have an accident. It's not just Bauer, if someone happened to buy a bag of potato chips with cyanide, then everyone couldn't help but shudder at the thought. The killer is extremely insane. Qin Bagua focused his gaze on the potato chips on the shelf. These things. Bring two people, take them outside and open them to check. He wanted to see if these potato chips still had cyanide. Soon, two people in protective suits and gas masks took all the potato chips outside to an open space. Everyone watched from a distance, all wearing gas masks. Let's begin. Sheen Bagua said muffledly through the gas mask. The two fully protected individuals nodded and began to tear open the potato chips on the ground one by one. One bag, nothing. Two bags, nothing. Three bags, nothing. Under everyone's gaze, the two opened all the unopened bags of potato chips and found no cyanide. Everyone couldn't help but look at Shin Chen in amazement. Incredible. My buddy Shin. You have once again demonstrated what it means to be a man favored by the god of death. Did you abandon the god of death? Dozens of bags of various flavored potato chips on the shelf, and the one you picked just happened to have a problem. If Shin Chen hadn't opened it himself, everyone would probably suspect him of poisoning. This time, Shin Chen was left red-faced and he waved his hand with a smile. I just randomly picked a bag. Didn't expect it to be so toxic. Shin Bagua narrowed his eyes. Shin Chen, how did you pick it up? Can you demonstrate it again for us? He wanted to determine if the killer deliberately placed it in a specific location. For example, in front of the TV, where Wang Bauer could easily reach. Or near the outermost shelf, where customers could grab it easily. The placement of the poison is crucial. It can indicate who the killer's next target will be. Seeing Shin Bagua's request, Shin Chen had to go back into the supermarket. I walked here and just picked it up. This time, Shin Chen randomly picked up a sealed bag of shrimp crackers. I say, Bauer, you eat it, and then I'll open it. Put. He casually tore open the packaging. Another black mist emerged. Wow. What's going on? Everyone was scared to death, luckily still wearing gas masks. Another cyanide mist sprayed out. This time, Shin Chen acted much faster. He threw away the shrimp crackers, stepped back quickly, trying not to let any poisonous gas touch him. The system's disaster warning issued a reminder a second ago, but Shin Chen had instinctively moved far away. After the cyanide dissipated in the air, everyone dared to approach. Sure enough, the potato chips were free of poison, but the shrimp crackers emitted toxic gas. Ah, uh, Shin Chen, you. Well, take care of yourself. Shin Bagwe sighed, looking sympathetic. How did this child survive to this age? With such incredible luck, didn't he ever eat a poison candy as a child? burning his scalp just from the heat? Shin Chen looked disappointed, indicating he was not surprised. Sui couldn't help but laugh at his world-weary look, holding her stomach and laughing uncontrollably. Everyone was stunned. Even the coldest forensic doctor in the entire police station, Suhi, was amused by this guy. Suhi saw everyone staring at her dumbfounded, realizing she almost broke character. She quickly stood up, resumed her cold demeanor. Since that's the case, let Shin Chen put on protective gear and continue to check the snacks. She made a rather creative suggestion. You have such good luck, so why don't you come and identify which item in the room is poisonous? The crowd nodded in agreement, this way is the most efficient. Shin Shen was stunned, looking at Sui's smiling face, he thought to himself that this woman is a bit strange. How he looked at himself, there was a different feeling. He shook his head, it must be an illusion. Just by the habit of carrying a scalpel with her, he knew she couldn't possibly be interested in men. Shin Shen saw everyone agreeing to let him continue opening snacks, so he agreed. Forget it, don't waste time, take everything in the house and go back to open it slowly. Shin Bagwa waved his hand, feeling anxious. With less than 24 hours left until the 72-hour deadline he set for solving the case, if they didn't find concrete clues soon. Bring the car over to move the stuff, take everything back for inspection. Shin Bagwa ordered, and more than 10 people began to move things from the supermarket. It was a busy night. However, the sudden commotion startled Weinbauer, she saw the adults starting to move things from the house. She pouted and started crying. Suhi hurriedly hugged her. Auntie, what are you doing? These are our things, don't take them away. My mom said she would sell them and buy me dolls. I want to find my mom, I want to find my dad. You bad guys, why are you stealing from my house? The piercing cries shattered the tranquility of the neighborhood. Shin Shen suddenly walked over quickly. Shin Shu, stop moving. Shin Bagua acted as if he hadn't heard, his face dark and silent. Bad people, you are all bad people, why are you taking things from my house? Wang Bauer may not understand what the adults were doing, she only knew that her parents' things were being taken away. At that moment, 
she cried and struggled in Sui's arms, trying to stop the officers from moving things. Her fair little face turned red from being choked, tears and snot streaming down. Stop it, all of you. Xin Shen couldn't bear it anymore, shouted loudly, standing in front of everyone. He looked at Wang Bauer crying uncontrollably, feeling like a knife was cutting into his heart. Xin Bagua frowned at Xin Shen. What are you doing? Xin Shu, can't we not move these things? Xin Bagua decisively refused. No, we must move them back for inspection, there may be clues to the murderer hidden in them, and besides, who can bear the responsibility of letting poisonous food enter society? Xin Shen gritted his teeth. I will. I will take responsibility for this. I promise you, if there's a problem, I will bear it alone. Xin Bagua chuckled in anger. What guarantee do you have? Do you know which of these things in the house are poisonous? How would I not know? Xin Shen argued back, I will pick out all the poisonous ones for you to take back and inspect. Why make the child cry like this? The crowd was stunned to hear Xin Shen's words. Pick them all out? Hundreds of different foods in this house, how can you pick them out? Do you have to open them all for inspection? Xin Bagua thought he wanted to tear them all open one by one, shook his head and said, No, it's too time-consuming, and it's easy to damage the fingerprints on the packaging, I disagree. Xin Shen didn't say anything, glanced at him, and directly asked Su He for a pair of rubber gloves. Just put on the gloves, he said, walking to the shelves, without hesitation, picked up a loaf of bread, as if to tear it open. Ding, system prompt, the host is about to be poisoned. Here, he threw a bag of bread over. Then he picked up a sausage. Ding, system prompt, the host is about to be poisoned. Here, then, he picked up a bottle of drink. Ding, everyone was dumbfounded. They saw Shen Shen continuously picking up different things and throwing them to the officers. Soon, the officers couldn't hold them all, so they quickly brought a box to fill. In less than 10 minutes, Shen Shen filled a box. He walked back to the shelves, picked up a few things at random, shook his head, and put them back. Okay, all the food and drinks with problems are in the box. You guys can leave now. Shen Shen rudely started ushering people out. Everyone stared at him in a daze. Did he really pick out all the poisoned food? This is too fast. Or rather, this is too ridiculous. Fast? Shen Shen felt it was slow instead. With his disaster sensing ability and unparalleled unlucky constitution, the combination of the two made it not easy to pick out the poisonous things from hundreds of foods. Wang Bauer was also confused by Uncle Shen's actions. She stopped crying, wiped her tears, and asked, Auntie, what is uncle doing? Sui smiled bitterly, they are shopping, and uncle is helping them pick out what they want to eat. The officers couldn't help but want to laugh. When did the forensic doctor Su also learn Shen Chen's way of speaking? Shen Bugwa's face grew darker. As the head of the Zhengzhou police station, he felt greatly insulted in terms of intelligence. Especially now, with less than 24 hours left until the case was solved, he was feeling restless. All the food here has been poisoned by the killer? He looked at Xin Shen, questioning. Xin Shen nodded, if you don't believe it, you can open any two packages. Xin Bagua naturally didn't believe it. He thought Xin Shen could pick out the problems even through the packaging. In that case, his bad luck could apply for the Guinness World Records. Xin Bagua randomly pointed to two loaves of bread, Xiaoli, take this outside and open it. The officer named Xiaoli put on full body protection and took the two loaves of bread to an open area. Puff. The moment he tore open the packaging, a black smoke burst out. The second bag was the same. They were all tampered food. After Qin Bagua dumbfoundedly finished watching, his gaze towards Xin Chun changed. You are simply amazing, like a roller coaster ride for cows, reaching for the sky. He couldn't say anything to his subordinates about emptying the supermarket, so he just waved his hand to dismiss them. As they were leaving, he suddenly looked up at the surveillance cameras hanging on the ceiling. His heart skipped a beat. Wait. Have you checked the supermarket surveillance cameras? Sheen Bob was heart pounded, and he asked loudly. No, we haven't had the chance yet. The officer in charge of checking the surveillance cameras came over to explain in a low voice, we just finished reviewing the surveillance cameras in the three crime scenes in the neighborhood and surrounding streets, we haven't checked here yet, after all, this is not a crime scene. Nonsense. Sheen Bagwa cursed, immediately removed the surveillance equipment and check all the customers who have purchased items here in the past month including those who picked up deliveries. He cursed himself for being so confused, how could he have overlooked such an important clue? Since the supermarket was poisoned, it meant that the culprit had definitely been here, and the surveillance footage might be the only breakthrough in the case. Everyone also realized this, and their spirits were lifted. The technicians immediately turned on the computers at the checkout counter and copied all the surveillance videos. Xin Bagua felt a bit excited, bid farewell to Shen Shen and his team in a hurry, and led his team away. Before leaving, 
Shen Shen grabbed him. Hey, Chief Qin, don't rush off. What's up? I have urgent matters to attend to. Qin Bagua looked at Shen Shen unhappily, wondering what this kid was up to now. He he, settle the bill first, it's a total of 187. Shen Shen pointed to the basket of items. Qin Bagua. Shen Shen, I took these items to solve the case, and you still want me to pay? What's wrong? You shouldn't think about taking Bauer's family's things for free. I just charged 5 yuan for a bag of chips earlier. Shin Bagua gritted his teeth, took out 200 yuan, and placed it on the counter. Fine, you're tough. Only a cunning kid like you could pull this off. He left with his team in frustration. Shin Shen chuckled and put 200 yuan bills into the cash register. Chief Qin was right, only a cunning person would think of this idea. Bamboo shoots, winter bamboo shoots, bamboo shoots or reed shoots, I feel that lotus shoots are better than both. He muttered to himself, glanced at Sui beside him, and smiled. Sui's chest was heaving with anger, wishing she could strangle Shin Chen. If she hadn't let Shin Chen spend 5 yuan to buy potato chips, Shin Chen wouldn't have retaliated. However, Wang Bauer was very satisfied with Uncle Shen's behavior. Uncle, can you watch cartoons with me? After a night of turmoil, Bauer developed an inexplicable sense of dependence on Shin Chen. No problem. Wife, go cook, the child is hungry. Shin Chen proudly sat next to Wang Bauer, turned his head and greeted. Cook? Cook what? Just order takeout. Sui was so angry she could explode, she had been with Bauer for two days, but she was still indifferent and ignored. Shin Chen had only been here for over an hour, how could she accept him so easily? She took out her phone, about to browse nearby restaurants for food. A van suddenly pulled up at the supermarket entrance, blocking the entire door. A delivery man in a certain uniform got out of the car. Hey, has the boss changed? Where's Wang Da Ching? Sui glanced at him, my brother-in-law and sister are out traveling, if you need something, just ask me. Oh, oh, I'm here to deliver for a certain express company, please accept the parcels in this neighborhood. The man wore a hat and deliberately kept it low, chuckled at Sui, and asked her to come to the van to pick up the delivery. Shen, husband, go get the delivery. She had to shout at Shen Shen. Can't you see I'm busy? Shen Shen didn't even turn his head, he was watching Peppa Pig on TV with Wang Bauer. Sui was so angry her teeth were about to shatter, so she had to follow the delivery man to the front of the car. Are these all? Can you help me move them? She looked at the mess in the car and felt she couldn't handle it alone. Sure, I'm here to work. The delivery man raised his head, revealing a sinister smile, and suddenly had a white towel in his hand. Help! Sui couldn't call for help in time, she was smothered. A powerful sedative. She realized it immediately, but it was too late. A second later, Sui's body went limp, and the delivery man pushed her into the car. Bro, your wife fainted. The delivery man threw Suhi into the car and shouted back. Shin Shen was watching TV with Bauer, he turned his head in surprise. What's going on? He got up and ran to the door to check on Sui. What do you think? The man used the same trick again, throwing the white towel at Shin Shen's face. Shin Shen was caught off guard, he only smelled a sweet scent, and the next second he lost consciousness. This again? Damn! Shin Shen cursed as he fell into the car. Ding, system prompt, host immune to powerful sedatives. This time immune toxins, 7 slash 100. Immune details, snake venom, water toxin, toxic chicken soup, toxic tongue. The delivery man looked at the unconscious Shin Shen, smiled triumphantly. The police sent you guys to catch me, isn't this like a chicken visiting a fox for the new year, seeking death? He tied up both of them, then proceeded to sedate Wang Bauer in the same way, and threw them all into the car. Afterwards, he cautiously looked around, locked the car doors, and drove away. It only took a few seconds. The operation was swift and terrifying. The small supermarket seemed as if nothing had happened. The residents coming and going didn't notice that three people in the supermarket had disappeared. After leaving the community, the man finally breathed a sigh of relief, quickly drove onto the main road, overtaking all the way. Damn it! You two ruined my good plan, if I don't kill you, I won't be able to get rid of this hatred in my heart. He cursed as he drove, accelerating again, eager to leave the scene. You kill me, I'll kill you. Suddenly, a furious voice came from the carriage. The man was startled and turned around abruptly. Shin Shen, he actually woke up. But his hands and feet were tied, he struggled to climb up and fiercely bumped his head against the delivery man. Trying to run? Bang! The delivery man was hit in the face by Shin Shen's head, almost knocked out. Screech! He stomped on the brakes, and the van screeched to a halt. Bang! Bang! Immediately, the car behind couldn't avoid it and crashed hard into the back of the van. Shin Shen was also carried by this inertia, flying out and hitting the front windshield. 
The windshield cracked, and Shin Chen was left dizzy. The delivery man was furious. You damn well go to hell. He picked up a stone ornament from the dashboard and viciously smashed it on Shin Chen's temple. Bang! A jet of blood spurted from his temple, Shin Chen didn't say a word, and fainted again. This time, he was knocked out. With his hands and feet tied, how could he fight this man? You scared me to death, do you know, you almost scared me to death. The delivery man cursed angrily, afraid that Shin Chen would wake up again, he raised the ornament and smashed it hard on Shin Chen's head. One hit, two hits, three hits. When he saw that Shin Chen was completely motionless, he quickly started the engine and left the scene of the accident. In the car behind, a female driver watched in confusion. Hey, 110, I saw someone fighting. Ten minutes later, the alarm bell rang loudly at the Zhengzhou police station. Emergency assembly. Countless armed police officers rushed to the police cars. Dozens of cars roared out of the compound. Qin Bagua sat in the front car, looking furious. He struck again. He struck again. The killer is too arrogant. Just after leaving Shin Chen and the others, the other party actually made a move. He was filled with anger and didn't know how to vent. Just a few minutes ago, someone reported a fight on a van. Subsequently, the officers responsible for surveillance in the neighborhood also found that Shin Chen, Su He, and Wang Bauer had all disappeared. They were kidnapped. The perpetrator of the massacre reappeared and committed another crime. The entire city's police stations mobilized instantly, countless officers took to the streets, searching for the green van. Sheen Bureau, according to the Sky Eye investigation, we found this green van in a parking lot in the North City District. The technician's message came over the radio, and Sheen Bagwe immediately ordered everyone to head to the North City District. When they arrived at the parking lot, the armed police officers rushed up, looking at the empty van, feeling dejected. The people had already fled. Sheen Bagwe's heart began to beat violently. The missing persons included Shin Shen, his adopted daughter Su He, and most importantly, the last survivor of the Wang family, Wang Bauer. If anything happened to these three, Qin Bagua would be unforgivable. Everyone, seal off the North City District. From now on, not even a fly can be let out. Qin Bagua roared out the order. Yes. Everyone moved again, sealing off and searching the streets and alleys of the North City District. Two hours later, inside the temporary command vehicle of the police station, Qin Bagua listened to the continuous messages coming from all directions. Qin Duro, the van belongs to a certain express delivery company, the driver is named Chen Jin, has been in the industry for a year, no criminal record. After investigating the supermarket surveillance footage, it was found that Chen Jin would come to Wang Daqing supermarket to deliver packages every day, but has not appeared since the incident. On July 16, Chen Jin stayed in the shelf area of the small supermarket for a long time while the boss Wang Daqing was away. Chen Bureau, Chen Jin's personal information has also been found. Chen Jin, male, 38 years old, Ph. D. Degree, graduated from the Department of Chemical Engineering at Columbia University in the United States, worked in a local chemical group after graduation, suddenly returned to the country a year ago, and joined a certain express delivery company. The Qin Bureau, we have surrounded his residence but have not found his trace. The source of the poison has been found. Qin Bureau, we have discovered that Chen Jin purchased hundreds of types of chemical raw materials and dozens of poisonous snakes within a year. We suspect that the poison used in the crime was extracted by him. The chaotic and complex messages basically reconstructed all the information about the murderer. A top student who returned from the United States unexpectedly worked as a courier at a delivery company, but secretly purchased a large amount of chemical raw materials and highly poisonous snakes. What is he up to? But at this moment, Qin Bagua only wants to know. Where the hell did this Chen Jin take the three people? So far, the police station has not found the hiding place where Chen Jin took the three people. Shin Chen and Sui's phones are also turned off and cannot be located. But every second of delay means that Shin Chen and the others may be killed by the murderer. Qin Bagua shouted in urgency, everyone, start checking house by house. I want you to check every household in the North City District, every abandoned house. I want to find his lair immediately. Yes. It was already dark, and more than two hours had passed since the three went missing. The whereabouts of Shin Chen and the others became even more mysterious. In a house in the North City District, in a dimly lit room, Shin Chen finally woke up. He was hit on the head by Chen Jin and felt groggy. When he opened his eyes, he found himself tied to a chair, unable to move. In front of him was a large dining table. Beside him were the unconscious Su He and Wang Bauer. Just as he was about to speak, a voice came from behind. Oh, awake? You're not dead yet, buddy. You have a good physical condition. The person behind him said with a smile, slowly walking up to Shin Shen. Shin Shen looked up and saw that it was the courier who knocked him out. 
But now he was wearing a suit, and the most bizarre thing was that he had a white apron tied around his waist. In his thirties, although thin, he was full of explosive muscles. At first glance, he looked like the kind of guy who frequented the gym. Who are you? Shin Chen asked irritably, his head pounding. He he, let me introduce myself. The courier smiled and extended his hand to Shin Chen. I am Chen Jin, a chemical engineering Ph. D. from Columbia University in the United States, and a courier at a certain company. You can also call me, the master poisoner. While the police in Zhengzhou were desperately searching for the culprit, a live stream link suddenly began circulating online. It did not belong to any major live streaming platform in Dasha, and anyone could watch it by clicking the link. The name of the live stream room was also very eye-catching. The Last Supper in Zhengzhou, discussing the selfishness and despicableness of human nature. Wow! This name sounds very high-end. Curious netizens clicked to enter and were surprised to see the people inside. Isn't that Shen Chen, Brother Shen? How did he get kidnapped? Not only him, but also a cold-looking girl was being controlled by someone. The two seemed to have just woken up and were looking at a man in front of them with confusion. The man was elegantly dressed in a black suit, with a white apron tied around his waist, and was speaking animatedly. The scene was in a house with dim lighting. He seemed unusually excited, almost a bit twisted. What is this, the latest self-destructive show by Brother Shen? Stop kidding, isn't this clearly Shen Chen trolling online and getting revenge? Oh my, then. Call the police, Brother Shen has been kidnapped. What platform is this? Why can't I find the report button? Forget reporting, someone's life is at stake. Call the police now. Many netizens noticed the unusual situation and quickly called the local police hotline. Soon, the news reached the special task force where Qin Bagua was located. Qin Bureau, latest news, Chen Jin is conducting his criminal live broadcast through a foreign live streaming platform. What? Qin Bagua and others stood up at the words. The police officer in charge of technical investigation nodded solemnly. Just 10 minutes ago, many netizens called the police hotline, reporting that Shen Chen and Suhi appeared in a live broadcast room. We investigated the link to the live broadcast room and found that it is a foreign live platform. The suspect Chen Jin should be doing something to Shen Chen and the others, broadcasting live on the entire internet. Qin Bagua felt a chill in his hands and feet. Something big was about to happen. Can we find Chen Jin's whereabouts through the live broadcast room? The technician regretfully shook his head, Qin Bureau, not only can we not locate where he is now, we can't even shut down this live broadcast room. This is a foreign live platform, and the technicians immediately communicated with the foreign platform upon discovery. However, the platform stated that the content of the live broadcast is the freedom of the host, and they have no right to intervene. Lawless, Qin Bagua slammed his hand on the table. Since we can't shut down the live broadcast room, then block the link. This kind of thing cannot be broadcasted live on the entire internet. Yes. Switch the live feed over for the investigators to analyze, which residential building in the Changbei district is this? Hurry. Okay. The technicians hurriedly left, and Qin Bagua sat wearily on the chair. If Qin Jin repeated his tricks, poisoning Shen Chen and Su He and broadcasting it live on the internet, the negative impact would be immeasurable. And he showed his face directly, was he planning to go down fighting? In that case, the hope of survival for a few people would be even slimmer. Shen Shen, Su He, where are you guys? Qin Bagua looked at the thick night outside the window, feeling extremely anxious. He didn't even notice when his phone, placed on the table, lit up. At this moment, the live feed was also switched over. The private live broadcast links circulated among netizens were all blocked. Except for some early viewers who entered the live broadcast room, only members of Qin Bagua's special task force could see the live scene. As a result, after Chen Jin had been speaking in front of the camera for a while, the number of viewers in the live room did not increase significantly. Starting from over a thousand people, it only rose to over two thousand before plateauing. When he realized this, he became extremely angry. According to his plan, at the last moment of his life, he wanted to put on a final performance, to end his journey of life and draw a perfect conclusion. But with the live broadcast room being blocked by the police, he felt extremely frustrated. How disappointed would tens of millions, or even hundreds of millions, of netizens from Dasha be if they couldn't see the exciting show that followed? Fortunately, a steady stream of foreign netizens were entering and starting to watch his live broadcast. Chen Jin had to adjust his mindset and welcome everyone in English. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. As you can see, what is about to unfold before you is a grand banquet. Soon, two citizens of Dasha will pay a painful price in front of the public eye due to the baseness and selfishness of human nature. And there is an even bigger show to come. He had an excited smile on his face, dancing and gesturing towards the camera. The viewers were left bewildered. 
Is this guy an idiot? Hey, guy upstairs, what font are you using? It's so unique. Yeah, first time seeing this font, so square and different from ours. Square characters, you can tell it's Chinese at a glance. Did you all just graduate from elementary school? A bunch of idiots, which country are they from? Why is it so chaotic? The viewers quickly realized that they were from different countries, making communication quite difficult. However, the live broadcast room on this foreign platform had a one-click translation feature. You could switch to translate any language. After everyone understood, they started greeting each other happily. A netizen from Dasha asked, Have you eaten? A foreign netizen replied, The weather today is really terrible. After all, it was fresh to watch a live broadcast with a group of foreign netizens for the first time. Shen Jin was dumbfounded. Hey, I'm here live streaming a crime. Can you guys respect me a bit? He was angry as he saw everyone's attention was no longer on him. Suddenly, he pulled out a dagger and stabbed it fiercely on the table. Bang! This loud noise startled everyone. All eyes turned to him. Listen to me, for the last time, a game involving human nature is about to begin. Everyone, open your eyes wide and watch carefully. Don't blame me for scaring you by threatening to kill hostages. Wow! The netizens were shocked. Especially the foreign netizens, who only then noticed the pair of men and women tied up behind Chin Jin. Next to the man and woman was a four or five year old girl, her mouth taped shut, tears streaming down her face. What is going on? Everyone was puzzled. Especially the netizens from Dasha, who didn't know what bad luck Shen Lao Gu had encountered to be captured by this seemingly extremely abnormal guy. What's the story behind the two girls, big and small? Everyone's hearts were on edge. Shen Ji looked at the awakened Shen Shen and Su He, and then glanced at Bao Er, who looked terrified. He grinned. Two police officers, didn't expect this, did you? I will give you the final judgment in this way. In his mind, he thought that the ones protecting Wang Bao Er were all police officers, not knowing Shen Shen's true identity. Shen Shen is also a victim. Shen Jin squatted in front of Bao Er with a smile. And this poor little darling, oh, are you going to cry again? Don't cry, uncle will soon send you to see your mom and dad. Startled by him, Wang Bao Er rolled her eyes and fainted again. Shen Jin stood up contentedly. He he, everyone, wait, the show is about to begin. With that, he walked into the kitchen with a smile. Is he crazy? Although Su He was extremely nervous, she forced herself to calm down and quietly asked Shen Shen. Shen Shen rolled his eyes, thinking, isn't that a stupid question? Su He, use your expertise, dissect him. Seeing Shen Shen still joking at this point, Su He was speechless. If you can hold him down, I will definitely tear him apart. Although very nervous, Su He found that as long as she stayed by Shen Shen's side, she felt at ease. This man seemed to have a magical power that made people involuntarily rely on him. If I can hold him down, why do I need you? I'll use my hammer, then a fierce tiger pounce, and finally finish him off with a deadly scissor kick. Shen Shen's hands and feet were tied, so he can only talk. Alright, stop talking nonsense, think about what to do. Since this guy has revealed his true colors, he definitely wants to kill us, including. So he looked worriedly at Bao Er. She was a solemn police officer, and from the moment she entered the police force, she had dedicated her life to this career. Since being captured, she had prepared for sacrifice. But Shen Shen and Bao Er were not like that. They were just innocent civilians caught up in this disaster, which made her extremely anxious. With her hands and feet tied, she couldn't do anything but wait for outside rescue. Don't worry, I've already sent our location to the Qin Bureau. As expected, they should have arrived by now. Shen Shen glanced at the kitchen confidently. What? Su He exclaimed. Shen Shen had already sent a message to the outside world? When did he do that? Shen Shen's face changed drastically, what are you shouting for? Let that guy know, we'll all die together now. He had a meteorite phone, and after waking up, he sent the location to Qin Bagua, but no one took it seriously at all. Sui bit his lip tightly, deeply blaming himself for his recklessness. Qin Bagua, who was closely watching the live broadcast room, was stunned. Shen Shen sent me the location? When? He grabbed his phone and a look of joy spread across his face. Oh my goodness, how did you do it? A stranger's number actually sent him a location message 10 minutes ago. But he had been paying attention to the situation in the live broadcast room and didn't notice. It's really annoying. Everyone, head to building 8 in the Anran district in the north of the city. Chin Bagua shouted, urging the driver to drive. For a moment, sirens blared on the streets of Zhengzhou, all heading towards one place. Unfortunately, Chen Jin was still in the dark. What are you shouting about? Chen Jin opened the kitchen door and pushed out a small food cart. There were several covered food containers on the cart, emitting a strange fragrance. He seemed very satisfied with his cooking skills, looking at the two bound individuals. 
Two guests, the game is about to begin. Shin Shan and Su He looked puzzled. What game is this guy playing? Is he going to host a hostage dinner? The netizens in the live broadcast room were also puzzled. They were just clamoring for a game about human selfishness and despicableness. Now, they were served with four dishes and a soup? Are they going to bring out a bottle of wine to liven things up? Is this going to be a mukbang broadcast? Netizens habitually started to mock. Identification complete. It's definitely a mukbang. I think this is a show by Brother Shin. Chinese, who is Brother Shin? Is he a movie star from your great Xia, or is he as talented as your country's mister? Chang Long? English, wow, you don't even know Brother Shin from Great Xia, watch out. I think Brother Shin will perform a three-mouth whale show for you later. Chinese, a whale? That's a protected animal. Russian, stop talking nonsense, I remember now. Mr. Chen, he is Chen Jin. He is my schoolmate, oh my god, something big is about to happen. American, a netizen from the United States suddenly recognized Chen Jin, and netizens curiously asked who he was. He is a crazy person from Great Xia. He entered our country's Columbia University with outstanding results and became the youngest chemical engineering doctor at the time. But this person is very eccentric, he likes to research and refine various poisonous formulations, and not many people at school like him. After graduating, he joined a chemical group, which seems to be a company developing chemical weapons for the military behind the scenes. A year ago, the chemical group suddenly issued a nationwide warrant for him, and then the United States also issued a global warrant for him, and he has since disappeared. When netizens heard this, they were stunned. No wonder he's called a master poisoner, he's a true scientific madman. Quick, do everything possible for Great Xia to find this madman, he will do anything regardless of consequences. He is a complete madman. Netizens from the United States frantically left messages in the live broadcast room and also called their country's emergency hotline. At this moment, when netizens looked at the four dishes and a soup on the food cart, their expressions changed. It turned out, this was not a joke or a show. Is it a murder game? At the same time, Chin Bagua, who was rushing to the Anran district, suddenly received the urgent notification from above. Bagua, this is Director Yen Jimin from the Provincial Public Security Department. Chin Bagua was stunned. Director Yen, why are you calling? He was his and Huang Shengjuan's former leader, but now in charge of major security incidents in the province. Why did he suddenly call him? The situation is urgent. Let me get straight to the point. The other party said urgently, five minutes ago, right company from the United States called us urgently, asking us to immediately arrest Chen Jin. Is he committing a crime in Zhengzhou? Yes. We have found his trail and are rushing to the hiding place to make the arrest. Do not act recklessly. Yen Ting shouted on the phone, Rick Corporation informed us that Chen Jin stole their latest research and development results and fled, the entire country has been searching for him for a year, never expected him to be hiding in Dasha. So, what's the matter? Xin Bagua still didn't grasp the seriousness of the situation. Because it involves the lives of countless people, Rick Corporation dare not conceal it. Chen Jin stole a biochemical toxin that can cause tens of thousands of people to die instantly. Once the toxin is broken and exposed in the air, the entire Zhangzhou will. Xin Bagua was stunned. He never imagined that a perpetrator of a massacre would be involved in the safety of the entire Zhangzhou. Yen Jimin said, Bagua, I have already mobilized Huang Shengjun to dispatch emergency personnel to cooperate with your operation. Remember, do not act recklessly, no one knows where he has hidden the stolen toxin. If it is not controlled or captured immediately, the consequences. Also, Rick Corporation informed us that when Chen Jin fled the country, he was already in the late stage of liver cancer. The call ended. Xin Bagua pondered Yen Ting's words, feeling stiff all over, unable to move. What should he do? How should he proceed? Originally, according to the plan, they had already found Chen Jin's hiding place, and the special police were supposed to break in directly and rescue everyone. But now, they didn't even dare to approach Anren district. If Chen Jin realized he was walking into a trap, he would definitely fight back, and the entire Zhangzhou could be in jeopardy. Damn it! He cursed angrily and ordered everyone to stand by. All police cars turned off their engines. He needed to think carefully about what to do. Should he send elite personnel to infiltrate secretly, or should he let Suhi and the others fight to the death? Xin Bagua looked at Anran district, which was within reach, and at the lights of countless households, unsure of what to do. Ding! His phone lit up again. Xin Chen sent another message. Xin Shu, why haven't you arrived yet? If you don't come soon, your daughter's life is at risk. Xin Bagua subconsciously looked at the live broadcast, where Xin Chen was still tied to a chair with his hands behind his back. Shaking his head in confusion, he didn't know how Shen Shen sent the message. Meanwhile, his adopted daughter Su He, with a pale face, 
was calmly facing the perpetrator Chen Jin. The two seemed completely unaware of the danger in front of them. After hesitating for a few seconds, Qin Bagua gritted his teeth and replied to Xin Chen's message. Xin Chen, I'm sorry, we need to replan the operation. Tell my daughter, if there's a chance, let her and Chen Jin go down together. Ding, the host received a message reply. Xin Chen was wondering why the main force hadn't arrived yet when he received Qin Bagua's reply. Let Su He and Chen Jin go down together? Xin Chen almost burst out cursing after reading it. Was this even human language? Isn't this nonsense? Indeed, you adopted her, but you don't care at all. Why couldn't the rescue come in time? They could have launched a direct attack while Chen Jin was distracted. He cursed inwardly, but eventually pulled himself together and carefully surveyed the surroundings. It seemed that in the end, he had to rely on himself. If the mountain collapses, if people run away, only oneself is the most reliable. Damn it! At this moment, Chen Jin was excitedly introducing the game rules he had devised to the two. His voice trembled with great excitement. Two of you, it's time to test you. Chen Jin licked his lips and looked at the two with a smile. Let's play a game. If one of you wins, I'll let him go. If both lose, then it's game over. Truly a madman. Sounds interesting, how do we play? Since he knew that rescue wouldn't come anytime soon, Shen Shen decided to go all out. In the live broadcast room, the netizens held their breath as the game was about to begin. Chen Jin grinned. Simple, here are four dishes and a soup made by me personally, I will let you taste them one by one. Each of you has two choices. One, taste the delicious dishes I made, tell me if they are good or not, but I must remind you, each dish contains poisonous ingredients. Two, if you don't want to eat, you can pick up the knife on the table and stab the other person. Whoever can survive until the end, wins the game. After Chen Jin finished speaking, he spread his hands and smiled wickedly. Simple, right? Boom. As soon as he finished speaking, all the netizens in the live broadcast room gasped. This game was too cruel. Chen Jin made it clear that the four dishes and soup contained poison and were not edible. If you refused, you had to stab the other person with a dagger. Drinking the soup meant death. Not drinking it meant being stabbed five times by the other person. No matter how you looked at it, this game was a total disaster. It was truly a test of human selfishness and despicableness. Everyone wanted to know how Shin Chen and Su He would react. Su He naturally thought of this and her pretty face turned pale. Eating the poisonous food was definitely death. But stabbing Shin Chen with a knife was also impossible. Since both options led to death, she couldn't help but curse out loud. Chen Jin, your wishful thinking is wrong. We will never play this ridiculous game. Give up on this idea. I'm not afraid to tell you, your position has been exposed. Stop your criminal behavior now, surrender, that is your only way out. Chen Jin was stunned, had he been exposed? Oh, is that so? He smirked, got up and opened the curtains of the restaurant. Outside was pitch black. In the quiet neighborhood, people were returning home from work, children were still playing outside. But more people were happily eating at the dining table. He grabbed the curtain and said with a smile, I have no way out. Playing this game with you all to the end is my greatest pleasure. Come on, let more people surround me, I can't wait. Su He was shocked by his crazy appearance. The netizens also realized that this person had already made up his mind to die, and no one could stop his madness. After Chen Jin finished speaking, he looked at Chen Chen. What about you, not playing? If you don't play, I will kill both of you. Oh, and Wang Bauer too. Chen Chen shrugged and agreed without hesitation. Let's play, it's so much fun, why not play? Chen Jin laughed heartily at the sight. Ah, madam, do you see? You don't want to hurt the other person, but they don't care about you. Aren't you being a bit delusional? His goal was achieved. The purpose of designing this game was to expose human selfishness and despicableness. In a life and death situation, no one would care about another's life. They would rather kill the other person than find a way to survive. He really wanted to see how his former colleagues, who used to work together, would wield a dagger at each other. He also wanted to see them cry and apologize to each other, then desperately hurt each other. That would be so interesting. Su He was stunned by Shin Chen's words. Shin Chen, you. She shouted, unable to find the words. What could she say? Why would Shin Chen give up his own life to die with her? They had only known each other for a day, they were not familiar at all, and to Shin Chen, she was a stranger. In a life and death situation, it seemed reasonable to attack the other person. As for what he said about being immune to all poisons, that was just ridiculous. In this world, how could anyone be immune to all poisons? Su He could even imagine Shin Chen wielding a butcher knife at her in a few minutes. She felt utterly hopeless. She would rather be killed by the crazy Chen Jin than be harmed in the slightest by Shin Chen. Sometimes, women are really strange. Alright, 
Let the game begin. Chen Jin glanced at the time, it was 7 o'clock in the evening, the time for dinner. At this moment, the live broadcast room was boiling. Brother Shen, why did you agree? What are you going to do? Didn't you hear what this lunatic said, only those who survive can leave. It's human nature. No, this can't be the Shin I know, he must have another way. What are you discussing? Isn't this the time for mutual killing? Yes, although it's a bit cruel, but in our country, we wouldn't hesitate. You uncivilized keyboard warriors, my great Xia civilization of 5,000 years cannot engage in self-mutilation. Keyboard warrior, go to sleep hugging your keyboard. A6 Xia. Internet users from around the world expressed their opinions one after another. The vast majority of people believed that Qin Shen would go after that poor woman in order to survive. As for eating Qin Jin's food, not a single person would consider that option. That's asking for death. The food made by a chemical engineering doctor, taking one bite could probably kill an elephant. In this death game, in order to end it quickly, one must be ruthless and use lethal moves. It's best to take the opponent's life with the first strike. That way, the game will end, and the survivors can leave. The game has begun. Chen Jin smiled as he released the arms of the two, but still tied their upper bodies to prevent them from struggling. This way, they could pick up the food on the table, as well as the knives. Who wants to taste the first dish? He smiled as he brought a plate from the food cart to the table. Steamed pufferfish. Chen Jin suddenly removed the cover, revealing what was inside. A whole pufferfish lay in the plate, emitting a tempting aroma. But the pufferfish seemed untouched, with its internal organs, gills, and all toxic parts still intact. Can this thing be eaten? The internet users took a glance but lost interest in the food, all looking at the knives on the table. They wanted to know who would be the first to pick up a knife. Chen Jin proudly said, Ladies and gentlemen, an untreated fresh pufferfish, it contains a large amount of neurotoxin, highly toxic, and causes rapid onset of illness. After consumption, death occurs around 4 hours later, with the quickest being 10 minutes. Who wants to try? He said, looking at the poor woman, Su He. Madman can also sympathize with the weak. But, just as Chen Jin finished speaking, he found Su He looking shocked, staring at the opposite side. What are you up to? He couldn't help but turn his head. The next moment, he was stunned. Snoring. Shin Chen was holding the plate, snoring as he ate the pufferfish meat. Pa, is this the dish you made? Feed it to the dogs, even dogs wouldn't eat it. He said while eating, looking at Chen Jin with disdain. Chen Jin almost popped his eyes out. He shouted loudly, No. Are you stupid? Didn't I tell you, this is untreated pufferfish, containing a large amount of neurotoxin, eating it will kill you. He asked incredulously, suspecting if he had kidnapped a fool. Damn, this thing is actually poisonous. Shin Chen also pretended to eat a lot. But he was afraid that Chen Jin would force Suhi to eat the fish, claiming it was a taste test, so he ate it all. A pufferfish weighing over a pound was quickly reduced to a skeleton. He not only finished the fish meat but also drank a few sips of the fish soup in the plate then leaned back in the chair to pick his teeth with the fish bones. Bro, what should I do? Am I going to die? I'm so scared. Shin Chen looked at Chen Jin with a sideways glance, saying he was scared with his mouth, but his eyes seemed to be asking. Is that it? Is that it? You fiddled around for so long, and that's it. Chen Jin almost fainted on the spot. Ding, system prompt, host immune to pufferfish toxin. Toxins immunized this time, 8 out of 100. Immunity details, snake venom, water toxin, toxic chicken soup, toxic tongue, rat poison. The system prompt sounded in his mind, and Shin Chen smiled satisfactorily. Although there was a faint dizziness, the detoxification ability of the honey badger on his bald head was working frantically. Shin Chen found that the more toxins he was immune to, the faster the detoxification process became. Even this time, the pufferfish toxin couldn't make him faint on the spot. It was a piece of cake. What to do? You kid ate pufferfish toxin, you're doomed. Chen Jin anxiously threw the empty plate on the ground. In less than 4 hours, according to your weight, your heart will stop within 2 hours, you'll feel nauseous, your kidneys will swell, and you'll die vomiting blood. He said viciously, looking at Chen Chen as if he were a dead fool. How did I end up kidnapping such a fool? Fratricide? Massacre? Abandoning humanity and dignity to survive. Can't you use your brain a little and stab the other person with a knife? Chen Jin didn't see the scene he hoped for, and he was furious. I told you to eat, and you really did. In the live broadcast room, the netizens were already laughing. Shen Lao Gu, you're awesome. If Shen Lao Gu wasn't born, the world would be as dark as night. Young man, trying to kill Shen Lao Gu with just pufferfish toxin, I advise you to think twice. What's going on? What are you guys talking about? Is this man going to die? US, pufferfish, this guy ate a whole pufferfish, why are you great Xia people still gloating? 
Japan, huh? Don't panic. This is a specialty of our great Xia, Shin Lao Gu. Shin Shen, male, a famous victim professional in great Xia, a national expert in compensation. Forget about a small pufferfish, our Shin Lao Gu plays with bombs on a 10,000 ton oil tanker, snatches food from a tiger's mouth, and can't even be killed by a meteorite. Are you afraid of a small pufferfish? Great Xia netizens began to educate foreign netizens about Shin Shen's amazing feats. Netizens from various countries, after hearing about Shin Shen's deeds, were shocked as if hearing a fantasy story, until they searched online and exclaimed, This man, he's not human. His deeds are mostly as a victim, and his wealth is mostly compensated. In this world, there is such an unlucky person. Netizens from around the world, despite knowing your misfortune, we can't help but laugh. Ha ha ha, the live broadcast room was full of joy. Chen Jin was completely dumbfounded. The atmosphere in the live broadcast room was completely different from what he had expected. Even if this man named Shen Shen didn't harm the other person, he still ate a highly toxic pufferfish. He would soon experience symptoms of rapid breathing and accelerated heartbeat. Shouldn't you be sad and angry? Shouldn't you condemn my cruelty and ruthlessness? In front of you, a living person is about to die. Where is your humanity? Where is your conscience? Have you lost them all? Can you still laugh in this situation? Chen Jin not only felt like he was going crazy, but the netizens in the live broadcast room were also going crazy. Alright, you win the first dish, let's move on to the second one. Chen Jin gritted his teeth and opened the second plate. The netizens couldn't help but stare. Chen Jin smiled proudly. Everyone, maybe the pufferfish toxin hasn't taken effect yet, our two protagonists are about to experience the next round of the game. This time, it's not that simple. Will they stab each other to survive? Or will they bravely eat my delicacy? Let's wait and see. Shen Jin said, and then placed a plate of delicious dishes in front of the two. Frog and snail stir fry. Su he exclaimed the name of the dish. Netizens also recognized it one after another. They exclaimed, isn't this frog and snail stir fry? Is this thing poisonous too? Shen Jin saw the female police officer visibly relieved and smiled triumphantly. Miss Su, are you celebrating too early? Su he was stunned at the words, could there be some unknown chemical toxin in this dish? She couldn't help but sniff it, but didn't smell any chemical odor. What did you put in it? Chen Jin chuckled, I didn't put anything. Let me tell you directly, the frog is a poison dart frog from Africa. The snail is a chicken heart snail from the sea. Boom! Sui's face turned pale, too scared to say anything. Netizens were also stunned. Poison dart frog and chicken heart snail, what are they? Are they delicious? There are poison dart frogs in the plate. Oh no, this thing is full of poison. I remember the indigenous tribes in Africa, they just need to scrape its back with an arrow, and the person hit will die from the poison. The person above, you're being too simplistic. Five years ago, we intercepted a flame poison dart frog at the Dasha airport. After testing, the poison on its back could kill 10 adult men at once. I am airport security, I witnessed it with my own eyes. Oh my, there are at least 4 or 5 in this plate. My Shin Shin Jun must not eat it. And the chicken heart snail, this thing can't be eaten either. The chicken heart snail is a type of sea snail, and also the most poisonous. The toxin released by its tentacles can instantly kill an adult man. Where did Chin Jin get so many from this plate? After the enlightening from the knowledgeable netizens, everyone finally understood the toxicity of the frog and snail stir fry, which was simply abnormal. Indeed, the poisons in the natural world are the deadliest. And the instigator Chin Jin kept staring at the discussions of the netizens in the live broadcast. Seeing everyone showing various negative emotions such as shock, tension, and anxiety, he nodded in satisfaction. That's right. The trend has reversed. Only when you realize the toxicity in the dish, will you be full of sympathy for the two unlucky souls? When they do something beyond human nature, you will feel sad, angry, upset, and incredulous. Otherwise, did I go through all this trouble just to entertain you? Chen Jin turned his head triumphantly and widened his eyes again. No. Shen Shen, are you kidding me here? At the dining table, Shen Shen had already finished the frog made from poison dart frog. He was now using a fishbone to pick out the snail meat from the chicken heart snail. His mouth was oily, seemingly very satisfied with the taste of this dish. Seeing Shen Jin dumbfoundedly looking at him, Shen Shen disdainfully said, Can you at least give me a toothpick? Shen Jin looked at him, almost feeling weak in the knees, and knelt down calling for his father. Shen Jin was about to cry. Are you still human? Can you even call yourself a person? I spent a fortune to buy six poison dart frogs from Africa, and you just ate them like that? And after working hard to salvage the chicken heart snail from the sea for over half a month, you just ate it all? Chen Jin was very suspicious, did Shin Chan really eat it? 
He anxiously walked around Shen Chen. He wanted to see if he had thrown it on the ground. But the ground was empty, and when he bent down to check, he could even hear Shen Chen's stomach growling. This guy, he's still hungry. You ate a plate of frog and snail stir fry, and even a whole pufferfish, and you're still hungry. Do you even care about my breaking bad skills? Chen Jin stood up unwillingly, pointing at Shen Chen. I declare, you are about to die soon. Within a minute, you will be spitting blood, eyes red, heart stopping, then clutching your stomach, dying in extreme pain. Is that so? But I feel fine. Do you have more? Shen Chen smacked his lips, feeling a bit unsatisfied. Taste. Unfinished. This Chen Jin has truly become a divine assist in his own tribulation. So powerful. Ha ha, amazing. Do you have more? This is not enough. Boss, bring another plate. Russian, maybe you're just feeling lonely, all that emotional talk earlier was fake? How come your Shin Ge didn't have any reaction? American, upstairs, I've been wanting to ask this question since Shin Ge got knocked out by a meteor. Ha, ah, there are two mysteries in Dasha that no one can figure out, one is when will the national football team enter the World Cup, and the other is when will Shin Chen die in front of everyone. In the live broadcast room, netizens burst into laughter again. You can't look at Shin Ge with common sense, let alone with uncommon sense. Otherwise, you'll really laugh yourself into a concussion. Chen Jin gritted his teeth and didn't speak, just staring at Shen Chen intently, wanting to see how long he could pretend. Since you ate it, you will die, this is a scientific law. One minute passed. Two minutes passed. Three minutes. Chen Jin stared at Shen Chen for a full three minutes. Shen Chen not only had no reaction at all, but instead his eyes were wandering around, looking at the food cart next to him. Stop staring at me, hurry up and serve the food. Bring out everything to eat. Tears welled up in Chen Jin's eyes, feeling like his worldview had collapsed. At the same time, outside the Anren community, a tense crowd evacuation was orderly underway. All police officers changed into plainclothes, and the neighborhood aunties started knocking on doors one by one, urging people to evacuate. In less than an hour, the entire Anren community was almost empty. If Chen Jin were to open the curtains, he would find that almost every household in the entire community had their lights on except for his own. The lights were left on to avoid alerting Chen Jin, while the evacuation was for the safety of the residents. Outside the community, Qin Bagua and a group of people were standing in the darkness. Qin Shu, the sniper is in position, but all the rooms have their curtains drawn, so we can't observe the situation inside. A man with a painted face whispered, with four tough men standing behind him. They were from the Zhangzhou Security District Wolf Tooth Special Forces Team, a special team dispatched urgently by the province to capture Chen Jin. The goal was to make a breakthrough without alerting Chen Jin. Eagle, you guys make your own detail plan, after all, you are the professionals. Shin Bagua looked at the man nicknamed Eagle in front of him. Just one thing to note, either take him out with one shot, or completely subdue him, never give him a chance to escape or resist. We still don't know the location of the biochemical agent. Once he breaks free, everyone will be in danger, do you understand? The Eagle nodded. Shin Shu, rest assured, without necessary certainty, I won't alert him. Okay. I'll inform the people inside to cooperate with your operation. The eagle was surprised. Can the hostages inside still contact the outside? Shin Bagua smiled bitterly, pointing to Shin Chen on the screen. Who says they can't? The sky Shin Chen has too many surprises for us. Shin Bagua felt extremely fortunate at this moment. The decision to have Shin Chen protect Wang Bauer was absolutely right. If it were someone else, the hostage probably wouldn't survive an hour in Shin Jin's hands. The eagle also glanced deeply at Shin Chen. I've heard of this kid, if he could join our Wolf Tooth Special Forces team, that would be great. Xin Bagua laughed, but no, Huang Xingjun wanted him to be a firefighter, but the captain of the East Seaport Fire Brigade, Han Qin, would rather resign than let him join, this guy is truly unlucky. The eagle was speechless for a while. After chatting, he and the four people behind him saluted Xin Bagua before disappearing into the darkness. Xin Bagua took out his phone, informed Xin Chen of the situation outside, and asked him to find a way to delay time. At the same time, he asked him to try to get more information from Chun Jin, preferably asking about the whereabouts of the biochemical toxins. Shin Shen received the text message and looked devastated. Still delaying time, my friend, I'm almost unable to hold it in. Do you think eating poison arrow children and chicken heart snails is a joke? In order not to faint, Shin Shen bit his tongue hard, forcing himself with pain. I'm almost biting off my tongue. Ha, huh, you're bleeding from the corner of your mouth. After three minutes of staring at each other, Chen Jin finally noticed fresh blood flowing from the corner of Shen Chen's mouth. Burnt cake, I'm bleeding from my gums. Shen Chen spat directly on Chen Jin's face. Shen Jin was startled. He quickly wiped the blood off his face, trembling all over. 
If the saliva with the deadly poison entered his body, he would be doomed. Only after realizing that nothing had happened did he relax. You, you, you. He was so angry that he couldn't speak. You want to provoke me, then make me kill you all, right? Ha, ah, you can't fool me. I won't let you die easily. I want you to experience fear and pain to the fullest before dying from poisoning. Chen Jin found an excuse to comfort himself, feeling much better. Fool. Shen Shen felt that this person was beyond help. Are you okay, Shen Shen? There's a lot of blood coming from the corner of your mouth. Su He, who was beside him, saw Shen Shen's appearance and was scared to the core. After Shen Shen ate the second dish, she was completely stunned. This man actually voluntarily ate two dishes of highly poisonous food to avoid harming her. If the third dish was served, Sui made up her mind to eat it without hesitation, not wanting Shen Shen to sacrifice for her anymore. Even if she would die. I'm fine, don't worry. Shen Shen shook his head at Sui, giving her a meaningful look. He thought to himself, hang in there, Sui, the special forces are coming to rescue us. But his gaze was either too lecherous or too ambiguous. Sui blushed at his look, automatically translating it as, Suhi, for you, I can give my life. How could this guy confess to me in this situation? Annoying. Suhi was lost in thought when the next dish arrived. This time, it was the soup in the four dishes in one soup. The lid was opened by Chen Jin, revealing a milky white soup that smelled very fragrant. Hee <laughs> hee, I changed my mind. Chen Jin smirked, Miss, only you can choose to drink this pot of soup. Either drink it, or kill him. Suhi was stunned at his words, looking at the soup on the table. The soup was deliberately placed in front of her. This time, Shen Shen couldn't reach it no matter what. Suhi couldn't tell what the soup was made of. It tasted delicious and smelled fragrant. She couldn't help but take a few more sniffs, only to feel dizzy and see stars in her eyes. What kind of poison is this, so powerful? Just as she was about to lose herself, Chen Jin coldly closed the lid again. Don't smell it, this is a soup made from flame mushrooms, death caps, roundhead mushrooms, deadly white poison umbrellas, angel of destruction mushrooms, white cap mushrooms, fly agaric, and green hands. His memory was really good, as he listed over a dozen names of poisonous mushrooms. Netizens were horrified. This was a pot of highly poisonous mushroom soup, and it was made from over a dozen deadly mushrooms. No wonder it smelled so fragrant and the soup was as white as jade. This. Is this the red umbrella, white pole, eat and lie flat together poisonous mushrooms? My goodness, so many varieties were added. Is this lunatic making a pot of soup with all the poisonous mushrooms from nature? Korean, why hasn't your Desya rescue team arrived yet? He's starting to pressure the poor lady. American, I don't know. It's been so long, even if they are far away, they should have found them by now. French, God help us, find them quickly, if this continues, something bad will happen. Russian, Netizen saw Chin Jin turning his target towards Su He, and everyone became worried. Can this seemingly delicate policewoman be as fearless as Shen Lao Gu? Shen Shen directly shouted, Stop it, Chen Jin, you've gone too far. Chen Jin's face darkened, Shut up, if I can make you take another sip, I'll call you daddy. Shen Shen was stunned, Call me what? Daddy. Ah, Chen Jin. After venting for a while, he suddenly laughed. Shen Shen, he he, it's useless, I've seen through all your tricks. Don't try to provoke me anymore, I won't fall for it. With this pot of mushroom soup, she either drinks it or stabs you, there's no third option. Shin Chen was shocked, so he was in danger. After Chen Jin finished speaking, he ignored Shin Chen's anxiety and pushed the mushroom soup in front of Sui. Miss Su, make your choice. If you drink it, in five minutes, you will experience strong hallucinations, you may see demons, monsters, or even the end of the world, all sorts of bizarre things will happen. You will die in the hallucination and never wake up. He slowly said, then handed the dagger on the table to Su He. You can also choose to pick it up and stab Shen Shen fiercely, you can stab his chest or his stomach, it's up to you. Just one stab, and you won't die, you won't have to endure this torture anymore. Su He trembled all over, looking at the dagger in her hand. Compared to Shen Shen's ignorance and fearlessness, Shen Jin preferred to see Su He scared and panicked. Seeing his manipulation taking effect, he felt even more pleased. After stabbing him, I can untie you, even allow you to leave with Wang Bauer, you will survive, you saved the hostage, just lost a colleague, no big deal, right? Who wouldn't make a little sacrifice? Everyone watched in shock as Suhi actually nodded. No one knew. Chen Jin had studied psychology at Columbia University. He first let Suhi smell the poisonous mushroom, making her confused. Then immediately used verbal manipulation, breaking through Suhi's psychological defenses. He suggested to Su He that drinking the soup was wrong. The only way to survive was to kill Shen Shen. Su He fell for it. Chen Jin laughed heartily. Come on, go ahead. Miss Su, make your choice. 
At this moment, Suhee's eyes were blank, looking unusually eerie. Suhee, Suhee, wake up! Shin Shen also noticed something was wrong with her, shouting loudly and even trying to push Suhee. Suhee suddenly realized, subconsciously raising the knife in her hand. In the live broadcast room, everyone's eyes widened, including Qin Baogua, who had been watching closely. He couldn't help but shout, Xiao Yi, wake up, wake up, don't do something stupid. Because with this one stab, both she and Shin Shen would be finished. Eagle, how are things on your end? Can you start moving now? Qin Baogua anxiously shouted, pinning his hopes on the special forces team. The eagle sighed. No, we found a trap at the door and on the rooftop. It seems he knows we will break in through the window. Once we touch it, he will immediately know we're here. My people are dismantling these devices. Give us three minutes and we will definitely capture him. Tricky minds. How could there be tricky minds? The old eagle sighed and said, that's right, this madman not only refined chemical toxins, but also explosives. Our opponent is not simple. After hearing this, Qin Baogua felt a wave of despair. Three minutes was too late for anything. At this moment, in the room, Sui had already made a choice. She revealed a sinister smile and stabbed down with the knife. Shin Shen seemed to be startled, motionless, not even knowing how to dodge. Puff! Everyone exclaimed. The dagger fiercely stabbed into Sui's own thigh. The pain made Suhi's eyes instantly clear. At the same time, she pulled out the dagger, and a jet of blood sprayed out. She looked up, coldly staring at Chen Jin. Chen Jin, I told you, your plan was wrong from the beginning. I am a forensic doctor, also a master's student in psychology. Your tricks are useless against me. Forensic science. Psychology. Dual master's degrees. Chen Jin looked at Suhi in disbelief, at her disdainful gaze. His face slowly turned red. He did not expect that after catching two people, one would be more difficult to deal with than the other. Shin Shen could be excused, as he was a weirdo and could not be reasoned with. But this woman, even willing to stab herself, refused to harm the other party. Shen Jin was furious, he couldn't take it anymore. All night, it was either one situation or another. I just want to expose the selfishness of human nature. I just want these two people to make a fool of themselves in front of tens of thousands of people. I just want you to see the true nature of the Dasha police officer. Can't you do that? You forced me. All of you go to hell. Chen Jin roared in anger, one hand covering Sui's mouth, the other grabbing the mushroom soup and pouring it into Sui's mouth. Sui was choked, her head thrown back in pain. Stop. Shin Chen was terrified, shouting out. But it was too late. Chen Jin covered Sui's mouth and poured the bowl directly into it. Shin Chen grabbed Shin Jin's clothes like a madman, pulling him back two steps. Chen Jin was shaken, the bowl in his hand fell to the ground, spilling all the mushroom soup. You go to hell. Shin Chen repeatedly disrupted Chen Jin's plans, making Chen Jin resent him. He turned around, snatched the dagger from Sui's hand, and stabbed it towards Shin Chen. Bang! The sound of breaking glass finally rang out in the room. The special forces team rushed in. The old eagle kicked open the restaurant window and landed first. The other four team members quickly followed suit. As soon as they entered, they saw a thrilling scene. Stop, get down. The old eagle kicked Chen Jin to the ground with a flying kick, then pinned him down. The other four immediately began to rescue Shen Chen and Su He. Don't mind me, save Su He first, she was forced to drink poison mushroom soup. Shen Chen shouted in desperation, holding Su He as soon as he was untied. Su He had ingested several mouthfuls of mushroom soup and was already disoriented. Shen Chen's eyes were red with anxiety. System, tell me, can my blood detoxify Su He? Shin Chen asked loudly in his mind. In a panic, he pinned his hopes on his detoxification ability. Host, theoretically it is possible. You share the immune genes of the honey jar, so your blood has a certain immune effect, but in reality, that's enough. Shin Chen picked up the dagger from the ground without saying a word. What are you going to do? The old eagle and others were shocked, thinking he was going to kill Chen Jin out of anger. Puff! Shin Chen stabbed himself in the arm, blood bursting out. Later, he stuffed the wound on his arm into Sui's mouth and started pouring blood. The eagle and others were all stunned. What is he doing? Drink! Drink quickly! Shin Shen saw Sui's consciousness fading and shouted anxiously. Sui was already hallucinating at this point, looking at Shin Shen in front of him and murmuring, calling out, Dad, are you back? Are you here to feed little he medicine? Shin Shen roared, Yes, yes. Drink it quickly! Sui subconsciously started gulping it down. Gulp! Gulp! Bang! At this moment, the security door was finally kicked open by Qin Bagua and others. A group of police officers rushed in. Qin Bagua saw his adopted daughter drink mushroom soup on the livestream and was about to explode. Quick, send her for treatment. For a moment, 
people were being arrested, others were being rescued, and the room was in chaos. Shen Jin, who was pinned to the ground, saw that the situation was lost and started laughing wildly. Ha ha, indeed, you found your way here. In half an hour, in another half an hour, you will realize how foolish it was to arrest me. When my accomplice sees the news of my arrest, he will do things you can't imagine without hesitation. Boom. Everyone was shocked. Shen Jin still had an accomplice? Shen Babwa hurriedly ran over, grabbed his collar. How could you have an accomplice? Aren't you alone? I'm alone. How could six people in three different places have accidents at the same time? Shen Babwa was shaken to his core. How could he forget that the 716 massacre involved six people dying from poisoning in three different places at the same time? It's a disaster. Shen Jin's words sank the hearts of all the members of the task force. Shen Jin had accomplices, and likely more than one. Shen Bagua remembered Director Yan's warning, his mind in turmoil. Once news of Chen Jin's arrest leaked, things would become even more uncontrollable. The live stream was shut down, Chen Jin's completely failed broadcast only gained Shen Leoj some fame abroad. It was useless. He didn't care, after being caught, he looked at the busy crowd with a cold smile. Everyone searched his room, hoping to find some clues. This was Chen Jin's own modified refining laboratory, where he completed the extraction of almost all poisons. Members of the task force found a large amount of chemical raw materials and various poisons from the natural world. Shocking. This madman, holed up here, was a ticking time bomb. Shen Shen, who had nothing to do, sat nervously in a chair. He wanted to go to the hospital to check on Su Yi's condition, but considering his unlucky constitution, he ultimately didn't move. Su Yi drank his blood, not knowing if it had any effect, only able to hope for the old Dean and the others. Shen Shen, you win this round, but our game is not over yet. Shen Jin, sitting next to him, also laughed coldly. The situation had completely reversed at this point, with Chen Jin tied to a chair and Shen Shen free. F asterisk CKU. Say one more word of arrogance, and I'll kill you now. Shen Shen said expressionlessly. It was a statement, not an insult, as if Shen Shen was stating a fact. Chen Jin looked at him, his heart trembling. How could this man, who had been smiling all night, suddenly show a murderous intent? Chen Jin didn't know that his actions had already crossed Chen Chen's bottom line. From childhood to adulthood, even since the appearance of the tribulation system, Chen Chen had always feared for the safety of those around him. So, he was cautious in everything he did, adding caution upon caution. Even if he didn't complete the mission, he couldn't let those around him get into trouble. After all, anyone who came into contact with him had a bad ending. K.R.K. This word had almost accompanied him throughout his early life. So, when Sui's life was in danger, Shen Chen had already harbored murderous intent towards Chen Jin. He sat next to Chen Jin on purpose, not without other thoughts. Shen Shu, we found this. A technician hurried over, holding a black box in his hand. Timer. Shen Babwei exclaimed. The eagle discovered the hidden thunder when entering his room. It shows that this chemical doctor not only excels in refining poisons but also has knowledge of explosives. And this civilian mining explosive timer is very likely the thing Chen Jin needs to make a bomb. Detonators, timers, the chemical poison lost by the Rick company, and the mysterious helper lurking in the shadows. Everyone was chilled to the bone. Chen Babwa quickly approached Chen Jin. Speak. What is this for? Chen Jin saw them uncovering this thing, and a smile appeared on his face. This is my backup. The original has been taken by my companion. Do you want to know where he went? You can ask me. Bang. Before he could finish, Shen Shen punched Chen Jin in the face. Shut up, tell everything now, or I'll pour this dish into your mouth. Shen Shen uncovered the two remaining dishes in the four dishes in one soup, although he didn't know what it was, but it definitely contained a deadly poison. Chen Jin was punched by Shen Shen, losing several teeth. His mouth was full of blood, but he continued to laugh. Shen Shen, I'm telling you, you're dead. Even if I'm caught, I'll make sure to kill you first. Shen Shen frowned, opened his mouth, and was about to pour the dish in. Shen Shen, calm down. Chen Bagua and the others were shocked and rushed to stop him. All the clues are in Chen Jin's mouth now. If he dies, things will be even more troublesome. Let me try. The eagle, who had been silent, suddenly stood up. Take Shen Shen to another room, I will interrogate him. Seeing the eagle from the special forces team personally interrogating, everyone felt relieved. Their interrogation methods were completely different from the police station. The group brought the somewhat aggressive Shen Shen to the next room. What's wrong with you? Why do you suddenly hate him so much? I saw you were still joking around just now. Although Qin Bagua was anxious, he couldn't help but talk to Shen Shen. Qin Shu, I'm fine. How is Su He? Shen Shen shook his head, afraid that Qin Bagua and the others would see through his thoughts. 
Sheen Bagwa was touched to see his concern for his adopted daughter. The hospital just sent a message, it's not as serious as expected. She is currently under observation after gastric lavage. The little girl named Bauer also woke up, scared. But why did you let Sui drink your blood? Does it have detoxifying effects? Shin Shin finally relaxed, relieved that it wasn't about Chin Bagwa's question. He didn't know if it had any effect, he just did his best. Don't think about messy things, this Chen Jin. Shin Bagwa sighed, finally telling Shin Shin the biggest problem with Chen Jin now, how many lives he might endanger. No one knows how crazy Chen Jin might become. But from poisoning the snacks in the small supermarket, it is clear that this person is already insane. No wonder you asked me to find some biochemical toxins. Shin Shen muttered, and the eagle had already entered the room. Chen Jin presented his test report, terminal cancer. We tried, but it had no effect. The eagle looked dejected, facing someone who was terminally ill, it seemed that no method would work. Shin Bagua was stunned, what should we do? The eagle hesitated for a moment and said, he proposed a condition, if he and Shin Shen continue to play a game, he can confess some things. How much he confesses depends on when Shin Shen dies. After the eagle finished speaking, he looked at Shin Shen. No one knows why Chen Jin hates Shin Shen so much, willing to kill Shin Shen before confessing. Impossible. Shin Bagua shouted subconsciously. Let him dream, that nonsense murder game, does he think he's still holding hostages? He is now a prisoner and must undergo our interrogation. Shin Bureau, I need to remind you, there are still 15 minutes before the half hour he mentioned. The eagle interrupted Chin Bagua's words, glanced deeply at Shin Shen, and walked out. He and his wolf tooth squad are only responsible for executing tasks, the decision-making power still lies with Chin Bagua. What's wrong with 15 minutes? Even in 15 minutes. Chin Bagua didn't finish his sentence before Shin Shen stood up. Before leaving, he patted Chin Bagua's shoulder. He he, Shin Bureau, since he wants to play, I'll accompany him to the end. But, I have a suggestion for you. What? Shin Shen took his phone from Chin Bagua's hand and shook it. The text you sent me, I didn't tell Suhi. I also suggest you delete it, never let Sui know about this. He sneered, threw the phone back to Chin Bagua, and walked out. Chin Bagua was lost in thought, thinking about the situation where Suhi and Chen Jin would perish together. You little. At the same time, he also worried about Suhi's situation. In the restaurant, everyone left the room and waited downstairs. Only Chen Jin, who was tied up, and Shin Shen remained. Chin Bagua wanted to stay and watch them, but was refused by both. In the end, he left a video communication device, recorded the scene of the two, and left sadly. They're all gone, so tell me, how do you want me to die? Shin Shen sat opposite Chen Jin, looking coldly at him. Although Chen Jin had been tormented by the eagle, he looked excited at the moment. His eyes sparkled with excitement, and he smiled smugly. Ha ha ha, let me guess, our game is not over yet. As long as there is a choice in human nature, in the end, they will still choose to sacrifice you, the unlucky one. Everyone can avoid death, but because there are enough choices, I now want to decide who dies, and they will die. Do you know, right now I most want you to die in front of me. After Chen Jin finished speaking, he could no longer conceal his satisfaction and smugness, laughing even more recklessly. Shin Chen frowned at him. Chen Jin, there are still 13 minutes left. If you don't start this so-called nonsense game now, I will stab you to death. Perhaps, they are concerned about the danger after 13 minutes, but I, I don't care at all. Shin Shen picked up the dagger and stabbed it in front of Chen Jin. Chen Jin was stunned, not expecting Shin Shen to have become a prisoner of his own mind and still be so arrogant. Let's begin. I want to see whether your mouth is tough or your luck is tough. Chen Jin laid out the rules of the game. As long as Shin Shen continues to take the poison, for each dose, he will confess to a question. Until Shin Shen dies, or he confesses all the questions. He he, aren't you afraid of death? Didn't you eat pufferfish, poison dart frog, and heart cockle without any issues? I just want to see how you will die in front of me. After Chen Jin finished speaking, he thought Shen Shen would be shocked and panicked. But Shen Shen laughed, laughing absurdly. You damn, you're really something. Shen Shen pointed at the food in front of him, looking puzzled. Chen Jin would never have expected that in Shen Shen's eyes, he had almost become an elite monster in a dungeon. He had become a divine assist that appeared specifically to help overcome the fifth calamity. Where else could you find such a tool? Shen Shen directly picked up the two remaining dishes on the table and started eating. In his earphones, Shin Bagua's exclamation came. Shin Shen, don't agree to him. Come down immediately, we have a way to deal with him. Do not do anything stupid. Shin Shen shook his head, took off his earphones, and turned the video equipment around. After all, what he was about to show was too shocking. He buried his head and started eating. Ding, system prompt, 
host immune to killer bee venom, gecko venom extract. This time immune toxins, 12 slash 100. Immune details, snake venom, water venom, poisonous chicken soup, poisonous tongue. Ding, system prompt, host immune to wandering spider venom, box jellyfish extract. This time immune toxins, 19 slash 100. Immune details, snake venom, water venom, poisonous chicken soup, poisonous tongue. You better explain it clearly to me, or I'll pin all these dark dishes on your face. Shin Chen frowned, eating a mishmash of things while staring at Chen Jin. Chen Jin widened his eyes, looking at him incredulously. Could there really be someone in this world immune to all poisons? Let's see how long you can hold on. Chen Jin sneered and began to tell his story. Twenty-five years ago, in the western mountains of Zhengzhou City, there were no real roads yet. People had to walk for two days and two nights to get out of the mountains. In the deep mountains, there was a small village called Chenjiakan, with only a few dozen households, self-sufficient, though poor but peaceful. Chenjiakan had only one rudimentary primary school, so children who graduated from the village's primary school had to leave the mountains if they wanted to continue to junior high school. In the outskirts of Zhengzhou City, there was a middle school closest to the mountains. That year, a family in the village named Chen had a pair of twins. The older brother was named Chen Jin, and the younger brother was named Chen Xiong, both children graduated from primary school the same year. Because the family was poor and could only afford to send one child to school, and both children wanted to leave the mountains, but the family's conditions did not allow it. Chen's father came up with an idea, using the results of the final exam to make a decision. Whoever scored higher would be sent to school. If the score was low, they would accept their fate as farmers for the rest of their lives. When the exam results came out, the older brother Chen Jin scored 98, and the younger brother Chen Xiong scored 99. On the day the family sent Chen Xiong to school, Chen Jin ran into the mountains alone and cried for a day and a night. After accepting his fate, Chen Jin unexpectedly discovered that his younger brother had tampered with the final exam paper. A math problem, changing a 7 to an 8, a small difference, would have given him a perfect score. Chen Jin took the exam paper to his parents and asked to go to school instead, but his parents resolutely refused. His mother said, school has already started, do you want to ruin your brother's life? His father said, you were not as smart as your brother to think of changing the exam paper, so accept your fate and work the fields with me. They both added, we had planned to send your brother to school. The fortune teller said he is the reincarnation of the purple star. Chen Jin said nothing, tore the exam paper to pieces, and refused to accept his fate. After thinking it over all night, he made a bold decision. The next morning, the Chen family lost three hens, and the neighbor lost a sheep. At the age of 12, he sold the hens and sheep in the city, managing to pay for a year's tuition and accommodation fees. The principal, seeing his plight, did not ask too many questions and allowed him to start studying at the school. Chen Jin and Chen Xiong happened to be in the same class. He did not ask his brother why he had altered his paper, but he never spoke to his brother again. On the third day of school, Chen Jin was studying in the classroom. He would never forget the scene of that day. Suddenly, his parents entered the classroom, along with the neighbor and a police officer in uniform. In those days, losing a sheep and a few chickens in the village was a big deal. In front of everyone, Chen Jin was handcuffed and taken away from the school by the police. The moment he walked out of the classroom, the proud look in his younger brother's eyes made it unforgettable for him. Because he was too young, the theft was not pursued. He was still severely beaten by his parents and scolded for ruining the family's reputation. Everyone in the village started mocking Chen Jin as a thief, not only stealing things from his own home but also daring to steal sheep from the neighbors. Everyone was on guard against him, and the strange looks made Chen Jin feel like he would rather be dead. Finally, on an ordinary evening, he put poisonous mushrooms he had picked from the mountains into the family's rice pot and left home. He wandered westward. A month later, he was finally adopted by a childless couple who were willing to send him to school and give him a future. Chen Jin accepted them as his foster parents and worked hard, eventually excelling in getting admitted to Columbia University in the United States. Despite the odd looks from everyone, he insisted on studying chemical engineering, especially toxicology. After graduating, he successfully joined Rick Corporation and became the youngest toxicologist. However, his good fortune did not last long. A year ago, he was diagnosed with advanced liver cancer, and even with the medical technology in the United States, there was no cure. When Chin Jin received the diagnosis, he completely broke down. No one knew how much effort he had put in for today. No one knew what he had given up to leave the mountains. Reality dealt Chen Jin a harsh blow. If he had known earlier, why would he have done something against morality to change his fate? Three days later, Chen Jin secretly left with his latest research findings, a highly potent chemical toxin. 
When Rick Corporation realized he was missing, they panicked. When the United States discovered he had left the country, they issued an international arrest warrant. He secretly returned to the Dixia where he was born and raised, determined to quietly die alone. Until he met Wang Daqing and Li Wanxia, this couple. Chen Jin stopped talking here. Why aren't you dead yet? Why haven't you finished your nonsense? Shen Shen happened to finish everything on his plate and wiped his mouth. The corners of his eyes trembled imperceptibly. Nausea, indigestion, rapid breathing, accelerated heartbeat. Shen Shen felt at that moment that his blood was boiling, and he was about to ignite. Two unknown dishes, mixed with more than a dozen different toxins. If his immunity to toxins hadn't been getting stronger, he would have fainted long ago. He he, if you want me to continue, you have to keep eating. Suddenly, Shen Jin felt like after telling the story of his 37 years of life, he really wanted to tell Shen Shen about what happened at 38. Shen Shen pointed to the plate, there's no food left, what else can I eat? There should be more in the kitchen. To be honest, I saved a portion of 10 complete tonic soup for myself. Interesting. Shen Shen suddenly felt that the person in front of him was pitiful and hateful. He got up and went to the kitchen. There was still some mushroom soup in the pot, a side dish, and the 10 complete tonic soup that Chen Jin had mentioned. Shen Shen opened it and covered it back up. Wow! This thing was no different from the Sea King's bone dissolving water. Gurgling, intimidating. He returned to the dining room with a few things. Chen Jin looked at him still alive and smiled with relief. Shen Shen, hold on for a while, listen to me finish, and let's die together. Get lost. There are nine minutes left. You better make it short. Shen Shen continued eating without courtesy. Ding, system prompt, host immune to monkshood, aconite, wolfsbane, poison ivy, oleander, poison wood. This time, immune to toxins, 34 slash 100. Immunity details. Ding, system prompt, host immune to fire morale, death cap, deadly white ammonita, destroying angel. This time, immune to toxins, 56 slash 100. Immunity details. Shen Shen couldn't help but curse silently. The pickled small pickles made by Chin Jin are made from various poisonous trees and herbs. Especially those beans that look like peanuts or the lovesickness seeds mentioned in the poem Red Beans Grow in the South. This item is most lovesick. Too poisonous. He took another sip of the hundred mushroom soup, and a few seconds later, he felt hallucinations appearing before his eyes. Similar to the appearance after being poisoned by Su He, at that time. Poisonous mushrooms causing hallucinations, Shen Shen's heart trembled, trying hard to stay awake, but his vision became increasingly blurred. He found that Chin Jin's features seemed to become particularly large, and his body seemed to become particularly small. At the same time, there were eerie winds in his ears, and even the howls of ghosts and wolves. As Chen Jin narrated his own story in his ear, a thunderclap. Suddenly, all the chaos disappeared. Shin Shen seemed to have traveled through time and space, experiencing a tragic event firsthand. After returning to Zhongzhou, Chen Jin did not dare to look for his younger brother Chen Xiong. He just wanted to spend the last days of his life quietly. He applied to become a courier for a certain express delivery company and started working on deliveries at the North City Express Station. At this moment, Shen Shen stood in front of the small supermarket opened by Wang Daqing and witnessed the scene when Chen Jin came to deliver goods for the first time. Hello, from now on, I will be responsible for the delivery in this area for a certain express delivery. Chen Jin walked into the supermarket with a large pile of parcels, looking completely different from someone in the late stage of cancer, appearing sunny and cheerful. Chen Xiong, how come it's you? Oh my, old classmate, we haven't seen each other in so many years. Li Wanxia, who was checking the goods, exclaimed in surprise upon seeing him. Chen Jin was startled, and when he saw Li Wanxia, he was also stunned. She was his class monitor and desk mate in junior high school. Although he only attended classes for three days, the memory of the woman in front of him was still fresh. When he ran away from home back then, Without any clean clothes to change into, he smelled bad in the hot season. Classmates avoided him one after another, except for Li Wanxia, who took the initiative to bring her cousin's clothes from home for him to change into. When he was taken away by his parents and the police, Li Wanxia cried on the spot. Therefore, Chen Jin had a very deep impression of her. I, I am. What? Did I mistake you for someone else? Chen Xiong, we haven't seen each other for over 20 years, right? Li Wanxia smiled brightly and handed Chen Jin a bottle of drink. Chen Jin mumbled, wanting to admit that he was actually Chen Jin's twin brother, Chen Jin. But he didn't dare to speak up. If he confessed to what he did back then, it would surely become known to everyone in Zhengzhou. If he admitted, wouldn't he have to spend his last moments in life in prison, enduring the disdain of his old classmates? Uh, what a coincidence. I didn't mistake you, I am Chen Xiong, just, just returned from out of town. He forced a smile and calmly pretended to be his younger brother. 
Li Wanxia not only did not look down on him, but instead became even more friendly. Yeah, come back. There's no easy job outside. Look at me. After graduating from college, I opened a small supermarket. It's not so easy to make money now. She sat down with Chen Jin, talking about the situation of their classmates over the years. Chen Jin listened nervously and left the supermarket hastily after a short while. That night, he couldn't sleep, thinking about every detail of Li Wanxia's expressions and smiles. In the early morning, he finally decided to confess his feelings to Li Wanxia. He wanted to pursue Li Wanxia to be his girlfriend and accompany him through the remaining years. Chen Jin was a high-level talent of the United States, a top engineer at Rick Corporation, with a very generous salary. Even if he had to spend tens of thousands or even millions of dollars, he wanted Li Wanxia to accompany him through the remaining time. The next day, he came to the supermarket excitedly, but upon seeing Li Wanxia with a four- or five-year-old girl, he was struck as if by lightning. Li Wanxia held a four- or five-year-old girl in her arms, smiling so sweetly. A chubby man stood beside her, looking unremarkable. Chen Xiong, you're here. Let me introduce you, this is my husband Wang Ducheng, and my daughter Bauer. Bauer, quickly call him uncle. Chen Jin forgot how he responded that day, and he left the supermarket in a daze. Since then, he no longer had any improper thoughts, only wanting to see Li Wanxia smile every day. He took the initiative to help Wang Ducheng with deliveries, collect debts for Li Wanxia, and even took Wang Bauer to kindergarten. Like a longtime friend, he accompanied this family of three. Chen Jin even thought that he could slowly die like this, and when he died, he could see Li Wanxia cry for him. This life is enough. He even secretly made a will, donating all his property to Li Wanxia's family after his death. It was a deposit of up to 30 million. Until July 15th, Wang Bauer's fifth birthday, the family of six warmly invited Chen Jin to their home for dinner. Swish. Xin Chen felt everything blur before his eyes, and when he opened them again, it was already July 15th. Wang Daqing's home. Chen Jin was in the late stage of liver cancer and couldn't drink, but that day, he drank a lot in joy. As the party was about to end, his face was flushed, and he said in a drunken haze, Duching, Wanxia, uncles and aunties, actually, I want to tell you something that I've been hiding from you for almost a year. Wang Duching laughed heartily, huh, go ahead, Lao Chen, our relationship is so good, what could you be hiding from us? Li Wanxia also said, Chen Xiong, are you trying to have me introduce you to a wife? You deliver packages every day, tell me if you like any girl's family, you're not young anymore, it's time to settle down. Yes, tell us who you like and we'll go talk to their family, guaranteeing you'll marry her. Wang Ducheng and Li Wanxia's parents also looked on happily. They sincerely hoped that this man named Chen Xiong would settle his marriage matters soon. I, Chen Jin gathered his courage and said, Actually, my name is Chen Jin, I am Chen Xiong's older brother. Back then, he recounted his own experiences, only concealing the terminal illness he had, and then felt relieved. The doctor told him yesterday that he could live for at most another month. Chen Jin hoped that in his final moments, he could face this family honestly and no longer pretend to be that damned younger brother. Little did he know, as soon as he finished speaking, everyone froze. Their faces instantly turned extremely ugly. Wang Duching forced a smile and stood up, Chen Xiong, you've had too much to drink, go rest in the room for a while, really, if you can't drink, then don't drink so much, look, you're talking nonsense. Chen Jin waved his hand, half sober from the alcohol, Duching. I'm not talking nonsense, I am Chen Jin, I am a Ph. D. In chemical engineering from the United States, an expert in the field of toxicology. This time back in the country, I haven't stopped my research, I have extracted the latest and most efficient poison, intending to donate it to the country, to make my contribution. Everyone looked at him with even more strange looks. You should go sleep first, and when you wake up, we'll talk again. Without waiting for him to finish, Wang Duching forcibly dragged him to the adjacent bedroom. Throughout, Li Wanxia didn't say a word, but the way she looked at Chen Jin made him feel like he was being cut by a knife. Seeing everyone's attitude, Chen Jin was fully awake from the alcohol. He had no sleepiness and pressed his ear against the door, wanting to hear how they would handle this situation. Especially Li Wanxia's attitude. He faintly heard, tomorrow, go to the police station. Didn't expect. Let's resolve this sooner. Keep it from him for now. Should I make a phone call first? Yes, it's good to explain the situation, let them prepare, speak softly, don't let him hear. The voices inside the room became even lower. Chen Jin strained to listen. Hello, is this the police station? I, okay, sure, then tomorrow. When Chen Jin heard this, his head exploded. He dared not believe, nor did he want to believe. At the end of his life, he once again felt the despicableness and selfishness of human nature. He was furious and stormed out of the Wang family ignoring their calls from behind. Chen Jin was filled with anger. 
On the way home, his stubborn and suspicious nature resurfaced. Strike first, strike hard. Better to be the one who wrongs the world, than to be wronged by the world. He wanted revenge, he wanted retaliation, he wished to destroy the world along with him. How could you betray me? On July 16, Chen Jin took action. He first placed a large amount of highly toxic snacks in the small supermarket when no one was around. Then, he secretly entered the Wang family's home and poisoned their chopsticks and daily necessities. He had an abundance of deadly toxins in his hands. Throughout the year, he had been studying without interruption, secretly collecting all the toxins in the world, just so he could develop a more powerful poison before he died, leaving behind his research results in this world. Unexpectedly, it was all used on the Wang family. Chen Jin was still a delivery man, using the excuse of delivering to the wrong address, he had a colleague help deliver two unnumbered parcels to the homes of the two elderly couples, it was just that simple. And so, the tragedy occurred. A shocking massacre of a family of six in Zhengzhou, all caused by his own hands. There was no so-called assistance from companions, it was all his doing under a cloud of suspicion. The truth of the matter was revealed. The scene disappeared. Xin Shen finally resisted the hallucinatory effects of the poisonous mushrooms and returned to reality. The moment he opened his eyes, he was stunned. Put. Chen Jin finished telling his story, pulled out the knife from the table, and without hesitation plunged it into his own chest. Blood gushed out. Soon, black bloodstains also appeared at the corners of his mouth. Xin Shen, seeing him commit suicide out of guilt, was unforgiving. You scum! How many lives have you taken for your selfishness and despicableness? He rushed over in anger, wanting to kill this rotten person with his own hands. But he didn't need to, Chen Jin was already on the brink of death. Haha, <laughs> they betrayed me first, I did this just to change my fate. Xin Shen, you have two minutes left, don't you want to know where I placed the poison that I was most proud of in my life? Chen Jin grinned wickedly in his final moments. Xin Shen grabbed his collar. You damn bastard, tell me where the poison is. Chen Jin's gaze fell on the bowl on the table containing all the toxins. Drink it, Xin Shen. Drink this bowl of 10 complete tonic soup. Let's die together. With a companion on the road to the underworld, I'll tell you. It was the death talisman he intended to leave for himself. Now, he wanted Shen Shen to drink it, to accompany him in death. You damn well rest assured, even if you die a hundred times, I won't die once. Shen Shen shouted angrily, picked up the bowl of soup and drank it. Chen Jin burst into laughter, spitting out blood, looking unusually pleased. Ha ha ha, I don't believe it, Shen Shen, die with me. As for the poison, I placed it on the archway in Anrin community. It's connected to the street lamp on the archway, as soon as it strikes eight, it will tell you. This world, I, Chen Jin, have been here. With that, Chen Jin breathed his last. The next moment, Shen Chen's mind was filled with a frantic system prompt sound. It was a continuous reminder of immunity to toxins, echoing all around. He no longer cared to check, and shouted at the camera. Chen Bagua, can you hear me? Boom! Xin Chen felt a sudden darkness before falling backward. A large amount of toxins instantly invaded his brain, causing him to pass out completely. Cut the power. After hearing Xin Chen's words, Xin Bagua instinctively shouted. Bang! The entire community plunged into darkness. The bomb disposal expert from the police station ran desperately towards the entrance of the residential area, praying that Chen Jin had not set up a backup power source again. When a group of people climbed up the archway and found the detonator, they almost collapsed and fell down. The poison bomb was not detonated, and it automatically stopped after the power outage. They were saved. The desperate poisoner ultimately failed to prove to the world that he had been there. In the room, Xin Bagua led people in. Chen Jin was already cold. And Xin Shen was in a very dangerous situation, bleeding from seven orifices. Quick, take him to the hospital for treatment. Get all the doctors in Zhengzhou to come and save Xin Shen. He shouted, looking at Shin Shen on the ground with a mix of anger, gratitude, and emotion. At the last moment, this guy disregarded his own life and once again saved everyone. The crowd hurriedly lifted Shin Shen and ran to the hospital. The police car cleared the way, and the ambulance raced all the way. In a few minutes, they arrived at the Zhengzhou People's Hospital. Shin Bagua jumped out of the car and instructed all the doctors to start full-scale rescue efforts immediately. When the hospital director heard that Shin Shen had arrived, he didn't pay much attention. What, Shin Bureau, Shin Chen is here again. Wait, I remember I didn't close the windows at home, I'll go back home first. Various experts and nurses, upon hearing that Shin Chen had arrived, were all busy with their own tasks. Shen Chen? Ha, let him sleep in my duty room. No, I need to rest at night, give him a hospital room. The patients in the hospital rooms won't agree, this guy. 
Sheen Bagua, seeing everyone's indifferent attitude, slammed the table in anger. What are you all doing? Regardless of his identity, he scolded them in the emergency room. He's a hero who saved all of Zhengzhou, and you treat him like this. He's about to die, do you know that? The old director, seeing Qin Bagua's emotional outburst, had to smile awkwardly and explain. Qin Bureau, every time this guy comes, he's about to die, but it's not that serious, he's tough. Qin Bagua's face darkened. Nonsense. Hurry, gather all the hospital experts and give Shen Shen full treatment. If anything happens to him, I won't let any of you off. The old director had to muster his spirits and lead all the doctors and nurses to Shen Shen's side. At a glance, half of his heart sank. This, Shen Shen's condition was extremely critical. At this moment, because he had consumed Chen Jin's 10 complete tonic soup, he had fallen into a deep coma. Not only was he bleeding from seven orifices, but his breathing was also faint. His body was swollen, his stomach like a balloon filled with poison. Save. Save him quickly. The old director finally realized that Shen Chen's life was truly hanging by a thread. Everyone panicked and sprang into action, inserting a gastric tube, dialysis, injecting large doses of antidote. After the whole process, Shen Chen's condition showed no improvement. Director, his blood pressure is dropping again. His pupils are dilating, what? What should we do? His blood oxygen level has dropped to the lowest, we. We can't do anything. Everyone looked at Shen Chen in a panic, feeling deeply powerless. You, this guy, how did things really take a turn for the worse? Their eyes welled up with tears, unsure if Shen Shen could survive this ordeal. The old director rushed out of the emergency room in a fluster and grabbed Shen Bagua. Shen Bureau, quickly. Arrange for a car, no, it's best to send a helicopter to take Shen Shen to Kyoto. If we want him to live, he needs to be transferred to another hospital. Shen Bagua's face changed, and he immediately made the call without hesitation. Ten minutes later, a rescue helicopter took off and flew directly to Kyoto. The Kyoto National Hospital also received a distress call from Zhangzhou, feeling like they were facing a major crisis. A 23-year-old young man, who had mistakenly ingested nearly a hundred types of poisons, was on the brink of death. He was a hero who had saved the common people of Zhangzhou several times, as well as a victim of a family massacre and kidnapping. He hoped to receive the best medical assistance in Dashia. All the experts who received the news couldn't help but complain. You're like the legendary Shinon tasting a hundred herbs, actually managing to ingest nearly a hundred different kinds. On the helicopter. In his subconscious, Shen Chen gradually woke up. Ding. Immunity toxin complete. Host has recovered health. Host has now immunized against toxins. 99 slash 100. Immunity details. Snake venom. Water toxin. Toxic chicken soup. Toxic tongue. Reminder to host. Completion rate of the fifth major calamity is 99%, please keep it up and complete the remaining challenges. Due to the host instantly immunizing against a huge dose of toxins, detoxification ability has been further enhanced, obtaining the permanent title of immune to all poisons. I, I didn't die, did I? Shen Shen slowly opened his eyes and heard a loud rumbling sound beside his ears. Are we going to heaven? He subconsciously turned his head and asked the person next to him. The nurse taking care of him looked as if she had seen a ghost sitting in shock inside the cabin. Brother Chen. You. How did you wake up? Her exclamation attracted the attention of several people around. They were part of the emergency medical team escorting Shen Chen to Kyoto, responsible for maintaining his life on the way. Seeing him wake up at this moment, they were all startled. Shen Chen reached out to remove the oxygen mask and looked at everyone. Wait, what's going on? Where am I? Seeing that he was really okay, everyone was overjoyed and explained the situation to Shen Chen. Shin Shen was touched and didn't expect Qin Baobua and the old dean to arrange for a helicopter to send him to Kyoto for rescue. I'm fine now, don't make a fuss, shall we? Turn back? Shin Shen suggested, feeling that there was no need for so much trouble. The pilot looked exasperated, brother, don't joke around, we're almost there, can you cooperate and lie down first so that the people in Kyoto can at least take a look at you? They've mobilized a lot of people waiting for you, are you going to turn back now? That's not right. Really? Shin Shin felt the plane descending and stood up to look out, only to be shocked. There was a huge helipad on the rooftop of the National Hospital. It was already 10 o'clock at night, but it was as bright as day. Dozens of nurses in white uniforms and caps stood in two rows, waiting for the helicopter to land. In the distance, there were more than 20 elderly men with graying hair, looking serious. A well-proportioned female journalist was standing on the rooftop reporting live. The scene seemed a bit overwhelming. Hello, audience friends. I am Yuxia, the host of the Central Radio and Television News Channel. I am now broadcasting live the life-saving rescue operation from a thousand miles away. 
Yu Xia pointed to the helicopter hovering in the sky and quickly spoke. Just two hours ago, a shocking massacre was uncovered in Zhengzhou City, shaking the entire country. During the arrest, an ordinary citizen named Shen risked his life to protect the hostages, apprehend the criminals, and sacrificed himself. He is now critically poisoned and on the brink of death. Time is life. Upon receiving the news, in order to save the civilian hero Shen, the National Hospital urgently mobilized 18 chief physicians, 9 authoritative experts, and 3 academicians from the National Medical Academy to make every effort to save the hero's life. Yu Xia's tone was heavy and emotional. The camera turned, and the audience in front of the TV saw nearly a hundred people involved in the rescue, all looking serious and waiting for the helicopter to land. Tears in their eyes. This is the power of my great Xia, forging a moment of passionate blood. 100 people in battle, a thousand miles of rescue, and even the academicians from the medical school are participating. This Shin is truly lucky, may he be safe and sound. Do you all know that Shin is Shin Lao? I watched the live broadcast all the way, wasn't he rescued? Why is he on the brink of death again? What? Shin Lao is on the plane? Is he really going to die? The netizens immediately started discussing, expressing their concerns. On sight, seeing the helicopter about to land, Yu Xia became emotional. No one can be immune to all poisons, but passion can create legends, coordinate in all directions, provide various services, and Meishin use the power of an ordinary person to create miracles of life. Let us pray for Mr. Shin's safety and well-being. The plane landed. Everyone rushed forward frantically. Quick! Save the patient! The director of the National Hospital rushed to the front, leading the most elite medical team of Daya, and opened the cabin door with one hand. Ah! Uh, the next second! Everyone was stunned in place. Shin Chan awkwardly jumped off the plane and waved to everyone. Hello, everyone, have you all eaten? What the heck? All the medical experts were dumbfounded. At such a tense moment, you're asking us if we've eaten? Kid, are you here to cause trouble? Young man, get up quickly. The director of the national hospital pushed Shin Chen impatiently. There's a restaurant downstairs, go eat if you're hungry. He mistook Shin Chen for accompanying medical staff. Everyone pushed him to the periphery. Brother, get up first, let us save the patient. Yeah, I know it's not easy to send a hero from afar, go eat. Leave it to us here, don't block the way. Everyone was talking at once, pushing Shin Chen to the side of the host Yu Xia. Shin Chen looked bewildered, watching everyone rush to the helicopter, not knowing what to say. Yu Xia, the host, saw an opportunity. She grabbed Shin Chen and had the camera focus on him. Hello, sir, you came from Zhengzhou as a rescuer, right? Can you briefly describe Mr. Shen's condition? Shin Chen, uh, he he. Don't be shy, I'm the host of CCTV News Channel. This is a live broadcast now, this life-saving rescue operation has attracted the attention of millions of netizens. Can you talk about the current situation? Shin Chen, uh, he he. And our hero Mr. Shin, is his condition very bad? According to the news from Zhangzhou, it is said that he is bleeding from seven orifices, his breathing has stopped, his blood pressure is extremely low, and he is in imminent danger? Shin Chen, Tisk, hey. Yu Xia fired off a series of questions like a machine gun, but the other party remained silent, just grinning foolishly. She was getting angry. Sir, you are being interviewed on TV, please cooperate with me, stop laughing. Shin Chen looked at the camera, then at her, and could only smile bitterly. Ah, uh, okay. His condition is okay, he won't die. Ha, huh? what do you mean, okay? What do you mean, won't die? Yu Xia became even angrier. This man in front of her disregarded the safety of the patient and was the first to jump off the plane. After coming down, he blocked the rescue passage, asked if everyone had eaten, and now shamelessly said Shin Chen was fine? Her face darkened gradually, staring angrily at him. What do you mean by okay? Sir, I suspect you haven't fulfilled your duty of care at all. Shin Chen is in such a state, and you are so indifferent, so careless. Tell me your name right now, I want to ask your superiors why they sent such an irresponsible person here. She was quite stern and uncompromising. At such a critical moment, those who dare to be frivolous must be severely punished. Especially in Kyoto, there is no room for leniency. Shin Chen touched his nose, looking aggrieved. It's not that serious, actually I. Yu Xia impatiently interrupted him. Tell me your name right now. Shin Chen could only weakly say, Okay, my name is Shin Chen. Yu Xia nodded, Shin Chen? Okay, I remember you, after the show, I will complain to the relevant authorities in Zhengzhou about you. Wait, what did you say your name was? Yu Xia's face suddenly changed. I said my name is Shin Chen. Yu Xia. At the same time, urgent voices came through Yu Xia's earpiece. Xia Jie, Xia Jie. Sorry, I figured it out. The man in front of you is Shin Chen. 
the patient who was on the brink of death and needed emergency treatment. The host's voice became lower and lower, almost unable to continue. Who would have thought that the patient would be fine and casually accept the interview? Yu Xia's face instantly turned as dark as the bottom of a pot. In front of the TV, everyone burst into laughter. Damn, he's pretending again. Ha, Shen Lao, I'm going to complain about you. How dare you ignore Shen Shen's life and death? No, you are supposed to save Shen Shen. What does it have to do with me, Shen Lao? Ah, I'm dying of laughter. Look at Xia Jie's face, as dark as the night sky. Indeed, Shen Lao is amazing. I knew he couldn't be close to death. Brothers, making female journalists and hosts cry is Shen Lao's awakening skill. Shen Shen saw Yu Xia's face turning black as if it could be used to write chalk words, so he quickly waved his hands to explain. Host, I'm actually really critically ill, but I'm just holding on to do the interview, please don't be angry. Holding on to do the interview? And asking me not to be angry? Yu Xia stared at Shen Shen, biting her lip, her chest heaving with anger. Then, she unexpectedly shed two tears. She dropped the microphone, covered her face, cried, and ran away. No more interviews. Are you bullying people? Did you think I didn't watch your live broadcast and videos? You should have told me earlier. At this time, medical experts in the distance also noticed something was wrong. Inside the cabin, on the hospital bed, there was no one. Where is the patient? Where is our hero? The doctors and nurses in the helicopter looked embarrassed. Uh, don't bother looking, the first man who jumped off just now was Shin Chen. Damn, are you kidding us here? Everyone was dumbfounded. Although it was a big mistake, after coming all the way, Shin Chen was still admitted to the National Hospital for observation. Three days later, the investigation results of the Zhengzhou family massacre were announced to the public. The culprit, Shen Jin, poisoned the Wang Duqing family of six because he suspected they were going to expose his crimes. He committed suicide out of fear and escaped punishment. The prosecutor's office found his 30 million inheritance and a will that had been notarized long ago. The will showed that Chen Jin's personal property was all donated to Wang Duqing and Li Wanxia. So, in addition to the hefty compensation to the Wang Duqing family, the remaining property was handed over to the beneficiary, Wang Bauer, according to the will. Essentially, Wang Bauer received the full 30 million compensation from Chen Jin. Since all of Wang Bauer's immediate family members had died, she was sent to an orphanage for care. When she reached adulthood, she would be able to freely use the compensation. Another noteworthy event was the police station's release of the July 15th recording of Li Wanxia and Wang Duqing's report. She inquired with the police about a person who had been declared dead long ago suddenly reappearing and asked about re-registering for a household registration and obtaining an ID card. The couple even suggested leaving Chen Jin's household registration at the Wang family's address to give him a place to belong. Chen Jin probably never imagined that the same fate that befell Lu Bazhan at the hands of Chao Chao would happen to him. The kind-hearted Wang family, under his paranoid suspicion, ultimately became six lost souls. Interestingly, Chen Jin's attempt to poison his parents years ago was unsuccessful. His parents immediately noticed a strange smell in the rice porridge and threw it all away. But Chen Jin's disappearance left them ashamed and angry, and out of pride, they did not publicize it. They even went to the police station to cancel Chen Jin's household registration and declare him dead. It wasn't until his younger brother, Chen Xiong, graduated from junior high school that they moved to the south with their entire family and disappeared without a trace. After Chen Jin was cremated, the police found information about Chen's parents and Chen Xiong through the system and notified them to come collect the ashes. The Chen family refused, stating that they had cut off all ties with him long ago. Finally, the police station also learned that Chen Jin's younger brother, Chen Xiong, was unruly during junior and senior high school, even cheating during the college entrance examination, and his exam results were directly cancelled. Later, due to associating with delinquent youths, he got into fights and was sent to labor camps multiple times, and he is currently unemployed at home. The only consolation is that Chen Jin's research achievements in the field of drugs are at least 20 years ahead of the world. His papers and experimental results have been sent to the Dasha Academy of Sciences for further research and exploration. At least in the field of military scientific research, Chen Jin has made an indelible contribution to the country. When Qin Bagua finished reading Chen Jin's file and looked back on his life, he couldn't help but sigh at the twists of fate. If Chen's parents, or the school, or even the police officers at the time had cared more about Chen Jin, even just a little bit, perhaps the world would have gained another top chemical engineering genius. In the end, due to selfishness and suspicion, Chen Jin ultimately paid the price with his life. Dad, I wonder how Shin Chin is doing in Kyoto, he hasn't come back yet? Su He, who had been discharged from the hospital, suddenly asked casually at home. Qin Baguo was taken aback, showing a smile. Why are you asking about that? What does it have to do with you how he is? 
Sui blushed, I was just asking, after all, he is a victim and a hero. Chen Jin's compensation and the police station's reward haven't been given to him yet. Well, then call him yourself and let him know to come and collect it. Sheen Bagua chuckled, unable to see through his adopted daughter's thoughts. Okay, okay, it was you who asked me to inform him. Sui put on a serious face, took out her phone, and dialed Shin Chen's number without hesitation. After seeing it a hundred times a day, even a fool would remember it. Finally, she made the first call to Shin Chen after being discharged from the hospital. The call went through, and Sui's voice was trembling. Hello, Shin Chen, I. Hello, Shin Chen is taking a shower, I'm Yan Bingbing, is there anything you want me to tell him? A pleasant female voice came through the phone. Boom. Suhi's mind went blank. He's taking a shower. Taking a shower. Shower. Underscore, do you already have a girlfriend? Why didn't you tell me? Hello? Miss, what's wrong with you? Do you have something to tell Shin Shen? Yen Bingbing asked strangely on the phone. Suhi was so angry that she wanted to dissect Shin Shen on the spot. She gritted her teeth and said word by word, please tell him to come to room 418 at Zhengzhou police station if he's dead. I want to give him a full body check. Full body check? Yen Bingbing asked in confusion, wanting to ask more, but the other party had already hung up. Unbelievable. Yen Bingbing hung up the phone, shook her head, and Shen Shen had already come out of the bathroom. He was drying his hair, feeling refreshed, and lying comfortably on the hospital bed. These days, Shen Shen had been recuperating in Kyoto, and Yen Bingbing had been taking care of him both at work and by his bedside. Bingbing, whose call was it? Shen Shen, acting like an old man, picked up a grape and leisurely put it in his mouth. I don't know, it was a girl, she said for you to go to room 418 at Zhongzhou police station after returning, saying she wants to give you a full body check? What? 418. Asterisk cough. Cough. Put. Shen Shen almost choked on a grape, coughing for a long time before spitting it out. What are you doing, so jumpy? Yen Bingbing hurriedly patted his back, startled. 418 is the forensic room. This woman wants to dissect me alive. Shin Shen scolded irritably, wondering why Su Yi was so ruthless. Yen Bingbing narrowed her eyes and grabbed Shin Shen's ear. She didn't care about the first half of his sentence but focused on the latter half. Woman? Who is it? Feeling the chill emanating from Yen Bingbing, Shin Shen was suddenly shocked. That, um, in Zhangzhou, I met a forensic doctor from that case. Oh, Bingbing, you have no idea how ruthless this woman is. She just stabbed herself in the thigh in front of the murderer, the blood was gushing. Yen Bingbing turned Shin Shen's ear half a circle again. I asked her if she was ruthless? I asked her why she called you. Shin Shen grimaced, how would I know, should I call her now? Oh, wait, why are you so angry? Heavens, are you actually jealous? Yen Bingbing blushed, then immediately let go of Shin Shen's ear. Pa, how could I be jealous, we don't have any relationship. Shin Shen's mouth curved into a nice arc. No relationship? She turned her face slightly flustered. Yes, I warn you, don't casually label me. Don't tell others when you go out that you are my boyfriend. Shin Shen burst into laughter at her words. You said it yourself, I am your boyfriend. A blush instantly covered Yen Bingbing's cheeks, and she hurriedly threw a jacket over. I won't tell you anymore. Quickly change out of your patient gown. I'll go pick up my parents. She ran out like a startled little rabbit. Shin Shen was suddenly shocked. How could he forget that Yen Bingbing's parents were coming to visit him? Although Yen Bingbing was from the Northeast, she had moved to Kyoto with her parents since she was young. The parents who had always been concerned about their daughter heard that Shin Shen had come to Kyoto and insisted on coming to visit. It seemed like they were coming to investigate. Since their daughter met Shin Shen, not only did she lose her enviable job at Central Broadcasting Station, but she also stayed in a third-tier city and didn't return to Kyoto. The elderly couple really wanted to know what magic Shin Shen had to make their daughter infatuated. At the entrance of the National Hospital, a long version Rolls Royce slowly approached. Several black-clad bodyguards quickly came to the front of the car and respectfully opened the door. A luxurious lady got out of the car first, followed by a dignified middle-aged man. Dad. Mom, why did you make such a big fuss, what's going on? Seeing everyone pointing and whispering, Yan Bingbing covered her face. Yan's father was named Yan Jingxiong a business genius who started his business as a vendor selling ice cream from a pushcart. Twenty years ago, he brought Yan's mother Wen Xian and daughter to settle in Kyoto, where they built a huge business empire in the hidden dragons and crouching tigers of Kyoto. This time, they came to visit the little rascal who their daughter couldn't forget. Naturally, they had to make a big fuss. Seeing that Yan Bingbing was not very happy, Yan Jingxiong's face darkened. Oomph, Bingbing, I don't know where this wild kid came from, making you dizzy. It's like he opened a glue factory on your head, all mushy. 
Yen Bingbing was scolded by her father, her small mouth pouted, and she threw herself into her mother when Xian's arms to act coquettish. Mom, look, someone is scolding your daughter, what should we do? When Xian's face darkened, this is unreasonable, if he dares to scold my daughter, I will hit his daughter. Yen Bingbing. The old couple laughed heartily seeing their daughter being scolded. When Xian saw her daughter about to cry, and quickly comforted her. All right, all right, mom was just joking with you. But you, you stayed at home for just one day after returning to Kyoto, then disappeared. Of course we had to come and see what kind of guy took your heart away. Yen Bingbing smirked. She also wanted to introduce Shin Chen to her parents. It's just that Shin Chen, this blockhead, would rather stay in the hospital than mention visiting her parents. The Yen family elders couldn't contain their curiosity, so they had to come in person. Let's go, I'll take you upstairs. Yen Bingbing held her father with one hand and her mother with the other, eagerly heading upstairs. Stop. Yen Jingxiong stopped in his tracks. Girl, you don't know how many men outside want to enter the Yen family's door as a son-in-law. I'm afraid this Shen Chen's intentions in getting close to you are not pure. Yen Bingbing said impatiently, Dad, what are you talking about? It's obviously me. Cough, cough. What do you want to do? Yen Zhengxiong smiled mysteriously. You two wait for me in the car, I'll go test this kid. If his values are right, his character is good, then it's not impossible to consider him as your boyfriend. When Xian on the side also chimed in. Yes, Bing Bing, you're not young anymore. Since you have someone you like, we'll help you check him out. Yen Bing Bing was surprised to find out when her parents became so open-minded. There was no anger as she imagined, nor was there any irrationality as she imagined. But the key is, Shen Shen doesn't know his own thoughts. This blockhead, always laughing and joking, has never shown any intention of confessing to her. Her parents suddenly bringing up Shen Shen like this would make her seem desperate. Thinking of this, Yen Bingbing suddenly showed a sly smile. Okay, dad, you help me test him, if he's a scumbag, I can see his true colors too. In fact, what Yen Bingbing wanted to say was that if Shen Shen really liked her or not, her dad could easily find out. If he liked her, it would be a win-win situation, and she could reluctantly agree to him. If he didn't like her, she could pretend not to know anything, which would be better than the embarrassment of being rejected. Seeing his daughter's shy look, Yen Jingxiong smiled. Hee hee, I wanna see if this kid can resist the temptation of my little bit of money. He took out a prepared pinhole recording device, gave it to the mother and daughter, and let them listen throughout. Then he walked into the hospital and arrived at Shin Chen's ward. Shin Chen was sitting upright in the room, feeling nervous, when the old man pushed the door open. Uncle, you are. He quickly stood up to greet him. Yen Jingxiong looked at Shen Shen in front of him and waved his hand. He he, you are Shen Shen? Ah, yes. Yen Jingxiong nodded, took out a check from his pocket, wrote a series of numbers on it, and threw the check into Shen Shen's hand. Kid, what do you think when you see this money? Shen Shen was startled by the series of numbers on the check. Wow, are visitors from Kyoto so generous when visiting patients? A whole one million. Indeed, it's a first-tier city where the average person has over a billion. He promptly put away the check and thanked him. I don't have any thoughts, uncle, if you're here, you're here, why be so polite? Yen Zhengxiong's face turned green after hearing this. No, what I mean is. Yen Zhengxiong was about to continue. Shin Chen warmly pulled him into the ward. I know what you mean, Uncle Yen, I understand, any man would understand. He gave old Yen a look that any man would understand. Yen Zhengxiong was taken aback. Could this kid have some improper thoughts? Tell me honestly, what does any man understand mean? Yen Jingxiong narrowed his eyes, his domineering aura fully revealed. Especially with his daughter and wife listening to their conversation, it was a good opportunity to expose his true nature. Shin Chen just smirked. Thinking that the old man liked to get to the bottom of things, he leaned in close to his ear. Bing Bing told me a long time ago that you two were distant, you were busy with work, which led to a not-so-good relationship between father and daughter. She never asked you for pocket money, and now you're giving me this one million, are you trying to pass it on to Bing Bing through me? to make her life more comfortable. Hey, this kid hit the nail on the head. Yen Zhengxiong felt emotional. Since marrying his wife Wen Xian, he had been busy with entrepreneurship and making money. When he had some money, he was busy starting a company and doing business. After having a daughter for over 20 years, there was hardly any deep communication, let alone daily care for his daughter. With Xin Chen's reminder, he also recalled that since his child went to college, he hadn't asked for a penny from the family. Yen Bingbing worked hard and became a host on central radio and television, leaving the old man feeling a mix of emotions. As a father, he was surprised that no one else understood the relationship between him and his daughter. He hesitated to bring up the matter of the one million yuan again. Shin Chen nodded and said, Uncle, don't worry. To prevent Bingbing from squandering the money, 
I will give her the 1 million yuan in installments over 100 years, providing her with 27, 39 yuan per day, which should be enough for her expenses. Yen Zhengxiong, who had just taken a sip of water, sprayed it all out. He was about to speak when Xin Xin continued, but I also advise you, Uncle Yen, even though you and Bingbing don't have a good relationship, try to spend more time with her when you can. As the saying goes, raise sons in poverty and daughters in wealth. Since she is your daughter, you should treat her better. Yen Zhengxiang was taken aback. Hey, Xin Chen, when did I tell you that Bing Bing is my daughter? Xin Chen was shocked. Oops, I accidentally ate such a big melon. Yen Bing Bing is also your daughter? Have I become a magnet for daughters? Su He is a daughter, and Yen Bing Bing is also a daughter. I wonder if Bing Bing knows about her own background. Yen Zhengxiang looked at Xin Chen, realizing that he meant to raise and support his daughter. He quickly explained, No, don't get me wrong. Even though I am busy with business and rarely at home, I can still make time to have a child. Xin Chen turned away in sorrow. There is no such thing as a peaceful time. Maybe someone is replacing you on a solitary journey at night. Damn it, where is my knife? Yan Jingxiang stood up, wanting to teach Xin Chen a lesson. This guy was becoming more and more unreliable, dragging him into trouble. He had even agreed to let his daughter test him, and his daughter was probably being manipulated by him. This man was not simple. He looked at Xin Chen with a new respect. You little brat, stop bullshitting. I'm telling you the truth. I came here today to make you leave my daughter. Yan Zhengxian's expression turned cold as he spoke bluntly. Xin Chen was surprised by Yan's sudden change in attitude. Could it be because he had learned his biggest secret? Xin Chen pondered for a moment, realizing he couldn't let things escalate. Bing Bing had just told him to say a few more kind words to make the old man happy. How could he forget all of that? He raised his head and said seriously to Yen, Uncle Yen, it seems like you're worried for nothing. I will never leave Yen Bingbing. Yen Zhengxiang was left breathless and furious. He was a farmer and had a habit of using idioms and proverbs in his speech, even though he was worth billions. He didn't expect Shen Chen to start using them too. Who are you calling a dung beetle? It's not very hurtful, but extremely insulting. He turned his face and began to attack personally. I'm giving you a chance. You, a poor guy like you, want to date my daughter. It's like a toad wanting to eat swan meat. Shen Chen felt his anger rise as Yen brought up his misfortune. Not hitting the face when hitting someone, not exposing someone's weaknesses when insulting them. Old man, you're losing face. Besides, I haven't even started dating your daughter, so how can I be unworthy? He <laughs> he, Uncle Yen, are you a locksmith or a toad wanting to eat swan meat? Yen Zhengxiang was livid. He started looking for something to fight Shen Chen. There was no way they could peacefully resolve this today. Dad. Zhengxiang. Two cries of surprise, Yen Bingbing and Wen Xian, the mother and daughter, suddenly rushed in. They listened and if they didn't come up soon, something big was going to happen. Wife, let go of me, let me go down with this little thief. Yen Jingxiong grabbed a stool, determined to give Xin Chen a lesson in love. Xin Chen was startled and when he saw Yen Bingbing coming, he quickly explained, Bingbing, I didn't expect Uncle Yen to be so angry. It was an accident, purely an accident. Yen Bingbing glared at him, looking at her father's furious expression. She was about to cry. Why are you like this? The first time I introduced a boy I liked to you, so many things happened. If I had known, I would have married Shen Shen before letting you meet him. Yen Bingbing's eyes turned red, tears welling up. Bing Bing, don't cry. Both men shouted at the same time. Shen Shen had made a promise on the deck of the Viking to never let Yen Bingbing cry again. Yen Jingxiang had never let his daughter cry in front of him. Seeing her about to cry now, both men panicked. Yen Zhengxiong quickly said, Daughter, Shen Chen and I were just joking around. Shen Chen also hurried to comfort her. Yes, yes, yes. Uncle Yen and I were just fooling around. Yen Bingbing chuckled and said, Shen Chen, if you start learning my dad's puns, I won't talk to you anymore. Shen Chen nodded repeatedly, willing to agree to anything as long as she didn't cry. Then shake hands, and from now on, you'll be considered acquainted. Yen Zhengxiong reluctantly shook hands with Shen Chen. All right, all right, Zhengxiong. Why are you competing with the child? Have you forgotten why we came here? When Xian saw that the two men were no longer arguing and tried to smooth things over with a smile. Little Shin, are you feeling better? If you are, then leave the hospital. We came to pick you up. Our house is so big, how can we not have a place for you to stay? Come home. She had seen how worried Shin Shen was about her daughter's feelings just now. She looked at Shin Shen now with satisfaction. Shin Shen was talented, tall and big with only a slightly sharp tongue and a bit of bad luck, but no major flaws, especially the few things he had done, anyone who heard about them would praise him. Both of them came from humble backgrounds, without any concept of class, not to mention they were not lacking in money. 
As long as their daughter was willing, the parents would agree to anything. When Xin Shen heard that he was going to stay at Yen Bingbing's house, he was delighted and grinned. Ah, auntie, isn't this inconvenient? Before Wen Xian could speak, Yen Zhengxiang interjected, Humph, my villa has four floors, twelve independent bathrooms, how can it not be convenient? Yen Zhengxiang glared at Xin Shen, then left the ward, afraid of being annoyed to death by this guy. Wen Xian and Yen Bingbing both covered their faces. Little Xin, Yen uncle likes to joke, don't take it seriously. Xin Shen, my dad didn't finish elementary school, he has never done a reading comprehension exercise, so don't mind him. Xin Shen was sweating coldly. He thought Yen uncle couldn't even read a single word. How did he manage to make so much money? Was it because of his innocence? Just as he was about to agree, Yen Bingbing's phone rang. Bingbing, why haven't you come yet? Didn't I ask you to host the final shooting competition today, have you forgotten? Yen Bingbing looked at the clock and jumped up. Oh no, how is it already this late? The finals at the Olympic Sports Center are about to start. She grabbed Shin Chen and hurriedly ran out. She was called to Kyoto to help host the live broadcast of the Olympic shooting competition being held at the Sakura National Stadium. She almost forgot about it because of her parents meeting Shin Chen. Shin Chen, drive for me, I need to prepare in the car. Shin Chen didn't have time to speak, as Yen Bingbing dragged him and ran off. At the same time, a system prompt sounded in Shin Chen's mind. Ding, the fifth great calamity poison calamity is about to start its final tribulation process, one hour from now. Reminder to the host, immunity to toxins is at 99100, the fifth calamity will be completed in three hours, please prepare seriously. Shin Shen originally wanted to drive Yen Bingbing to the central radio and television tower, but the curse attribute struck again, and the car just wouldn't start. In the end, he and Yen Bingbing sat in the spacious Rolls Royce. The car raced towards the central radio and television tower. Yan Jingxiong sat in the boss's chair, drinking red wine, looking smugly at Xin Chen. Kid, enjoy yourself. With your wealth and status, you'll never be able to afford a Rolls Royce in your lifetime. Xin Chen opened a bottle of Sprite and took a sip. He said lightly, Uncle, haven't I already sat in one? After speaking, he glanced at Yan Bingbing and threw a knowing look at the old man. Yan Zhengxiong's face instantly turned red. Kid, next time I see you, if I don't bring my Guangdong sword, I'm not surnamed with you. Xin Chen was about to retort but was stopped by Wen Xian waving her hand. Enough! Old Yen, are you and Little Shen incompatible in fate? Why do you get so angry every time you speak? If you keep this up, I'll sew your mouth shut. Little Shen, you should also keep quiet. Your uncle is the boss of a company with thousands of employees. Besides you, who dares to challenge him in all these years? Xin Chen smirked and fell silent. After hearing his wife's words, Yen Jingxiong also had doubts in his mind. Yes! Why do I feel like losing my temper when talking to this kid? This is not my usual temperament. I can stand firm in the capital because of my ability to disguise myself. How can this kid expose my true self with just a few words? Not simple. He remained silent and squinted at his daughter's love interest. Seeing the two no longer arguing, when Xian asked her daughter Yen Bingbing with concern. Bingbing, what's wrong? Why are you in such a hurry? Can mom help you? Yen Bingbing was quickly looking at the information on her phone not even lifting her head. Mom, something big happened. A few days ago, the director of Channel 5 of Central Radio and Television Station called me, asking me to host the women's 10-meter air rifle competition as a guest. I originally came from the sports channel, so I agreed. I hosted the qualifiers a few days ago, and the director said the response was good, so he asked me to host today's final as well. But I was so focused on you visiting Shen Shen, I forgot about hosting, and the final is starting in less than an hour. Ah. Everyone in the car was shocked. The Olympic Games were something the whole world was currently focused on. Opening in the Sakura country, the first gold medal of this year's Olympics would be awarded this morning. Therefore, Yen Bingbing's role as the host of the women's 10-meter air rifle competition was crucial. It involved the first gold of the entire Olympics and whether De Xia could win the first gold. The eyes of the world were all on this competition. De Xia has always had a tradition of chatting before the competition. This time, Yen Bingbing's job was to invite two special guests, analyze the strengths and weaknesses of the final competitors, answer questions for the audience, and set the atmosphere. Don't worry, Bingbing. We'll be there in just over 10 minutes. Nothing will be delayed. Yen Jingxiong comforted his daughter, who looked anxious. Daughter, if you do well in hosting this competition, will the station let you return to work? Wen Xian suddenly asked. Yen Bingbing was stunned, looked up at Xin Shen, and then lowered her head. The director did mention that if I host this competition well, I can apply to return to work with the higher-ups, but I haven't decided whether to go or not. When Xian understood her daughter's dilemma, 
Hosting has always been Yan Bingbing's dream since she was young, but she loves Shen Chen and is reluctant to be separated from him, so she is torn. When Xian thought about it, looked at Shen Chen, and considered whether to bring him into the house as a son-in-law, wouldn't that solve everything perfectly? She and her husband exchanged a glance and found that her husband had the same idea, but they both suppressed it for now. Shen Chen was not stupid, he could tell from Yan Bingbing's words that she was struggling with something. He was touched. He had been a lonely star since childhood, and Yan Bingbing not only did not despise him but was willing to give up her dream of being a host to follow him. How could Shen Chen not understand her feelings? But during this period, Shen Chen always avoided making any commitments, afraid of implicating this kind and innocent girl. Seeing Yan Bingbing in a dilemma at this moment, he also felt at a loss for words. Yan Bingbing suddenly raised her head and stared at Shen Chen firmly. Shen Chen, can you, can you accompany me later to watch me host? In just a few seconds of hesitation, Yan Bingbing felt ashamed of herself. What was wrong with her? She had always been bold and decisive. Why was she hesitating because of work? She made up her mind to do a good job in the final live broadcast of her hosting career, to put a perfect end to this job. And then, she would quietly accompany Shen Chen. Okay. Shen Chen readily agreed, but he looked out the window, silently thinking about something. The fifth great calamity, with 99 types of toxins, was only missing the last one, and Shen Chen did not know what kind of crisis he was about to face. He had originally planned to leave after taking her to the central broadcasting tower, waiting alone for the arrival of the last toxin. But Yan Bingbing's words made him unable to refuse. Perhaps, this was their last chance to be together? There was a moment of silence in the car, and they finally arrived at the central broadcasting building. Yan Bingbing led Shen Chen to the 16th floor sports channel. Bingbing, you finally made it. Hurry, get ready, our live broadcast is about to start. The director breathed a sigh of relief when the host finally arrived. By this time, there were already several people in the room, including sports guests invited from outside as well as the commentators for the air rifle finals. There was also the station manager of Channel 5, Yen Guangming. Who is this? Yen Guangming saw an unfamiliar face and was about to ask when suddenly he slapped his thigh. Shen Chen. Ha, are you Shen Lao, Shen Chen? Several people in the room all turned their gaze to Shen Chen. Wow, Shen Chen was here? This guy has been getting too famous recently. He caused quite a stir in Zhengzhou and made a big joke in Kyoto. Late at night, all the famous doctors in Kyoto gathered to save his life. He actually went to be interviewed by Yu Xia. It ended up in a big mess, causing Yu Xia to stay at home and not go to work, feeling too embarrassed. Everyone who saw him couldn't help but want to laugh. This guy looked quite handsome, naturally exuding a sense of humor. Shin Shen greeted everyone with a smile. Director Yen, I want Shin Shen to be an audience member this time, watching us host below, is that okay? Yen Bingbing said softly, looking embarrassedly at Yen Guangming. Sure. That's great, I also want him to be a guest appearance. If he appears in front of the audience, our popularity will skyrocket. Yan Guangming's eyes toward Shen Chen were full of enthusiasm. This kid is now synonymous with traffic, if he becomes a guest, the whole internet might explode. Yan Bingbing suddenly broke out in a cold sweat. Director Yan, you are really ignorant and fearless. If you let him go up as a guest, he might completely ruin the pre-match hosting. Maybe Shen Chen will make a big move again, and the entire Olympic Games will be in chaos. No need, no need. Let him watch us from below. Yen Bingbing quickly refused the director's kindness and went to prepare with the two guests. The others had to hold back their laughter and get busy with their own tasks. The final of the women's air rifle competition is about to start in half an hour. After half an hour, they will be the first to start the pre-match warm-up and introduce the participants of this final. Once the competition starts, they will provide real-time commentary on the performance of the participants to enhance the atmosphere. If Dasha wins the first gold medal, they will immediately announce the victory speech to elevate the atmosphere. So the time right now is very tight. Shen Shen saw that it had nothing to do with him, so he stood there watching them with interest. He walked over to the two commentators and joined in the fun. The two of them were eating boxed meals nervously discussing the script. When they saw him coming, they both smiled. Shen Lao, have you eaten? Commentator Han Yu tossed a boxed meal to him. Shin Shen caught it and said, he he, not yet, invite me to eat. Go ahead, it's from the station. Shen Lao, do you know, I'm your fan, later after the show, let's find a place to have a good drink. Han Yu had watched Shin Chen's live broadcast several times and greatly admired his selfless acts of saving people. Sure. Shin Chen chuckled and sat down next to them, opening the meal to eat. Ding, the system has detected that the host's food has been infected by rotavirus, but since the host is immune to this toxin, it will no longer affect the host. 
Shen Shen was halfway through his meal when he suddenly heard the system prompt in his mind, startling him. Oh no, something big is about to happen. I'm fine because I've eaten. But you two commentators, you've both finished your meals. Rotavirus causes acute gastroenteritis and no other harm. But the two commentators who were about to host the women's air rifle final were affected, making Shen Shen feel that something was not right. He looked at Han Yu, bro, um, can I ask, how many commentators are usually on the sports channel? Han Yu had just finished his meal and wiped his mouth. There are quite a few. Almost every sports event has two to three commentators, and experienced seniors can even handle multiple roles, commentating on several events. Shen Lao, why are you asking this? Shen Shen breathed a sigh of relief, that's good, that's good. I just suddenly thought, what if a commentator suddenly falls ill, wouldn't that be a problem? Han Yu chuckled at his words. He he, how could that happen, we start preparing for the commentary tasks a month in advance, and pay attention to our health, how could we suddenly get sick? Besides, even if someone falls ill suddenly, there are substitute commentators. Like him, my colleague Zhang Qing, he is the substitute commentator for this competition. Han Yu pointed to the other commentator and laughed. Shen Chen. All right. It seems that Yin Bingbing hosting this time is going to be a disaster. He was about to remind the two of them whether they should take some anti-inflammatory medicine as a precaution. The pre-match hosting had already begun. Han Yu and Zhang Qing gestured to Shen Chen to keep quiet, then went to their respective positions. Shen Chen decided not to speak anymore. Let's take it step by step. It's just a live broadcast, no one will die. On the small stage in front of him, Yen Bingbing had already started chatting with two experts. At the same time, the live broadcast began, and millions of netizens flocked in. The fifth channel of China National Radio also started the live broadcast. Viewer 1, ha, it started. I took half a day off just to watch this match. Can Da Xiao win the first gold medal or not? Viewer 2, I didn't take the day off, but I'm slacking off at work, sincerely wishing our country to win the first gold at the Olympics. Viewer 3, wow, Sister Bingbing looks so beautiful today, I wonder if Xin Lao is watching, if he knows that Sister Bingbing is having a good time with two men, will he be jealous, so scary. Viewer 4, upstairs, cut it out, today all eyes are on the first gold at the Olympics, don't stare at Sister Bingbing's face. Viewer 5, there's no way, with Sister Bingbing here, who has the heart to watch the match. Everyone joked around for a while and started paying attention to the pre-match program. In half an hour, the women's 10-meter air rifle final of the World Olympic Games is about to begin. Yen Bingbing is introducing the guests present. Hello everyone, I am the host Yen Bingbing. You are watching the broadcast of the women's 10-meter air rifle final of the Olympic Games on the Central Radio and Television Sports Channel. We are delighted to have invited former Olympic champions, Mr. Lu Ziyu and Ms. Zhang Yujie, the champions of the 10-meter air rifle event. The two guests smiled at the camera. Both of them are former champions who have retired and were honored to be invited to participate in the final broadcast. Yen Bingbing noticed that they were a bit nervous and started a conversation with a smile. Yu Jia, you won the first gold medal for Daya at the Rio Olympics four years ago, bringing glory to the country. I remember I was still in school at that time, and I was so excited watching that competition. Zhang Yu Jia smiled shyly, thank you, it was also a stroke of luck. The world's number one player made a mistake and didn't make it to the finals, which allowed me, ranked second, to benefit. Yen Bingbing smiled sweetly, showing her dimples. And Coach Ziyu, at the Eagle National Olympics eight years ago, after the regrettable loss in the women's air rifle event, you withstood immense pressure and won the first gold medal for Daya, which is still fresh in my memory. Lu Ziyu modestly smiled and didn't say much. Although both the first gold for Daya and the first gold at the Olympics are gold medals, their significance is vastly different. In terms of reputation, winning the first gold at the Olympics would bring immense fame worldwide. In terms of rewards, just receiving rewards from the country, province, city, and sponsor companies could amount to tens of millions. As far as he knew, his old friend UJ gained fame and won battle and ultimately received over 12 million in prize money and rewards. Seeing the two becoming less nervous, Yen Bingbing began discussing today's competition. Both champions, you are veterans in shooting events. Let's talk about today's women's 10-meter air rifle final. The two nodded. Lu Ziyu spoke first, as we all know, the Olympic events usually start with the women's air rifle and air pistol, which has been a long-standing tradition. This year is no different, with the women's 10-meter air rifle final about to begin, crowning the first champion of this Olympic Games. Zhang Yuji added, why is this competition drawing the attention of the entire nation? Because our Daya athlete Yi Chanchan has successfully entered the finals and will compete against seven athletes from various countries. Yes, indeed. 
Yen Bingbing said with a smile, Chan Chan is actually my junior, I heard she is only 20 years old this year and it's her first time participating in the Olympics. I hope she can win the first gold for Daya. However, the two guests exchanged a glance and showed a hint of a bitter smile. It might not be easy, besides Chan Chan, the other competitors are experienced athletes from various countries, with strong capabilities. Chan Chan is ranked 7th in the finals, and her performance is not very stable. Nevertheless, we sincerely wish her the best. The two guests preemptively managed the expectations of the national audience. If the competition didn't go well, people wouldn't be too disappointed. That's how sports competitions are, a slight difference can make a huge impact, especially in shooting events where a zero. One point difference can be a world of difference. After they finished speaking, there was a brief silence in the broadcast room. It was supposed to be Yen Bingbing's turn to continue the conversation, but the other side remained silent. The two guests looked at her strangely. Oh, both of them were puzzled. Bingbing, you are really bold, showing affection in front of the national audience. She stared at the position below the opposite stage, pouted, and playfully wiggled her cute little nose. Finally, she stuck out her tongue mischievously. La la la. The national audience and internet users were stunned to see this scene. Bing bing, what are you doing? Please, don't make such a cute and seductive expression. Even tough guys can be melted by her cuteness. Please, can you stop hurting us like this? Below the stage, the director and the station manager Yen Guangming almost fainted on the spot. Following Yen Bingbing's gaze, they found Shen Chen. This guy was making faces and winking at Yen Bingbing. Lang, what are you doing? We are live on air. The director hurried over and patted Shen Chen. Shen Chen was just joking with Yen Bingbing and was startled by the reminder. Damn, how could I forget it's live? He quickly sat up straight, director, can you delete this segment and not broadcast it? Bro, what do you think? The director begged him in despair, we have dog food for the next show, don't let the bro lose his job. Shin Shen felt embarrassed and touched his nose, no, no, don't worry, I will be absolutely serious, but, it's not really his fault for starting at first. Clearly, it was Yen Bingbing who wasn't paying attention to the guest's speech, and when the camera wasn't on her, she secretly winked at Shin Shen. Shin Shen just instinctively started teasing her. Yen Bingbing also realized something was wrong at this moment, turned her head and saw the camera pointing at her, and was startled. Ahem, okay, let's continue, where were the two guests? Everyone, netizens were already going crazy. Oh my, who, who can tell me, who is making faces at Bingbing? I'll reward 100 rockets. Whoever can provide clues about who is below the stage, I will reward him with 1 million in cash. That's right, I'll add another million, find the person and teach him a lesson, who is teasing our goddess. The curiosity of the national audience and netizens was drawn to the mysterious person below the stage. Han Yu and Zhang Qing, the two commentators, saw the comments in the live broadcast room on the big screen and chuckled. Xiao Zhang, do you think if we take a photo of Shen Lao Gunao, we can sell it for 1 million? Han Gu, it's 2 million, no, someone has raised the price, 3 million. Oh my, with just one photo, we'll be financially free. Ha ha, the two teased each other, relaxing their tense mood. The final commentary was about to begin. But suddenly, Han Yu's face tightened, and he felt a storm brewing in his stomach. Gurgle. Put. Zhang Qing immediately covered his nose, Han Gu, what smell are you smelling? Han Yu couldn't speak, grabbed a tissue from the table, and ran to the bathroom. What smell, you almost became a jet fighter, Han Gu. Hearing this, Zhang Qing was about to laugh at him, but suddenly his stomach also started gurgling. Oh my, wait for me, Han Gu. I'm about to start too. The two ran to the bathroom together, holding their legs. Yen Guangming, seeing this, was half scared to death. What are you two doing? The match is about to start in 10 minutes. What are they doing? Of course, they are venting their pent-up energy. Han Yu and Zhang Qing couldn't come out for a while. Xin Shen quickly walked over, Yen Tai, go call the doctor, they have contracted the norovirus and have acute gastroenteritis. Ah, Yen Guangming was shocked, grabbed Xin Shen and asked urgently, Xiao Shen, how do you know, how did they suddenly get gastroenteritis? Xin Shen pointed to the box lunch that had not been taken away. It should be the box lunch that is not hygienic, who ate the box lunches that were delivered this time? Box lunch? Yen Guangming was stunned, murmuring, it's just you three. Others have eaten at home, only these two bachelors were too lazy to cook. Wait, Xiao Xin, you also ate the box lunch, how come you're fine? Xin Xin smiled, before he could speak, Yen Guangming had already realized. Right, whoever has a problem, you can't have a problem, how could I forget? He patted his head, didn't care to say more, and hurriedly asked the assistant to find a doctor. He ran to the bathroom to check, but before he could enter, he heard crying and shouting inside. 
Yan Guangming was immediately flustered. You too, come out quickly. Is spraying more important than commentary? Han Yu's pleading voice came from inside, Yen Tai, it's not that I don't want to come out, I can't even stand up, you don't know. He didn't finish his sentence, couldn't continue, and started shouting again. Why is it so painful? Substitute commentator Zhang Qing was the same, but he was a bit stronger, gritting his teeth and keeping quiet. By the time the on-site doctor arrived, the two of them were already exhausted. Three minutes later, the two of them finally received intravenous fluids. The on-site doctor said to Yen Guangming, Yen Tai, quickly call for backup, they can't do the commentary. Why? Yen Guangming was suddenly frightened. Even if Xiao Han hangs on the floor, he still needs to do the commentary, he won't show his face anyway. The on-site doctor gestured towards the room. Go see, it's a rotavirus, they're vomiting and having diarrhea too severely, they can't speak clearly, how can they do the commentary? Yen Guangming quickly went in. Yen Tai, we have a problem, we urgently need. Commentary. DUI, Fu Wamen Shi Lai, Wei Yi Kui. Both of them were weak, and most importantly, their voices were hoarse and low. Indeed, speaking in three-word phrases, they couldn't be understood. What can they commentate on like this? Yan Guangming looked anxious but couldn't do anything. He quickly went out and shouted for the director and assistant to find someone to take over. Although the commentary for shooting events requires expertise, there is always a script. As long as you are quick-witted, reading from the script is not much different. Moreover, the other commentators are seasoned veterans, switching to another event for commentary is not a big deal. But the director had a mournful look, Yen Tai, it's the Olympic Games now, all the commentators are on rotating shifts, except for these two, no one else is in the studio. Ah, Yen Guangming was stunned, realizing the situation. The Olympic Games don't care about your working hours, often having matches late at night or in the early morning. To ensure their performance, all commentators adjust their working hours according to the match schedule. Except for these two, no one else had arrived in the studio. Yen Guangming waved his hand anxiously, then quickly called him. Get two people to take over, Lao Wang, Lao Lu, yes, these two are good at improvising, just call them. The director was almost in tears, the match starts in five minutes, it's too late. Considering the traffic on Jingdu Road, no one can make it in less than an hour. Then call the host over, as long as they can read the script. The assistant on the side said hesitantly, Yen Tai, we've informed the other hosts, but they are not in the studio, two are out for training, two are on official duties, and three have interview tasks. There really was no one available. Otherwise, they wouldn't have asked Yen Bingbing to fill in as the pre-match host. Yen Guangming was getting desperate. He came from an administrative background, if he had experience as a host or commentator, he would have taken over. His Mandarin was not even up to the standard of a gatekeeper. Then who among you will go up, quickly? It's time to test you. Several directors and assistants all stepped back. Don't joke around, Yen Tai, we have other tasks to do. Yes, I need to control the pace, switch between screens. I'm responsible for the cue cards, managing the dynamic retrieval of player information, I can't spare the time. Everyone had their own reasons, and no one dared to go up. This was no joke. This was the first match of the Olympic Games, and the whole country was watching. If something went wrong, who could bear that responsibility? Yen Guangming looked at Yen Bingbing and the two guests on the small stage, really wanting to pull them over to host. However, Reason told him that he couldn't. Besides the on-site competition, the off-site discussion segment is particularly important. Especially since Yen Bingbing is the face of the show, removing her would cause a large number of viewers to leave the live stream. In addition, the two guests cannot possibly agree to start commentating, as there was no prior communication. After all, the responsibility is too great. He thought and thought, getting so angry that he shouted, with so many people on our team, isn't there anyone who's free and not busy right now? Free idle people? Yes. Everyone looked towards Shin Chen in unison. Shin Chen was pacing back and forth with his hands behind his back, suddenly feeling a bunch of eyes on him. He was startled. What are you all looking at me for? Yen Guangming also looked at Shin Chen, then shook his head the next moment. Have Shin Chen be the commentator? No way. How could Shin Chen replace the commentator to commentate on the entire game? He's not a professional sports host, nor did he graduate from a related field. Letting him commentate would just be nonsense. Yen Guangming had to think of other ways. Yen team, there's only a minute and a half left. Hurry up and make a decision. The director shouted again. With 90 seconds left, the screen was about to switch to the live competition scene, and all the participating athletes had already started entering. Yen Guangming gritted his teeth and stomped his foot, rushing to Shen Shen. Xiao Shen, quickly, give me a tongue twister. Ah, hurry up. Seeing that Yen was about to eat him alive, Shen Shen blurted out, 
There's a kid named Xiao Du, who goes out to buy vinegar and cloth. Hey, his Mandarin was spot on. Yen Guangming's face lit up, and then, keep going. Shen Shen shrugged, Xiao Du finds it too troublesome, I'm not going. Yen Guangming, underscore, alright, it's you. Come on, quickly give me a duo performance. Without hesitation, he dragged Shen Shen to the commentary desk. Yen team, what are you trying to do? What am I trying to do? I want you to commentate. You've taken out two of my key players as soon as you arrived. At this critical moment, if you don't step up, who will? Shin Chen was dumbfounded. Me? I've never been a commentator before. Aren't you afraid I'll mess it up for you? Yen Guangming handed him the script and pushed him into the chair. Just read the script, hold on for 30 minutes, and someone will replace you. Shin Chen looked at the script in his hand and weakly asked, Can I refuse? No. Yen Guangming shouted impatiently and put the headset on Shin Chen. Immediately, the director's voice came through the headset. Brother Shin, it's okay, just hold on for 30 minutes. The script is detailed, just don't read it wrong. Shin Shen opened the script, looking confused. The director's serious voice came through the headset. Attention everyone, we have 10 seconds left to switch to the final scene. Everyone, cooperate with Shin Chen and complete this commentary. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 inch start. 1 minute earlier. Yen Bingbing, who had been hosting the warm-up, also noticed the situation below the stage. The commentator had fallen ill? Before she could react, she saw Shin Shin being dragged to the commentary desk by Yen Guangming. Yen Bingbing's heart raced. This couldn't be a joke, right? How could they let Shin Shen commentate on the air rifle finals? Not to mention whether Shin Shen had the mental fortitude for it, just his unlucky nature alone should disqualify him. What if something goes wrong? Would they make Shin Shen take on that responsibility? Idiot! Are you crazy? How can you agree to everything? Yen Bingbing's heart was now fully focused on Shin Chen, but her professionalism kept her sitting firmly in her seat. Bingbing, the competition is about to start. Let's look forward to Yi Chan Chen fully showcasing her skills and winning the first gold. On the side, Zhang Yujie saw that Yen Bingbing was a bit distracted again and reminded her with a sentence. Hmm. Yen Bingbing quickly adjusted her state and said with full emotion, that's right, the so-called nine turn cinnabar is difficult to obtain while the refined gold is just ordinary iron. Let us wish that Yi Chan Chan will soar to the sky without hesitation and make a stunning appearance when she does. As she finished her last sentence, the scene shifted to the finals of the Sakura country. Eight athletes slowly walked to the competition area, beginning their final preparations. The voice outside the scene synchronized, Hello, audience friends, this is CCTV5 broadcasting the live coverage of the Olympic sports competition for you. A steady male voice promptly sounded, up next is the women's 10-meter air rifle final. I will be providing the full commentary for everyone. I am the commentator. Shen Chen. Boom. As soon as Shen Chen finished speaking, the netizens in the live broadcast room exploded. This voice sounds so familiar. The audience in front of the TV also paused at the same time. Wow. How can one get goosebumps in broad daylight? This voice sounds so emotional. Yen Guangming, the director, assistant staff, Yen Bingbing, and two guests were all stunned. No one expected that Shin Chen would speak with the voice of a professional announcer. Steady, powerful, and full of emotion. In terms of strict requirements, Shin Chen's performance can be considered exemplary. The audience and netizens reacted at the same time. Commentator, Shin Chen? Ha! Huh? Is it the Shin Lao who we know? Not possible, right? Could it be that the great brother Shin Chen has changed his career? Of course, of course, it sounds like the introverted weirdo Shin Chen. Ha! Huh? I didn't expect that my brother Shin besides being an excellent daredevil anchor, could also be a guest commentator. The competition just got interesting. Did you all notice that Shin's voice sounds so good? Love it, love it, my idol Shin is indeed awesome. However, however, everyone should know what's coming next. What do I want to say? Ha, huh, dog head saves lives. I know, I know, there's something to look forward to in the competition. No, Shin Lao has a judgment. I just want to ask the eight contestants, are you nervous? Just ask if you're nervous. No. Nervous. Ha ha ha. For a moment, the atmosphere in the live broadcast room changed. The originally serious and tense atmosphere began to turn infinitely joyful. Yen Guangming saw the pleasant atmosphere in the live broadcast room, the TV ratings were normal, and he wiped off a cold sweat. Shin Chen, you're doing great. It seems that enduring for 30 minutes is no problem. Han Yu and Zhang Qing, who had been on edge, also breathed a sigh of relief when they saw that Shin Chen did not falter. Shang Laogua, come down and I'll treat you to a drink. All right, I'm in. The two joked with each other, hoarse voices, and began to plan Shin Chen's drinking session. As for Yen Bingbing, she seemed completely unconcerned, 
her eyes sparkling as she looked at Chen Chen. Bing Bing, is he your boyfriend? He's really amazing. Zhang Yujie joked on the side. Lu Ziyu also smiled and said, Bing Bing, you as the host, Shen Chen is the commentator, the finals broadcast has become a husband and wife team, this dog food is too much. Yen Bing Bing blushed instantly, don't, don't say that, I, I haven't agreed to him yet. Ha ha, the two burst into laughter, watching the situation at the scene. Shen Chen had already started introducing the participating athletes. The women's 10 meter air rifle final is about to begin. Let me introduce the situation of the eight contestants. Shen Shen looked at the script and read it word for word. On the eighth lane is the contestant Jin Xingxi from Kimchi Country, she has achieved. On the seventh lane is the contestant Tahis from the Stars and Stripes Country. On the sixth lane is. Shen Shen's voice suddenly rose. On the second lane is our contestant Yi Chanxian from Daya, she just turned 20 this year, from Jiang Province, has won the championship in the national competition, the national games. As Shen Shen slowly introduced, everyone looked at the girl standing on the second lane. The only Daya contestant at the finals venue. Yi Chanxian seemed a bit nervous, glanced back, and waved her hand. Everyone saw that she was reassuring her coach, everything's okay. Everyone laughed and started cheering for her. Chanxian, come on, today you are the most beautiful girl in the arena. She is from our Jiang province, really proud of her. Looking forward to her performance, she must win. With Shen Chen's commentary, all the contestants were introduced, and the competition officially began. The final round adopts an elimination system, each person shoots 10 basic shots first, then starting from the 11th shot, every two shots eliminate one contestant until only the last two contestants remain. These two contestants each shoot two more shots to determine the champion and runner-up. So, Yi Chanxian must shoot at least 22 shots to have a chance to compete with her opponent. At this moment, the pressure on her is immense. But all her opponents are seasoned veterans, having participated in numerous world-class competitions and winning awards left and right. While Yi Chanxian is standing on the Olympic venue for the first time, facing a group of enemies, she can only grit her teeth and charge forward. The competition begins. The first round of 10 rapid shots quickly produced results. Yi Chanxian performed very steadily, ranking first on the scoreboard with a score of 104. 9. The second place is the contestant Hazer from Ruetu. The third place is. Seeing this result, the online viewers and audience watching the competition cheered. As the halftime break began, the live broadcast finally switched back to the central broadcasting studio. Yen Bingbing and two guests smiled and commented on the performances of the contestants from various countries just now. Yen Guangming and the assistant director were checking the live broadcast data and viewership ratings. Only Shen Shen was confused. Because the script was read up to this point, and it was finished. That's right. Han Yu and Zhang Qing's script was prepared only up to the beginning of the 10 rapid shots, without further preparation. After all, after the 10 shots, the elimination round begins, and no one can be sure who will be eliminated. Both of them are seasoned commentators for shooting competitions and can easily handle the upcoming matches. But Shen Chen is not. He can speak fluently and energetically, but to comment on each round of elimination, he struggled. Without a script, he has never paid attention to shooting competitions, how can he comment? To put it bluntly, except for Yi Chanxian, he still hasn't recognized all seven contestants. Face blindness is incurable. Yen, come over here. He turned off the microphone and waved to Yen Guangming. Old Yen walked over, patted Shen Chen's shoulder, showing encouragement. You're amazing. You speak as well as those old experts. I'll have the assistant get you a chicken leg later. Come on, Yen, where is the commentator? I can't continue like this. Yen Guangming was stunned, then realized the problem. The elimination round was about to start, and Shen Shen had no script to comment. He quickly asked the assistant, who made a few calls and said it would take another 20 minutes. This. Yen Guangming looked at Shen Shen, showing a shy smile, little Shen. Look at your girlfriend, Bing Bing. She's up there talking confidently and gracefully. How can a man like you be weaker than her? Young man, cheer up. I believe in you. With that, Yen Guangming made an excuse and hurried away. Shen Shen, seeing him run off was so angry he almost overturned the commentary table. Without a script, it was all improvised on the spot. Do you want me to perform a tongue twister for you? Before he could come up with a solution, the competition started again. Shen Shen, seeing the situation, also made up his mind. If necessary, he would just say whatever came to mind. He had seen it all. The first stage began, with two shots to eliminate the 8th place contestant. Luckily, Yi Chanxian performed steadily, ranking 5th on the scoreboard after 2 shots, with little risk. Shen Shen praised her according to his previous words, finally getting through it. 
The other contestants finished one by one, leaving only the last one. Jin Xingxi, she had to take the final shot to decide whether she or the seventh place contestant, Park Xianchan, would stay or leave. Both were from Kimchi country. At this point, ranked seventh and eighth respectively, one of them was bound to be eliminated. At this point, regardless of their own country's affairs, netizens began to watch the excitement. They even happily commented on the two contestants' looks. Hey, everyone, who do you think is prettier, Jin Xingxi or Park Xianchan? They're both okay, but I think Park Xianchan is a bit prettier, at least she's had some work done. Come on, I still prefer Jin Xingxi without any work done, look at her figure, her face, that. Stop, stop, if we keep discussing this, we won't pass the review. Ha, huh? then let's support Jin Xingxi to advance and let Park Xianchan be eliminated, strongly against plastic surgery. The netizens joked and laughed. Xin Shan saw the comments from netizens and chuckled. He was also a senior member of the Looks Association, naturally supporting Jin Xingxi to advance. Since there were no contestants from his own country, he had no reservations. He loudly said, everyone, pay attention, Jin Shengxi's final shot will decide whether she or Park Xianchan stays or leaves. Jin Shengxi is a seasoned veteran, with strong mental toughness. Look at her graceful. Cough. Steady posture, sharp gaze, I believe she will perform exceptionally well, hitting the highest level shot and advancing to the second round. Jin Shengxi, shoot for me. Xin Shen shouted to cheer her on. The netizens burst into laughter at his words. You're blatantly judging people by their appearance. Under the guise of commentary, you're just looking at beautiful women, you're such an old LSP. Everyone's attention was focused on Jin Xingxi's final shot. Bang! Jin Xingxi fired the gun. But then, she stood there in a daze. What's going on? Why hasn't a bullet hole appeared on the target yet? Jin Xingxi was dumbfounded, not knowing what was happening. Two referees stood up from the judging seat and quickly ran to the target, inspecting it. With a wave of their hand, they announced, Jin Xingxi missed the target. Zero points. Losing the chance to advance, she was eliminated. National netizens. After a moment of silence, laughter filled the air. Ha, Xin Lao Ji got slapped in the face online, pa 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 pa. Lang Ji, what are you doing? You just jinxed my Jin Xingxi with one sentence. I can only praise Lao Ji, you're so poisonous. Xin Shen was speechless, this has nothing to do with me. At the same time, a series of system prompts rang in his mind. Ding, system prompt, host immune to the final item, jinxing. This time, immune to toxins, 100 slash 100. Immunity details. The fifth major calamity has been overcome. The system begins evaluation. Temporary activation of side quest segment. Host can choose to participate, with additional rewards upon completion. Side quest details. Use professional jinxing commentary to help Yi Chan Chan shoot down the first gold, bringing glory to Dasha. Does the host choose to complete the side quest? Xin Shen laughed. Why even ask? Of course, he had to. Although the live broadcast room was filled with joy, the atmosphere on the competition field was extremely tense. Yet Chan Chan's face was solemn, feeling an unparalleled pressure. In the just concluded first round of the promotion match, Kim Song Yi from Kimchi Country unexpectedly missed the target directly and left the field in disappointment. This made the young rookie start to doubt herself. Kim Song Yi was a bronze medalist in the previous Olympic Games, yet she couldn't even make it through the first round. Could it also be due to psychological pressure? Yet Chan Xian turned her head and looked at Kim Song Yi's dejected look, inadvertently adding to her mental burden. Will I also miss the target? Should. Maybe, I won't, right? I've fired tens of thousands of bullets, and I can count the times I missed on one hand. But, what if? They, seven of them, have probably fired millions of shots, yet they still missed the target. While Ye Chan Xian was lost in thought, the referee's whistle sounded from the judge's stand, signaling the start of the second round of elimination. The commentator, Xin Long, perked up and began announcing the scores on the field. Currently leading is the Xionghua player De La Jiawa with an absolute advantage of 147. 6 points. Second is Rueta Hazer from Rueta, with 147. 1 points. Third is Taxasai from the Stars and Stripes country, with 146. 9 points. Fourth is still Xionghua's player Ajianaza with 146. 8 points. Fifth is Dasha's player Ye Chanxian with 146. 7 points. 6th is. After Xin Long finished, he frowned as he looked at Ye Chan Shan's ranking. 5th place, trailing the 1st place De La Jiawa by 0. 9 points. This is not a good sign. He had learned the rules of shooting competitions through his commentary. The highest score in shooting competitions is not 10 points, but 10. 9 points. Moreover, players must hit a target the size of a 1 yuan coin from 10 meters away, hitting the bullseye. Not just hitting the bullseye, 
but hitting a point right in the center of the bullseye. The size of this point is roughly equivalent to a black head on the nose, indicating how difficult it is. If only Ye Chan Chan makes a mistake and scores below 10 points, she is basically out. It seems that helping Ye Chan Chan win the first gold medal in the Olympic Games is not that easy. After all, it's not just a competition between two people, the other six players are unlikely to all perform poorly. Shen Long fell into contemplation. Meanwhile, in the live broadcast room, Yen Bingbing and two guests also noticed Ye Chan Chan's nervousness. Zhang Yujie frowned, Chan Chan is still too young, easily influenced by others. Wang Ziyu added, yes, Kim Song Yi's miss directly made Chan Chan start doubting herself. Once there is self-doubt, it's fatal in the final. After hearing the two's words, Yen Bingbing also felt heavy-hearted. The second round of elimination began. After the top four players took their shots, except for the third and fourth swapping positions, the first and second places still maintained a lead over the rest. It was Ye Chan Chan's turn. She began to focus, no longer letting her mind wander, and stared firmly at the target 10 meters away. Who? Who? I can do it, this is my mission. It's the dream I've been fighting for continuously for eight years. From the city team, to the provincial team, and then to the national team, how much hardship have I endured, how much suffering have I endured, all for this day? Chan Chan, come on. You can do it. She pulled the trigger. Bang. The bullet shot out. In the next moment, Shen Long shouted, 10. 8 points. Our player Ye Chan Chan scored an excellent 10. 8 points. This shot has put her far ahead of 6th place, giving us hope for the final. Shen Long laughed heartily, not hiding his excitement at all. Ye Chan Chan's score climbed to 4th place, and Xiongwe's player Ajianaza dropped to 5th. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. It was now the turn of the 6th placed player, Hannah from Bualan, to compete against the 7th placed player, Pu Ching San from Kimchi Country. The atmosphere relaxed again. Netizens started joking about Shen Chen. Brother Shen, ha, huh, this time it's your turn to say who will be eliminated. Yes, yes. You go first, you said you're awesome, brother, we support you. Alright, stop messing around, it was just a joke. How could Shen Chen eliminate anyone? You guys are too superstitious about Shen Chen, this is not a game, can't you be a bit rational? A group of people kneeling and licking Shen Chen every day, really have nothing better to do. Ha, huh? dare to question our brother Shen. Shen Chen's diehard fans were furious and ready to retaliate. Shen Chen started commenting. Audience friends, although Jean Xingxi accidentally missed the target, her junior sister Park Xianchan did not give up, bravely took over her sister's position and became seventh. Netizens laughed, this guy's mouth is still so sharp. He continued, I believe that at this moment, she is definitely not influenced by her sister, calm and composed, ready to bring glory to kimchi country. Ha! Huh? Everyone could tell, he's going to eliminate kimchi country. Kimchi country really makes you hate it. Sure enough, Shen Chen made the final judgment. I believe that as long as Park Xianchan performs normally, she can make player Baran exit in disappointment. Park Xianchan, go for it, I believe in you. Bang! Just as Shen Chen finished speaking, Park Xianchan fired. Everyone widened their eyes and laughed after seeing the referee score. 9. 1 points. Still performing normally? Clearly, it was extremely abnormal. Park Xianchan, upon seeing the score, was so angry that she threw the gun on the ground. She was eliminated. Netizens exploded again. Brother Shen's toxic elimination skill worked again. Two kimchi country players in a row were eliminated under Shen Chen's encouragement. Netizens burst into laughter. Even in the studio, Yen Guangming and the directors were at a loss. This guy's mouth is too venomous. Praise someone, and they get eliminated. Yen Bingbing was already covering her mouth on the small stage, her body starting to shake. And the two guests were already laughing uncontrollably. We apologize, we have been professionally trained. No matter how funny it is, we will not laugh. Unless we can't help it. Players from the six countries, please, shut up. Shen Shen looked helpless, everyone, please don't laugh. I'm also doing this for Dasha. Then, the next two rounds of the competition proceeded smoothly. Shen Shen no longer spoke randomly, just made a few comments after they finished shooting. Yi Chan Chan also withstood the strong psychological pressure, maintaining a normal level of performance. She successively eliminated the 6th placed player Hana from Baran and the 5th placed player Agonaza from Xiangwa. At this point, only 4 players remained on the field. They are, 1st place, player Deligia from Xiangwa, 189. 3 points. 2nd place, player Hazer from Ruetu, 188. 9 points. 3rd place, player Tahis from Xinghua, 188. 7 points. 4th place, player Yi Chanchan from Dasha, 188. 6 points. The battle for medals began. 
As long as they persisted for one more round, regardless of the result, they would at least secure a bronze medal. Yi Qianqian was only zero. One point behind Taiyi's from Xinghua, maintaining a normal performance, she had hoped to enter the medal battle. The top two players finished shooting, still holding the first and second positions. The third player, Tahis, took the stage. Shen Shen hadn't spoken yet, but he noticed that she seemed a bit nervous and flustered. Before he could even make a toxic comment, she fired a shot that seemed quite uncertain. It seemed like she wanted to end it quickly, shooting in a hurry. As expected, the result came out. 10. Zero points. She had already given up on herself. The second shot was even worse. 9. 8 points. Being eliminated seemed to be a foregone conclusion, but Tahis breathed a sigh of relief, finally liberated. On the side, Yi Qianqian saw the situation, seemingly unaffected by her, just pursed her lips and fired her own two shots. 10. 3 points. 10. 5 points. She smoothly eliminated Tahis and entered the finals. A hint of a smile finally appeared on the girl's face. Stable. Netizens and audience cheered. Yi Qianqian even performed exceptionally well, climbing to the second position on the scoreboard, surpassing the Ritu player Hazer by zero. One points. Dashia seemed to see the hope of the first gold medal. Xin Chen breathed a sigh of relief, sincerely happy for Yi Qianqian. This girl, in a foreign land, relying on her own belief, managed to enter the final round. And being able to enter the finals, it can be said that it has nothing to do with Xin Chen, completely achieved through her own efforts. However, no one knows that Yi Qianqian is on the verge of a mental breakdown. She felt a wave of emptiness throughout her body. Too unreal. I actually made it to the finals. And ranked second? The gold medal is only four shots away from me. But why do I feel more and more uncertain? My hands are already covered in sweat, my eyes are dry and gritty. Heartbeat continues to accelerate, courage is rapidly diminishing. I really feel like ending this game quickly. Indeed, the pressure on the Olympic stage is too great. At this moment, the cheering crowd, including the coaches in the arena, did not notice Yi Qianqian's slightly trembling hands. Xin Chen noticed, furrowing his brow deeply. This girl is about to collapse. What should I do? Finally, the battle for the bronze medal began. The current scores are, first place, Xionghua player Dilijua, 210. 5 points. Second place, Dasha player Yi Qianqian, 210. 1 points. Third place, Rita player Hazer, 210. 0 points. The three players are closely matched, all reaching the final decisive moment. The expressions of the three are different at this moment. Dilijua, the Xionghua player, maintained extreme calm throughout the game, although she has been leading by a large margin, she has never shown any joy. Steady to the point of being unbearable. She is a veteran of the two realms, last time she lost to Dasha player Zhang Yujie by a margin of zero. One point, four years later, she is determined to win the gold medal. Meanwhile, Yi Qianqian is very flustered at this moment, the sweat on her face and the constantly fidgeting fingers show her nervousness. As for Hazer, the Rita player temporarily ranked third, she looked at Yi Qianqian with a sneer, as if she didn't care about the Dasha player at all. Little girl, if you want to compete for the gold medal, let your senior sisters come, there might be some hope. You, stop dreaming. Her contemptuous eyes constantly remind Yi Qianqian. Hurry up and shoot, finish and go home, don't miss your flight back home. Yi Qianqian naturally felt her gaze, feeling even more flustered. The shooting began. Dilijua continued to play steadily and finally scored 231. 1 points. While Yi Qianqian, influenced by Hazer, only scored 230. 5 points. The girl showed extreme self-blame and self-pity, widening the gap with the first place. When Hazer saw this, she smiled even more smugly, took aim, and fired the first shot. 10. 7 points. Hazer closed the gap to 220. 7 points, only 9. 8 points behind Yi Qianqian. As long as she casually shoots again, even if she scores 9. 9 points, she can completely shatter Yi Qianqian's dream of the championship. Shatter the dream of the first gold medal for the 1. 4 billion people of Dashia. He he, wanting to win the first gold medal of the Olympics, did you ask me, Hazer? She smirked as she raised the gun and aimed at the target. In the live broadcast room, everyone was already excited. Damn it, what kind of look is that Hazer giving? Why is she smiling? What's so funny? Does she think she's great? Shen Lao, hurry up. Beat her, it's too infuriating. This person is simply insulting the spirit of competition. What qualifications does she have to look down on Chan Chan? However, talk is talk, and everyone's hearts have already sunk. Hazer still has one shot, only nine. Eight points behind Yi Chan Chan. As long as she performs normally and scores over 10 points easily, she can shatter Yi Chanqian's dream of being a champion, shattering all her efforts. 
Yi Chan Chan, could it be that she really stopped at the top three? In the studio, Yan Bingbing dared not look again, afraid of seeing the girl cry. Zhang Yujie and Lu Ziyu also sighed. Indeed, there are no miracles in the arena. Yi Chan Chan, as a newcomer, has already made it very difficult to come this far. Entering the finals has exceeded our expectations. Regardless of the outcome, our Chan Chan has already given her all. That's right, give her another four years, at the Barcelona Olympics, she will definitely bring glory to our country. The two began to lay the groundwork for the upcoming finale. Hazer raised her air rifle and began to aim. Off screen, Shin Chan's commentary timely began. Dear audience, now shooting is the player Hazer from Ruetu. She is a three time Olympic veteran, eight time bronze medalist, known as the fierce warrior of the shooting world. Her advantage is being cautious, ensuring flawless shooting in every major competition. Without full confidence, she will not shoot. Ha! Huh? Everyone was stunned, not knowing what Shin La was going to say. Could it be another off target shot? It's not very realistic. Since the lesson from the Korean player, all participants have been extremely cautious. It's also unlikely for her to underperform. Hazer has been performing very steadily from the beginning to the finals, never scoring below 10 points. Although she can now easily secure victory with one shot, she is not a fool, many have failed due to carelessness. So, this shot, Hazer is bound to succeed. Shin Shen slowly said, look, Hazer is now very cautious, still aiming at the target 10 meters away. Because she knows this shot is crucial, as long as she scores 9. 9, she can compete for the championship. A high score can tie with Delijua. So she is very cautious, constantly searching for her shooting feel. Indeed, everyone could see that Hazer has adjusted her state to the best. Emitting a fierce killing intent, she stared at the target opposite, hesitating to shoot. Seeing this, Shin Chen took a deep breath and continued his commentary. In sports, one must always be cautious and careful to achieve ultimate victory. Veteran Hazer, for this shot to be brilliant, to show her level, to show herself, to show confidence, to show honor, to show victory. Shin Chen kept saying to show dozens of times without stopping. Netizens were all confused. Shin Lao, what are you trying to do? Do you have to keep saying it non-stop? Beep, beep, beep. Just as Shin Chen was almost out of breath, just as Hazer was about to pull the trigger. Suddenly, a whistle sounded in the arena. The referee blew the whistle. Hazer turned back blankly, not knowing what it meant. Three referees expressionlessly raised their signs and announced, Ruetu player Hazer, overtime, exceeded the competition rule of firing within 75 seconds. This shot's result is cancelled. Boom! Netizens were all dumbfounded. Shen Lao directly milked it to the extreme, milking this shot to overtime. Ha ha ha! After everyone realized, they began to laugh wildly, laughing off their jaws, laughing off their excess fat, laughing off their long-standing cold legs. Can't take it anymore, Shen Lao's poisonous milking skill is too powerful. Don't talk nonsense, clearly Hazer was too cautious, indeed without full confidence, she would not shoot. I can't do it anymore. Quickly find someone to help my second uncle who has been paralyzed for many years. After watching Shen Lao's commentary, he was so happy that he immediately walked briskly and ran into the target area. Shin Chen finally caught his breath and picked up a water cup to take a big sip of water. If he doesn't exceed the time limit, he will suffocate to death. 75 seconds. Only by continuously milking for 75 seconds can you ensure that this shot exceeds the time limit. Easy for me. But the result is also pleasing, successfully stopping the champion of Hazer who lacks competitive spirit. He smiled and said, let us congratulate Hazer from Ruetu for successfully winning the bronze medal once again maintaining the title of the fierce warrior of Ruetu. Netizens were once again in despair, this guy's mouth is too sharp. As Hazer left the field in disappointment, the championship round finally arrived. Come on, Shan Shan. Shin Shan looked at the girl on the screen and clenched his fist. On the field, Yi Chan Shan, whose results had almost been announced, suddenly raised her head. I actually made it to the next round. This is simply a miracle. Could it be that this is a chance for me to fight again given by God? She didn't have time to be happy before facing the cold gaze of Dili Jawa, Yi Chan Chan and she locked eyes for a second, and Yi Chan Chan voluntarily lowered her head. The opponent's aura was just too strong. The world's top shooting athlete was unexpectedly so full of killing intent. But why are my senior sisters so approachable? Can I beat her? Thinking of this, Yi Chan Chan's hands began to tremble uncontrollably. Her mentality had already collapsed. Seeing this, Dili Jawa shook her head, feeling a sense of loss. She regretted not being able to face her old rival Zhang Yujie in the finals. And now, facing an opponent with a collapsed mentality felt absurd. After Zhang Yujie retired, is there no one in Dasha who can ultimately compete with me? 
Perhaps, after winning the championship, I should retire too. Dili Jawa shook her head, put away her thoughts, and picked up the gun. At this moment, the eyes of the audience around the world were all focused on Dili Jawa. The results were about to be revealed. Will Xiongwa's Dili Jawa maintain her first place steadily, or will Dasha Zi Chan Chan stage a comeback? In the live broadcast room, netizens started urging Shen Chen to continue using his toxic milking skill, hoping to take down Dili Jawa in one go. But Shen Chen remained silent and did not do so. He looked at Dili Jawa, then at Yi Chan Chen, realizing clearly the gap between the two. Perhaps, in terms of shooting skills, both were top geniuses. But in terms of mentality and desire to win, Yi Chan Chen was far behind. Even if Dili Jawa made a mistake and let Yi Chan Chen win the championship, would it really be good for her? How can someone who hasn't even defeated themselves defeat their opponent? In the next match, she would still be in a panic and unable to win. So, until Dili Jawa took the shot, Shen Chen did not say a word. He wanted to see if Yi Chan Chen could pull herself together. After the first round of shooting, the score difference between the two was still zero. Six points. Dili Jawa, 241. Five points Yi Chan Chen, 240. Nine points. It seemed that Yi Chan Chen's hope of winning the championship was getting smaller and smaller. The second round began, and Dili Jawa didn't even aim much, just raised her hand and took a shot. 10. Two points. Her total score reached 251. Seven points, a full 10. Eight points ahead of Yi Chan Chen. After Dili Jawa finished, she sighed, stretched, and no longer paid attention to Yi Chan Chen's final shot. A difference of 10. Eight points. The overall situation was determined. She had already secured the first gold medal for Xionghua in the Olympic Games. It was now Yi Chan Chen's turn for the final shot. Yi Chan Chen raised the gun, but her mind was in chaos. The immense pressure came crashing down on her once again. It was as if there were 10,000 versions of herself in her mind, all saying, Give up, you can't succeed. Having won the silver medal is already great. You are still young, so strive harder in four years. Who knows, maybe Dili Jawa will retire by then. Yi Chan Chan's eyes began to blur. How she wished she could just fire a shot randomly to end this frustrating match. People all over the world have noticed this, whispering that the outcome is already decided. Before the shot was even fired, the contestant from Dasha had missed the target. Her heart was in complete chaos. Just then, Shen Shen suddenly spoke up. All the viewers in front of the TV and online audience in the live broadcast room heard his heartfelt words. As the ancient saying goes, support the leaning giant building and pull back the crazy waves from falling. Audience friends, we have finally come to the last shot, which will determine the champion. This reminds me of what the host Yen Bingbing said before the match. The so-called nine-turn cinnabar is hard to find, and managing fine gold is just ordinary iron. For years of hard training, only for today's fame, as long as all the Olympic athletes show their spirit of perseverance, I believe, they will eventually. The dragon roars, and the tiger responds. Boom! Everyone who heard Shen Chen's words couldn't help but feel a tingling sensation on their scalp. Yes, countless days and nights of hard training, all for this day, this moment, this second. Never give up until the last moment. As long as you show the spirit of perseverance, you will definitely be able to roar like a dragon, respond like a tiger. 10,000 people from Dasha shouted in their hearts at the same time. Yi Chan Chen, you must keep going. Click. Yi Chan Chen felt as if a thunderbolt had exploded in her mind. In the depths of her mind, she seemed to feel this power. She felt the encouragement from millions of people from Dasha. Her eyes slowly became firm, and her hands stopped trembling. Where her gaze fell, there was only a faint spot 10 meters away. Who? Hiss. Who? Hiss. With just two breaths, Yi Chan Chan entered a state of trance. All the sounds in the arena disappeared, leaving only her and the target in the whole world. The air gun in her hand began to tremble, and the bullets inside were ecstatic. This was the desire for victory. Bang! The final shot was finally fired. Ding ling ling. The bell signaling the end of the match rang throughout the arena. Louder than the bell was Shin Chen's cheers. 10. 9 points. Yi Chan Chen, the contestant from Dasha, scored a perfect 10. 9 in the final shot. She leads by 0. 1 point, defeating Dili Jawa. She has won the first gold medal for Dasha in the 32nd Olympic Games. She has fired up all the Dasha athletes with an inspiring first shot. The whole arena was in an uproar. The whole country was in an uproar. All the people watching the match from Dasha were moved to tears. No one had expected that at the last moment, Yi Chan Chan overcame her inner demons and scored a perfect shot. With a slight zero, one-point advantage, she made a comeback and won the final championship. 
In the broadcasting studio, Yen Bingbing was in tears, Lu Ziyu was in tears, and Zhang Yujie was in tears. Everyone shed tears of excitement. This was the spirit of competition, this was the spirit of sports, this was the spirit of perseverance passed down for 5,000 years in Dasha. Never give up until the last moment. Yi Chanxian finally stood on the podium symbolizing the highest honor. The broadcast ended. Xin Shen slowly took off his headphones, feeling complex emotions. A warm round of applause rang in Xin Chen's ears. He turned around and saw people from all the sports channels cheering and rushing towards him. They hugged Xin Chen and threw him into the air. Although Yi Chanxian won the championship, they shared in the glory. Ding! Side mission completed successfully, system begins evaluation. Ding! The fifth trial is successfully completed, system begins evaluation. Ding! The sixth calamity officially begins, please understand the details. Congratulations, host, for obtaining a double S score, do you want to start claiming the reward? Congratulations, host, for getting two chances to draw, do you want to start drawing? Xin Chen was tossed around by everyone for a while before being let down. Yen Guangming excitedly hugged him. Xiao Shen, your commentary was excellent. Not only did you save the fifth channel, but you also brought out the momentum of all the athletes at the Olympic Sports Center. Just now, the leaders of the main station called me, and the sports bureau called me, praising and thanking you. It's not bad, Yen Tai, can we not be so enthusiastic? Xin Shen wriggled out of old Yan's arms, looking happy, thinking, you may be happy, but why are you hugging me? I've never been hugged by a man in my life. No, a woman has never hugged me either. Oh. Just as he was about to complain, he was tightly hugged again, and as he was about to break free, a fragrant breeze hit his nose. Looking down, it turned out to be Yen Bingbing. Yen Bingbing hugged Xin Chen, her eyes shining with excitement. Xin Chen, you were amazing just now. Xin Chen felt weak all over, and subconsciously said, Really? Do you want to do it again? Pa, I'm ignoring you. Yen Bingbing knew this guy had a sharp tongue, covered her face and hid in the crowd. Wow. All the men in the studio were furious and jealous when they saw this. What a highlight moment. This is a highlight moment. Just finished performing in front of the national audience, and immediately a girl came over to hug him. Damn, you fooled me again. Yen Guangming laughed and cried, grabbing Shen Shen, Xiao Shen, joking aside, don't joke with my Bing Bing, I have a serious question for you. He put away his smile and looked at Shen Shen seriously. Shen Shen was surprised, wondering if old Yen had seen through my poisonous milk attribute. But Yen Guangming solemnly asked him, Shen Shen, not only did the leaders of the main station thank you just now, they also want to ask you, are you willing to join Central Broadcasting Station as an official commentator? What? Everyone was instantly stunned. No one had expected that the main station would extend an olive branch to Shen Shen. This is a commentator at Central Broadcasting Station. Despite Han Yu and Zhang Qing's current decline, they are both graduates of prestigious universities and broadcasters. Even the ordinary directors and assistants in the studio are graduates of prestigious universities. The voice of Dashia is no joke. It is said that Shen Shen didn't even take the college entrance exam, how could he join Central Broadcasting Station? People were a bit jealous and a bit unwilling, but no one dared to show it. Seeing Shen Shen still in a daze, Yen Guangming chuckled. Don't get too excited, being a commentator is just the beginning for you. If you do well, you can become a host for major events, a program host, and even a future main station host, all beckoning to you. Oh, and Bing Bing, the studio has also decided to reinstate her original position, she can start working tomorrow. Boom! Everyone was even more envious upon hearing this. This is simply a double stroke of good luck. Fame, position, love, all in one sweep. Yen Bing Bing, who was standing aside, was so excited that her heart was about to jump out. If Shen Shen could join Central Broadcasting Station, it would mean they could work and live together, go to work and come home together every day. Stick together all the time? She didn't dare to speak, just looked at Shen Shen with her eyes, hoping he would agree. Shen Shen chuckled, shook his head, and remained silent. Everyone was puzzled, what did this mean? Yen Guangming also frowned, about to ask further, when suddenly there was a bang. In an instant, the entire room went dark. The next moment, everyone realized that the power was out. How could there be a power outage? This is Central Broadcasting Tower, where electricity supply is guaranteed 24 hours a day, all year round. How could there be a power outage? Don't panic. Let me find out what's going on. Yen Guangming quickly reassured everyone and took out his phone to inquire. For a moment, he hung up the phone and smiled. It's okay, it's okay. It was a false alarm. The power suddenly went out on the 16th floor, but the maintenance personnel have already gone to fix it, and they will call back soon. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Sure enough, a few minutes later, the power was restored, and the room was bright again. 
Yan Guanming asked Xin Chen, Xia Shen, what were you thinking? Xin Chen was about to speak when he heard a bang. This time it wasn't a power outage. It was several video recording devices in the studio that started flashing. They were on fire. What on earth is going on here? Everyone hurried to check and found that a short circuit in the equipment had caused a surge of electricity, resulting in sparks inside the machines. It was a false alarm. They removed the damaged equipment and suddenly remembered something, all looking at Xin Chen. Their expressions changed. Xin Chen smiled wryly. Yen, do you still want to ask? Yen Guangming's face turned green, his lips trembling, and he dared not ask again. He was afraid that if he asked again, the entire sports channel would be in trouble. How unlucky can you be, kid? I won't ask anymore, I won't ask anymore. I think you would make a good anchor. You can come to our channel 5 for a visit when you're free, not a bad idea, right? Yen Guangming forced a smile, insincere in his words. When the others saw Yen giving up on recruiting Shen Chen, they all breathed a sigh of relief. This guy is too strange. If they became colleagues with him, they would probably go crazy in two days. Shen Chen just laughed and remained unfazed. He knew it would be like this when Yen Guangming asked him to work at the central broadcasting station. He hadn't worked for so many years because the heavens didn't allow him to work. Who could he reason with? He was used to it. Moreover, if he really became an employee of the central broadcasting station, his freedom would be restricted. What would he do then? He had just passed the fifth calamity, and the sixth calamity had already begun before he could even check. Shen Shen looked at everyone's slightly surprised eyes, waved his hand with a smile, and said, It's getting late. You guys go ahead, I have something to do, so I'll leave first. He walked towards the elevator alone. For a moment, no one dared to say goodbye to him. Originally, Shen Lao had a good temperament, a good personality, and spoke nicely, so everyone wanted to be friends with him. But this guy was just too unlucky. If you ended up with such a friend, who wouldn't be afraid? For the sake of their own lives, it was better to act unfamiliar. Everyone watched Shen Chen walk away with complex expressions. Shen Chen. A cry came, and Yen Bingbing ran out from the crowd. She grabbed Shen Chen's hand, looking aggrieved, and said, Aren't you taking me with you? Yen Bingbing's eyes were red, holding Shen Chen pitifully, like an unwanted doll. Bingbing, you. Shen Chen didn't know what to say for a moment. He didn't dare to look at Yen Bingbing when he left, fearing that she would chase after him, but he didn't expect her to catch up. Everyone hoped to see Yen Bingbing return to her job as a host at the central broadcasting station. But what was the matter with her chasing after him? Yen Bingbing pinched Shen Chen's palm with her nails fiercely. You abandoned me once at the East Seaport, and now this is the second time. Once or twice is fine, but if you dare to abandon me again, I will fight you. Shen Shen smiled, wanting to say something, but something was stuck in his throat, making it hard for him to speak. Bing Bing, do you also want to? Yen Guangming frowned and walked over, wanting to advise this silly girl. Yen Bing Bing smiled brightly. Yen, you don't need to advise me. I've made up my mind. Maybe this job isn't suitable for me. I prefer to be free. As long as... She glanced at Shen Shen and said to Yen Guangming with a smile, Oh, my dad is worth over a billion, and I don't need to earn money to support my family. Why can't I do whatever I want? Yen Guangming sighed. He wasn't stupid and could see Bing Bing's sincerity towards Shen Shen. But Shen Shen had always been ambiguous towards Yen Bing Bing. This guy is probably afraid that his bad luck will harm Yen Bing Bing. He couldn't come up with any words of blessing, so he could only smile and say, All right, whenever you want to come back to work, just come find me. The door of Yang Guan will always be open for you. Yen Bingbing pulled Shen Chen into the elevator and made a face. Yen Tai, probably not, we still have many things to do. Yen Guangming looked at the two of them and couldn't help but sigh, young people are really good. On the way home, Shen Chen wanted to say something, but seemed unable to. Yen Bingbing wanted to hear something, but didn't hear anything for a long time. It wasn't until they reached Yan's house that she angrily ran back to her own room. Shen Shen had to keep his words to himself for the time being. Yan's mother, Wen Xian, saw the two of them returning together and naturally knew her daughter's decision. She looked at Shen Shen with an increasingly strange look. It was a bit like a mother-in-law looking at her son-in-law. The more she looked, the more pleasing she found him. Xiao Shen, come, come, come. Auntie has prepared a bedroom for you, right next to Bing Bing. She smiled and took Shen Shen upstairs to the room, asking him to rest for a while. Shen Shen was also burdened with worries, after thanking Wen Xian, he lay on the bed alone, starting to scold himself. Damn it! So cowardly! Yen Bingbing was practically in your arms, and you still couldn't confess. System, if I don't confess to Yen Bingbing after passing the sixth great calamity, just cut me off. Ding, the host's request has been recorded and filed. After completing the sixth great calamity, the system will help you fulfill this beautiful wish. 
Shin Chen was startled and jumped off the bed. No, no, no. System, I request to delete the previous record. Unable to delete, the host must fulfill the commitment seriously, the system will supervise. Damn it. Shin Chen slumped back onto the bed. System, start receiving the S-level reward, start the draw. By the way, open the details of the sixth great calamity. Destroy it. Love will find a way. Ding. The host has successfully completed the fifth calamity poison, rated as S-level, and gained the ability of a king of soldiers in combat. Ding. The host has successfully completed the side mission, helping Yi Chanxian shoot down the first gold, and gained the ability Dream Invasion. The host has completed two S-level mission rewards, the system will provide two additional draw opportunities, would you like to start now? King of Soldiers Combat Ability? Shin Chen's eyes lit up after seeing the first reward. The system finally gave him a real skill. In the past, abilities like physical recovery, soft hedgehog armor, and language translation were just trivial things. When faced with real danger, Shin Chen could only rely on his life. It seems that the sixth great calamity is not easy to deal with, and the system is giving him a preemptive strike. Thinking of this, Shin Chen felt a warm current throughout his body. Not moved, but the abilities given by the system were starting to take effect. Then, there was a burst of noise in his body. He clearly felt that his body underwent an indescribable change. How should I put it? That restless feeling, as if he had watched art films all night. If he didn't vent immediately, he would feel itchy all over. He stood up excitedly and fiercely punched the wall in front of him. Boom! A loud noise. A shocking scene unfolded. The wall was intact, but four bones in his right hand were broken. Is this what they call the combat ability of a king of soldiers? Shin Shen held his right hand in pain and cried out. Host, are you a tiger? The combat ability of a king of soldiers is not invincible. If you can break a reinforced concrete pillar labeled C40 with one punch, what calamity are you crossing? Ascend to immortality. Faced with the system's merciless mockery, Shin Shen was speechless. He could only watch as his hand bones slowly healed and repaired. He thought he could finally get a good night's sleep tonight. Disappointed, he returned to the bed and looked at the second reward. S-level reward, dream invasion, upgradable, dream invasion, the user can, within a certain distance, enter the dreams of others through sleep. Upgrade conditions, obtained through lottery, system gift, individual evolution. Warning, 1. People with weak willpower should not attempt it lightly, as they may be permanently trapped in the other party's dream. Warning, 2. Do not easily enter the dream of someone with strong willpower, as you may be bound by the other party's dream. Warning, 3. If you die in the dream, your physical body will die in reality as well, regardless of the user or the dreamer. Shin Shen was shocked to see this ability. Isn't this the dream-stealing space? Can you really enter the other party's dream and do as you please? Like the dream thief cob, can you transform into any object or ability after entering someone else's dream? Ding, reminder to the host, the prerequisite for changing the dream is to upgrade the enter dream ability to capture dream, otherwise you cannot change anything in the dream. Shin Shen thought to himself, that's right. If he guessed correctly, the sixth calamity must be related to dreams. System, what exactly is the sixth calamity? Open the details. Shin Shen planned to first look at the sixth calamity before drawing lots. Sixth calamity, invading brain cells calamity details, after 72 hours, the host will enter a deep sleep state and retrieve their true self in the dream constructed by the system. Successfully breaking out of the dream is considered completing the calamity. Calamity preparation time, 71 hours 59 minutes and 51 seconds. Calamity reminder, the difficulty of this calamity is SS level. The host is very likely to get lost in the dream and unable to return. Please make arrangements in advance, explain matters, to avoid leaving permanent regrets. Shen Chen. System, are you always hoping for my death? He was too weak to comment and began to ponder what the sixth calamity meant. Invading brain cells? And entering his own dream after 72 hours, and if he breaks out of the dream, it counts as completing the calamity? Shin Shen felt relieved at this point. The sixth calamity is clearly not a disaster type calamity, at least the people around him don't have to worry anymore. Just sleep for 72 hours. As for making a will and explaining matters, it's nonsense, just sleeping, what accidents can happen? Shin Shen shook his head, no longer concerned about the calamity, and started drawing lots. A flash of lightning passed, and the system provided two additional S-level rewards. Congratulations to the host, draw a poor-level psychological suggestion skill. Suggestion, poor-level a poor-level psychological suggestion that is easily detected, ineffective against people with strong willpower. Congratulations to the host, draw 100 sleeping pills. Sleeping pills, after use, you can easily enter a deep sleep. 
psychological suggestion skill, sleeping pills, why not regular pills? Hee <laughs> hee, the system is getting more and more trendy. What kind of stuff is this? Xin Shen was about to investigate when he heard the voice of Yen Bingbing's mother, Wen Xian, outside the door. Xiao Xin, how did you sleep? Come down and eat. Xin Shen turned around and realized that it was already dark outside. How did time pass so quickly? He had to put away all these messy things and open the door. And one, is Bing Bing out yet? When Xian smiled mysteriously, she's been out for a while, Bing Bing went to the market early to buy groceries and cook for you. I and the nanny helped out all afternoon to get everything ready. Come down and taste Bing Bing's cooking. Really? Xin Shen chuckled and followed when Xian downstairs. Bing Bing was afraid you might want a drink, so she specially invited her cousin to accompany you, just to let you two get to know each other. Xin Shen was stunned, auntie, but I never drink. When Xian seemed to know, waved her hand nonchalantly. If you don't drink, just eat more vegetables, no one is forcing you. Xin Shen nodded in confusion. As when Xian hurried down the stairs, she suddenly grabbed Xin Shen and began to whisper. Xiao Xin, there's one more thing I need to tell you in advance. This is the first time Bing Bing has cooked at home. No matter what kind of meal she makes later, please don't discourage her. Xin Shen's smile on his face grew even more when he heard this. Yen Bing Bing is talking nonsense. When we lived in the Zhengzhou Quadrangle, she cooked every day. Her skills were quite impressive, not much different from those of a veteran chef. It seems this girl has kept a lot of things from her mother. He looked at Wen Xian's nervous expression and nodded with a smile. Don't worry, auntie, even if she makes five nut mooncake stir-fried with chili peppers, I will praise it as a delicious dish. Wen Xian smiled satisfactorily. Xiaoxin knows how to talk, but how did you know Bing Bing made five nut mooncake stir-fried with chili peppers? Ha! Huh? Xin Shen was suddenly at a loss. Wen Xian was already smiling as she led him to the dining room, where a huge figure was already seated. Xiaoyi, this is the boyfriend Bing Bing mentioned, Xin Shen? The huge figure stood up, blocking half of the light in the dining room. Xin Chan looked up. Wow! This brother is really strong. The guy in front of him was nearly two meters tall, a head taller than Xin Chen. Not only was he tall, but his body was extremely strong, looking like he weighed 300 caddies. At this moment, he stood in front of Xin Chen like a small mountain. Dressed in camouflage training clothes, he should be a soldier. At this moment, he looked at Xin Chen with disdain. Let me introduce myself, my surname is Qin, Qin Xiong. I am currently the captain of the fox hunting team in the Kyoto garrison. As he spoke, he extended his huge palm to shake hands with Xin Chen. At the same time, he kept cursing in his heart. What was the girl thinking, sending him over to intimidate him? With his small stature, he didn't need to be intimidated, he could crush this weakling with one hand. It's like a flower blooming in cow dung, why does my cousin have to like him? Just a few hours ago, Yen Bingbing suddenly begged this cousin of hers to help her with a little favor. To help her launch a love campaign. Wen Xian, who was on the side, seemed to be a participant as well, introducing Xin Shen with a smile. Xiao Shen, this is my sister's son, Xiao Xiong, who is currently on duty and specially took leave to accompany you for a meal. Oh, really? It's an honor then. Xin Shen looked at the extended hand of the other party and shook it with a smile. Xiao Xiong, hello, I'm Xin Shen. Xin Xiong was stunned, thinking to himself, how dare he call me by my nickname. He couldn't help but tighten his grip, planning to give Xin Shen a lesson that was neither light nor heavy. He he, Xin Shen, I heard you've been quite famous recently. He said with a smile, starting to exert force in his hand, hoping to make Xin Shen beg for mercy on the spot. Xin Shen remained unchanged, not bad, what can I do for you? Xin Xiong snorted and couldn't help but increase the pressure again. The veins on his hand were bulging. It's not about what I can do for you, I just want to get to know you. Xin Shen felt the continuous pressure in his palm and chuckled inwardly. The system had just given him the combat ability of a king of soldiers, and now a king of soldiers was delivered to him for testing. This was a good thing that couldn't be found even with a lantern. Moreover, the other party was the captain of the fox hunting team in the Kyoto garrison. Quite interesting. Xin Shen saw the unfriendly look on the other party's face. Although he didn't know why, it was obvious that he wanted to show his authority. But who would teach whom a lesson was still uncertain. He chuckled and directly switched to mocking mode. Put in more effort, Xiao Xiong, why be polite with me? It's our first meeting, let's get cozy. Xin Xiong's face darkened. He increased his strength again, his face turning red. Alright, don't make your boy cry from being too cozy. As the other party's palm continued to close, Xin Shen felt nothing, and even felt like laughing. Is that all? Xin Shen looked surprised. Really? I heard that the fox hunting team is the first ace special operations regiment established since the founding of Dasha. Little bear, you won't be this affectionate, will you? No way. 
Shin Chen smiled innocently, but his mouth was ruthless. When Xiong was furious, he had used all his strength, even if he held a python, he could crush it with his bare hands. But the Shin Chen in front of him showed no reaction. Am I holding a stone? He gritted his teeth and exerted force again, determined to make Shin Chen cry out in pain. Shin Chen slowly smirked, thinking that although hitting a wall wouldn't work, pinching by Qin Xiong seemed to have no effect at all. Soft hedgehog armor, super strong resistance to strikes, plus the combat skills of a king. It seemed that the guy in front of him was not impressive enough. He couldn't help but play a trick and leaned into Qin Xiong's ear. Little bear, actually, I am your long lost dad. Shin Shen deliberately used the newly acquired crude level mental suggestion, just to see if this ability could have any effect on Qin Xiong. Suddenly, Qin Xiong was stunned, his eyes glazed over. He looked at Shin Shen in front of him with great warmth, automatically imagining the appearance of his father. The next moment, he blurted out, Dad, don't shout randomly, little bear, are you mistaking me for someone else? Shin Shen chuckled inwardly, surprised that the effect was so effective. This was just a crude level mental suggestion. The other party was still a special forces captain, trained like a devil. And yet, he fell for it. Qin Xiang's outburst also stunned Wen Xian. She stared at the two in disbelief, not knowing what had happened. Yen Bingbing, who had been peeking from the kitchen door, hurried over. Cousin, what are you doing? When Qin Xiang was called by her, his eyes suddenly cleared. What just happened to me? Why did I suddenly feel like my dad was standing in front of me? No, no, I must be hallucinating. Bing Bing, what did I just say? Qin Xiong looked at his cousin, looking confused. Yen Bingbing pushed the hands of the two away impatiently. You didn't say anything, cousin, don't let this guy fool you. She was furious. Originally, she called her cousin to scare Shin Chen, to let him know how powerful she was. I have a cousin from a special team, don't bully me in the future. And there was another purpose, but it hadn't started yet. But in the first round of the confrontation between her cousin and Shin Chen, they directly called each other dad. It was embarrassing. Shin Chen laughed, thinking that the crude level mental suggestion was indeed very easily interrupted by people. In just a few seconds, Xin Xiong had already regained his composure. Let's eat. Let's eat. Yen Bingbing glared at her cousin, then ran back into the kitchen. Bingbing, do you need my help? Xin Shen, seeing Yen Bingbing looking flustered and sneaky, couldn't help but ask in confusion. No need, just wait for the meal. Yen Bingbing walked out of the kitchen with a plate of food, her smile revealing a hint of cunning. Behind her was a nanny who looked helpless, carrying two more dishes. Soon, Xin Shen understood what was going on today. A life and death situation. He looked at the table full of dishes in front of him, feeling like crying. Did Yen Bingbing make all the dark dishes in the world? Five nut mooncakes stir fried with chili weren't even worthy of being placed on the table. Looking around, the table was filled with all kinds of bizarre dishes. Crispy corners stir fried with broccoli, bizarre enough, right? No, you haven't seen anything more bizarre. Dragon fruit stir fried with Leia Gamma chili sauce. Pomegranate seeds braised with green beans. Watermelon honey spare ribs, sugarcane vinegar stir fried baby bok choy. The final drink was cilantro juice handcrafted milk tea. Shin Shen looked at the people at the table and swallowed hard. Um, Bing Bing, is our family always so extravagant at meals? Yen Bing Bing looked natural, picked up a piece of watermelon honey spare ribs with chopsticks and placed it in front of Qin Xiong. Yes, my family has always eaten like this. What's wrong? Don't you like it? Cousin, right? Xin Xiong saw his cousin asking him, his face turned green, he didn't expect his cousin to play so hard. Looking at his cousin's stern eyes, he could only tearfully pick up a rib and put it in his mouth. Yes, Xin Shen, don't be ungrateful. The last time I had such a sumptuous meal was the last time. He chewed on the watermelon-flavored ribs, finally swallowing them under Yen Bingbing's gaze. After eating, his face turned even greener. It's too disgusting. Bingbing, it's not that I don't want to help you as your cousin. It's just that these dishes are too exquisite. Xin Shen looked at Qin Xian's insincere appearance and became more and more puzzled. What does Yen Bingbing want to do? I'm back. When Xin Shen was in a daze, Yen Jingxiang strode into the house. Having just finished a busy day at work, he was tired both physically and mentally, but his face lit up when he saw the table full of food. Hey, what day is it today? Why is it so sumptuous? He took off his coat and walked to the dining table. After seeing the dishes on the table clearly, he shuddered all over. Damn, wife, are you guys holding some mysterious ritual? No, no. What nonsense are you talking about, Lao Yen, come with me. When Xian didn't expect Yen Jingxiong to come back so early today, so she quickly pulled him into the kitchen. Wife, what are you guys up to? Why is Xiao Xiong here too, isn't he in the guard zone? Yen Jingxiong looked outside and asked Wen Xian. 
lower your voice. When Xian pulled him a few steps further inside, you don't know. Bingbing came back at noon and cried in the room for a long time. What? Yen Zhengxiang was furious. That brat Chen Chen must have provoked my daughter again. I'll go deal with him. As he spoke, he reached for a kitchen knife and was about to rush out. You come back here. When Xian angrily grabbed him, listen to me, if he really bullies her, can I let him sit still? Tell me, if this kid messes with my girl, I won't spare him. When Xian sighed and had to tell Yan Zhengxiong about what happened at the central radio and television tower during the day. When Yan Zhengxiong heard that his daughter had given up her job again for Xin Chen, he sighed deeply. A daughter's heart is hard to keep. This made Yan Zhengxiong extremely distressed. Yan Bingbing may appear cute and gentle on TV, but in reality, she is very stubborn. Once she sets her mind on something or someone, not even Nine Oxen can pull her back. Since she has fallen for Xin Chen, no one can persuade her to change her mind. When Xian continued, so, when I saw our daughter crying so sadly, I came up with an idea for her. Hearing this, Yan Zhengxiang's expression changed. Wife, you didn't use that trick, did you? When Xian blushed and nodded somewhat embarrassedly. No, don't your old one family pass down that trick from generation to generation? Yan Zhengxiang covered his face. Over 20 years ago, Yan Zhengxiang was a well-known handsome young man in the area. Although not highly educated and a bit poor, he was handsome. Matchmakers from all over the place knocked on Yan's door. Yan Zhengxiang was dazzled, thinking every girl from every family was good. When Xian had been secretly in love with Yan Zhengxiang for many years in the same village. When she saw that Yan Zhengxiang was about to marry someone else, she was so anxious that she was foaming at the mouth. The old one couple saw that their daughter really liked Yan Zhengxiang, so they had to come up with an idea for her. One day, they called Yan Zhengxiang to their house, and after getting him drunk, they left directly. The next day, Yan Jingxiong, in a daze, could only marry Wen Xian. It was a passive marriage. Now it seems that Wen Xian is planning to use the same trick to make Xin Chen passively marry as well. Absolutely not. Yan Jingxiong thought to himself and firmly refused. Wife, this is not 20 or 30 years ago. In that era, people didn't care about love, they cared about reputation. Just finding someone who looks good was enough to spend a lifetime. Nowadays, young people value love and the process of getting along. Reputation means nothing. How can you guarantee that Xin Chen will accept our Bing Bing when he's drunk? What if this kid eats and runs? Yan Jingxiang became more and more angry as he thought about it. How did he end up with such a pair of mother and daughter? It would be one thing if the daughter was wishful thinking, but the mother had to add fuel to the fire. Is my daughter Yan Jingxiang never going to get married? What are you shouting about? When Xian also felt embarrassed and glanced outside secretly. I'm not saying that my daughter has to chase after him. I just want to get Chen Chen drunk and ask him what he really thinks. If he has no feelings for my daughter, I'll have Shun throw him out directly. If he's hiding his feelings and can't say it, then isn't it good to get him drunk and speak his mind? Yan Zhengxiang doubted, are you sure? This kid is cunning, can you really get him to speak his mind? I can't get him to speak, but isn't there Shun? Let him come and scare Shen Chen. Wen Xian was afraid of raising Shen Chen's suspicion by staying out too long, so she quickly pulled her husband back to the dining room. The whole family was finally together. Yan Jingxiang looked at the exquisite dishes on the table, but he had no appetite. He could only pick up his glass with a dark expression. Come on, Xin Shen, it's your first time visiting our home, let's have a drink together. He grunted unwillingly. Xin Shen smiled politely. Uncle Yan, I don't drink. What? You don't drink? Yan Jingxiang's face turned as dark as the bottom of a pot as he looked at Wen Xian beside him. What are you doing? He doesn't drink. Are you planning to force him? When Xian shook her head slightly and remained silent. Xin Shen, if you don't drink, just have a soft drink, no one will force you. Yan Bingbing suddenly said with a smile. Ah. Xin Shen looked at the handmade coriander juice tea in front of him, he really couldn't bring himself to drink it. Although the bizarre dishes made by Qin Jin before were poisonous, at least they could be swallowed. But now, a large cup of coriander juice tea was enough to kill him. It would be too embarrassing to spit it out at Yan Bingbing's house. Can I have some plain water? No. The four people at the table refused him in unison. Then I'll have some wine. Xin Shen picked up the wine glass on the table as if going into battle. The whole table, only this glass of white wine was a worldly thing. The rest of the stuff, why not feed it to the pigs? He drank a sip with a troubled expression. Seeing him start drinking, everyone looked at each other and chuckled. Dinner officially began. The Yen family couple, including Qin Xiong, seemed to be drunk. They didn't touch the dishes on the table, just raised their glasses and drank one after another. Xin Shen saw that they weren't eating, so he couldn't bring himself to eat either. He could only accompany everyone in drinking glass after glass. 
Northeasterners are known for their ability to drink, and soon six bottles of white wine were finished by the four of them. Yen Jingxiong had the maid bring two more cases and continued the party. An hour later, another case was emptied. Yen Jingxiong couldn't sit still, swaying in his chair. When Xian had stopped a long time ago, staring blankly at Xin Chan and Qin Xiong in a showdown. Yen Bingbing, who didn't drink, slowly sipped her coriander juice tea, wondering why Xin Chen wasn't drunk yet. Not only was he not drunk, he seemed very sober, even starting to challenge Qin Xiong to drink. Qin Xiong, known in the guard district for his ability to hold his liquor, was a little scared by Xin Chen's state. Xin Chen, I thought you couldn't drink. How can you drink so well? Xin Xiong held his glass, afraid that Xin Chen would fill it up again. I don't know, maybe it's a natural talent. Come on, Xiong, let's continue. Xin Chen downed his own glass of wine in one gulp and looked at him with a smile. I don't care what kind of feast you're setting up, I'll accompany you to the end. The title of being immune to all poisons is just for fun. Alcohol poisoning has no effect on me, it doesn't work at all. Xin Xiong saw this guy being so good at drinking, so he reluctantly drank another cup. This can't go on like this. Aunt, uncle, if we keep drinking, we'll all be doomed. Let Xin Shen make a statement, I'll be considered light if I don't pass out under the table. Qin Xiong was already feeling dizzy. Xin Shen still poured a full cup and smiled at Qin Xiong. Come on, little bear, show off. We have plenty of time anyway. Show off your sister. Qin Xiong's face turned green, seeking help from Yen Zhengxiong and Wen Xian. What should we do? I really can't drink anymore. Yen Zhengxiong and Wen Xian had no solution either. Who would have thought that Xin Shen, who couldn't drink, could drink so well, with four or five caddies of liquor down, and nothing happened. And he still wanted to play the same game as 20 years ago, turning uncooked rice into cooked rice? Stop kidding, even if the uncooked rice turns back into rice, he still won't get drunk. Yen Zhengxiang was the first to give up and waved his hand to go back to sleep. I don't care, do whatever you want, I can't help with this anymore. When Xian saw her husband leaving and hurried to catch up, running away too. Yen Bingbing saw her parents sneak away without loyalty, almost biting her silver teeth in anger, but she could do nothing. When facing Xin Chen, you can't use any common sense. Bang! Qin Xiong finally crawled under the table, completely drunk. On the table, there were only Xin Chen and Yen Bingbing left. Xin Chen saw everyone leave, chuckled, and put down his glass. He picked up a piece of crispy snack with his chopsticks and put it in his mouth. Bingbing, do you have something to say to me? Yen Bingbing turned her head in a panic. Say, say what? I don't understand what you mean. Xin Shen sighed, there were things he wanted to say but couldn't. Suddenly, he realized that being immune to alcohol was not a good thing. If he got drunk, he might blurt it out. The sixth calamity is marked as SS level, while Xin Shen seemed indifferent on the surface, he was also worried inside. If something unexpected happened, wouldn't it be a letdown to the beauty in front of him? Right, dream invasion. Xin Shen suddenly remembered the new ability he had just acquired, dream invasion. Some things are better said in dreams, where you can always speak freely. Besides, no one would take dream words seriously. He made up his mind to end this drinking session. At this moment, Yen Bingbing kept fidgeting with her fingers, finally mustering up the courage. She stared at Xin Chen intently and spoke softly, actually, I. You should go to bed early too, Bingbing. I'll take my cousin to the room. Xin Chen stood up, lifted Jin Xiang's huge body with both hands, and carried him upstairs. Yen Bingbing was so angry she wanted to rush over and bite this guy to death. For a moment, no one noticed how Xin Chen could lift a 300-pound cousin. She looked at the table full of dishes and fell into a daze. It was late at night, and the entire Yen family villa was peaceful. Xin Chen lay on the bed, still not asleep. Around 2 a.m., he sat up, wondering if Yen Bingbing was asleep or not. He got up, tiptoed to the corridor, and listened for a while. Besides Qin Xiang's thunderous snoring, he couldn't hear anything clearly. Forget it. Let's start. Xin Shen made up his mind, went back to the room, took a sleeping pill, and lay down on the bed. A few seconds later, a wave of immense fatigue hit him, forcing him to close his eyes. In the boundless darkness, Xin Shen opened his eyes again. But this time, he found himself in a strange and colorful space. Is this a dream? Xin Shen looked around in amazement. Host, this is your dream space. Step forward, and you will enter your own dream. Step forward, and you will enter the dreams of those around you detected by the system. He noticed several colorful wreaths spinning around him. One behind him, four in front. Five? System, why are there five flower rings? The system detected that within a 10 meter range of the host, there are four dream entrances. As for the flower ring behind the host, it is temporarily inaccessible. Xin Chan understood. 
The flower ring behind him should be the sixth tribulation prepared for himself after 72 hours. He tried to step back and found that he indeed could not enter. System, out of the four flower rings, which one is Yen Bingbing stream? Xin Shen hesitated as he looked at the four options in front of him. Host, the dream entry level ability cannot determine which dream the host wants to enter. You can only try on your own. Reminder to the host, if you need to exit the dream, summon the system. Reminder to the host, entering the dream means that any actions of the host will affect the subconscious mind of the dreamer. Host, please act cautiously, or it will lead to irreparable consequences. Reminder to the host, due to the host's intrusion, if the dreamer dies in the dream, the host's physical body will also die. Host, please be aware. Reminder to the host, due to the host's intrusion, if the host is bound by the dreamer in the dream, the system cannot help the host escape the dream. Host, please be aware. All right, all right, I'll go in and take a look first. Shin Shen waved his hand, interrupting the system's prompts. He chose the leftmost flower ring and stepped in. Swish, a flash of white light passed, and Shin Shen found himself on a warm sunny beach. In the distance, sounds of laughter and play could be heard. Following the sound, Shin Shen made his way to the liveliest group of people. Dozens of bikini-clad beauties were gathered together. They looked at Shin Shen, the unexpected guest, with surprise. Shin Shen's eyes widened. What's going on? Why are there so many bikini-clad beauties? Is this Yen Bingbing's dream? It can't be this bold. Just as he was wondering, a woman at the front walked over with a charming demeanor. Wheat-colored skin, dark eyes blinking at Shin Shen. Hey handsome, where are you from? I come from the Great Tang of the East, heading to. Shin Shen coughed, why did he instinctively start acting like a rogue? Never mind where I come from, where is this place? The woman was taken aback by Shin Shen's rude attitude. This, this is the Western Liang female country. We are the citizens of the female country, training here under General Xion's orders. Wow, it's really like journey to the West? Shin Shen blurted out. Watching them frolicking on the beach, he thought to himself, isn't this nonsense? Which daughter's country is by the sea? Who are you? The woman seemed to be on guard and started questioning. I, forget it, is there a girl named Yen Bingbing here? Xin Shen couldn't be bothered to explain and went straight to the point. The woman was puzzled. I haven't heard of this person, first tell me your name, why did you trespass into our western Liang female country? Alright, Xin Shen realized he had come to the wrong place. He didn't even know whose dream this was. Forget about the name, I came to the wrong place, ladies, I'll take my leave. He turned around to leave, planning to find a place with no one and leave this strange dream. Stop. Sisters, surround him, how can a man trespass our female country? The woman shouted valiantly and charged towards Shin Shen with a long spear from the beach. The bikini-clad beauties also followed suit, pulling out weapons from the sand piles. In no time, Shin Shen was surrounded by the women, each holding a spear and glaring at him. Tell the truth, are you a spy from an enemy country? They brandished their weapons, gesturing towards Shin Shen. Shin Shen was threatened by a group of cute girls and mature women, and he became anxious on the spot. Hey, you have guns, and I have one too. Don't force me to release Dochan like Lu Bu to deal with you. He cursed loudly in anger, causing the crowd to step back in fear. Quick, go and invite General Xiong over. Someone shouted and ran to seek help. Shin Shen's heart skipped a beat, thinking to himself, could this General Xiong be that guy Qin Xiong? Sure enough, in just a few seconds, a chestnut red steed came galloping over. A big man on horseback, dressed in full armor, holding a Fangtian halberd in hand, shouted loudly while waving it. Who dares to trespass into my western Liang female country, come and face your death. With a few strides, he charged into the crowd, pulling the reins to make the horse leap into the air. Then, he struck a heroic pose with a drawn sword. Indeed, it was Qin Xiong. His swaggering appearance made Xin Chen blush. Xin Chen covered his forehead, Xin Xiong, what are you thinking day by day? Acting like Lu Bu, training on the beach. The most absurd thing is, self-proclaimed general in the daughter country, commanding so many cute girls and mature ladies. Although you look ugly, your dreams are too idealistic. Oh my goodness. Xin Xiong was shocked to see Xin Chen, falling off his horse red hair on the spot. With a loud bang, a big pit formed on the beach. He got up, covered in dirt, pointing at Xin Chen. You. 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 Even if he were beaten to death, he couldn't have imagined Xin Chen appearing in his dream. How did you pop up? Why can I see you in my dream? It's like you're haunting me. Xin Xiong looked at him in shock. Xin Chen smirked. Hey little bear, I didn't drink well last night, so I came to dream to drink with you. Let's continue the fun? Xin Xiong turned green in the face. Apparently, he was afraid that Xin Chen would get him drunk even in his dreams. Bah, in my dream, you better watch out. 
He was furious and shouted, All generals, listen, we are here. A group of beautiful women saluted and shouted sweetly, Surround this intruder in the daughter country, let's see how General Xiong captures this little thief. Xin Xiong pointed at Shen Chen, full of killing intent. In my dream, I won't let you bully me. If I don't beat you to a pulp, my name is not Qin. The female soldiers dispersed upon hearing this, forming a large circle on the beach. General Xiong is mighty. Brother Xiong, go for it. We all support you, catch this little thief. The girls enjoyed the spectacle, laughing and trembling with excitement. Xin Chen was speechless, waving his hand to summon the system directly. System, get me out of this ridiculous dream. I'm afraid I'll be infected by him. I'm sorry, host, you are currently involved in the dream host's entanglement and cannot leave the dream. Xin Chen cursed silently. So, this is what the system meant by being bound by the dream host and unable to leave. Kid, you want to be my cousin's husband, come at me. Qin Xiong brandished the Fangtian halberd and charged towards him. Wait. Xin Shan raised his hand, signaling him to stop. Qin Xiong sneered, Are you going to kneel and beg for mercy? Xin Shan retorted, No, little Xiong, can you stop embarrassing yourself? In front of so many subordinates, riding red hair and challenging me with a halberd, do you have any shame? Xin Xiong blushed, stealing a glance, seeing the female generals nodding in agreement. General Xiong would never bully him. General Xiong could defeat him with one hand. No need for one hand, General Xiong's imposing aura alone would scare him. The girls cheered and encouraged Qin Xiong, boosting his courage. All right, this general can take you down barehanded. Qin Xiong shouted, throwing away his weapon and charging at Xin Chen. Bring it on. Xin Chen grinned, eager to test his skills and see how formidable the king of soldiers' combat skills really were. The moment Qin Xiong rushed over, Xin Chen was already behind him. Lie down for me. He punched Qin Xiong in the soft ribs without hesitation. Boom! The sound of a drum being struck echoed on the beach. Damn it! Xin Xiong let out a cry of pain, feeling like he had been hit by a train even though he was wearing armor. Xin Chen's punch distorted his face. How could he hit so hard? He fell face down into the sand. Don't talk about reality, I can get intimate with you even in dreams. Xin Chen didn't hold back as he mounted Xin Xiong and started punching with both fists. Boom! Boom! The muffled sounds continued. Xin Xiong's face was instantly bruised and swollen, and he started yelling incoherently while covering his face. Stop, stop. You took advantage of me being drunk and off guard, that's not fair. Xin Chen chuckled, stood up, and decided not to provoke this guy further. Not fighting anymore? Not fighting, not fighting. Wait until I'm sober, I'll spar with you properly. Xin Xiong got up and waved his hands repeatedly. He thought to himself, am I so bored that I dream of Xin Chen beating me up? Tomorrow, when I wake up, I'll settle the score with you for real. Xin Shen saw the disappointed look on his face and chuckled. When you wake up, behave yourself, or I'll tell Bing Bing about General Xiong's situation. Xin Xiong's face turned pale. Don't, don't. Before he could finish, Xin Shen had disappeared from the spot, back to the dream space. This guy is really something. Xin Shen shook his head with a smile, finding the events in this dream quite interesting. Why hadn't he ever dreamt such a dream? He stopped thinking about it, took a step into the second dream ring, another flash of white light. Xin Chen felt a dizzying sensation. Why was it so uncomfortable? Ding. System prompt, the host's mental strength is not strong enough. This time, you can only enter the dreams of three dreamers at most. If you forcefully enter the dream by overusing mental strength, you may easily get lost in the dream. So entering dreams also consumes personal energy, no wonder I feel so exhausted. Xin Chen shook his head, hoping for better luck this time as he entered Yen Bingbing's dream. He opened his eyes, looked around, and heard a sharp voice. The emperor commands, present matters, report, no matters, dismiss. Whoa! Xin Chen was shocked. How did he end up in the palace? Whose dream was this, so extravagant? Couldn't be Yen Bingbing's, right? He looked around and found himself standing behind a pillar. He was inside the golden Luang Hall, the massive pillar hiding him, and no one noticed his presence for the moment. A eunuch stood in front of civil and military officials, waving a Buddhist dust. On the high steps, a middle-aged man sat on the dragon throne. The man wore a yellow robe and looked quite pleased. Xin Shen took a closer look. Wasn't this Yen Bingbing's father, Yen Zhengxiong? Xin Shen almost burst out laughing, he didn't expect his dream to be so amusing. Indeed, it's better to sleep when there's nothing to do, dreams have everything. Not a single serious person in the family. Wrong place again. He shook his head, about to ask the system to take him away, when he heard a courtier below speak up. Long live the emperor, I have a report. Xin Shen sneaked a glance and saw an old man with white hair, dressed in the attire of a high-ranking official. 
He stepped forward, bowing respectfully. Shin Chun chuckled and left without haste, curious to see how far Bing Bing's father could go. Yen Junxiong's voice came from above. Minister Lu, what report do you have? The old man bowed and cautiously said, Your Majesty, the treasury of the Yen Jingxiong dynasty is running empty. I implore your majesty to think of a solution, or it will be a problem to pay the officials next month. Yen Zhengxiong waved his hand impatiently. Lao Lu, I've told you, we are tight on funds recently. I plan to personally go abroad in the next few days to collect the debts. You don't need to worry about it. Yes, your majesty. Lao Lu retreated with a flattering expression. I also have something to report. Another high-ranking official came forward. Speak. Your Majesty, the gatekeeper Lao Li is resigning and wants to return to his hometown. Please find a replacement for the gatekeeper as soon as possible. Yen Zhengxiang was immediately angered. Lao Fan, as the personnel manager, do I have to worry about the gatekeeper's affairs as well? Will it exhaust me? The official named Fan looked aggrieved. Your Majesty, the gatekeeper Lao Li is your second uncle. After you said he wouldn't work anymore, didn't you ask for a relative from his hometown to come over? It's reassuring to use someone from within the family. Yen Zhengxiang was taken aback, realizing that the gatekeeper was indeed his second uncle. He had to say, all right, I will call home and see who is willing to come over. Instruct the finance department to pay my second uncle three months salary, and make sure he doesn't badmouth me when he returns. Yes, your majesty. He also retreated, followed by a group of administrative, operational, and logistical staff. Various people came forward to have Yen Jingxiong resolve the companies, no, the issues of the Jingxiong dynasty. Yen Jingxiong was overwhelmed but dealt with each issue one by one. Xin Chen watched with amusement, marveling at how this guy was naturally burdened with work, even in his dreams. Bang! Yen Jingxiong finally lost his temper and slammed the dragon throne. Is there nothing that pleases me? The court officials fell silent, none daring to come forward and cause trouble. I have something to report. A young man seeing the situation quickly stepped forward. Speak. If you annoy me further, I will have you executed at the Meridian Gate. The man trembled all over and hastily said, Your Majesty, you haven't visited the Langsha Club for a long time. It is said that several master masseurs from Nanyang have recently arrived there, with great insights into health massage. Please experience it, Your Majesty. Yen Jingxiang's eyes lit up at the suggestion, but seeing the puzzled expressions of the others, he waved his hand quickly. Huang Aiching, don't mention such matters during the morning court. Come to my heart nourishing hall later, and we can talk slowly. Yes, your majesty. The man left triumphantly, leaving the others envious. Ha ha, Xin Chen couldn't help but burst into laughter. Unexpectedly, Yan Jingxiong, who seemed serious, also had a restless heart. Going to the Langsha Club to find Nanyang Master Masseurs. Unbelievable. Just say you're going for a foot massage. How dare you make noise? Who is causing a commotion? Yan Jingxiong suddenly heard laughter and angrily shouted. Everyone turned to look behind the pillar, where the laughter was coming from. Damn, I was careless. Xin Chen was shocked and quickly had the system take him out of the dream, but it was too late. Several Jin Dao guards rushed in from outside and dragged Xin Chen to the center of the hall. Shen Chen. Yan Zhengxiang was dumbfounded, not expecting to see this kid here. How did you end up in my dream? You. You. Xin Chen shrank his neck and quickly bowed. Your Majesty, this humble servant took the wrong path. I was supposed to play with Yen Bingbing and will leave now. After speaking, he turned to run. Don't make a scene. In Qin Xiong's dream, he could still beat him up. Here, would he rebel? Didn't he see the fierce Jin Dao guards surrounding the Golden Long Hall? It's not wise to provoke any of them. Seize him. Unfortunately, Xin Chen had only taken a few steps before being firmly caught by the Jin Dao guards. He turned back with a troubled expression, Uncle Yen. No, your majesty, what are you going to do? Yen Jingxiong looked at Xin Chen with a smile that wasn't a smile. What am I going to do? How did you mess with my Bing Bing? So I have to mess with you. Since I dreamt of you, why not vent my anger? Am I a fool? He he, Xin Chen, since you're here, don't think about leaving. Yen Jingxiong glanced at the eunuch beside him. Li Dayan, for intruding into the Golden Wine Palace and causing a commotion, what punishment should he receive? The eunuch bowed and replied, according to the law, he should be executed. Xin Chen felt a chill down his spine, wondering what this old man was up to. Yan Jingxiang waved his hand with a smile, why dispose of him so easily? He looked at Xin Chen with a malicious smile in his eyes. Li Dayan, does your Ministry of Rights still need people? I'll go. Xin Chen was shocked again, wondering what this old man was planning. Your Majesty, the Ministry of Rights currently does not need additional personnel. Xin Chen breathed a sigh of relief upon hearing that they didn't need more people. 
However, Yan Jingxiong coldly said, Fine, since the Ministry of Rights doesn't need more people, send this boy to Princess Bingbing's palace to serve as a eunuch. Yes, your majesty, this servant will prepare him. The eunuch nodded in compliance. Xin Chen turned pale with fear. This old man was ruthless. Yan Jingxiong, you, impudent, guards, prepare him for service. Before Xin Chen could protest, the eunuch had already silenced him and had him taken away. Xin Chen was speechless as he was dragged towards the harem. People around him looked at him with pity. Yan Zhengxiong's hearty laughter echoed behind him. All right, you'll get what's coming to you, just wait for me to reclaim my dignity. Xin Chen stopped struggling and waited for the right moment when the guards took him to a secluded area, then he made his move. Crack, 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 crack. Xin Chen watched as the four clueless men fell to the ground, wiping the sweat off his brow. This dream was not as fun as he had hoped. It was too surreal. If he didn't have elite combat skills, he would have failed twice today. Why do people hate me so much? He impatiently had the system take him out of the dream. Swish. A white light flashed, and he finally returned to the dream space. Shin Shen shuddered, looking at the two flower wreaths in front of him. This was his last chance. Between the two, which one was Princess Bing Bing's dream? He couldn't afford to enter the wrong dream again, ending up in his future mother-in-law's dream would be a disaster. He gritted his teeth and chose one, stepping into it. The familiar exhaustion washed over him once more. This time, it took Shin Shen a while to regain his senses. It seemed that entering someone else's dream consumed a lot of energy. Hopefully, he didn't make a mistake this time. He opened his eyes and found himself standing on a lush green grassland. The air was fresh, the climate comfortable, and birds chirped happily as they flew around. In the trees, pine cones hung from the branches, observing the unexpected visitor curiously. Below, a few rabbits hopped around, playing around the large tree. The ground was covered in flowers, and the air was filled with the sounds of birds chirping. It was a beautiful and peaceful scene. Xin Chen felt a sense of tranquility as he walked towards the distance. There was a girl sitting on the grass, hugging her legs with her back towards him. It must be Princess Bing Bing. Xin Chen breathed a sigh of relief. His luck wasn't too bad after all. He casually picked a few flowers from the bushes and weaved a flower wreath, then slowly approached Princess Bing Bing. She had her eyes closed, lost in thought under the warm sunlight. Her face was as pure as white jade, with long eyelashes fluttering slightly, exuding a captivating beauty. Xin Shen smiled as he gently placed the flower wreath on Princess Bing Bing's head. The girl slowly opened her eyes. Xin Shen, you're back? Princess Bing Bing looked at the man in front of her, smiling like a flower. Xin Shen was stunned. I'm back? What does that mean? Bing Bing, were you waiting for me here? Princess Bing Bing nodded in confusion. Yes, didn't you say you were going to surprise me here? She took off the flower wreath from her head. It's so beautiful, I really like it. Yen Bingbing's insincere words made the light in her eyes dim a little. Xin Shen became even more puzzled, feeling as if Bingbing had known he would enter her dream. I, do you have something to tell me? Yen Bingbing looked at him eagerly, her eyes widening with anticipation. Xin Shen nodded, about to confess what he couldn't say during the day. Suddenly, footsteps approached. Bingbing, I'm back, sorry for keeping you waiting. A familiar voice suddenly sounded. Xin Shen trembled all over, lifting his head in an instant. Boom! His head felt like it was going to explode. Another Xin Chen. He was wearing a white suit, holding a bouquet of flowers in his left hand. In his right hand was a ring box, open with a sparkling diamond ring inside. But that wasn't the most crucial part. The most crucial part was that Xin Chen saw an exact copy of himself. Who are you? Both exclaimed in shock. Yen Bingbing also looked at the two men in astonishment, her face full of fear. The next moment. Boom! A white light flashed, automatically pulling Shen Chen out of the dream. In the dream space, he knelt on the ground, trembling all over. His brain felt like it was about to split open, the intense dizziness causing Shen Chen to cry out in pain. The four flower wreaths in front of him disappeared in an instant, leaving Shen Chen sitting alone on the ground. System, what's going on? How could I be inside? Shen Chen, even with his calm and resolute personality, couldn't accept seeing an exact copy of himself. Host, as the saying goes, thoughts by day, dreams by night. It's very normal for Yen Bingbing to dream about you due to her heavy thoughts of you. But, Xin Shen still couldn't accept that the person in the dream and the person entering the dream actually met. And that person even proposed to Yen Bingbing, making it even more unacceptable for him. Host, the system has already issued warnings. Any actions in a dream will have serious consequences on the dreamer. If you didn't enter Yen Bingbing's dream, she would dream of you proposing to her. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Your appearance interrupted Yen Bingbing's dream, causing her distress. She will have a period of trauma in her mind, 
which is inevitable. System, why didn't you remind me earlier? Xin Chan roared. How could he have known that Yen Bingbing would be so terrified to see two Xin Chans in her dream? The system has issued warnings. Please be cautious when entering anyone's dream, as it can lead to irreversible consequences. The host should be aware. The system's response was cold and robotic, devoid of any humanity. Xin Shen shouted in anger, What are you trying to achieve by giving me the ability to enter dreams? The only response was the system's permanent silence. After an unknown amount of time, whoosh, Xin Shen was kicked out of the dream space, and when he opened his eyes, he was gasping for air on the bed. Finally back to reality. He felt a chill all over his body, feeling a hint of fear for the sixth great tribulation. Indeed, an SS-level calamity was not a simple matter. Rushing into Yen Bingbing's dream, scaring her, now it was too late for regrets. Xin Shen sat up, seeing that it was already bright outside the window. In the corridor, when Xian's voice rang out, Xiao Shen, are you awake? Come have breakfast when you're up. Xin Shen responded and washed his face in the bathroom to clear his head. When he arrived at the dining room, Yen Jinxion, Xin Xion, and Wen Xian were already having breakfast. Only Yen Bingbing was missing. He was about to ask when Yen Jinxion and Xin Xion looked at Xin Shen with a face of despair. Sigma, surprised face, you little devil just won't go away. Seeing you in the daytime, seeing you at night, and now you pop up at breakfast in the morning. Especially Qin Xiong, he can make Xin Chen fat in his dreams, which is really embarrassing. But he doesn't dare to mention it, afraid that everyone will know he had a dream full of spring feelings. At this moment, glaring at Xin Chen, he just wants to punch this guy. Yen Jinxiong is a bit better, venting his anger in his dream, and now looking at Xin Chen smugly. This kid probably has no idea that I stripped him clean in my dream. Come, take him to serve Princess Bingbing. Ha ha ha. I dream of castrating people. Yen Jingxiong couldn't help but burst into laughter while eating. Lao Yen, what's gotten into you? Wen Xian gave her husband a strange look, reminding him to be mindful of his image, as their future son-in-law is watching him. Yen Jingxiong quickly covered his face with a bowl. It's nothing, it's nothing, I just thought of something funny, ha ha ha. He laughed even more heartily. Xin Chen, seeing him being too arrogant, couldn't help but say irritably, Uncle Yen, are you going to the Langsha Club today to find a master from Nanyang? Put. Yen Zhengxiong had just taken a sip of porridge and instantly sprayed it all out, directly spraying his nephew Qin Xiong all over his face. Qin Xiong wiped the rice grains off his face, almost crying. What are you doing, uncle? Don't you care about my feelings at all? Yen Zhengxiong didn't even pay attention to him, pointing at Qin Shen as if seeing a ghost, almost having a heart attack. You, how do you know what I dreamed about? This is ridiculous. Yen Jingxiong looked at Xin Shen, so scared that he stood up. Xin Shen, not in the mood to tease him, looked at Wen Xian. Aunt Wen, why hasn't Bing Bing come out to eat yet? Wen Xian asked in confusion, yes, I called Bing Bing just now. She usually is the first one to get up and go for a run, what's wrong today? Xin Shen's expression darkened, stood up to go check. Wen Xian followed behind, also getting nervous. Before taking a few steps, Yen Bing Bing appeared in front of everyone. She looked tired, with a very listless complexion holding onto the staircase railing. I'm, I'm sorry, I overslept, didn't sleep well last night. Hey, how come you didn't sleep well at home, girl? When Xian breathed a sigh of relief, went over to support Yen Bingbing, and led her to the dining room. Bingbing, are you okay? Xin Chen asked with concern. Yen Bingbing saw Xin Chen, a hint of fear in her eyes, turned her head away. I'm, I'm fine, Xin Chen, you're awake, I was going to ask you to go for a run together, didn't expect to oversleep. Xin Shen looked at her tired appearance, feeling a pang of regret for his recklessness last night. It's okay, it's okay, after we finish eating, we can still go for a run. Yen Bingbing didn't respond, holding the rice porridge to cover her face, drinking slowly, a bit afraid to look at Xin Shen again, still scared. Last night, she dreamed of being in a green grass field, surrounded by the sounds of birds and fragrance of flowers. She also dreamed of Xin Shen coming to her with a big surprise. She closed her eyes, waiting happily. But in the end, she saw two Xin Chens appearing and then started having a nightmare. All night, her dreams were bizarre and made her cycle between consciousness and unconsciousness, extremely painful. Even now, seeing Xin Chen made her recall that terrifying scene. The whole family noticed something was wrong with Yen Bingbing, but no matter how they asked, she insisted she was fine. Yen Jingxiong and Wen Xian exchanged a glance, thinking that this kid probably rejected their daughter again last night. The two couldn't help but glare at Xin Chen, not knowing what to say. For a moment, everyone fell silent. After a while, someone broke the silence. Yen Jingxiong sighed, Bing Bing, you don't look well. Dad wants to take you out to relax and play for a couple of days, okay? 
Yan Bingbing shook her head, looking timidly at Xin Chen. No, Dad, I have to go back to Zhengzhou with Xin Chen. We signed a platform contract and have to live stream. Bang! Yan Jingxiang slammed the table in anger. Daughter, can't you accompany Dad for a trip out? Is he making it so hard for you to leave? Everyone was startled. When Xian quickly stood up, Lao Yan, what are you doing? Yan Jingxiang stared at Xin Chen. There has been a sum of money that hasn't been returned to the company, and I had decided to go abroad to collect it today. Now I want to take Bingbing with me to relax and have fun for a couple of days. Xin Chen, what do you think? Can. I. Do. Yan Zhengxiang shouted out each word. He was about to explode. As a father, how could he feel so stifled? If you love her, love her, if not, then don't, why do you have to bother my daughter? Now I want to take her to relax, to relieve her discomfort, do I need your permission? Everyone immediately looked at Xin Chen. Xin Chen lowered his head, feeling extremely uncomfortable. Bing Bing's current state was unintentionally caused by him, and he had an undeniable responsibility. Bing Bing, accompany Uncle Yin to play abroad for a few days, I will continue the live broadcast as usual, you can control it remotely. Ah, this. Bing Bing was surprised that Xin Chen actually agreed. Go, Bing Bing, I also have something to do, let's meet in Zhangzhou in three days. At the same time, Xin Chen gritted his teeth. After successfully passing the sixth great tribulation, he must make a promise to Yen Bingbing no matter what. Bingbing could only weakly obey her father's request. After dinner, Bingbing bid farewell to Xin Chen reluctantly. You go back first, I will bring you some delicious food from abroad. Don't wander around. Xin Chen smiled and promised, watching Bingbing get on the car and leave. After they left, Qin Xiong suddenly rushed over. He couldn't bear it anymore and grabbed Xin Chen. Kid, tell me clearly, do you want my cousin or not? If not, then get lost. If yes, then don't make her sad. Xin Shen raised his head, coldly looked at Qin Xiong. Xiao Xiong, I don't mind hitting you again in broad daylight. You. Qin Xiong was scared and quickly withdrew his hand, his face turning pale. Did he come into my dream last night just to hit me? Qin Xiong stood still. Xin Shen shook his head, turned around, and left the Yen family with a sense of loss. His phone rang, and a familiar voice came from inside. Xin Shen, it's Su He. Can you spare some time to come back to Zhongzhou? Today is the seventh day for Wang Duqing's family of six. I want you to accompany me. For the memorial. Seventh day? Xin Shen was puzzled, not understanding what Su He meant. This girl had called him once since she arrived in Kyoto, even asking him to go to her forensic office for a checkup, scaring Xin Shen into not replying. Now, why did she suddenly mention the matter of Bauer's family? Is it inconvenient? All right, forget it. I will go by myself. Sui sounded a bit disappointed and was about to hang up the phone. Shinshin said, Wait, don't hang up, Sui, I just didn't understand what you meant. Why do you want to pay respects to them? The Wang family, did they lose all their relatives? I went to see Bauer yesterday, she. Oh, are you a man? Why are you so slow? Are you coming back or not? Sui seemed to have some difficulty speaking, getting anxious with Shinshin's questions. Woof, woof, woof. Suddenly, barking came from the phone. Hey, why are you taking my phone? Suhi exclaimed, and the urgency of the dog barking on the phone increased. Shin Chen, are you coming back or not? Do you want to starve me? It's been several days. Can you have some humanity? The phone transmitted the desperate and urgent barking of the dog. Shin Chen suddenly remembered that the silly dog was still in the courtyard. How could he have forgotten about it? But why was Suhi with the dog? He laughed, Go sway, why are you taking someone's phone? Quickly return it. When I left, didn't I leave you with 100 steamed buns? Woof woof woof. Woof. Can you stop mentioning that thing? I'm about to vomit from eating too much. Hurry back. The girls are already looking for you. Hurry up, or I'll bite her and make you pay for it. Shin Chun chuckled nonchalantly. Try biting her once. This woman carries a scalpel with her. She'll cut you open and perform a free neutering surgery on you. What did you say? Before Shin Shen could finish, Sui's cold voice came through the phone again. Sui snatched the phone back. Ah. Uh, Suhi, I'll be back soon, but why are you at my house? I was afraid that you died and no one would claim your body. Upon hearing that Shin Shen was coming back, Suhi hung up the phone in annoyance. However, she soon smiled again. It's good that he's coming back. She put away the phone and looked at the skinny dog on the ground, feeling helpless. She had come to Shin Shen's house today to see if he had returned, but General Tai had locked the door. Feeling disappointed, she was about to leave when she heard the distressed dog in the yard crying for help. The sound was so pitiful. Sui suddenly realized that Shin Shen had gone to Kyoto, so why was there still a dog at home? And it looked like it was starving. She hurriedly found a locksmith to open the yard's gate. 
The dog staggered over, and upon seeing a living person, it knelt down in front of Suhi. It was so pitiful. Five days had passed, a whole five days. Shin Chen had left home five days ago and still hadn't returned. Do you know how I've been surviving these five days? I've been barely surviving on steamed buns, but even though I haven't finished them, they've all gone bad. Ah, uh, er ha, how about I take you to KFC? Suhi asked the dog tentatively, unsure if it would understand her. Er ha jumped up excitedly and licked Suhi's shoe. Licking the shoe, getting more excited. Its true nature was revealed. Suhi was surprised that Er ha actually understood her. She found a leash and took the dog to KFC. For hours later, when Shen Shen hurried back to the Zhengzhou courtyard, he thought the house would be a mess, but to his surprise, both inside and outside the courtyard were spotless. The dog was leisurely gnawing on a chicken leg and napping in the shade. Shin Shen walked over and kicked the dog. Hey, wake up. Has the house been robbed? Why is it so clean? The dog, rudely awakened from its nap, was about to get angry. But upon seeing that it was Shin Shen, it bared its teeth. Woof woof. Shin Shen, you finally came back. I'm going to bite you to death. It growled and lunged at Shin Shen, ready to fight. Shin Shen put his hand in its mouth and said sternly, Go ahead, if you bite me, I'll have dog meat hot pot for dinner. Whimper. The dog immediately backed off. It quickly licked Shin Shen's hand. Bro, want some chicken leg? Get lost. Shin Shen stood up and saw Sui coming out of the kitchen. She was wearing an apron and holding a basin of water, looking all dirty. Shen Chen. Sui's eyes lit up with joy upon seeing Shin Shen return. But the joy was short-lived, and Sui returned to her cold demeanor. You finally decided to come back. Look at how skinny your dog has become. It's so thin, people would believe it's a sausage. Shin Chen chuckled and scratched his head. Sui, what are you doing? He didn't expect Suhi to have cleaned the entire courtyard inside and out, which was a pleasant surprise. Suhi suddenly realized her appearance, hastily took off the apron, and wiped her hands dry. She looked flustered. Don't get the wrong idea, I'm a clean freak. Can your dog's den still be lived in? I was just bored and decided to clean up for you. Hee hee, xia. Shin Shen subconsciously wanted to make a joke or two, but suddenly remembered Yen Bingbing and froze. He had already caused trouble with Bingbing. So why did he want to provoke Suhi as well? Everything that happened was all because of his big mouth. Shin Shen couldn't help but slap himself on the mouth. Suhi felt uncomfortable watching this. He didn't know that since the moment he rescued Suhi from Chen Jin, Suhi's attitude towards Shin Shen had completely changed. This man, in order to protect her, even dared to eat poisonous food. Especially when he didn't hesitate to stab himself, willing to bleed to detoxify Suhi. That scene was deeply engraved in Suhi's mind. It seemed like this debt of gratitude couldn't be avoided. Shin Shen, I came here today for two things. Sui pursed her lips and finally spoke out her intentions. After listening for a while, Shin Shen also understood. The first thing was that Shin Shen bravely saved Wang Bauer and Suhi, which was considered a righteous act in cooperation with the police station. After discussions with the leaders of the police station and the city, Shin Shen was awarded a good citizen award of 500,000. In addition, in the poisoning case, Chen Jin had caused him serious harm as a victim. After the judgment, the court ordered Chen Jin to pay Shen Chen over 1 million in compensation. Su He brought the money. The second thing was that Wang Bauer was sent to an orphanage to be raised by the state. Although there were some relatives on both sides of her parents' families, everyone explicitly refused to take care of this poor girl. The case involving Chen Jin was still rumored to have accomplices helping with the crime. Otherwise, it would be impossible for six people from three different places to die from poisoning at the same time. This matter weighed heavily on the minds of all relatives, and no one dared to approach Wang Bauer, fearing being implicated. Although Bauer inherited all of Chen Jin's estate, which was worth tens of millions, everyone made a rational choice between life and money. Even during the seven-day mourning period for the six members of the Wang family, no one dared to come and pay their respects, fearing retaliation from the murderer. The warmth and coldness of human relationships were clearly revealed for a moment. Shin Shen also looked serious after hearing this. So, Su He, do you plan to join me in mourning for Bauer's relatives, so they can find their way during the seven-day mourning period? Su He nodded cautiously. I know this is very difficult, but I went to see Bauer yesterday, and her condition is not good. She speaks less and less since being sent to the orphanage. I want to mourn for her parents, to comfort their souls, and if possible, to send a dream to Bauer. Shen Chen. Dreams. Whenever he heard about dreams now, he felt a headache. He never expected that Su He, a forensic doctor, would believe in such mysterious things. Shin Shen, if you find it difficult, then forget it. Su He saw Shin Shen's expression change and felt a bit disappointed. Indeed, these kinds of things were best avoided. 
They were not even her own family members, and going to mourn during the seven-day period for someone else was definitely unnecessary. Misfortune could easily rub off on oneself. As a forensic doctor, she had seen too many tragic cases and was not bothered by such things. But Shin Chen was just an ordinary commoner after all. Thinking of this, Su Yi lowered her head and was about to leave. Su Yi. Shin Chen suddenly called out to her. I'll go with you. Let's go buy some things for the morning ceremony. Shin Chen smiled and had already walked up to Su Yi. Unlucky? Misfortune? Joking, I'm not afraid of such things.